here we are. Hooray, we did it. Wonderful world of year four of EFAP, it. technically, right? This is the beginning of year four? Yeah, yeah. how does it, uh, how's it feel? Oh, you know. Feel, feels four-ish. You can kind of feel the four. Four. Like three. Feels like four. Four. Three was a distinct like a feeling. Breathing four is like staring at me. Mm -hmm. Shutters. Crawling like toward you. Crawling, yes. In a very. Spooky. I don't think it would yeah. a four. A four has one leg, so it would just hop around, maybe. Oh, I I would assume that it just has little stick arms and legs, <laughs> just attached oh. to it. Oh. Not not like a. Not just like an actual four. number four. See, in my vision, he's just on the floor. Yeah. Trying to, you know, sort of wriggle around and get toward you because his body is so <laughs> deformed. Four on the floor. <laughs> four on the floor, yeah. And he's pretty poor. Because everyone says, you know, zero, he's fat and stuff, but it's like, well, I mean, he's, you know, he's well rounded. He's work. He's working on it, though. Jesus. I mean, I just, I think he's happy. He doesn't care. He's like, oh yeah, mm. look at all of you guys with your weird fucking body shapes. But I'm the fat one. Okay. If he works out enough, will he become a three? A four. Will he become an eight? Does that imply does that imply that a one is like best you can be? Maybe well, he's just one's anorexic. Not, Maybe she has sure yeah. like those connotations. Because I can Jeez. believe that a one is anorexic, just looking by the shape of it. Mm -hmm. Just a it's just like a just like a line. Well, what about the one that's got the little pointy thing at the top and then the at the bottom Wearing like, a hat. You know, the line across? He's got a big nose. <laughs> What two feet, big feet sticking out either side? Yeah, just to waddle around. I feel like all letters waddle. What with the no legs? Well, zero can a, roll, right? I guess a three could like turn into an M and then move itself by like I you know scampering towards you. Yeah, use, yeah, like a crab legs. in a way. Yeah, unlike like like the that. Japanese it's horror movies thing. where it like it's sped up as it runs towards you and it slows yeah. back down when it gets close. <laughs> Oh, you know the um in the ring when the the creepy girl when she is walking uh towards the the TV screen and comes out. Uh huh. They had her do that backwards when they filmed it, and then they reversed it so that it looked really weird and unnatural. Ah, that makes sense. That's why it looks so. Yeah, that's why it looks so creepy. Hmm. Clever. It just seems to be a trope with them. Like you know, in the in the Grudge, you got the. Upside down crawling creatures, I think, and and stuff, and they'll either do like the reversey stuff, or they'll just sped them up a little bit, so that they're just they're just everything seems wrong. Yeah, just there's something about it that's off. Yeah, they they just they they just did um they shot her in forty eight fps and everybody else at twenty four, so some people would complain. Some people wouldn't notice unless you pointed it out to them, but but some people were like, yeah, there's just something creepy about her. I don't like it. I don't like it. And then they use bits of it for the American remakes, and it's like, yeah, I guess you got that bit. The Ring? Um, well, all of them, right? The Grudge got the American remake. There's probably a whole bunch more that I haven't seen. I haven't seen... There's so many, because I'm not really that into horror movies, especially with all the ones coming out these days that just seem so unappealing and uninteresting, like The Nun and stuff like that, or The yeah. Baba Duke. And I just, like, I couldn't... I could not possibly care any less. Yeah, like, I'm, wonder, I'm mostly not interested in horror films. Um, it's rare. Like, Hill House and Blind Manor, those are, like, weird... Anomalies, you know. It does aren't scary. Well, they aren't rags. They're boring. I feel like that might, like, why I like them is because they're so character focused. Like, there's character work going on. The horror elements, cool. Character, what I'm there for. Well, I think we tried to argue, and maybe we will again someday, that um, it's actually scarier than uh, Hill House because of. The reality of the existence in that house. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that's a totally valid point. When you appreciate episode 5 and what it's telling you beyond the surface in terms of this is what it's like. Yeah. To be aware of what it's like, which Peter is clearly aware. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it doesn't, it's not fun. Ah. <sighs> 
So, how is everybody? Look, Chatzel here. I'm doing great. Things are magical. I'm glad everyone uh, was able to make it today. I'm glad that we're all here. In continuity, uh, they, this adventure. people have yeah. just finished 150 and they're like, whoa, now back to regular episodes. No more of that 24-hour nonsense. Yeah. This yeah, is our grand was... denouement. Um, <laughs> and you know what happened? That, that little sp Spundo man got his, got his trailer come out. Spunder boy, yeah. Iron boy Spunder Jr. boy, and Spunder boy. I don't know how trailers. Strange boy Jr. What happens now? to trailers nowadays yeah. with like the copyright stuff? I'm assuming I can't show it without getting people angry at me, like like um, know, whoever. So I think trailers can cause blooms. Yes. I'll have to put the copyright. I up. imagine they probably can. Uh huh. I think maybe yeah, not all of them, but, but some of them definitely. Dinny. Dinny. <laughs> But yeah, everybody's already talked to death about this thing, but EFAP hasn't. Nope. nope. I haven't even seen it, I've just heard about it. Um, oh, have you oh my goodness. Okay. Oh, you haven't seen it? Down. No, I haven't. Damn. Uh, I don't care about trailers, really. Not in general. Um, I care I about trailers. One's, selective. This one's like, uh, ooh, the thing is dumb, and so people are talking about it. Oh, yeah, I mean... Wow, there's been a lot of conversation on this one, and, like, God, I'm not looking forward to the discourse when this film comes out. It, the trailer discourse has been bad enough. We will talk about that. Um, yeah. Well, in that case, should we, should we play it in full for rags? I, on my end, will mute it and allow the visuals to be seen here and there, and then we okay. can talk about it. How's that? All right, yeah. Yeah, let's, um... Yeah, let's do it. All right, here we go. Three, two, well, I mean, yeah, let's just go. Yeah, that's all right. One of the mini trailers at the beginning you kind of ignore. Oh my goodness, that's so weird. It's like it is weird. Everybody's speculating that Matt Murdock's gonna show up in that scene. And again, the little Yeah. Daredevil fan in me. It's like, oh You got a little devil in disguise there. People not as well. like Spider Man? Well, you know what, we'll we can we'll go over that in a sec. Like, uh, yeah. So much commentary this is just me and you chat, so I don't interrupt them listening to the trailer. There's so much commentary about this this trailer. And, like, I would rather just default immediately to, eh, we'll just wait for the movie, you know? But now we gotta be talking really about like stuff. I really like Doctor Strange. <laughs> wow, Doctor Strange simp. -na -na. There's no sound on purpose yet. Come on, chat. Catch up. Catch up. What was Shang-Chi and the Eternals again? Yeah, I... I <laughs> I don't even know if we're going to talk about those. We're just really like, those are films, I think. Wee, wee, wee. Oh. Wee, wee, wee. Damn, that's quite a powerful thing you could do. But I want it. Don't worry. You got another minute before Rags finishes this trailer. And then we're going to talk all about it. Gonna give it give it a little oh, bit okay. of discussion, you know. Yeah, so that's that's the big uh, old concern face mm. right there, isn't it? <laughs> the big old concern. Please talk about them so I can stay up to date without having to see them. Look, I'm planning on doing that myself. I'm gonna Oh my goodness, it's a train on trains. I'm gonna listen to It oh, looks like a certain like kind of train, doesn't it? I'm gonna listen to Fringy talk about the Eternals From or whatever. Film. Oh! Oh my goodness gracious. Oh boy! Rags, are you hyped? Um... Oh, and the PS5 the controls. PS5. Oh yeah, they look better than that Xbox one that you just yeah. you linked a moment ago. 
Uh, Beautiful. Well, um, it's going to be terrible. Maybe. Maybe. So, <laughs> um, Maybe. I have very little... I. Uh, why is why is why is Doctor Strange the idiot? Why him? Well, so here's the problem. It's going to mean a lot of discourse, and like, yeah, that scene looks bad. We don't have much context at all. Well, if you want no, to, could, could, could if you be... want to mute, so that I'll just play it randomly in the background for visuals yeah. now. Um, yeah, like premise wise, we got like three splits in this trailer. First split is Spider Man dealing with the fact the whole world knows he's Peter Parker. It's like, okay, good. That's yeah, fine. Yeah. yeah. That seems like, all right, I'm on board. And, um, you got some some clips of him and Zendaya hanging out, which means we can, we can probably get developing on that, but uh, who knows how long that'll last. Then it looks like, mm -hmm. as it should, he's getting a re So this is the first topic for discussion, and I'm not naming any names at any point, okay? Yeah. I'm just gonna say I'm fucking frustrated with a lot of the stuff people have been saying about this. So, first and foremost, why arrest Spider-Man? He saved the world. It's like, do we have to watch Civil War again, everybody? Spider-Man killed a superhero, as far as At people least know. Potentially, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, but to, I can understand. Yeah, that he he gets arrested, and then he explains what happens. Well, yeah, and look at all these yeah. drones and what they do, and here's the technology. But as they point and... out, they are your drones. It's like, yeah, it's hmm. going to be complicated to. F thoroughly explain how he definitely didn't do anything to Mysterio, because Mysterio's word against his right now. Yeah, um, so you've got to discredit Mysterio. Mysterio. Can't speak for himself. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot to go over uh, to make sure. And then, of course, there's just the standard, like, I don't know if they're going to bring it up in this movie, but of course, there's just, you're a vigilante. That's also a thing that you're not really supposed to do, but that's kind of complex right now. Because, because the will... The... We don't know about if the Accords even matter anymore, and it yeah. seems like they don't. Which is yeah. annoying. So, like, yeah. I'm fine with him being arrested, and I'm also fine with all of the people who knew he was Superman, uh, Spider-Man being brought in for questioning. Like, so you guys, like, you've been you've been helping him out, you've been doing all this kind of stuff. Like, this this is just normal. That's just normal to me. And so that's yeah. gonna prompt him to be like, okay, it's really bad that the world knows I'm Spider-Man, and I wanted to go back. That that's all fine. That's pretty much the end of the where I'm where I'm in like like I'm engaged in terms of everything's fine. <laughs> mm -hmm. All of that seems to line up. Makes sense to me. Yeah. I've seen complaints that they put him in a handcuff. It's like why would you do that if you think he's Spider-Man? He'll just break out. I'm just like, um <laughs> still Man. gonna just put him in a hand. You, you should jump bad yeah. it looks for him to break out of a handcuff. Yeah, that's the thing. It, it's one of those, you know, this is this is the physical sign that you're cooperating with us, you know? Um, some people suggest that the whatever whatever Fury is right now, be it Faux Shield or New Shield, whatever, should be helping him out. I don't know what exactly could be done against the the local, even federal police at this point, like like or just just institutions dealing with this. I don't know, I don't know if you can just have Fury walk in and be like, "No, nah, it's fine." Yeah, he might have been able to do that when he was a part of Shield, but we're really far along now in terms of. Um, progression of this world so we're gonna have to see what uh what they go with with that but yeah so he's like i want the whole world to forget i'm spider-man which i think you can allow that for peter yep. still pretty yeah. young I think, I think you can yeah he's he's, he's not I, gonna be thinking I about think the implications he, of that i do think that it is fair that he didn't think about the implications of that however Doctor Strange probably should have mentioned these things before he decided to help him out. Well, so, so this is more stuff that frustrates me. Some people are like, have you even seen Doctor Strange's movie? He totally would do a spell, even if it's risky. And it's like, mm. Doctor Strange in, yes. in his movie, most of the rules he breaks is in favor of him getting a greater understanding and more access to power, because he's he doesn't like being limited. Um... And that doesn't, that doesn't mean he's like, lol, I can destroy the universe. He's, the thing is, he's told about the Time Stone being really dangerous, and he still kind of just uses it out of curiosity. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. you've got a little bit to play with with Doctor Strange, but I don't think you can play with it this fucking much, where he's like, yeah, I'll erase Unless everybody's memories. Can. Fuck it. Unless there is, like, some very significant context that we're missing here. And it has like to be significant context. Well, yeah, the problem is, I'm sitting here and it's like, so what are the possible explanations? The first one is that it's not Doctor Strange, it's like Mephisto or something, but yeah. there's, I, like, there's no, that could be the case, but there's no reason to believe that, necessarily. So the other one would have to be that Doctor Strange knows something about multiverse shenanigans that's caused him to think about doing this. 
even though like he, some reason even though there's a line in that trailer that says we you know like frighteningly I, yeah, little no, about I, it I'm well like, the uh... problem is unfortunately dr strange established that there is a multiverse and then loki said nah there ain't <laughs> <laughs> Who are we supposed to listen to, <laughs> Feige? This is a this is a very well written cinematic universe. <laughs> All of their ducks are in a row. They know just yeah, what's we're... going on with each other. It's definitely not a bunch of people who just want to do whatever the fuck they want with their show. Literally, not at all. The Ancient One's dialogue says there's infinite universes, and they're all like, yep. some of them are harmonious, some of them are gonna try and destroy others and stuff. And no, they're like, on. Good job. It's one. <laughs> just <laughs> one. Only yeah. One. Um, um now oh i want to uh, we need to comment on this by the way so oh again well, you've come not, to the right place mm -hmm. not not naming any names specifically but like i've seen Uncle ben. people suggesting <laughs> that it's dumb like oh why are you worried that nobody knows who's spider-man just just tell them that you're spider-man again now i hope that i don't need to tell anybody why that's really dumb Come on, Frank, you have to why that would do it man you know it's almost like you would lose a lot more than just their knowledge that you're spider-man you probably lose all of like your history with them and that's meaningful <laughs> i wouldn't want to lose that every necessarily. piece of history that could in any way relate to you being spider-man Spider post is having told them is gone yeah so like that relationship with MJ is gone. You'd have to rebuild it from scratch. You'd lose a lot with your aunt. You'd lose tons with Ned. And if someone was to that's be like, lot. that's nothing compared to like fixing all of this stuff, and I'd just be like, you gotta appreciate this is mm, Peter's POV, okay? Is, and he is he is like he's seventeen at this point, right? So he's he's still like the Linden. He's so young. He's yeah. young, and but his people's unwillingness to let Peter fail is very frustrating. I thought that that was. I thought we liked it when characters screwed up. In you know, I'm starting believable. to think that people. There are a lot of people who are really biased against MCU Spider-Man for what? really fucking stupid reasons. Really? I, wow. I get, listen, That's I just. Fun. I get this. I get this vibe. I don't want to play armchair psychologist here, or whatever. But I. I just. I'm. I'm picking up the vibes. Mm. Well, you get that impression, but then, but yeah. then something happens in the third part of the trailer. Oh my goodness. Well, I That's figure not... we should probably, just, just to be clear, right, so the Doctor Strange stuff, we think it's really stupid Potentially... that he would do it, however, yeah. there is a chance that he's Mephesto and he's not Doctor Strange, there's also a chance that he's, this is all fake and he's done it as a big yeah. old goof to Peter. What does it, what does it say about the character writing in the MCU currently, where we're holding out hope yeah, that I know. these characters are actually in disguise super evil villains so that it all makes sense what they're doing? <laughs> and and this is the thing, like, um, I'm I'm a little hyper cynical to the point where I'm like, you know what? It's probably not gonna be that it turns out to provide context and makes it make some more sense. There's probably gonna be context that makes it even worse. And we're gonna be like, oh for fuck's sake. Yeah. Like Doctor Strange explicitly says this has a ninety nine point nine percent chance of destroying the universe, let's do it. We're gonna be like, oh for mm. f <laughs> oh, no. Well and of course, why is Wong telling him not to do it? Like what did he say about about it? Was it just that it's dangerous or did he tell him like I guess I'm curious, how does this spell even exist if the multiverse only existed like a day ago? <laughs> how would there because be spells for the multiverse if there was not? It. Because Loki Loki's ruined powers. everything. Yeah. I mean Loki did ruin everything, didn't it? Not to mention, like, Loki I get Doctor Strange yeah. is powerful, but like, man, the power to erase so not only you can't just erase memories, you'd have to do more than that. You'd have evidence oh, have of all evidence, of this stuff yeah. having happened, and you have to get rid of that too. And what does it mean that Mysterio is gone. Like, what? How do people reconcile that in their memories? Like, because that would be a lot. Of yeah, you have memories. to. A lot of work has to be done. Is the short version yes. of, and that would require yeah. significant power. And the implication mm -hmm. here is that the spell screws up because Peter's talking, which is like, there's no way that they didn't talk about this before he did it. You know, <laughs> like, was... well, it's just another mark on the is Doctor Strange actually stupid? Is... Well, that might be a mark against Peter too, in terms of like, shouldn't his oh, first wow. thought regard? Oh, I want, I want these people to still remember me, though. Yeah, you, it, you it would think strange he would have mentioned that explicitly. Yeah, yeah. If you're if you're Doctor Strange and you're doing this thing for Peter, you think you'd say something along the lines of, "Now, I want you to Let's... go home, give it some time, and I want you to think about this very, yes. very carefully." Yep. Yeah, because to Absolutely. convince us that he would do this, Doctor Strange's going to need to see that the world is definitely worse off for knowing that Peter is Spider-Man. 
Or, yeah, that there's significantly. some other... Significantly. Or the other thing would be there's something that we don't know about that has to do with multiverse. Like, there is a possibility that this is all just bullshit. Like, like you said, these could just be the lines that they use for the trailer to, like, mislead. And that there's actually a totally different reason why this is happening, but... I don't know. There's, there's a lot. I'm not sure, but I'm, I can fully buy into that one. Um, yeah, and yeah, like there, are, there are like conclusions being made about this film already, and it's just like we have to wait. A trailer is almost sometimes it's teasing, okay? Well, I mean, I, I think after Infinity War, showing Hulk running with them in Wakanda, it's like guys, like sometimes it's just bullshit. <laughs> like, well, it's just some totally people have theorized that the, the Peter we see opposed to Doc Ock is actually going to be Tobey Maguire, and that they've subbed in Tom Holland for now. With like CGI that's, and stuff. That's entirely possible where trailers just delete people from the footage. It's kind of like in The Last of Us 2 when they put Joel in there and he wasn't in there. Yeah. It's kind of like that. Uh, a little bit, except. That's the th yeah. Well, that's the thing is it's, it's down to motivation, right? One wants to just not spoil the storyline. The other one's like, please buy our game. It has your favorite please character in it. <laughs> yeah, you like favorite Joel, character Joel was you? in it, yeah. Joel's great. You sure do like him. Buy the game because you sure do love Joel. You like Joel. That's gonna happen to him in the gonna, Nothing. I like that. Nothing bad's gonna happen. To him. It's like, why would you say that? <laughs> why would you say that? No, I'm just. Nothing bad's gonna happen. I'm just saying. Um, but then yeah, I guess third act is I, now. I've seen people say that this has too many spoilers. This trailer, and it's like I feel like they showed very little. I yeah. I, I think there's gonna be a lot more to this film than is in this trailer. Well, because there'll probably be a, a full trailer, and I guess my wonder is like, hmm, do I even want to watch that one? I feel like I want to. So wanna, the I'm, reason I'm, why I, I probably know. will is because uh, these trailers, especially, are probably designed to be, have been seen before you see the film at this point. Yeah, the, yeah, of course. The marketing for this film is going to be designed over like a whole year. Yeah, probably. They're going to um, want to run you into the film. It's just that um, there there is like. This this film is so it's funny. We're, we're like it, it's kind of hyped. Like it's it's kind of very hype. But like you got to try and tie all that in. Like I don't know. There's, um, there's a, lot yeah. a lot of these movies. That's just marketing these days. Is it's so well, much hype? I get think, hype. Well, get excited. I don't have any hype well, for fucking other two Marvel properties coming out soon. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm definitely I'm I definitely know. more interested in Spider Man. Shang Chi. Oh yeah. Like, well, and I would I argue like it's not even just about the fact that I know Spider Man is like. Well, I actually care about this particular character and Doctor Strange. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That well, that they have that going for him. Spider Man's in a yeah. good place right now. If they can stick the landing, which is like, oh, are you going to do that? But if Marvel's they do, I'll be very famous for sticking the landing. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I'll be very happy if they do because, like, Spider Man is one of the few characters I'm genuinely invested in in this universe still. Um, they could take that right uh, away. <laughs> well, they could because this movie is clearly going to be massive, like in terms of scope and what's happening. And it's already pissed off many factions significantly. Yeah. We've had but a Soda. taste of the terror that this film will unleash. Well, yeah, because the big, big crazy shenanigans is multiverse. We got Spider Man 2 Doc Ock and Spider Man 1 Green Goblin. And Electro, Tasm Two, apparently Sandman, Sandman will probably yeah. be in it too, and Lizard, and then one more that nobody knows. And the thing is, um, we 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 really pretty much it's all but confirmed. We've got Garfield, Spider Man, and Maguire, Spider Man coming and in. Maguire, yeah. So, do you so, think we're gonna have multiverse Uncle Ben's coming in? <laughs> they team up the Uncle Ben's. We're all the Uncle Ben's who died in the multiverse, and it's <laughs> nothing but thousands and thousands. The Uncle Ben's all realize Ben's. their destiny throughout the multiverse is always to die. Just like this grim reality that all of them have to understand. It's like, yep, you but have to die. Now that Kang is dead, now that oh. Kang is dead, they can live. They they know now that Kang is dead, we know about that somehow. Uncle um, Ben can become Spider Man. Yeah. That's, That's right. right, Uncle Ben. Spider -Man. There is a universe where Uncle Ben goes on that field trip with uh, Peter as a. Uh, I don't know, chaperone or whatever, and he gets bit, mm -hmm. and he makes he makes super spider rice. And he looks in the mirror and says, "With great power comes great responsibility." A lot of people said dead. So when I said a sixth one that is unknown, from what I understand, there is like Sinister Six in this, but nobody knows who the sixth one is. Nobody was meant to know who the other four were either, or three, I guess. 
I think a lot I, more I has think... spilled about this movie than they wanted to. Oh, definitely. I mean, I'm pretty sure they didn't want people to know that there'd be, like, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield. I don't think they wanted that Really all, hard to keep that, that under wraps. Crazy. I would, I, but, yeah. I would... I would almost use that as the the teaser. It's like, oh my goodness, is that? And so I'd imagine the last shot of the next trailer might be the three Spider Mans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how I imagine. The teaser, big epic confrontation with the Sinister Six. Oh no, people are saying Vulture. Wait, oh, uh oh, like, oh, why, why would he be? Oh, uh oh, Bona. That gets me a little nervous. Maybe because. Maybe because he didn't give up Spider-Man, but someone did. He wants to... I don't know. Well, the thing is... I'm not uh, sure why we do it. We're not sure. It can yeah, be I, these I characters know. from any point in history, right? But the problem with that is that, uh... I think Kevin Feige has confirmed, like, Doc Ock has been plucked from, like, the end of Spider-Man 2, and so I understand the Raimi fans' concerns. It's like, wait, isn't he a good guy at that point, though? Like, right at the end? Like, where are you plucking him yeah, from, exactly? Kind of. And then the other concern we've had, which is like, are all of these villains just going to be like, oh, you cracked open the the multiverse? Well, I still want to beat you, Spider-Man. Yeah. I hope yeah. that, uh. well, my hope would be that, I guess the problem is you're going to have a lot of them, it seems, because like, you can see the evidence for a lot of them in the trailer, and it's like, man, do we have enough time? Like, how long is this movie? Vulture and Mysterio in the Lego three sets? Hours. Apparently, I, I've not seen anything for Jake Gyllenhaal coming back. Um, I'm not. Maybe that's the one secret they managed to not maybe. leak. <laughs> I mean, he. Well, I mean, we've talked about it. he might not be dead. Like that's that's always been. Yeah, I and there's so much that's gonna happen in that third act. So much action. So much Spider-Man versus Spider-Man villains. Yeah, it's probably gonna be really crazy. And it's probably going to be really fun, but, you know, you got to, like... <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, I think the initial yeah. few days, it'll be hype as fuck, and everyone will say it's one of the greatest movies of all time, and then it'll die down real quick, and people will start becoming very specific or, on, like, this was a disaster or not. Imagine if it was actually really great, and then nailed the characters. <laughs> like, uh, imagine if that actually happened. Uh, I've been okay, burned too much. Down. been burned too much. Yeah, to... I, I know. I know that's the problem, is, like, at this point, and especially, like, once we, you know, like... Chong Chi's out this week. It could be five for five confirmed very soon. And once that happens, it's like, man, we are just in a dark era for this universe. I've heard it's a triumph. I don't know, like, if we, you know. Everybody keeps saying it's a triumph. Yeah, I have heard and that. And would they lie? I don't think so. Remember when they all well, said that Black Panther was 10 out of 10 and should get an Oscar and stuff? They were right about that. Yeah. And then it nearly did. That was, uh, that was <laughs> crazy. Oof. Then it nearly did. Yeah. And then, this... fortunately, it was Into the Multiverse won an Oscar, and that was that was much, much better. <laughs> Maybe much happier. Um, oh, yeah, the other the other potential is Kingpin might be one of the bad guys in this, too. I, man, the pro- I hear some- it's- there's so many rumors about Spider-Man and Kingpin, like, apparently Kingpin is all but confirmed to be in Hawkeye. And Hawkeye's meant to tie into this film, kind of. So, I... I hmm. Yeah, I, I wonder. And it seems like Daredevil was going to be showing up in other stuff, too. That's, that's like, She-Hulk and that Echo show. Yeah. Man. Um, but everybody else has been left to the wayside, though. Nobody wants to bring her over Iron Fist. <laughs> and, and we're kind of just sort of... Third act stuff. We've kind of accepted, like... But, oh god, I'm not looking forward to having to think about it. Where it's like... So you cracked open mm. the multiverse and a bunch of Sp Peter Parker specifically Spider-Man villains fight Spider-Man. Like what is what in the world will be the context to make this the thing that happens, you know? I guess you could try and lean into like they're not exactly from like the Raimi films or exactly from the Amazing Spider-Man films, but universes where they're similar, you know? You could try to do that. But it almost feels like they don't want to do that. You, you want them to be as close to the originals as possible to tap into that nostalgia. Yeah. Yeah. Or else, and why, yeah. If but they just, were just that's... totally different, why? I mean, marketing exactly. money, but... I could just picture, like, you know, Willem Dafoe and uh, Alfred Molina show up, and they're like, time to fight, and then they're like, the whole world's crumbling apart in terms of the multiverse, and they're both like, oh man, we should probably fix that, actually. <laughs> Instead of having a little fight with Spooderman. Yeah. 
Unless there's some kind of thing, you know, it's like, oh, the, you need the, the multiverse correcting Bloom Juice. I that guess Strange has, and they all need to attack him to get it or something. I suppose that's the conversation, though, is like, yeah, Far From Home, like, plot is, is like, barely holding together, but Mysterio was, was, was great, and Vulture was excellent. So that's, that's something, right? Like, why, why do we expect that, uh, this is gonna be disaster? Or not, why do we expect that it will be disaster? It's like, hmm. But now the phase villains four, twice. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I guess it is the phase four is the corrosive elements. Um, cause I think that's, cause pl I, I kind of don't expect the plot to be good in this one, but if they get the characters right, I'll at least be happy. Yeah, maybe maybe the best that we can really hope for is a Suicide Squad scenario. Yeah, bad plot, but great characters. That's what I'm hoping for. If that's, that's what the MCU just ends up being for years, then you know what? I think I'm just going to fucking take it and count my blessings. Yeah. And someone said uh, Doctor Strange attacks Peter in this trailer. Putting someone into the astral flumps, like, there's so many contexts for that not being hostile. Like, um... Mm -hmm. How do that, we even know that... that that happens with the Hulk That's... and Banner, and so with the End Game, yes. she does it just to neutralize him. So it's just like, yeah, you can. It's fine. Like it would literally be because <laughs> Peter wants to do something, and Doc Strange keeps telling him not to, and then you know, maybe. Um, it's very unclear, and like if Shang Chi fails, if the Eternals fails, but then this is successful, I have no idea what we're supposed to conclude about the state of the MCU. <sighs> I yeah, I, what are they going to mm. do? Are they going to just are they going to have an investment to lean more heavily on the mainstays that they still have? Is it going to speed mm. up more Guardian stuff? Is it going to speed up more Doctor Strange stuff? Is it going to more Spider-Man stuff? That's an yeah, interesting that's thought, thing. isn't it? What would be the consequences if Shang-Chi and Eternals didn't do as well as we we're expected? Cuz do they have to I mean in a in an ideal world they would recognize that, oh, yeah, that's right. We can't just make shit up. We have to, like, actually kind of write some good stuff to get people invested into this. But well, that's maybe not going to will be good. <laughs> maybe. Maybe it will maybe. be good. Maybe the turtles will be a triumph, too. Maybe they'll all be triumphs. There will, there will never be another non-triumph. Yeah, it was just an yeah. awkward, awkward, crumply start to the Phase 4, but now, now, good. Yeah. We got all the bad stuff out of the way. It's all bangers from here on out. We destroyed out. the universe and several favorite characters. Now we can focus on good storytelling. Yeah, now that we've gotten all that out of the way. Um, some people are saying, what about the train bit? Does it look like Stock Strange and Peter are fighting? It's like, I don't really know what's happening I there. I know, yeah. It looks like that train, that train looks like the Spider-Man 2 train, I will say. Looks like the train. I just, I just don't Someone. know. If, I don't know if who's attacking who, oh. or if they're just trying to yeah, make yeah, it sure. through. Maybe it's some kind of weird multiverse traveling thing. I don't know. I think it is because it looks like it's in the Grand Canyon for some reason. It's I like, could picture mm -hmm. them doing a whole sequence with Spider Man's like falling through the multiverse with Strange trying to catch up with him. You know. Maybe yeah, yeah. and then we might be did all of these set pieces from the other films. Yeah. Well, yeah, this movie's gonna probably have really cool visuals in it and a crazy, crazy adventure going through all kinds of stuff, but. Oh boy, will it make any sense at all? <laughs> nope. Probably Please. not. That, yeah. But like, it's just, it, we're all, like, the the thing about it is, we could have gone to see it and it'd been fine, but now we got this trailer, it's like, mm. Now that you've told me some of this stuff, I'm like, oh, I'm more worried than I was before. Yeah. No, not a happy position, but, um, uh, hopefully we can the... get a five. That'd be nice. That'd that's be five. nice if we could get a five, yeah. All right. Yeah, that's, that's about that, really. Yeah, the, the terror, the terror just washes over. It's like it's just what we're. That's it's just where we are watch. now. Five. Well, um, I'll have a look in chat. And ask some questions if you want to know our perspective on anything to do with this trailer. Because I feel like we've covered it, but I just I'm curious if there's anything else because it's uh, it's just being talked about everywhere infinitely, and, and yeah. you got when it comes out, man. Oh. You got predictable takes from a lot of the people who are just fans of a particular aspect, be it Raimi's stuff, or Doctor Strange yeah. as a character, or uh, the I don't know, like the 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 inclusion of multiverse being a thing now and what that means because everyone's doing it. Skeptic as fuck about this um, film, yes. 
As you should be. Thoughts on Jamie Foxx being Electro again for whatever reason? Of all the people to bring back, why the fuck did you choose him? Well, it seems like they're not even... Because he's got, like, the yellow lightning. It looks like they're doing the regular old Electro, which he was not, so... Don't you know? <laughs> I'm Electro. So God, I'm wondering, that was terrible. Yeah, what the... That was really bad. <laughs> what was it? I was like, what were y'all thinking? What were y'all thinking? That movie was good. <laughs> Tasm 2. Ugh. Don't we get fired over that? I love the idea that everyone was like, just tossing ideas of who to bring back. Someone said Electro, no one just had the balls to say no. Everyone was like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. We all liked Electro, right? Yeah. He was, yeah. was alright, yeah. That was a fun uh, time. Electro. Doing a favor for Jimmy and uh, <laughs> shipping. Well, cause he this... really helped us out that one time, so we get to he gets to have a thing in a movie that he likes. The problem is that Jimmy is kind of retarded and he loves Electro, yeah. so... Uh... They need to bring in Bully <laughs> Maguire. That needs to be one of the, the villains, yeah. You, need... you wonder the meme potential of stuff like that and if it means they'll actually do it. Well, because they did it in Into the Spider-Verse, they referenced it, right? Yeah, they did. They did the meme dance. They had a lot of memes in that movie. I... It was a good movie, <laughs> it was very fun. It's just funny it's that every, movie, almost yeah. everyone looks on Spider-Man 3 like... Man, that was a that was a weird fucking part of that movie, you know. Like, when you, when yeah, you... except for uh, didn't High Top say like that it was unironically fun? And I great? I think he did his best to try and defend it. The poor guy was trying. Poor yeah. guy did his best yeah. to defend Spider Man Three. <laughs> but yeah, that like movie is so... you see like electric explosions and stuff in this. It's like yeah, Electro's probably in it too. He'll he'll be shown in the next trailer, I imagine. Probably him and Green Goblin. Maybe not. Or maybe Electro. I don't know. Oh, sorry. You just said that. I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> what, about think... the, what about the landlord who won't fix this damn door? Do you think he'll be in the... Uh... Everyone's hoping he'll turn up. <laughs> Everyone's hoping. Give me reds. <laughs> me... I like the idea that he comes up in the middle of the fight. Hey, give me reds. Hey, well, they have like a, you know, like crying. the hero shot in uh, in the Suicide Squad. You have yeah. that for the villains, and he's just with the Green Goblin and everyone else. Like red. Yeah, or maybe like, like pizza time feels like a meme that we could get in there. You know, like yeah, you could squeeze a pizza time in there. What would be the memes for Andrew Garfield's, like, what What would his meme be? I don't know. Uh, but you do have the, the Andrew Garfield fans who are all hoping that he's taken care of as well. Um, yeah, yeah, I want him to be. Yeah, I want him to be okay. I think he made a good Spider-Man. That Him I, him as Spider-Man was, was certainly not amongst the problems with those films. No, yeah. it was absolutely the material itself, not him. Yeah, I would feel kind of bitter, <laughs> in a way, if I was he, him and I was has, chosen to be the next Spider-Man so, and they fucked it he, up. Andrew Garfield has spoken about how he was unhappy with how he was treated, uh, in the especially films. after the Amazing Spider-Man Two, like well, the way he was treated by the studio. Ah, uh, well, so this um, is the thing. It's going to be like hard. They him or well, uh, oh, it was just like apparently like poor communication. Just um, I I, mm -hmm. I, I can't remember exactly, but Amazing Spider-Man Two was not as successful as it was supposed to be, and oh. um, and then of course. So I think for a time there was like, is he actually going to come back? Because he did say that he wasn't happy with how he was treated. I mean, it seems but like it's. So this is the thing. It goes. I think it goes beyond the studio, definitely. right? This is more of an event. This is um. Yeah. This is like a cultural yeah, thing because because yeah. you look at Doctor Who. Um, Christopher Eccleston refused to come back, and they had to use John Hurt as a. They changed the timeline like significantly to her, and so like everyone was like, why couldn't you come back? It's come back for the fact that. They're combining all of the new Who doctors, which would have been mm -hmm. just an event. But I think he, I think he didn't come back on principle. And now he's back doing audio stuff, so I think he's changed his mind. But in the same way, it's like, oh, we're getting Tobey Maguire to come back. Andrew, can you come on, come on, man? Like this, we only get one chance to do this. Which mm -hmm. the, there's an yeah. interesting irony there in terms of like you had them all on board for the Star Wars, and they didn't put them together. I guess yeah, there's also that's the, the end. yeah, true. That's right, and. Feels like a missed opportunity, and and maybe for there's an element of like, hey, this is like closure. You can get closure on this this character, kind of. Yeah, um, who will come back? It'll be really cool, and then and then that's it, and you can move on. Well, so the the one of the prevalent theories right now is that Tobey Maguire will die in this storyline, and yeah. then Andrew Garfield. We got a big question mark over in terms of. I wonder if they'll implement him to the MCU, or if we're gonna mm. see him again in a multiverse mm. story, or if he'll just leave. 
but we'll get closure on how he's a happy Spider-Man in his universe, you know? Yeah. That would be a nice be universe nice. weird apology yeah. sort of thing, if that's the... Yeah, yeah. That would be nice, actually. Oh. And at least we didn't fuck up your character in a way. At least we were able <laughs> mm -hmm. to give your character something nice, which is something. And I, I'm sure the fans, even people who don't like the Amazing Spider-Man sequels, so Earth, maybe they'd be, you know, maybe they'd be like, you know what? I'm, I'm all right. I'm glad. I'm glad things, you know, worked out. Uh, worked out. I'm not upset. Uh, like I, I don't know how many people really don't like Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man for him. I don't think it's many people at all. I think there are people who are big fans of him specifically he was, um, in that role. He was a big fan of Spider-Man, uh, which is what helped him out with a lot of fans. He was like. It was like his dream role or whatever. Yeah, mm -hmm. man, that is unfortunate to think about how it turned out, isn't it? Damn. Yeah, uh, a lot of actors obviously jump into this stuff and they're like, I don't fucking know who these fucking comic people are, I'm just reading the script. And other people are like, this has been what I've been... Like, David Tennant with The Doctor, he wanted to play The Doctor since he was like fucking five. No, Edward Norton wanted to be Bruce Banner. He was significantly invested in, in doing that. Yeah... And then, yeah, then that didn't pan out. It's getting depressing now. <laughs> <laughs> just about well, all these people who are really passionate and then it just didn't pan out. There's, there's just so many things that could have happened. And, and the place we've ended up in a lot of ways for movies and, and just media in general, it's like, man, it doesn't feel like we're in the upper echelon. It feels like we're in the lower one, but, you know. Yeah, we're, sure. we're in the slump, it feels like. We grab the highlights definitely... where we can. Um, something interesting so, yeah. that they mentioned uh, when I was talking to Az and Gary on Real BBC was uh, the potential for you see a shot of Happy Hogan um, with some guns mm -hmm. on him or whatever. It's like, what if, what if he's Foggy Nelson from the 2003 Daredevil movie? Because <laughs> the I know there's gonna be a lot of people like, what the fuck are you talking about? So the Ben Affleck Daredevil, John Favreau was Foggy in that, and uh, obviously oh, I didn't remember that. So Gross. if if we combine a bunch of stuff, you've got the actor. It would be funny if you you know you did that. Man, I don't feel like they want a reference two thousand three. <laughs> well, that's I the thing. Think were... I think you'll gain way more approval from people when you you do warts and all. You're like, yeah, you know what? That yeah. was a thing in our history. Whole... It's fine. Well, I mean, I'm pretty. It seems like with the multiverse stuff now, the rumor is that somebody from the X Men universe will be in. Doctor Strange too. Like somebody significant. Yeah. Um Well, so I think uh, that's yeah. worth mentioning now. Um we're in a very worrying time for how if this really works, then they're gonna be like, Alright, so Shang Chi two, we're gonna have to bait several cameos in order for people to see this film. Yeah. Cameos is the way to run out of cameos to actual characters. You pro yeah. Well eventually you'll run out, won't you? And, and like, where, how long will it be before they get Robert Downey Jr. to do a fucking voice shit, and then like in a trailer for Spider-Man Seven, you know, Home is the way or whatever, and, and the trailer ends with him saying something. We're like, Iron Man's come back. Oh my goodness gracious! I thought he died, but he didn't actually died. I mean, with the multiverse, the it's almost like I guess you could easily see Iron Man, right? Like, the, just with how this works. There would have to be other Iron Men who survived, yeah. right? It would, it would only make sense. And so, yeah, it gets concerning because uh, the stories are going to mean could a whole lot less soon. Of, uh, could there yeah, be because I, of Doctor Strange is like only? But one what does that even mean if there was a there was only one way that it was going to go? What's the there thing about no infinite, right? Timelines. Yeah, and also infinite. That's right. Yeah, because you know that timeline, but someone had a coffee instead of it. A black coffee or something in the morning, you know, you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, well, now we got two and three, four, and it's just infinite. And yeah. Yeah, and besides, nobody ever believed Doctor Strange when he said there's only one way we win. It's like bullshit. That's bullshit. <laughs> nobody believes you. All you need to do is look at the end game battle to see how many ways they could have won that they just chose not to. <laughs> oh, yeah, one chance. <laughs> if we got Captain Marvel to fly the gauntlet out of here, we would have lost. I could do it. Yeah, Captain Marvel to wear the gauntlet. Imagine they told her. Uh, you know, Captain Marvel, put it on, snap the ball away, and then she's like, I don't want to die. <laughs> oh. I'm, a, I'm a hero, I don't die. I don't want to, like, burn my hand, this is my good hand. Give it to she that guy, the, 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 the old dude. Not let, she would be indestructible. 
Well, yeah, she yeah, is basically wouldn't hurt impervious her. to damage. Well, as we saw, Thanos headbutted her and it didn't work. <laughs> it didn't do anything. It, just, it was like a dunk. She's a powerful <laughs> being. Um. So yeah, that's that, I suppose. There's not much else to say. Uh, we will obviously check this movie out when it comes out in... Assuming December, if not delayed. I don't know if... Well, so, from what it seems... Uh, if Shang-Chi doesn't do as well as I want, Eternals will get delayed, and I don't know if that will affect Spider-Man, because it's Sony. They might still keep it. I guess for them it will be Venom. How does Venom go? It seems like we're in that weird time where it's like, hmm... Nobody really knows what the limits of anything are anymore. Well, I think the thing is, is because Black Widow's shared release makes things complicated where Shang-Chi is just theaters so that will t and and the rest of these movies are just theaters so that'll give us an indication I guess like it's gonna I mean, pan uh, out. yeah Shang-Chi and the Eternals if they both come under their um their hoped sort of stuff it just, just feels like we're gonna be switching gears hardcore yeah what happens well because I guess they're in this weird position where it's like for the MCU to have long-term sustainability, they need to introduce new characters who people like um, and will want to keep seeing. So, like, yeah, you kind of need these movies to do well to make sure that people yeah, are going to yeah. stick around, you know? And maybe maybe Shang-Chi is a cool guy. We'll have to see, maybe but, like, cool yeah. you're worried when watching the Eternals trailer, like, is anyone in that going to be able to sort of stand out and people be like, oh, I really love that guy. He's really good. It feels like I guess, yeah, and that, that film has, like, ten main characters, it looks yeah. like. Yeah. So, I know but it's all ensemble great. cast, but, but surely you need to focus on a couple of them, right, to be, like, the well, main it, guys. Yeah, because that's the thing. When, when you're like, oh, we got, like, two hours to spend on one person, so, of course, they should be well-realized. But then it's like, they fucked with... Like, Captain Marvel is a nothing. No one cares about her at all. Not even people who are fans of her. And then you got Black Widow. They destroyed in the two hours they gave her. That's true, yeah. Like, they're the... Solo movies, sort of, where we're at. Like, it's just like, yeah, you, you, will Shang Chi be, become someone that we want to see in future? Or well, we'll be like, well, that was a film, I guess. I, I get the impression that the base story of Shang Chi is incredibly conventional, and that feels like a good thing to me. You know, just like do something straightforward. Like, I just want to be a good man who does good things. Like, if you do, because you know, if you've done that, you're doing better than the MCU has been doing in Phase Four so far, where they're not good people. Like, yeah. They're actually pretty villainous. If he's a good guy, then like that's something at least. I like that. If just, the hero was a good person, that'll be that'll be nice. And I wonder if they'll actually have a throwaway line in this for why Doctor Strange didn't deal with WandaVision at all. You kinda of wonder where even is this film in relation to the three shows? Uh, oh ones. right. I think the time from what I understand isn't the timeline that like Far from uh Far from Home was after WandaVision and uh Falcon Winter Soldier. I think Falcon Winter Soldier was six months after the snap and it was oh, okay. eight in in Far From Home. And I'm guessing that this is pretty shortly after Far From Home. Which means we really do need Doc Strange to account for that. Well I guess Well Yeah. <laughs> when does Loki sit? That's the problem. Like where because Loki is in this weird place it's directly after endgame kind well, of technically loki sits when, both before and after right like it's weird things that way because yeah i, I don't know I don't remember know. they're at the end of time when they kill kang which means everything going forward from the end of time is like uncontrolled but then everything from all time is splitting off everything yeah it's like, new time oh. it's like new coke it's just, it's just kind of, splintered yeah. everywhere mm. Just stop watching or buying their crap, this will end. Uh, I don't think so. So, we don't have the power as three people. Like, it significantly influenced the profitability of the most successful film franchise in history. We do, however, have the power Maybe... to criticize it. Yeah. Maybe we can get Doctor Strange to cast a spell. The MCU Where never everything... existed. The, the MCU, MCU just existed. didn't happen. Yeah. Think of... It does make you wonder what what kind of what are all of the movies that would have been made if the MCU didn't happen? There was no superhero stuff. It wasn't an interest. It wasn't quite in vogue again. Um, it just the, the movies didn't do that well. We get one here and there, but what would Disney be doing? Prime Wars, Star Wars, maybe. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I, they I, fucked I, that I up too. What... <laughs> 
the problem is i don't know what disney because like at this point disney don't make a lot of original like live action films anymore you remember when they used to like they used to kind of make new live action films that were based on new ideas what? Don't do that much anymore because now it's just all remakes i don't even like... know which ones you're referring to so i remember in like the early in in the 2000s there were oh, like, like the, the were princess a... one where the she comes to the real world and she used to be a cartoon yeah yeah that was enchanted right i was almost was gonna that. say enchantress i was like wait no the suicide squad enchanted. that was enchanted remember the titans somebody mentioned in chat that was one um tron well tron i mean that's a sequel but like that's a sequel to a film that was like 35 you know and one sequel i don't want to count tron because they wanted to they wanted to turn tron into a franchise that's kind of different damn now i remember it's, liking now it's tron. i liked tron legacy i thought it was okay but i haven't seen it i haven't seen it in ages now, yeah. yeah i <laughs> can't right. remember much about it i guess I, pirates of the caribbean feels like oh right, well people starting to just mention animated films i'm well prince of persia adaptation but again it's like that's something compared to what we're doing now where it's remaking the old animated ones and it's only a matter of time until they start like remaking the ones that don't seem so old like tangled they'll probably make that a live action thing i i get worried about if they're gonna live action pixar movies though that scares the hell out of me <laughs> yeah when we get That's one of nightmare. them it'll be uh, the fears will have been like realized finding nemo but with real fish <laughs> like the lion king real realistic looking clown yeah, fish you know how expressive fish are right yeah with all those facial expressions all one of them Hey, that's that's one more than zero. How do you feel? Swim. Swim. I mean, it seems pretty, pretty sure there's like seven or eight live action films from Disney that's coming out in like the next two years alone. God damn it. What is going on? Do we not care? They're going to come for Emperor's New Groove and like Treasure Planet. They're going to come for those ones. Yeah, Don't they you are. Worry. There is, They're um... definitely going to uh, yeah, and and then there's this the the almost the hope of fatigue now. You're like, please, mm. normal audiences, please. Fatigue, but like, they're making more money than they did before. It seems to be getting like Aladdin, Lion King, immensely successful. Yeah, people clap at anything. So fuck it, keep pumping them out. Yeah, What's the thing? Like, uh, no treasure planets, like they will. Don't worry. Had Black Widow come out it. right after Endgame with the non-pandemic stuff going on, you wonder how much money it would have made. Probably would have made a billion dollars. That, that wouldn't surprise me. Or maybe, is, maybe a little less than that, but yeah. Which is why I imagine they're not even going to risk putting Spider-Man on streaming this time. They're going to be really. I don't good. think. No way. You you want to get that in theaters? People will go to see Spider-Man. Yeah, this is going to be the ultimate test, isn't it? Like, because this is a big name. Yeah. Got all of they've done everything right, marketing and cameos, and mm -hmm. everyone's talking about it. Raimi stuff is coming back. So like, yeah, we, everything's playing in, in line for us. So if this doesn't work, then uh, we have to just have a huge board meeting. The day they do a Lilo and Stitch live action is the day I die inside. I got bad news for you. That's definitely happening. I got, definitely. Yeah. It's yeah, I'm pretty sure it's already been announced. That's happening on Disney Plus. Yay! Well, yeah, we didn't even watch, watch the Lady in the Tramp live action. Live action. Oh, that's that. Yeah, that oh, was yeah, that one. Right. Too. Yeah, they did. That. And we watched the sure trailer. They're doing, they're doing like Peter Pan. Yeah. And that's that's going to be on Disney Plus as well. I can't wait for Wendy to show Peter Pan that she's a real hero and he's actually shit and. <laughs> She, yeah, she you know that. You know the name Wendy was invented for Peter Pan. Nice. Really? I don't know. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I, I think he. Uh, I think he made it up for that. Uh... Oh, man, huh? And then when Americans say it fast, it sounds like Wendy. Wendy. Good old oh, Wendy. Wendy. Very Wendy. It's very Wendy over here. Very Wendy, eh? So that's that. Um, we, yeah. as you can see, we're hyper positive about all of this. It was funny um, when when I talked about real BBC hyped, with yeah. uh, Gary and as the one of the one of the comments was like, "Let me guess, you guys hate the trailer because you guys hate everything." And it was funny because <laughs> like the thing was, it's like, yeah, it's hype as fuck. But I mean, why would we just be like, oh well, let's ignore all the context around all of it. Let's ignore any potential storylines going to shit with how they've explained it in this trailer. Let's just celebrate that we see Doc Ock. Woo! 
Yeah, like, uh, as if that's enough. Well, as if not that's enough. ever been what we do. <laughs> it's, just, it's not it. Um, yeah, there's, there's so much reason to have worry over this film. And we will wait until it comes out, of course. And we'll probably have a fucking 10-hour EFAB talking about all the plot lines. This one's going to take a while to break down, I'd imagine, with the amount of crazy shit that happens in it. Yeah, probably. <sighs> I'm looking forward to seeing Strange and Peter interact. I'm looking forward yep. to seeing the fun multiverse stuff. Looking forward to, 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 to the good stuff. Hopefully good stuff coming in. I don't know how it's going to handle in total, but yeah, we'll, we'll have to yeah. see. Spiderman. Spiderman. Which, um... Yeah, that leads us to I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, read us we're gonna, we're gonna spend the rest of the stream trying to catch up with super chats from 150 because of course 150 was um, a big flump. We, we, it was like 20. How many hours was it in total? Actually, not 20. disregarding the breaks. Oh, right, it was like 24 and a half, I think. 17. What did they say? 23. It's like 24 and 20 minutes or something like that. So. Uh. The closest we actually came to the amount of time it's supposed to be. Because the first one we did, Rags, was 29 hours. Do you know that? Episode 50? The first one? Yeah. Hmm. And the second one was 20 or well, 30 hours, I think, or 31. I can't remember which was the nightmare. But, man, man, do you just, you just really want to go to sleep when you get to that point, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's uh, oh, 29. That's asking a lot, guys. Yes, it is. Um... What I'll do is we'll combo up today's ones with Streamlabs, and we'll get them done, and then we'll just jump right into the to the rest. Um, yeah, let's do it. It's gonna be great. Uh, we may have a Germanman joining us at some point. I don't actually know. He, he I believe he is the busy potentially. Um, I'm sure he missed. Talk, he wanted to talk about some Spooderman as well, but it's too late for that. Yeah. Missed the opportunity. No more talking about Spooderman. Um, grab you. What what Lego game are you playing? <clears throat> I'm actually gonna play some Factorio. Oh boy! Yeah, crazy. Breaking oh, all the actually, rules today. So I've just seen it. I've seen a trailer pop up of my YouTube feed. Doug Days starring Doug from Up, Disney Plus. Oh, yeah. man. Man, I don't know. I I like Doug. He's, Every he's character a good boy. gets the show now, you know. He's a good boy, but I I get, and I'm not even like that big of a fan of Up. I I like Up, but yeah, I think Up's a little it's... overrated. Um, yeah, but like even this upsets it. me. Kind of, I, uh, I don't know. Like it's it just it shows their mentality. Yeah, just, just everyone, like... everything, just pump it out, make the shows. Well, what if it's great, um, guys? Like... Mm -hmm. It could be, be great. I'll be shockingly surprised. It could be great, but I guess it's just why. I don't know. Could, would I, I guess that's because I'm sitting here and it's like, what if like you actually got Pixar to just make a whole original show? You know, like just have them make a show that isn't you know a sequel to anything. Right. Well, yeah. Are they allowed to do that? You're confusing me. Oh. Uh, Man, hmm. Yeah. Um, so, starting from today's, we got a wonderful little Molly you gay. Uh, so, oh wait, that wasn't the first one, it was High E Fab as High Rags. There you go. Ooh, hi! Hey. The but second one gay? was Molly you gay. Well, I mean, I think, what were the rules? This, whoever says I'm gay at the time, it'll, it'll be like a timer, so I'm gonna be gay for a while now, depending on... What happens next? We'll have to see what, what, hmm. where it goes. Hello, Fringy, Mauler, Bra Oh, great. Just great. Oh, Hyper gayness. Okay. Hello, Fringy, Mauler, and Rags in chat. Hope everyone's having a great day. Looks like we're going to get nothing but he's arrogant to justify Strange. That... Uh, that's not um, enough for me. I don't... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to go that route. And I wouldn't buy it if they did. Going to have to do better than that, yeah. Arrogant. It's like, mmm... Because what is what is uh, his sort of appeal to this? Like, oh, I can't wait to fuck around with the multiverse. Like, is that it? Mm. That doesn't seem very good. No. Um. When Spider-Man comes out, do you think Hassan's chair will watch it? Hell yeah. 
<laughs> He'll be there in the theaters, sitting there with his popcorn, <laughs> eat, like watching the show. Um, I can't describe in words how much I despise the stupid damn nano suits. Well, I mean, it, uh, I, I'm, Spider-Man's I really one's like not him, really no. the the one I have a problem with. the The Ant Man one I get confused by. I don't know how he has nano yeah. tech. Um, but well, Iron like, Man. Tech it is, yeah. Like, Iron Man's got nanotech, and then he builds a suit for Spider-Man. It's like, I don't know, I guess it would be nanotech. Uh, at least the Iron Spider. Um, I'm okay with it. Yeah, like that one... But I do prefer the normal suit. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of discussion about the suits, and it's just kind of like, I don't know, what are we supposed to do about this in terms of, like... What I... Well, I will say, what I don't like about the suits is we got to show the actor's face. we gotta, we got to take that helmet off. we got to take that mask off all the time to show the actor's face. It's like... Nah, can we not do that? Can we just have them? Because why would you ever take? A, I, yeah, I don't know. If it was, if it was like almost you're losing the element of, like it's something you wouldn't do in a video game because the recognizability of an actor's face is irrelevant. Like for whatever story purposes you have, it feels like a movie thing. Got to see their face. Can't just have them in costume. Yeah, but we're definitely yeah, at that a point. Bit of a pet peeve, though. Yeah. Yeah. Is a shame. How do I make these? I have forgotten a lot about how to control this game. Chat, be ready to be disappointed in how I play this game because I've I, I don't remember it. We won't hold it against you, okay? Your Aww. factories are poor. Aww. So hey, mean. Oh, mean. Well, that just say, Rags. Well, you said we, but I guess Rags doesn't feel as though you speak for him, you know? And that's just no, that's that. I yeah. will. I look down upon your factories. Oh my god. What do I need for this? Iron plates. Alright. Actually, no, it's not that. Oh, metal. How'd you get in here? I, was gonna I opened the door. Terrifying. It was terrifying. I was going to say, why is there such a draft? You know, this is old air command. Oh, by the way, I, we did talk it. about it, but I posted the statistics there for the HBO movie. Max movie releases for the first 17 days. Mortal Kombat, 5.5 million U.S. households. Godzilla vs. Kong, 5.1 million U.S. households. The Suicide Squad, 4.7 million U.S. households. Wonder Woman 1984, 3.9 million households. Zack Snyder's Just League, 3.2 million households. And then The Conjuring, I don't care. The Conjuring, yeah. So the Suicide... So that means The Suicide Squad was the best debut on the service really oh that's good i like that oh, oh no sorry the best debut of all the dceu films sorry it's the third best behind godzilla and mortal kombat I still see. not bad well yeah better than the rest of the dceu films and one hmm that's interesting to think about is not a matter of hbo max has grown significantly since wonder woman because wonder woman was when like that whole ever like theaters were all closed. It was like in full swing that you couldn't go watch movies, basically. So that's oh. interesting. I think I I think that's. I just wish I lived in the world where we had the clear numbers on like how well or badly things actually did, like in non COVID yeah. conditions. Like how badly did Wonder Woman eighty four do? Because, dude, like just regular movie going people like don't like that film. Most of them don't. It seems like very few people are fans of that film. Which one, sorry? Uh, like, Wonder Woman 84. Right, like, a right. lot of people just find that film weird and stupid. <laughs> it is <laughs> weird and stupid. stupid. It is weird and stupid, but I mean, yeah. like, even to an extent where it's like, regular people are like, this, dude, this movie's strange. Like, I don't know, <laughs> something <laughs> wrong with it. Mortal Kombat is the interesting one. Like, it was so successful on HBO Max. Wait, we had fun with it, right? Kinda. It was, yeah. well... Yeah. Kind of, like, <laughs> I, I do wish that Kano or Johnny Cage was the instead of this this new fan character who killed Goro with his little shit. sticks. Yeah, that was that shit. was so lame. <laughs> really, and like Sonya Blade like killing Kano and then fucking Katana, not Katana, Molina. Like, yeah, lame. Yeah, for a movie that's trying to be cool, there was a lot of lame shit in there. Yeah. Kano was awesome, though. That he was. I just want the movie called Kano, where it's him going on adventures through the nether realm. <laughs> Hanging out with Cabal. Maybe it could be a buddy cop thing. 
they're trying to be good guys and it's really difficult. No. <laughs> you can't help but kill they're people. They're just trying their best. <laughs> mm. Do better. That's right, do better, Kano. Yeah. It's like, I already did the best I could. Well, that isn't good enough. Like, when he fought Lizard, that was, that was awesome and just... Reptile? Yeah. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Lizard. Why does I think of Spider-Man Reptile? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um... It's all a trailer. It makes me afraid that Doctor Strange's character... F makes me afraid for Doctor Strange's character remaining intact. Yeah. Yeah. Perfectly fair fear. That is the fear that I think, uh... Yeah. We're all just gonna be sitting there. Rocking back and forth, like, please, <laughs> don't do this. No, no, don't do it. Don't you have a this. choice. It, it was like that. Oh, another South Park an reference. Option. Choice was never an option. Not in Kang's world. No. <laughs> uh, Kang's I world. Turned 21 yesterday. I have some birthday money. Also, hi, Fringy. Hi, Mauler, and hi, Rags. Hello. Oh, hey. Oh, happy birthday, dude. Happy birthday. Please, God, don't let Daredevil be in No Way Home. They might ruin him like Strange. Yeah. Yeah, so, I'm of two minds. On the one hand, I've, I've said this so many times, I like the legitimacy of, like, yeah, Daredevil happened in this universe and it counts, but I get very worried about the future, <laughs> like, of having these characters be in, like, Phase 4 and onwards. Mm -hmm. That gets me concerned. It's, um... I doubt they do the Daredevil show. You know, like, that doesn't feel like something that they would have in the MCU. You know, like, that, not something that they would do on Disney+. Plus, like a Daredevil yeah. show. Because it kind of... You've necessit... I would say that if you want to be comics accurate or, you know, try to lean more into it, then you need to go more mature. But it's been established as mature. So to have it just go to, like, PG-13, no blood, no anything controversial would be, like... Be surprising. Yeah. I, I do wonder if, like, Daredevil's gonna count, does that mean Punisher's gonna be? You think they'd bring him in? Um... Yeah. Hmm. But if they did, would he just be, like, really chill and normal? Like, he punches people and they fall over and you're like, eh, hey, Punisher. Well, yeah, it feels like we're not <laughs> yeah. really taking advantage of Punisher at well, all. Well, maybe they could just have T'Challa talk to him and Calm him he down. could become a much understanding guy and he'd chill <laughs> out calm down and he'd see the world in a different way have a different perspective on things maybe all it takes is one good argument yep mm -hmm. thank you T'Challa fucking Chris Pratt I wonder if he's seen that what if episode I wonder if James Gunn has seen it. Do you reckon he would be like, oh my god, that was so cringe. Yeah, it was great. It was great. The... <laughs> it was so awesome. We've got so many creators doing so many different things. Wonderful. It's so great. Imagine the possibilities. It's all equally good. Liked the Black Widow review, Meowler. Favorite parts are all the cameos with Jay's Tismy rant being the best. He really evoked the quotes confusion. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's because Jay was confused reading it, or if he wanted to sort of give that impression off, but that- the quote he read was so fucking terrible. I mean, all of them were really, like, mm. different reasons and stuff, but yeah. Oof. Hey, she maybe just got away, kind of. Like, that makes sense. Yeah. Sort of go with it, it's fine. It makes some sense, maybe- no, no, I didn't think, no. <laughs> we tried. Um... Howdy, EFAP. Just want to congratulate on three years and thank you guys for helping me stay sane through graduating college. Hey. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Congratulations. That. Um, getting ready to start a Homeland Security career, and I hope you keep up with y'all's epic as fuck content. Also, hello from Texas yeah. Rags. Oh, hello. Texas. Well, I don't plan on going anywhere. Yeah, I'll hang around for a bit longer if you guys want. Like a few years, a few decades. Great. Yeah, fine. There we go. Oh, look at my first tiny factory. I'm I'm learning. When I started up your stream for a second, I thought you were playing Dune, like this super old Dune game. I don't even. I wouldn't even know what that is. I'm playing so, a really cool game. Cool Where? When, you're doing, when are you doing that? 
right now. Look, it's a cool game. I got wood powering my little arm thing and coal powering that, and then it's coal wood in here. Gosh, I'm just so good at doing things. Oh, you have a you have a wood powered arm too? Yeah. Burn the wood and your arm can go whoa. 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 Uh, Look where it's going. Hi, search Shiba Inu Candy Taiwan. Rags is made into candy. Really wild. Also high rags. Wow. I'm made of candy. Hello. Rags is pretty sweet. Makes sense. Oh. Uh why are we talking about Spooderman when Spider Man is coming out? Would that spell also erase his identity from the Avengers? Uh, I'm a, mm, yeah. I, 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 that's, you know what, that's a fair question. If, if he's gonna be like, I'll erase it from everyone, you're like, oh. Yeah. You might have some significant results doing that. I don't know, you gotta be careful, Mr. Strange. Very strange thing you're doing there. Get it? There you go. Why is Doctor Strange acting so weird? <laughs> Hopefully we'll find out. Cause you really hope they're not just sort of being like, eh, fuck it, Doctor Strange would do this. Like, would he though? No. I think you, you're, you're, um, you might just be using him here to do the thing that you want him to do, which is not a good. Mm-hmm. None of us want that. Stop it. I want, mm. I want a little bit. No, you don't. Look. You're ruining it. Sorry. Hmm. I can't remember how these work. I just have to do a lot of, uh, a lot of experimenting with this. Why is shield? Wouldn't shield be able to explain that he's in the clear? Shield's not a thing. It's that very complex. We're gonna have to figure out. Well, we're gonna have to see what they say about everything in this universe in terms of what's happening. It's gonna be rather I'm sure complex. It'll be great. Oh yeah, they'll explain it thoroughly. It's not like they're busy doing other things in this film right now. Can... No, no, no. It's gonna be great. I'm sure this goes without saying, but holy moly did Meme do a fantastic job with the Snyder Cut. Please give that man, oh, that yeah. saint, all of our appreciation, also high Rex. Hey there! Oh uh, yeah. I I'm told sorry. him he's a good fleam when, when that was over. Oh, that's nice of you. I didn't plan to watch it all the way through, but I was just lying in bed watching. It's like, oh, I'm not going to watch it all. <laughs> yes. It's, uh, it's quite a journey. Yeah. So much. It's, it's That was a long project. Hope you guys enjoyed. Not, not like I'm threatening it'll never happen again, but a four hour and... What was it? Four, four hours, like 15, 20, something four like that? Four hours! Yeah, see? He's a big boy. Mm -mm -mm. A good big boy. Biggin. Alright. I got me some pipes. Let's have her look here. Put her ear. The pain! Hmm. <laughs> yeah, the, the one part where the background is all just like, pain, pain. Poor guy. Shit. Is that? Does the water come through even just when I do that? All right. I mean, you know, I, don't, I ain't judging. Just saying. Not judging. What the fuck? Wait. There's no water here. That's a fucking lie. Unless, uh, we'll we'll find out. To be clear, the inciting incident isn't really just Peter taking, talking during a spell, right? There's no way they do that, right? Mm. <laughs> I don't know anymore. <laughs> we can't be sure. It makes me sad that we can't be sure. Honestly. <laughs> mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, what are you gonna do? It's just like, well, that's what we're faced with being the potential right now. Oh and like, my. you might be like, oh no, I have the confidence the writers wouldn't do that. It's like, I'm afraid I don't. Um, <laughs> so we'll have to see. Um, do you catching up with the Batwoman content? Love y'all. You should react to Arrow season one. CW assassinated Oliver later on, but in season one he was a good character. I don't believe that. <laughs> Not even in season one that he was a good character for you, I, really? I don't really believe. I hear people say that Arrow season one is good, and I I imagine it has a lot of similar problems to like the current stuff in terms of structure and plotting. <clears throat> And just dumb things about them that I don't like personally. But wow. yeah. Ever think that maybe you hate too much? Hey, look, alright, there's still Spider-Man. Why are you choosing he's, to be blinded he's... by hate? <laughs> he goes on fun little adventures. Oh, I'm gonna need copper. Alright. Always with I can the give you some poop. I have some poop here. I, I honestly I appreciate that, but I, I just 
poop wasn't really what I was looking for, but I, I understand. Um, okay. Yeah. Molo, they're saying that you need a pump. You need to respect the pump, all right? I get the you pump. Gotta, you, gotta, you gotta invite the pump into your, your life. I grab the pump. You gotta, because whatever pumps, you gotta pay respect. <laughs> respect. <laughs> it's such a funny quote. Respect <laughs> the pump. Like, it's just the way he says it. Bump. 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 Yes, bump. With the bump, bump. it up. Uh, hi, Malorn Fringy. On a scale of one to stupid, how bad is Doctor Strange? Also, high rags. We don't know. No, I think they're I, talking about yeah, the movie. We, we don't know yet. Oh. We don't know yet. Well, they might be talking about Is the movie. Eight, nine. Oh. Why? Oh, the movie Doctor Strange. If they are, yeah, one to stupid, it's like. Mm. Well. Um. I don't Doctor Strange seemed well. pretty. Like, he made. I don't remember making really dumb decisions with Doctor Strange. Well. What what about the movie? The movie's oh, called the Doctor movie, Strange, the, so... I, I, I see now. Yeah, the movie is pretty dumb. Like, there's a lot of things wrong with it. Oh, I didn't man. like it, but yeah, it's it's the magic system. We we just do not care at all about making it make sense. Yeah. Um, I thought we were talking about the Spooderman. And... I th well, they might be. They could be all three. So if it's Spudamon, it's, it's he's in danger of being very stupid. Him in his movie, I don't I remember him being that stupid in his movie. There's a couple of bits. Main one is how stupidly he doesn't use his portal in the mirror verse when he's being chased by Kaecilius. Yes, that was embarrassing. Really dumb. Um, uh, there might be other stuff, but then the movie itself is pretty dumb. Like the the, the Kaecilius yeah. motivation was really fucking lame. Mordo is like assassinates himself as a character right at the end. You got somehow uh Kaecilius can pull himself out of being rewound in time. I'll never understand that. Somehow, yeah. There's 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 some stuff, yeah, if that's what you're asking. He's that good. He's that good. Um also Rags, any opinion on Guild Wars 2 End of Dragons expansion? No. No. Oh. I hope it's not full of weeb shit. <gasps> <laughs> Don't say that. How could you say that? Do you not like the weeb? No, I don't. Damn. It's pain. Weebish pain. pain. Wait, what's happening here? Why aren't you getting me more stuff? Oh, have you ran out of... What a useless drill. Ooh. There you go. Get me more. Oh, I need to make more of these. All right. Isn't Spider-Man well known for working with Iron Man? And wasn't Iron Man beloved by people? So why would the public turn on Peter? Because he's apparently killed a hero. I don't know why this is hard for everybody. Like, mm. what? How did you guys react if you found out who's like the most beloved? So if if fucking Keanu Reeves had Black killed Widow. like who else is beloved? Morgan Freeman. Like it, it would put everyone like everyone would be like, fuck. What did he? What did? He, and if someone's like, well, we like Keanu Reeves, I'd be like, um. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear the part with the killing? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Feels a little bit awkward. Why are you seeing that? So, um... Yeah, I, I'd have a lot of concerns. I'd be like, man, this is not, this is not looking good. I, uh, I, so I understand. And, you know, Mysterio would have gained a shit ton of fans. You know, passionate ones. So, um, it's a matter of getting all of the truth out. I just don't know what the timeline is. I don't know if it's easy for Peter to prove everything about Mysterio or not. Mm. Maybe, if if he's got all of the stuff, but like that's got to get out there. And there's still going to be people who will be like, I don't believe you, Mysterio is a good guy. Still don't believe it, yeah. I mean, exactly. Um. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Hello there. Please pass this 20 along to Meme for his fantastic work. It inspired me to actually make the DCEU Superman slash Jesus imagery breakdown. What I've seen so far is oh either superficial God. as fuck or fundamentally broken. Oh boy. Um... I mean... What, I, was about to th I was thinking to myself, like, well, how could it be anything else? It's just random crosses and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? So, so hollow. Yeah. It's, it's like, oh, it's so meaningful. He put his arms out. He's like a... He put yeah. his arms out. He's, he's like, like a Jesus. Yeah. He's like a Jesus. A Jesus. A Jesus. He's not like those other ah, Jesus. Jesus. Um, Woo, something to listen to for my seven-hour run. Happy air horn noises. 
Oh. Can't go wrong with an air horn. Maybe you can actually. I'm just unaware of it, you know. Maybe if it's like an air that bites you. No, oh, no. Probably wouldn't want to use that one. That would be horrible. Yeah. Wouldn't want that. Go away, tree. Whoa. Yeah, sorry about that. I didn't mean to sound so aggressive. That's... I don't agree with that. I need more pipes, so he does. Ugh. Pipes. Can... Gonna need more other things too. Um. Great. Assassinating characters is what the MCU does best. Right now, yeah. Pretty good. Pretty good at it, yeah. It is. Um, it's if, a... that's, if that's a niche they want to carve for themselves, they're doing a pretty good job, yes. <laughs> We're the ones that are really good at doing that. You're like, that's so great for you. That's good. Hmm. Happy you found something. Um. And yeah, I, this is the thing. That's what built up the MCU. It wasn't just relying on household names. It was they did character work. People were like, wow, I actually care about these people. That's neat. Mm -hmm. Not anymore. Or at least... Spider-Man! Yeah, we... <laughs> Not for the foreseeable future. Hello, everyone. I got your plushies Hi. for my one-year-old. I'll send a picture of the, with them. I want a Fringian metal plushie. Random question. Why does everyone oh, say know. also high rags? Also high rags. Hi! Oh, oh my god. Why do they say that? That's EFAP, what, 7 or something? You can find that out. Tale early. is all this time. Yeah, you, 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 you can't be told why that happens. You have to go and search it out, which you can find on, like, efap.me and other assorted things. Yeah. You know what? We hadn't mentioned that. We probably should. For those who don't know, me and Rags are running a plushy campaign, as they are called. And uh, Yeah, I guess just to be sure, yeah. They're, um, you know, some of you guys may not have heard about it yet. The cuddly little Mubshly and Raggles toys. They're, um... That's true. This guy, he bought one, the Super Chatter, right before you. Uh -huh. And he loves it. He's already, he's already happy. <laughs> Incredibly satisfied. With, um, with the Rags one, you get an adorable doggo. It's all soft and cuddly. And with, with the Mola one, you get an eldritch horror that can watch movies with you. I don't see what else you'd need at that point. You've got the two ends of the spectrum. It is actually cuddly. They they made one of each as prototypes and sent them to us, and it is incredible. We can it's confirm amazing. the cuddliness. They mm. are shockingly gorgeous. They're very friendly. They don't hurt you. Um, so yeah, Actually. if you're interested in these things, you've only got ten more days before they run away from the internet forever. I think the way that works is they lock in a number, and then they just stop production in like a big old plushy factory, and then they send them all out. Um, they come in nice little boxes as well. You would think that a plushy factory would be very soft, but it's probably just like a regular not, factory. It's probably just yeah, it's probably just a what? regular factory. Yeah. I thought they were like like soft and shit. You yeah. never know. That would be fun though. Mm-hmm. If the whole thing was like carpeted and it had felt <laughs> everywhere. I've got it's my like, pair. No accidental no accidents because every time someone falls over, so it's like, oh, that's nice. No accidental discharges from the plushies. You no, that can that. still that can still happen. Oh, kind um, of gross. Yeah, uh, get yours today. Unfortunately, the links aren't in the description. I guess they will be on the re-upload. Okay, you can use that. But oh for now, you can just search. I think Muller and Rags plush into Google will literally pull them up. And I think we're on the front page of Makeship right now. So there, you can find yeah, us. Yeah, I think Look at so. Us. Makeship .com. And you'll see us there hanging out. And of course, if you pick them both up, you get a 10% discount for the 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 EFAP Generation 1 collection. I mean, it's wonderful. One implying other generations to come? Well, the thing is, I was, I'm was i more than happy to consider a Gen 2 if we got the 100% funded. We're at 800 and something percent funded, so it seems people like these things. So we will consider more, I imagine. <gasps> Slender Mauler. <gasps> When you squeeze the mole plushie at Satism, if only. <laughs> if only. That would be funny. Um, from what I understand, Makeship are probably gonna, you know, grow and evolve their little plushies over time, so you might get it to the point where they start adding stuff like that. I know they have ones that glow in the dark now. Oh, that's nifty. Yes. Um. <laughs> so I th honestly, it seems to me that like loads of uh, sort of channels are running with Makeship now. It's just a really sort of easy way to just get something that fans are going to want and everybody's happy sort of thing. Yeah. They do look great. They really do a good job. 
Yes, they do. Good job. Yeah. Check them out if you want to check them out, I suppose. All right. Where, where are they made? Um, the I factory. Don't know, actually. Switzbekistan. I don't actually know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's a fair I'm ordering, I, I I'm ordering them right now, so no one has any reason not to do so the same. Wow. That's true. If met, wait. I get like if metal does it, like you have no excuse, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Even Ray's like, I don't know about that. <laughs> it's like, fucking yeah. roll with it, Jesus! I'm promoting here. Fuck. Ow! <laughs> don't scream at Rags. He was just asking a question. <laughs> uh, if Doctor Strange had powers like this, why didn't he make Thanos forget his goal? That would be really funny. Like, <laughs> wait, I wait, like, what was the question? I was like, why was I doing any of this? I don't remember. Where, what was this army for? I don't even... Why wait, am I purple? A robot? Did I fuck a robot? <laughs> I'm all alone. I don't like it. <laughs> like, oh. Yeah, and Doc Strange gets a little upset. He's like, oh, I shouldn't have done this, actually. I feel kind of guilty. That's mean. Yeah. <laughs> um... Who owns the movie rights to Madam Web? I think she'd fit in this more than Doctor Spy, Strange. Uh, Sony. Sony owns those. Who's Madam Web? She's like Spider-Man character. Ah. Kind of, kind of. So yeah, Sony owns her. Madame Webbe. Well, they own the film rights. To be more specific. I see. I will grab the. Th oh, I'm gonna have to put that there. There we go. Time to power up my devices using water. Because I'm a man of industry, as you can see. Gosh. This is, I'm just so efficient at factory making. Um, by any chance, did you watch the six-part TV series Das Boot 1981? If not, why? What's wrong with you? I thought you liked good media. Um, really into fashion. I think Cruella just sort of... Turned Ruined me it. off yeah. that kind of thing, and I just like I, I appreciate know. a good boot. I do. Um, I just I don't know. I, like like you said, after Cruella, it's getting a bit tough to sort of even pretend to be interested in boots now. Um, but maybe it's good because it's from 1981, and boots back then they were made different. Yeah, maybe the boot world was just different. That's true. So um, yeah, you know, we'll have to give it a shot. Uh. Mm. I think it's way too generous to assume Strange is Mephisto or that it's a trick. Remember when people assumed Mephisto would be behind everything in WandaVision? Yeah, but you have to wait until it ends before you can be sure, right? And that's all we're saying. Yeah. Just, just give it a give it a chance, give it a sec. Guess we'll see. We'll Maybe, see what but I guess I guess we'll see. But uh because like saying it's way too generous, like I don't know is there anything such as that with a trailer? Like you know, yeah. who knows? Because if it turns out to not be Mephisto, know. there's no like, ah, you were wrong. It's just, no, it's just not Mephisto. Yeah. Is it? <laughs> it's not a race to be the first to have the correct take. Especially if your take was based on guessing. Like, what? what yeah, is that worth? It doesn't mean anything. It's not, yeah, exactly. Everybody's in a rush to have, look at my takes and how correct they are. Look at how uh, right I am on you this You can one. rely on me for the correct take. Like, Shut up, cringe. Oh. This again, it's you know. Shut I'm gonna, up, cringe. I'm gonna, I'm gonna quote. Uh, cringe. I'm gonna quote Silicon Valley here. You know who was really arrogant? The hair, right before he was beaten by the tortoise. <laughs> I'm the fucking tortoise. <laughs> I, I, I want to watch rewatch Silicon Valley. That's a, it's a really fun show. Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley, yeah. So Silicon it's, Valley is, it's a little bit different. Well, no, I've it's, seen it's, plenty it's, of Silicon kind of, Valleys in my time, but no, this, this is a little different. Silicon, Silicon Valley about a, a group of people trying to make an, a, a, de, a compression algorithm, and then it turns into a whole bunch of shenanigans from there. It's made by uh, the guy who did King of the Hill. I feel like I feel like if I rewatched King of the Hill, I'd appreciate it more. When I was a kid, I didn't get it. Like it, it always, it was always this like odd one out where I'm like, I kind of like it. But I, you know, I, I don't, I I think it would just, yeah. Because you were just I, I so I immature, you didn't understand the themes. I, 
well, like all I remember, Beams. what I, well, I, I do remember a bit more about it, but like what I distinctly remember was propane, like that being a thing, <laughs> like propane. The that main was just an element of that joke. I, I think, yeah, I just, I think, I think I didn't really get it, but from what, it, but that, that, uh, Silicon Valley is, is very entertaining. So like King of the Hill, probably if I rewatched it, I would really like it. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I like I like the imagery of Peter punched out of Spider-Man, especially if its themes deal with identity. Can't wait to watch in 2023 after my LDS mission. LDS mission? I don't know what that means. Saints. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, right. Because yeah, you're meant to do missions if you do part of that, right? Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like it too. I I like the idea of. Peter's astral being punched out of Spider-Man. It's like, you can do a lot with that. We'll have to see what they do with that. Who knows what they will do ah. with that. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, Civil War Critique. The timeline of people get to Siberia at basically the same time, even though they left at different times. Not sure, but maybe a bad. So, you have to look at what everyone's using and at what times, and then if it's feasible to be within a certain time frame. Because you've got a big grace period of when Cap arrives... Basically, the full grace period is from Zemo. He can wait for as long as you want. You, you don't have to worry about that. Then, Steve and uh, Bucky, uh, all you need to argue is that they would have sat down once to refuel in some or area. Sleep. Yeah, you know, the. Well, maybe not sleep because they would have been desperate to get there. But we need to make right, enough for, time yeah. for <laughs> half a day to pass for Iron Man to get there. Um, um, well, because we know that Iron Man, we know that they take Rhodey to the hospital, and then he goes to the raft. So I think the big question is, where exactly is the raft? It is in a ocean, but whereabouts? Probably. Looks cold. An ocean? Looks cold. Uh, it does look cold. It probably would be the Atlantic. That seems like the most likely choice. And then from there, it's like, well, to get to Siberia from, like, the North Atlantic, probably won't take you that long if you're Iron Man. Yeah, there's there's ways it can it can just slip in and it'll be okay. I, I don't I don't see it as this like major breach that's impossible. It's like uh, I would say it, at worst it's a contrivance. Yeah, which is a lot of a lot of when you're looking at criticisms for civil war, the best you can do is like contrivance. So. Um, yeah, and, and and like ultimately for me, I'm just sitting there like uh, Cap and Bucky take a while to search through that facility. We don't know how long it took them to get to where they are before Iron Man caught up with them, which would have been something he did pretty quickly. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna have to redo this whole system probably to get this efficient, but uh... Oh no. We're gonna, no, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. We wanna make our factories as good as possible, don't we, Rags? Don't uh, we? Ow. I mean, it's always about the process of improving, maybe. Yeah. Don't want any lazy factories happening here, okay? Mm. Mm. I need more coal. Is my only source of coal right here? Okay. Uh oh, and for those who are curious about the actual Factorio gameplay, I've turned enemies off. I find them annoying. I just want to build my stuff. I don't want to have to intermittently oh, deal with people annoying. sabotaging stuff. I'm just like, yeah, go away. Wow. I find it hard enough to fucking put everything in order, right? I'm not some hardcore player. You're just a pussy. Not a yeah. real game. Can't do space aliens. I don't know if they're space aliens. There's regular aliens. Where, what what Halo, other Eastern aliens Island. are there? What other aliens are there but space Mexican aliens? Mexico. Mexican aliens, yeah. That's that it's always feel, feel strange <laughs> that like that is actually a, a term that is used to like officially in certain things. I'm pretty sure that uh aliens is like actually explicitly in the Australian constitution. Well then there you go. Answered your question. When referring to when referring to people who aren't, yeah. Human. Well, um, there is no clause to deal with what happens if aliens show up in Australia. <laughs> that would be Else we have to is that something they, they, they've got written in any constitutions or, or like law? It's like what to do if space aliens show up? <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure that uh, the I mean, US probably. government has stuff that they've that is explicitly about like extraterrestrial situations. I like it. I think that, I think so. Yeah. Well, it feels like you. Would, I feel like you would have to plan for that because it's always a possibility and like not an unreasonable possibility either. Uh huh. Um. Mola, would you record the 15 short lines necessary to make you into a Waze navigation voice? 
What now? <laughs> Maybe upload it to Discord? I need sultry Welsh nav. Wait, they, they can like do a, that in 15 uh, lines? That sounds pretty efficient. Yeah, I thought there'd be more. Like the numbers and stuff. Yeah, um... But maybe they have it as like a complex enough AI that they managed to nail it. I don't know. Sounds interesting. I'm not against the idea. Uh, when Disney bought Marvel and started making movies, I thought it was a good business decision. Indefinite movies, just like the comics. But then continuity falls apart, just like the comics. But business-wise, it is a good decision. Because you make a lot of money. I think that's it, right? It's just like, you hope they're going to care a lot more. And I, and I, I think it, they do, but then... You know, all it takes is one person to be like, I'm gonna make it so this happens, and it's like, did did this, did the opposite of this happen anywhere? And, and someone's like, I, I don't know. It's like, eh, don't worry about it. <laughs> it's fine. And then you just do that more and more and more and more, and then you get Loki. <laughs> everything, everything goes to shit. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Um, how do you feel about Ray showing up in Spider-Man? Ray! Ray! I don't know. When did Ray show up? What have I missed? I'm the real Ray. Yeah. Uh, the multiverse. All the rays from the multiverse. The multi Ray. <laughs> well, that sounds bad to me. I don't. I, I don't want a Ray showing up. That's evil. The last thing we need. Be gone, Ray. Yes. <laughs> and or all your doppelgangers. So, all right. The first thing I got to do is make some coal harvesting devices. It's gonna be great. Uh, the restrictions on Batman discussed before remind me of stuff done to Sonic comics in 2014. Sonic can't lose, cry, or say his planet name. What? His planet <laughs> name? What, does he live on planet N-word or something? <laughs> <laughs> Sonic, you can't say that no more. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's the name of a planet. I can't do anything about it. I wish I could do something about this. I'm stuck. <laughs> it's not my, my hands. Oh, I need more copper. Um, Goppa. Do you think Peter Parker's a Palpatine? Peter Parker Palpatine? Peter Palpatine's t t uh, uh, Do Parker you think Peter the current writing quality could have made a good pure character drama just dealing with the fallout with no universal rewrite? So are we saying, like, could we have done fine with just accepting that we lost all those characters from Infinity War, are we saying, or are we doing something else? Like, I'm not sure. This has a uh, mm -hmm. good character drama dealing with the fallout with no universal rewrite. Oh, I guess they're talking about Spider-Man. So, uh, yes, the answer is yes. <laughs> yeah. So interestingly, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but a lot of people are like, no, you fucked it up. Spider-Man, like, all of his stories are about hiding his identity. You can't reveal it now. What? And I'm just sitting there why? like, oh my god, why? Why, 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 why do we have to have Spider-Man stories be this specific thing? Cringe. Who's because limited, it's a comic man. that I like. Why yeah, can't then, people creatively read, express themselves? And hey, read the comic look, you like. Let, let's I do thought, this now. Yeah, or, yeah, I mean, if it's a different story, yeah. Bad face. No, it's, just, it's like <laughs> the whole story could have been amazing and about all of that, but yeah, it'll probably end with his identity being back to normal in terms of secret, and be like, oh well. Yeah. Um, out there. I thought Andrew Garfield had been constantly befuddled as to why people think that he's in the movie from interviews and articles. Could be denying it though, he's not on the actor's list, lol. There's been some Im uh, photos released of him, not only in the suit, yeah. but also hanging out with Tom Holland, so the thing about all of this is you can't trust them, none of them. Not that you, <laughs> I, I say this as if they've done something wrong, they've done nothing wrong, but you can't trust them. You know they have, they've done everything wrong, don't cover for they them. They did it all wrong! If you ask him, he's not going to say yes. Would be I'm already <laughs> wrong around the clock. Yeah, I, I do believe that uh, he's he and Toby being in it was probably something they really wanted to keep secret, but just couldn't. They couldn't get it. They, they it, it got ruined. Yeah. And it would be weird to bring in Electro and not Andrew Garfield, especially if he would have been on board with it. It'd be like, oh, okay, Electro, woo. I'm not so, uh, <laughs> Yay, Lizard! Yeah, that's another... Some people are really excited about Lizard. I was just like, okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> you do you, I guess. Belge. Um, What did we conclude, Rags? Was Tasm 102 better? 
I think Tasm 2 was better. I think Tasm 1 is way worse than people remember. Yeah. In terms of how the plot unfolds and how people get to where they are and what they know and just the weird batshit stuff that happens. I, I think I think it gets overshadowed by the second one in terms of its zaniness. But I, do, I think that the first Tasm is worse. Oh, yeah, boy. Sounds fair. I'd have to rewatch them again. I've already kind of memory hold those things, you know? It's only fair. Everyone does it. Don't know why anybody would think those movies were good. Well, like, if you, like, really, I, I, I just think people don't remember the first one. Which I don't blame yeah. them. Yeah. The first one's really bad. I would say, I barely remember anything about it. Same. Um... Hey, Longoids. I told my friend I was afraid Doctor Strange was acting out of character in the trailer. He responded, I assumed his development happened off-screen because I'm a reasonable person. Oh. No, that's the... Mm, oh, that hurt to listen to. That's one of them things where you're just like, let's push it to the extreme. And Doc Strange is just this insane asylum patient running around going... Blah, 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 and jumping through portals and stuff. And it's like, yeah, I it's mean, just... whatever happened to him happened off-screen, right? Uh, it's, just a goo it's just a goop monster all he's of being, a sudden. He's being a big old goofman, and that's what I love about him. So it's so powerful scene about one it. Is better than anything in two. Oh, the bridge scene is shit. Which which scene's the bridge scene? I think it's the one with the lizard. Um, lizard I can't even fucking remember it. If I'm being completely honest with you, like what what happened? Was it? I remember. And I, I think some of it makes sense. Hmm. And then he the... somehow gets away without anyone knowing that there's a lizard or something. I remember the thing at the end where like, oh no, how's he gonna get to the Oscorp? building all and then the all the people to the crane up. the crane moment new, new york you mess with one of us you mess with us <laughs> like, it definitely yeah. had that energy <laughs> except but I, like, I, I liked him uh, but i like uh the sam raimi spider-man 2 thing about that I, oh that's the, the, the one in spider-man 2 is great they're 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 yeah. within range they're seeing green goblin being a dick and so they start throwing things at yeah. him that's perfectly normal to me mm. Fine, as opposed to, hey, let's all line up our cranes. cranes. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> cranes, we can do can it. Can he just attach himself to the building? Shut up, Steven, we're helping Spider-Man. <laughs> like an amazing Spider-Man 2 when, when he's fighting in that big electric facility, playing Itsy Bitsy Spider as Electro yeah, is going through something. the room. It's like, dude, what are we doing? Like, it's, it's <laughs> What are we doing? It's recognized in-universe is happening. What the hell? Yeah, <laughs> say it, Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> People keep talking. It's like, he has that little chip on his head. Is that getting turned into electricity too? <laughs> Dude, Electro... The, le the second Electro exists, it's like, well, that's it. We're ruined. Like, well, everything. Nothing. He's like a, he's I mean, like Ultron, where it's just like, well... Pretty sure Electro, Electro in the comics is like a dude who shoots electricity. Like, that's it. Well, um... That's already, you know, that's something. Yeah, that's, yeah. like, Shocker was way easier to understand in Homecoming, where it's like, you've got this little yeah, this device that electrocutes people as it punches them. I was like, yeah, okay. Punch people with the shock of the electricity. Yeah. It's beautiful in its simplicity. Mm-hmm. How much more of this stuff do I need? Gosh, it's so hard to automate everything in this, in this world. I'm trying, I'm trying to just fucking ruin Mother Nature and she won't let me. <laughs> been a dick. Uh, I actually think Andrew Garfield would have been an awesome Green Goblin and Dan DeHaan would have played a great Peter Parker. Um, maybe. I feel like both of them were ca more than capable of doing the roles, just they were cursed with yeah. the script. <laughs> that script was cursed. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing Spider-Man 2 is a dumb. I don't know Amazing what Spider-Man 2 is one of the dumbest things. It's, yeah, it's amazing. Do you remember what he sends his evil? It's like really far away from Times Square, but he could just sort of sense that Electro is on his way there or something. <laughs> I like how it's like, ah, uh, see, but I remember there was a, I think it was something that was in the, the YMS video. It's like, ah, uh, see, he'd go to the most electric place in New York. Times <laughs> most Square. Like, electric place. <laughs> 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 Would he not go to the massive electricity grid? That's not even a thing. The most electric place isn't a thing. That's not That's not how it would work. We said this in the debate. The it would be like, place. he just connects to the grid and that's it. It's all, yeah, it's all electric and it's all connected. 
<laughs> the most electric place. It's so funny. Electric. What else do I need? More of this stuff? Oh, I guess I should. Oh, it doesn't do good stuff. Go I don't trust the MCU to be able to pull off this type of story anymore. I hope they prove me wrong. Seems key jangling the movie. High wags. Hello. Key jangling also, yes. the era is what we seem to be dealing with. The age. Of yeah, the we're, we've, we've left the information age. We've entered the, the jangling age. The jangle age. Well, I mean, jangle, jangle. not to mention, like, Book of Boba Fett is on its way out, right? We're actually close, closing in on that now. That's coming out this year. Coming like, out in November, I think, or December. Why yeah. wouldn't they fill that show with cameos? Like, after everything yeah. that's happened. Seriously, the Luke uh, seed at the end of Bad Doe Season 2 has probably done more damage than we can foresee. Mm. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And who's to blame for that? Oh, make a know. grown man cry. Make fucking millions of people lose their shit. And... Mm. How many of those same people are going to be booting that scene up compared to the OT in futures? Like, well, why bother? Just Google image search Luke Skywalker. Get the same experience. Uh, there he is, yeah. <sighs> we were shat on so heavily for being critical of that scene. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then like, the whole thing, we were time. just going, what? What are you but then, doing? Given time, people start to come around to... They always do. Oh, always <laughs> you, know, do. you know that Luke scene wasn't wasn't as good as as I thought it was originally. It's like, what did you think originally? It's like, well, it was really cool. <laughs> he was chopping up the robots. He's still doing that on that scene. What changed? <laughs> yeah, nothing changed. <laughs> He's still chopping the fucking robots. <laughs> I get it. You love robot chopping, but I mean, come on now. Uh, Doctor Strange casts a spell to erase memories, however Peter causes the spell to falter. It inadvertently brings heroes and villains from other universes. Peter is told by Defoe's goblin to not send them back because they will die. Um, I don't know if this is taken from anywhere or if that's an assumption, but I mean, I guess we'll see. It's magic, they ain't gotta explain shit. Because yeah, you're gonna need a plot line to stitch all of this crazy bullshit together, and I don't know what they're gonna conjure in that regard. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see. Or is it metal? Is it? Is it gonna it's be an, sad? The, the, the in, interesting is in quotations. Oh. <laughs> Please, do not do this to me. Um, nothing in Phase 4 feels connected. The multiverse makes no sense. Are people really that hyped for this? Can Marvel even use Spider-Man after this? Um, the deal ends after this movie, but I imagine that they're going to... This movie will be I don't... hyper successful, and then Marvel and Sony will be like, right, let's renew. Yeah. Well, I mean, it seems like Spider-Man's doing a lot better by being connected to the MCU, and you just make more money. Yeah. And I imagine that Marvel wants Spider-Man, because it's Spider-Man. And... Like, if DC didn't have Batman, they would be making deals with... Whoever owned him to make sure that they could use him. It's probably why they've thrown Doctor Strange in there so significantly, not just to explain the spell, but also to be like, see, you want him, you want him in the MCU. We can throw him with some of our characters. You want that? I mean, I I will say that's like the cool aspect of the MCU is having these characters interact with one another, and it seems like the Spider-Man movies have leaned into that a lot more than the other ones have. Though it seems like that's changed now, and for the worst, unfortunately. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, um, uh, Chipped Coin said, don't bother making a film if it's not 100% accurate, so does he think Spider-Man 1 is terrible because his webs are organic? It was frustrating to see him refuse to see the flaws in that argument. Uh, from memory, it would have, I think, he said, he said you could deviate a little bit, uh, but once you deviate enough, it becomes, it's, it's bunk, it's, it's, it loses, it goes down the, 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 you fucked up hole. Um, obviously yeah. these are not rules we use ever, so I can't possibly advocate for them. I think- I essentially think they're nonsense. Like, yep. and I also think it stops us from getting some pretty awesome stories for no other reason than someone's preference. It's just like, hmm. I don't think it's worth it. Yep. Uh, take my hard-earned dollars, Mola. Also, hi, Rags and Frongo. Yo. Thank you. Rags, Wendy is the hero of the animated Peter Pan. Pan is an immature child who doesn't want to grow up and kills many people older than him. What a Chad. <laughs> Honestly, I can't fucking remember Peter Pan that well at this point. 
Well, not wanting to grow up. I mean, if you're a kid and you don't want to grow up, I mean, I don't, I, I don't, I can't really blame you there. Especially if your dad's a, it, it's just like a big, oh, no fun allowed. Oh, fun is for fun is fucking shit. And you guys need to learn how to work in a factory and wear a suit and go to the bank and da 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 da. da. And if you're a kid and you're hearing that and you're just your your dad is like allergic to fun and your mom's like, oh, just do what your dad says or he'll beat me or anything oh, like that. No. Then you, yeah, you don't want to you don't want to grow up. Fuck growing up. I don't blame him. Um, angry super chat five. Wow. We've had five <laughs> of those. Nice. Oh, wow. Uh, tell meme that a Snyder video is great. Oh, I think he's gone. Uh, 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 he's very aware of everyone's appreciation of that one. It's, um, he did good stuff. Um, oh, he, oh, oh yeah, congrats, meme on the Snyder Cut video is great, and meme has a beautiful singing voice. Yeah, did you guys catch the um, the bonus ending? Nope. So I haven't watched it yet. I I've not it's on seen uh, that. it's on meme's channel. It was going to be in the visual the, the the video originally. Unfortunately, copyright would not allow it, which makes sense. It was funny. It's a cover of um, Mr. Blue Sky. But with this Mr. Edgy guy, and it's just all about like the lyrics have changed to just represent everything that Snyder's done in the fucking DCU. Really funny. Um, it's also catchy. But I like I listened to it before it released, and I was like, oh, you're never gonna get that past uh, copyright. And he was like, no, it's it's not the song. It's like a recreation. And I was like, it's like the same. Uh, what do you call it when you've you've got like the same? Is it tune or flow or? or it's it's all Something the same like, like background or whatever, and I was just like, I'm pretty oh, sure he, he sampled the the um. So he's just the instrumental. He has the instrumental well, playing. So I think it was created by Rainbow Soap, um, recreated rather. Like so so, it, but but I, I'm pretty sure it's not different enough that bots would not tell that that it was the tempo melody. Yeah, it's. I think you'd have to get permission. We will do that still because it's it's clearly like an alternative vision. If you listen to it, you'll know what I mean. Um. So yeah, you had to separate it out, and, and but it's really good, um, and he's managed to make it, uh, you know, viewable or whatever. He hasn't been blocked. I, I recommend it. It's all very well edited too. Uh, it's not just the song to listen to; it's also the all the visuals to to accompany it. It's good stuff. Um, Strange gives Peter the same wink Agatha gives Wanda. Agatha posing as Strange. <laughs> Anything to try and explain it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you homosexuals. I write in my free time, and thanks to you, I know what to avoid. Kudos. Hey. How wonderful. Well, I'm very glad that we have been able to help you. Yeah. You probably don't care, but Dead by Daylight is adding Pinhead to their game. Yeah, I mean, they, they've gone through a shit He's ton. He's the, the Hellraiser, right? That's him? He's like the famous one, yeah. Why do they call him Pinhead? Um, it's really unclear. I think there's something in the law. I don't know. It's... Is it in like the books or the novel or the adaptation? It's probably in the comics. I wish they put that stuff in the film. I'd really like to know. Yeah, there's no scene where they're like, Pinhead? Why do they call you that? And then he explains it. Like, they never, they're just so lame these days. They don't explain anything. That would be useful if you worked at an office and you had a pinhead uh, around. So if you ever lost your pen, you'd be like, hey... Okay, you got an extra pin? He's like, yeah, I just might. take this one here. And he just pulls one off, and he's like, they grow back after a couple days. Oh, they grow back, I gotta okay. trim them. Yeah, I gotta trim them anyway, you know? If for a second there, I was boat, like, really. you know, he maybe has them in there for a reason. He's not just gonna take them out just because you want them, you know? Oh, no, he'd be he'd be totally down with it. He loves it. Okay, all right. He just loves to feel helpful. That's the kind of yeah, person he, he is. Helpful. He really enjoys knowing that he's helping other people. You know what? That's cute. I like this pinhead guy. Is he wholesome? I can't remember. I haven't seen it in so long. He's, he has holes when you put the pins out. Someone no. said in chat that's what they called him on set. And I'm like, that's interesting if the name stuck because that's what they called him on set. <laughs> Hard not to call <laughs> him he, that when it kicks off so imagine much. He, imagine he doesn't, doesn't like it at all. It's like, stop calling me pinhead. All right, your name in the movie is pinhead now. So like, no. Or if... They called him up for so long, he just never brought it up as a problem. And one day, he's just like, yeah, I think, I think, it, I think it's time. I yeah, don't like being kinda, called Pinhead. And you're like, oh. It's kind of rude. And <laughs> He's like, got, well, he did, He never got a date when he was in high school. Because his face was all pimpled. 
Oh, I'm starting to see how the origin. Yeah, I can see where it's going yeah. now. Uh huh. It's the lore. Mm hmm. Uh, hey Mootle, you like CM Punk coming back to wrestling? Oh yeah, absolutely. It's good <laughs> shit. Who? Uh, CM Punk. He 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 wasn't WWE. Maybe just like a little callback, and he got so annoyed with working there because he was treated like shit at some point. Mm -hmm. So he was out of wrestling for over seven years, and now he came back to the now existing competition, and it was very exciting. Cool wow. moment. Um, someone in chat said that his official name is Hell Priest or the Lead Cenobite. That's lame. Hell Priest sounds a bit more. It's better than the Lead Cenobite. That's more of a title. That like you're like if you don't know who someone is, and you're like you know the 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 Lead Cenobite, you know that sort of thing. I prefer Pinhead. Somehow they managed to have a, a name like that, and it's managed to remain still like it, it could it could evoke fear rather than simply being like hey, Pinhead. Yeah, it's got this almost sim. It's it's scary in on in an almost simplistic way, like Pinhead, like kind of how Pyramid oh. Head is stuck around. It's yeah, just a description. Mm. And that's all you've got to work with. And if you remember, good old Christopher Stukman, in his script of totally normal people talking about totally normal things, were like. You can't have people with mundane or normal names be scary. And we were all just like, what? <laughs> Where have you been? Jason. Freddy. So there was a, there was a book I read when I was a kid called no. Peter and the Star Catcher. This is odd because it's it's almost it's like a prequel to Peter Pan, which is oddly <laughs> something we've been talking about. But mm. there was this book I read called Peter and the Star Catchers when I was a kid. And the name of the crocodile, the man-eating crocodile, his name was Mr. Grin. And that scared me as a yeah. kid, because there's just something about it that's just like, oh, that's it's scary, Mr. Grin. I, I, honestly, it seems more common to do that than to be like, you know, Aga Gragnag. And you're like, ah, spooky <laughs> name. Yeah, <laughs> like, you know. Yeah. He's like Rancor. Like yeah, that sounds like a a, a beast name, I guess. What's well, a real yeah. word? Yes, um, and and you can do that too. You can take, I guess, normal words for everyday sentences and turn it more into a title, and then it, it can evoke multiple things at once. Sometimes, Adolf and Joseph, Yosef, mm. Sauron. Sauron sounds like an evil person name, but that might just be because that's yeah. how I learned of that name, I guess. Don't, don't be evil, Sauron. Be a good man. In the TV show, yeah. I'm sure he'll be a good guy. <clears throat> Tell me Miss Snyder video is great. Will do. Have done, actually. Um, I'll do it again. God. Do, do. Homosexuals. It's amazing that a trailer has assassinated Wong, Peter, and Strange. Disney has to be making this a competition at this point. I guess you didn't listen to anything Wong? we were saying. Look, well, just give no. it a give it a sec. Yeah. Give it. It's not out yet. We don't know. Sack, right? Chill out. And how so, was Wong assassinated? Yeah. I'd be curious about that one. Maybe they're gonna argue like as soon as he knew that there was a potential for this, he should have stayed to make sure it wasn't gonna happen or something. What if he's got something very important to do elsewhere? Like Shang Chi. Well, so, yeah, maybe. Or some other misadventures. Fluff in my. Why don't we misadventures? Why can't it be regular adventures? Well, you know, some crazy stuff's going on in this crazy MCU world. That's fair. Um, why do we stop talking about Spider-Man? Spider-Man's coming out. Hello, good boy, Rags. Hello there. How are you? Can't answer. I hope you're well. Um. Also, in re I, hopefully the the question was answered. But I don't know if it was now at this point. The uh the whole him being in Dead by Daylight thing. They do a really good job of implementing sort of, dare I say, guest celebrity evil people in that game. So, I hope Pinhead fans are, are happy about it. I don't know. They're not just reskins of other characters. There's actually something about them. Yeah, they like oh, like from the movies, or oh, that yeah, that's what he'd kind of do, or oh yeah, he's if he moves like he, you yeah, know, like he does in the you know. If you were trying to add these people into the game with new mechanics, they do clearly think about it from a point of view of having watched the stuff and understanding them, and in ways that satisfy the fans. Um, you know, Mortal Kombat do seem to do that as well. Uh, at least from the ones I played, but um, 
Because this is the thing, that's like a whole topic on its own. Is it like tacky to bring in stuff like that? Or is it like a spectrum where if you do it really well, it's actually kind of really awesome? You know? I don't know. Hmm. Um, do, 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 do. In Grace's spoiler review... Well, oh yeah, so by the way, before I read this, um, apparently I watched the we watched the wrong video on EFAP 150. The one I was sent to wasn't the one we watched. It apparently gets much two. worse. There was a there was a spoiler and a non-spoiler. I thought yeah, I because I thought I grabbed the worst rated one from your recent videos, but I I must have been a blindman because the, the well maybe that one is just one that got covered by somebody else or discovered first or something. Who knows? So who knows? Well, why so might have changed. Yeah, she's released the non-spoiler and spoiler, and apparently the the spoiler one is the one that everyone hates. The non-spoiler one's pretty bad, which, by the way, is kind of shocking to me that we saw the less <laughs> painful one. So you might just see us cover the spoiler one in future, because apparently it gets oh, so oh, much worse. Oh. <laughs> um, for example, in Grace's spoiler review, she said, Harley Quinn stuff was a horrifically positive spin on Prisoner Grape. Well, it's Rape. Um, she's like a hot take fountain, that one. It's the thing, um, <laughs> people talk about power dynamics, but like if you watch that scene, uh, Harley's not really coerced, um, she kind of, she's, she's gunning for it, she's very happy for the, for the, for the with the guy, I guess, and so, and, and if you want to go as far as saying, nope, she can't, because she's technically a prisoner, you should be like, alright, I guess we're gonna have to just deal with the fact that she can't make any decisions in that environment, um, which is awkward, but that that gets into all other discussions about stuff. But I, it wasn't surprising she brought that up. I would just rather focus on the incredible mindset it takes to have said the polka dot man's relationship with his mom was misogynist. <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay. I've heard it so many times. It's so bizarre. It don't get old. Um, Insane. Watched Twilight for the first time last night. Ten out of ten. Peak yeah. fiction. You think Scorsese <laughs> thinks it's cinema? I'm off my ass off. Yeah, he must do, right? <laughs> it's the... Uh, it's non-franchise when the first one comes out. It's, you know, it's... What else? Does it does it, does it? it also satisfy the rest of his crazy criteria? I hope so. Um, do, 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 do. What are your guys' favorite manga if you read them? Just finished reading Chainsaw Man, and it's easily my third favorite. A bit dismay, but a lot of fun. Yeah, Rags, what's your favorite manga? Um... Uh, this thing, I could make up any name, and it's, uh, probably, uh, <laughs> believable as a manga name. Uh, that let's see, a teen, name. uh, Teenage Sushi Happy Happy is my <laughs> favorite manga. Um, it's a little bit better than the hentai it was based off of. <laughs> um, Just explored the characters in more depth, you know? It re oh, it, it certainly explored the characters in more depth, absolutely. Happy time. <laughs> That was a good one, I like that. There's gonna be somebody in chat who Googles that. They're like, that's not real, right? <laughs> it's like, no. 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 Uh, Fringy, what's your favorite manga? Feel free I to give the same the answer. I first volume of One Punch Man. Ah. But it's very similar to the show, because I imagine the yeah. show was based exactly one-to-one -one with it. But, uh, yeah, yeah, it is. It's really good. I liked it. Well, uh, Metal, what's your favorite Mananga? That's probably the only one I've read in the past 15 years, so I'm have to go with One Punch Man as well. <laughs> um, I'll go with um, Game of Thrones. That counts, right? Yeah, probably. There sure. You go. Sweet. <clears throat> um, do do. The Suicide Squad is the first half decent movie. DCEU shout out. So, oh, sorry. So, it's the first half decent movie the DCU shout out, and it still didn't even break its budget with box office. Sad. It's not really fair, though, is it? It's the only one that's come out during Panda Bobic time, except for Wonder Woman 84, I guess. Panda Bobic. Um, it would have been really cool to see what the Suicide Squad would have resulted in had it come out um, in 2016. Yeah. Wonder if it would have gone down as one of like a favorite of superhero movies, you know? Maybe it would have Possibly. helped boost the fuck out of Snyder's bullshit. Dude, imagine Maybe we'll get the uh the video essays about, you know, like a year from now, two years from now, is like why the Suicide Squad was 
gray and or just what we needed or something. Or why it was a failure. Also, the awkward part is that when you have like the seems like some people are almost like lying, like they didn't enjoy it, but they feel like they have to say that they did. Really? Got that impression. Do you remember that that high top one on Suicide Squad? <laughs> yeah. He didn't like it. It seemed like he didn't like it, but that he felt like he had to because it's a creative vision and of course because people uh. actually enjoyed this film. <laughs> so, yeah, like, he just wanted... Yeah. Well, the same thing happened with Black Widow. If you remember, he put out loads of tweets saying, like, Ugh, I've got nothing to say about this movie, but should I do a video for the for the dollar? And everyone was like, yeah, do it, do it, do it. And it's like, man, what an existence. Your favorite YouTuber, everybody. <laughs> like, I don't want to have to talk about it. Don't make me. And then, yeah, his... um, We wouldn't... All the covering it on EFAP, but because uh, it's like the, nothing happens in the video, but uh, oh, he phoned it in for, for a high top video that was phoned in. Yeah, if you listen, anyone out there who's listening to this right now, after the show, if you if you venture into the world of high top and check out his <laughs> suicide squad commentary, my god, he didn't give a fuck. He, it, it's just all the words he said, all the big video essays words. Doesn't he, was... doesn't he say the movie was alive? You're like what? Yes. What? <laughs> what does that mean? You didn't like it because if you liked it, you would have said it was like amazing or excellent. It was weird. Uh, yeah. Do 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 do. When Mary Jane says male spiders can hypnotize women, are they trying to explain the pheromones from Black Widow? Also, high Rex. Oh my goodness gracious! <laughs> oh. How did she know? How did she know? Did a piece? Oh, did a piece of the red room fall and land right next to her, and that's how they that could discovered be it. that. My God, how did you know, right? It's like you, it's like you wrote this stuff. No need to insult me. Well, I mean, it's just <laughs> you know, you could have done it because you you were paid to write it that way. I don't know. Um, Do you think it would be convenient or inconvenient as a human being to be totally covered in fur? Um, so convenience for warmth, I'm guessing, is the idea there? I guess, so, yeah, so I'm wondering, yeah. I think if all of a sudden we just, like, sprouted fur everywhere, probably, but if we always had it, and we kind of developed with it, and we were used to it, then maybe not as much. I suppose I'm, the reason why I wonder is, if we had a coat of fur, would that have limited the places that we could exist on Earth? Try it doesn't seem to limit animals. It well, it seems to it seems to depend, right? Like certain animals that are furry live in certain environments, but then certain animals, you know, the different environments. Um like I imagine that if you plopped a grizzly bear into the middle of the Amazon, that it, it would be not a particularly uh comfortable ex existence. But conversely, if I dropped a jaguar in the Arctic, that would go well for him either. So I guess I'm wondering I mean, what we, the applicability... What if... Well, some will shed, they get winter coats and stuff like that. True, so maybe right. that would be mm. something... So, are we, are we factoring... Like, I guess I'm just wondering if that fact is in, like, if, if humans had fur and then they had to shed, it's like, would that not be highly inconvenient in terms of the mess that it well, would leave? Well, as Rag said, we, at this point we would have had all these... We probably all have a Hoover in our room that we regularly use, maybe, or maybe not. I don't know. I wonder what that would look like maybe. as an evolutionary thing, though. Like if you were, if you were, um, you or know, maybe we'd look like gorillas. Times. We'd look more like gorillas, or maybe our faces would be more uh, oh, naked. And I, I guess, um, yeah, they they could. I guess because there's different types of like fur in terms of what it would be like and how much it would cover. When I meant covered in fur, I basically meant animal like in terms of just that much, as opposed to. Um, you know, it like, would probably be more yeah. advantageous in terms of because the the cold is it, it kills a lot of people every year globally just simply That's being true. too cold. Yeah. So maybe that in and of itself would just kind of be like really. Do we get worried about people overheating? I guess more so. Maybe like, it depends. They... Maybe that would, would be on one fur. of the things yeah. that would separate, like, that's how you could tell the difference between where you're from or your, your ancestry oh, or, your race or whatnot, uh, is that some, some you know, different races might have different, um, like, hair length. Density. density yeah, like, it would be maybe thicker in certain parts or thinner in other parts, something like that might hmm. distinguish us. And then as we mix and mixed and matched, we'd get different combinations. I feel like it would oh. be... 
because if if if, if, uh, if the furs were different colors and stuff, but then there was different variations and like patterns and things like that, then it would be very difficult to be like racist in society potentially. Difficult to be racist because it would be too. Sounds it like would be too difficult. Every year too. It's true, but it's mostly because they don't drink enough water. Well, it seems like it's it's harder to well. It it seems like I mean it's the whole thing of like winter is coming, right? The reason why that's a thing is because like winter has historically been the hard time as opposed to summer, which usually isn't viewed as the hard time. Um Mm-hmm. I I'm just... I don't know, but I mean evolutionary wise we used to, and then it got lesser and less, and then we developed an incredibly great cooling system through sweating and all that. Yeah, I um, guess. But it didn't have to happen sweat, this way, they? but do who they? knows if it would have... Who knows? Who, say what now? Do animals with first sweat, or, is, or do they get rid different of heat? Degrees. Uh, to different okay, degrees, right. they will. Um, I think that the human... The, the process of sweating and the sweat glands that we have is uh, not typical amongst animals, right. and our system okay. works really, really well for keeping us cool. Um... Other animals will sweat in different ways, I think. Like dogs well, will be on their pads and through their mouth. Can't to get heat out, right? Or that's that's like a really good way to cool down. That's one them. way. Interesting to think about how like other animals have to find these sometimes unintuitive ways of like cooling down. We would be elephants. certainly I mean the fashion industry would certainly change. We'd probably just wear less clothes in general because it's like doubling up. Right. Um, there, there'd be much. Maybe people would be more fit if they couldn't hide their bodies under clothes as much. So they'd have more incentive to you know, look huh. nice and work out and stay healthy. You couldn't just <laughs> put a, you can put on big shirts and long sleeves and puffy stuff to, to um, you know, cover up as much. So you're like, oh yeah, well I guess I'd better look nice. I don't know. Maybe. I, I, I wonder if like that was ever an incentive though, because like back in olden times. Most people weren't fat, and it's like you still had clothes to cover it up. It feels like it's I think it's because like they didn't have as much access to all the food and the kinds of food, I like think sugars that, well, and everything. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's categorical, right? The reason why is because, like human beings, there was an incentive to eat as much as possible when you could, because you didn't know when you'd be eating next. And so now, with the abundance of food, it's like, oh, right, that's not helping us anymore. Like yeah. you're not going to starve. You have no reason to store up, like, excess fat reserves or anything like that. So anyway, Mola, yeah. you called a DSHK a minigun in your Black Widow video. Please shame yourself publicly. Great review, by the way. Give it a good work. Hi, Rags and Prospect to M. Hello. Yeah, yeah. bug me too. That wasn't a minigun. But that's okay. It's the same principle. It was more of a, yeah, it was, it's, it's more of a just, hopefully you understand the the... It, I'm trying to say it's a thing that fires stuff. Someone in the comment section did say it's worth having pointed that out because of the fact that it packs such a punch that uh that particular gun, and so that that uh that helicopter ain't having a good day. Let's just put it out that, that way. Yeah, that gun <laughs> shoots the Russian 50 cal, 12.7 by 108 millimeter. Mm. Uh, gonna rip through that helicopter, but I think I think a minigun would do just the same. Yeah, it's, it's uh, a distinction without any difference in terms of the video. Because this is the thing, I saw it and I was like, I don't fucking know what model or make or thing that is, I'll just call it... I think I called it a light machine gun in the original vision, and I was just like, I should probably just call it a minigun or something, because I fucking don't know. It's not a light machine gun, it would be a heavy machine gun. Well, I was wrong no matter what. <laughs> I don't know categorizations <laughs> for yeah, guns. Yeah, Mahler, your critiques are poor. They really yeah, are. idiot. I'm gonna. The reason that light machine guns are called what they are, and that, that that's always something that reasonably confuses people when they see people in games and stuff running around with light machine guns, but they're the biggest guns that any of the like the classes or whatnot carry, <laughs> uh -huh. is because they're scaled down uh. versions. Essentially, they're more portable versions of what was the heavy machine gun or the machine gun, which was these big, essentially emplacements that were multi-person, crude, uh, and operated big things that you'd set up. Like, you know, like the World War One style kind of yeah. things. Uh huh. So, yeah, light machine gun became uh, they became developed and after the, around this age, and they really became a lot more popular because they were scaled down versions of the heavy machine guns or the machine guns. Sounds a little bit gay. 
but you know, I, I understood a lot. Well. That's okay. Um, that Hassan parody in 150 was top notch. Thank you for sticking to it, it to that stupid pampered jackass. Real content has never been tried. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um, yeah, we had fun with it. Uh, I thought it was funny. I that was hate funny. That was a good idea. Mel, you missed that that fun parody times. I did. That wasn't a second uh, thingy. I'm guessing. Did you Did you see it? Did you know about it? I I knew you what you will do it because you told me to have a chair picture prepared. <laughs> That's the kind of prep <laughs> we do on EFA. <laughs> Make sure you have a chair picture. Yeah, I did chairly uh, injustice with this. Would have been the cha official chairly EFA debut. Yeah. I'm sorry. Chaley missed out. Um, so what's the difference between a light machine gun and a submachine gun? Not an unreasonable question if you just hear the words and then see that they're basically polar opposites from one another. Submachine guns shoot pistol cartridges and they're generally designed to be small and compact. Light machine guns are essentially like squad automatic weapons. They're rifle chambered lighter versions of heavy machine guns. Interesting. Uh, just tested positive for the coof, but that means I have more time to catch up on 150 now. Rags, some swole guy on Discord wants to know how you rank Dead Space compared to RE4. Ooh, that's a good question. I haven't played Dead Space nearly as much as RE4. Honestly, I'd have to play them more to decide. I like them both, and they are similar, but I, I legit don't know. I think I prefer, I think I prefer RE4. But they're both really good games, and I like them both immensely. Yeah, I love them both. I'll pick between I had, kids. I got all of the achievements for Dead Space 1 and 2 back on the Xbox. I played the shit out of those games. I played them a bunch, and oh, I liked made. them a whole bunch. Um, but I think I like RE4 better. As for which one is better, honestly, it's probably Dead Space, which is better in terms of its you know, design and stuff. I, I do think Dead Space probably will win out in that regard. But... um. I am not certain. I do not know. Yeah, I wouldn't speak on that. I'd need to play them both again. So. You know what? S love them for similar reasons in a lot of ways. They're both fun on the bun. And yeah, oh, um, oh. hope you, you hope you do all right with the uh, with the, the coof. Hope you get better. Yeah. Um, and someone followed up with Dead Space is better, and. Is that the new tiger versus bear question? I don't know, maybe. Huh. Maybe everyone will have different different opinions on that I have one. to play, yeah, I have to play a lot more Dead Space. Uh, the problem is that it doesn't like to run well on modern PCs. Uh, Dead Space 2 and 3 don't have this issue, but Dead Space 1 was not oh. ported well. You have oh to, gosh. like, mod stuff for it to get it to run proper or run better. Did, did Mel get, like, hit by something? Oh, I hope not. Uh, I'm playing more Isaac, trying to get the lost <laughs> unlocks, and it's the fucking worst thing in the world. <laughs> yeah, see, I ain't doing that. You can nice. go, you can go into the sacrifice room without getting hurt and go back with your holy mantle. But if you go into the sacrifice room and a troll bump appears and blows you up and gets rid of your holy mantle, that's GG. You can restart the run. Yay! <sighs> I ain't playing so with that hard. bullshit. It's too upsetting. That you get two hits want, at maximum I, at all times, it's like, nah. I really want the fucking god hand, but that means I need to do all the unlocks for the lost. I just hope that's not one of those things where you unlock it finally and you're so satisfied and then you're like, right now I'm bored. I don't want to play this game anymore. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh no. I want to try the so Dead Space much... Remastered. I did not know there was a Dead Space Remastered. Yeah, you did. I thought you did, yeah. Did I? Yeah, absolutely. When did they remaster? When did... Oh, no, they're remaking Dead Space. Yeah, I know about the remake. I did, they said, oh. "Oh, okay." If that's oh. a I think they might have just took it for it's yeah. a remake. Yeah. Yeah. I. Uh, oh, we'll all be checking that out when it comes out. I'm sure. Someone said, "Play IRL Dead Space Rags." Just start oh. shooting things while on acid. <laughs> no. You'll get in all the trouble. I will get in trouble. Yes. You gotta call your shooting bad, randomly and also doing acid. <laughs> One thing is worse than the other one. I'll let you decide which one that is. Um, if the MCU is going on full-on multiverse, can we have Blade come in and be the new Black Panther killing vampires with vibranium weapons? Why the fuck not? <laughs> Marvel's That's what cool if. Kinda. Um, 
Is it weird that the spell doesn't exclusively listen to the person casting it? Well, there could be a lot of reasons why talking during a spell could fuck it up, but it's just dumb that that's happening at all. It's just... yeah. That's such a concern, just don't have Peter in the room. <laughs> Please. It's, uh, yeah. He's so lame. Um, you know what I love in stories? Consequences. Remember when stories had those? Any favorite consequences in stories? Reminder that Mola says uh, yogurt instead of yogurt because he's a filthy heathen. Yeah, I say yogurt. <laughs> yogurt has always sound odd to me. Yogurt. You go hot. That's how, that's that's how one caveman would greet another back in the day. He'd be like, hey, yo, Gert. And Gert would be like, oh, hey. Uh, uh, Frank. Gunk. <laughs> There's one yo, caveman with a normal Gert, name. Gert and Gunk <laughs> were their names. Good Gert old and Gert and Gunk. Um... All this talk of Spooderman makes me want to bust out my perfectly legal copy of the 70s Japanese Spider-Man on Blu-ray. Have a good day, Massives. Also, hi, Rags, and hello, Fringy. Hi there. I've seen yes. the ads for that. The, mm. the Japanese Spider-Man from the 70s. Um, do, do. Hi, Rags. Mm. Have you guys played DST, Don't Starve Together? If you have, what are your thoughts? If you haven't, I recommend. It's great. I have I not play. played it. I play, I have both of them, the normal one and the together one. I didn't I didn't like it that much. Not the, not it's a bad game. I just didn't I just didn't get into it at all. Just like I've no, seen I the gameplay. I don't yeah. think I'd care for it based on what I've seen. I just I don't I don't recall really liking it or liking what I saw. It just didn't look appealing to me or fun. That's just weird that I didn't like it that much because I normally really like roguelikes. So, I don't know. Well, yeah, given all the Isaac shenanigans, yeah. Yeah. Um, MCU assassinates characters so efficiently, the German National Socialist Workers' Party based their final solution on their framework. Wow. Wow. I don't know if that makes any sense, but wow. Wow. Uh, sounds like you guys, or at least some of you, have seen What If, have you? <laughs> it's in the first yes, episode. We have. Unfortunately. Yes. It's bad. It's the big stinky. And it's I. Big stankle hammer. I wouldn't recommend anyone watch it. I think. I haven't seen the third one. Apparently that one's better. I haven't seen that. And. Like, the first two were pretty fucking abominable, so. Rags, I'm so glad to see you making vids again. We need to make more sensible people. We need more sensible people, rather. Um. Let's play soon, man. Always friends on st already friends on Steam. Riley, sad, sad. Oh, Riley's Adam's apple. There you go. Um, oh, I know that name. I know that name. Um. Imagine a hero had heard there was a spider person sorcerer planning to cast a world-altering spell for personal gain. This is a villain story. A little bit. Um. And so you expect someone's gonna learn a lesson at some point. That's gotta be it, right? That's gotta be the. What else could it mean? I guess we'll find out if, if that's going to be the angle. Peter learns about responsibility again. <laughs> again. Um, EFAT movies Aquaman when? It's my favorite DCU movie to watch because it's so atrocious. <laughs> uh, I can totally see that. I think... <laughs> it's a so funny movie. Meme isn't going to be... The next EFAT movies he's working on is not that. And then after that, it might be that. Um, all I can say is eventually. Look how long it took for the Snyder Cut video. You know, it's just like it... The the production can be huge sometimes, or sometimes maybe not. And you know what? You'll you'll be very happy when it comes out. That's, that's how it works. I would say the same. Um, doo -doo. Have y'all seen Pandorum? Seen it last night? That's the one. I have not seen it. I have. I, I, I it. don't remember what I thought about it, though. It's a weird movie. That's what I remember. That is my commentary in full. Dennis Quaid is in it. Also, guy from 310 to Yuma and other guy, things. Uh, guy who was in... Guy was the wing... Guy with the wings from X-Men 3. Fuck, I used Angel. to know his name. No, his Angel. actual name. Oh, I, yeah. Got nothing for you there. Um, 
The Halloween lights are witches. The wink. Strange equals Agatha all along. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh. Can only hope at this point. Quick <laughs> chat. Contract from below or Rotten Baby? Rotten Baby. What does Contract from below do again? Doubles all pickup drops. That sounds pretty good. Rotten Baby is pretty I, good never, too, I've though. I've never even played the game, but it yeah. sounds pretty good. I'd probably go with Contract from Below over Rotten Baby, but it's it's a tough one. I I agree. Mm. Press X to Baby. <laughs> Contract obviously Baby Baby Rotten Baby. Well, I guess it's not obvious, huh? Oof. Rotten, is the Rotten, rotten Baby just rotten. the satisfaction of having a dead baby confirmation? Yes. Also, it spawns blue flies when when you when I'm shooting. You know how you like your blue flies, Rax. Well uh, done. I'd give Bree a rotten babu. No. <laughs> rotten babu. The baby, the baby. That looks kind of 50 50. That didn't help at all, chat. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> baby from below. They're trying, Metal. Jeez. Trying hard enough. Oh. Do better, chat. Oh. Got him. Now oh, you're really offending him. Uh, I always like when someone, when this weird moon head appears, I already know someone tried to do a kappa in YouTube chat. <laughs> the the moon well, head? Is that a different the, name for butt face? The moon head is um, kappa face, kind of, if you look at it. Yeah, it's like, hmm. <laughs> they, they did their best. I don't blame them. I guess they didn't want to just copy it outright. I wonder if there would be like any issues there, potentially, if they did. I don't know. God damn it, Metal, who cares what you take? You will die anyway. I mean, yeah, I'm playing the loss. Damn. And I'm shit, so. Smooches again. Ew. Do better, Mootle Baggins. Alright. Have you listened to Jordan Peterson explaining Peter Pan? It's a whole new point of view that woke me up about life and life sacrifices. I haven't. No, I have not. Maybe we'll get a return of the My One Weakness Small Knives in the new Spooderman. Also, hi, Rags. Hi there. Small Knives can really do it. Small Knives in a way. You could call bullets that, you know? Time. Small well, flying no. knives. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, not. yeah. No, they're not small yeah. knives. Yeah. No, have yeah. you seen a bullet? Yeah. They're not small You'll get knives. there one day, Rex. Okay. No, you'll get back one day. Bullets up to the realm of sanity. Yeah. What do you guys think of Southpaw's Civil War takes and SK's claim that Return of the Jedi Throne Room assassinated Luke's character? Jeez. <laughs> those, people, those people have opinions. Uh, they need to have less misses and more hits. I... So the the thing that makes me adore Return of the Jedi is essentially all the throne room it stuff. Is, it is the throne room. I'd be yeah. very surprised if there is something I managed to miss in that that assassinates Luke Skywalker's character. That's that's news to me. Um, obviously, it's potentially true. <laughs> like, I, but, like, come on. Um, you don't sound very convinced there, Mauler. <laughs> I, well, it would be tough to convince me on that one. That's one of the... That's one of them fundamental, like, man, you're gonna have to really make a good argument to change everyone's minds on that one. That's that's a thing that, to a degree... The throne room is, is, like, the part that is the great part of that film. Yeah, I'd be really surprised if you convinced people that Luke was it's assassinated one favorite... in one of the scenes that is referenced well, for all time you know to define, like, who he is. So, it's great, because I recently, very recently, rewatched Return of the Jedi. I did not get the impression... <laughs> That Luke. Well, maybe you missed something, for you. The war I, is a I, miss. Absolutely. Suppose, it's a really, really good. What could anybody claim was the assassination of Luke in that scene? Is it that he didn't kill Vader? Is that... But he he's very clear on why he wouldn't do it. I'm not what sure. Did he, I don't understand. What would be said to be out of character? I don't... I... That is... I... I mean, that's, yeah, that's where we're at. We'll have to wait until whatever the argument is comes out. Unless if someone knows what the argument is, I I don't know what it is. As for Civil War, like, again, heard a lot of the argument before. 
I'm not worried about Bear's Civil War. Despair. It's gonna be yeah, fine. Not at all. Con I've not at all. Concerned. Many times. Pretty You're pretty confident be better in that one. They thought his Harriers was good. What was that, Rex? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Uh. Do do. Do maybe we'll get a return. Oh wait, I read that one. Look behind. Wait, am I missing? Little behind. Ah, little behind. But one of the reasons I love the newer Dread is that they didn't feel the need to take off the helmet. They let the character be expressed as he should. The faceless personification and the fist of justice. I mean, okay. So I just want to be careful about this. Like, you don't have to have Dread never take off the helmet. But my God, did I that that was awesome in that film? Because yeah. it you get you got a sense. That he's like so committed that there's just there's never a time because that that helmet is a part of the the approach of dealing out as I said justice, but also protecting himself and stuff. There's just no. This is the problem with MCU. They take off their fucking. One of the ones I remember that really annoyed me was when uh, Peter Quill's got a gun on uh, Peter Parker, yeah. and he's and then like, he takes his helmet off. yeah, like just when they're in the middle of clarifying stuff. It's like, dude, put the helmet back on. He's got a gun to your head. Hmm. Uh, there's no reason, and like the one that was really stupid when he puts the bomb on Thanos's back, takes his helmet off, and jumps. And it's like, why would you do that? Yeah, you gotta make sure we see like his face when he flips him off. It's like that's weird. I don't, I don't need. I like the helmet. I like his helmet. Really I, I cool prefer one. Prefer that he keep it on more often. You don't need to take it off. He can keep it on. Constant. Fine. Act. I don't know. utilize the design of cost. Maybe you just need to get used to it, Fringy, right? Nah. No. Oh. <laughs> nope. I don't gotta do nothing. Um. Longman, will you consider inviting just some guy someday? Sure. I get I go along with him just fine. I don't know if he'd, he'd be super interested. Uh, I assume he will, because he seems much more comic-focused, and I always find, like, oh, I don't know if comic-focused people are going to have fun here as much. Because <laughs> the second mm -hmm. something gets mentioned, it'll be like, yeah, they didn't do it the way that the comics were all going to be like, um, Oh, you know, I don't care. Moving that? on. Yeah, moving on. Uh, anyway. Um, but he sounds like he's interested in talking about, you know, like, uh, non-comic media as well. Also, what annoys you the most? Longman bad, but my themes, or you're wrong, doesn't elaborate. Um. Hmm, what annoys me the mm. most? Probably. I think the Longman bad one annoys me the most. Why? I guess because there's just less to it, but they think it's a point. Yeah, but at least with the thematics and stuff, there's generally some kind of an argument or some kind of a discussion that they're trying, like they're trying to explain it to you. But the long man bad thing, like, oh, it's just it's just bad to make a four hour movie, and that's that. And everyone's like, yeah, let's just do it. So I was gonna say, the reason why I don't find long man bad annoying is because it's so it's such an easy disregard. It's like too long. Okay, bye. That is true. Um, meanwhile, with. You, you, like, but my themes is usually you misunderstood the content, and I'm always like, ugh. Because you can claim that, and it'll be satisfying for people who disagree with you to see it. They'll be like, yeah, true, but there's just never usually elaboration. You're just like, yeah, I missed it. I misunderstood it. Yeah, you got me. That's that, I guess. And then, uh, you know, saying you're wrong without elaboration again can be disregarded really easy. You're just like, I'm wrong. You didn't say why. Okie dokie. But like, you didn't understand the content. You're like, okay. But you did. Or you are a genius. Um. Do, 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 do. Fringy, you don't have to answer if you consider it too spoilerish. But in Ghost of Tsushima, which ending did you choose? Um, I chose the one that, uh, that, uh, Shimmer wanted. Um, I think that I I don't know I I didn't I didn't have it to not <laughs> to not to not follow through. And are you going to play the new expansion? Oh, um, I wasn't aware of that. Might look into it. We'll see. China. China. Uh, I don't don't, don't think so. China. Bringy, you don't. Oh wait, that was that one. <laughs> really weird that the Osborns. <laughs> 
have barely been exciting. mentioned in the MCU, given how Norman and Harry usually are important characters for Peter. So that's not weird Adam until Fish. they randomly fucking join up, and they're just like, ah, oh, yeah. my old friend, Norman Osborn, will be like, what? <laughs> so that's, that's the thing. It's not a problem until it's a problem. Because um, in this world, it could be that Norman and... Uh, Sorry, not... Yeah, Harry's the friend. Right? Harry and Norman yeah. could exist, and they could have nothing to do with Peter. They could just be a family that's really rich and, you know, competitive. They, you, could, you could argue that recently the Osborns rose to power as a, as a response to Stark Industries. They're like, we're trying to, you know, reduce the monopoly Stark has. You know, there's plenty you can do with that. And then um, you could have it be that he meets Norman, sorry, fucking Harry, in uh, university or something, and they get along really well. And then... Stories unfold. I have to see what they do, if they do anything. But yeah, no, I, I agree. It's strange we haven't heard of or seen all, uh, any Osborne stuff. We'll have to see uh, what they're planning on doing with that. Just have to see. It's like a lot of stuff. Just wait and see. Uh, Muller, I was curious if you're ever going to review... If you're ever going to review for the Star Wars prequels. Uh, I'd like to at some point. Just don't like to promise anything. We shall maybe have a look at them at some point. I would pref so I simultaneously want to try and find the parts of the prequels that I think are worthwhile, and also fucking bat it down that they're considered masterpieces by anybody. It's like you, you're nuts. You got to stop. They're not good. They're bad. They're stop all doing that. bad. They got they got big, big chunky flumps in them, and you know we don't want that. Um. Uh, Molly, you're the big guy. Fringy, you're Hammond, and Rags, you're the tiny person. And this is EFAP gear. How could Fringy be the Hammond tiny. and Rags is the tiny person? Hammond is the tiny person. Hammond? Richard Hammond. Like from Dead Space? Probably from from Top Gear, because they said EFAP gear. That's true. Yeah, that'd be my assumption. I'm definite. Well, I don't even know who I am. I was gonna say we don't. I don't know that we map onto the three personalities in Top Gear that well. Uh, hmm. I don't know. He's like, oh, who gets into accidents the most? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> uh, I, uh. I don't have to think about that one. Uh, why, oh, why are you making me buy more stuff? Off to buy some plushies. The Moolah one is so damn cute. Now I'm gonna be sleeping with Moolah. Oh. I mean, oh no. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, that's that's one of the options you have there. I'm not gonna say it's not. Not that right. Yes. Episode three is the best because of the youngling scene. That is true. <laughs> it was excellently <laughs> executed. Just laugh back there. <laughs> <laughs> but they're um, all bad. Unfortunately, I don't that think episode one and two are really bad. Yeah. For a second there, I thought you were talking about what if. I was like, for some reason, I like jumped over to that, and I was like, "Wait, Rags, you saw the third one without me? Why would you no, do that? No. Why would you subject no, yourself?" No. Oh no. Um. Uh. Unfortunately, I don't think film quality has much effect on revenue. I think it's mainly down to prior investment in characters or actors slash directors. Yeah, this is the thing. Spider-Man, No Way Home. That thing could make a lot of money, and. If it does, I don't know what yeah. that tells people. You know, I don't know. I don't know what they conclude. We need more cameos. Whoa. More Spider-Man. Um, did you see film theory on Falcon Winter Soldier? I was glad to see Matt Pat being a fan of Marvel. Didn't stop him seeing the idiocy in the do better of do better. Well, good, neat. It would be nice if more YouTubers were able to see the, right the fuck through that bullshit. Like, it was awful, and it's embarrassing that they got away with like putting that in the script. Like, you listen to it and you're just like, Ugh. do better, my ass. Hmm. Uh, by the way, Dank Pods on YouTube is hilarious, though his stuff is not media. Very well. Dank is that um. Uh, Dankula's the podcast? Isn't this podcastism? I think so. Yeah. I don't know. I was just wondering. And I think that the acronym is. I know SM is Salt Mines. Um, I can't remember what TI is. And I was, the Incredible? I'm assuming. Oh, it could be. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm assuming they've kept that going. I haven't, I haven't checked in. I didn't know. Dude, rags. Dead Space 1 on Steam runs fine. What are you on? 
Only problem is that you have to load and not continue because if you hit continue, it lowers the difficulty. Really? No, Dead Space on Steam is it's ooh, it's a bad port. It's infamously bad. Pretty sure James. Uh, if it works good for times. you, and lucky, lucky. Yeah, honestly. I think James told me a bunch of times that he had huge issues where he was playing it. Yeah, I, I there's a lot of physics based issues in terms of frames per second and stuff like that. Um, it, it's in the control, the way that it maps the aiming to the mouse is mm. no good. No good. No good. That's no good. And if you can't trust Sonic, who can you trust? No one really. Shadow. Nice cock. I love the idea that Idris Elba is going to be the voice of Knuckles. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> that is amusing. Just what we need. I need to. I haven't even seen the first Sonic movie yet. Oh, uh, it's it's yeah. it's meh. Nah. Is it in there? Nothing. Bringy, do you feel? Nah. Do you feel there as a good summary? So, man, like the problem is I barely remember anything about it. <laughs> I remember like I remember, it, I remember it being, just normal, like kind of stupid. Um, yeah, that's. I don't know. All it I wasn't had for offensive, it. bad. It no, was no, it bad, definitely but... wasn't. If it, it reminded me of like, two thousands bad, you know, where like mm. it wasn't painful. The simpler times. Gives SA2 a try. Sonic Adventures 2? No, I'm not going to play any Sonic game. What? Sonic Adventure 2 was the one where Shadow the Hedgehog is mistaken for Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> and then Sonic's like, that's why they've mistaken me for the likes of you. <laughs> oh, that's a bit racist. <laughs> the yeah. likes of you. <laughs> I think he said that exactly. I'm pretty sure it was verbatim. Wow. It was a 6 out of 10. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Stop it. Why must no, you it hate, not. Fringy? Why must you hate? <laughs> Feel the need to steal the feels. Um, you read my super chat and ignored my question off my ass. Let's try again. What is your favorite consequence in stories? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that, I oh, remember yeah, reading that. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, that's true. Um, okay. Um, hmm. Favorite consequence. I know that there are examples, but I don't want to say what they are. Oh, you... Would you say so? Would you say Soma's ending? Hmm. That's what I was thinking of as well. Well, because this is an interesting category, because in some ways, aren't, like, all... You know, like, t T2's ending? It's like, that's a major consequence, you could argue, right? Like, it's a consequence mm -hmm. of having to get rid of anything that could lead to Skynet means you have to get rid of uh, Ani. Like, that's a... Does that count? Because if it does, that's one of my yeah. favorites. Yeah, it's a something that you can kind of... You should know is coming. But you might have ignored it because you wouldn't want it to be the case. Ah, uh, it's the same thing with Sonya's ending, maybe. Yeah, I think so. I guess, yeah. What I'm saying is, like, it just seems in a lot of ways that is a lot of payoffs. Is you could you could categorize them as consequence, potentially mm -hmm. being unforeseen. Um, the ending to Monty Python and the Holy Grail, of course. <clears throat> <clears throat> Odd that always bugged me when I was a kid and I saw that because I hadn't learned like I, I was still new to sort of the movies and stuff and it was just it always bugged me. I'm like that's just but but do they find the the Grail? Do they <laughs> like I don't understand what happens to them. Do they? Like, it it just always really bugged me. What about Life of Brian? Like, well, I'm glad those movies held up, though. I watched them recently. They're uh, funny as in fuck. English for the, in English for the very first time, funnily enough, because I only watched them in German all like all these years back. And those I, mean, I, 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 they could probably I, work for EFAP movies, honestly. Maybe. I don't yeah, know. yeah, I could see that. Yeah, I was very impressed with uh, how good of a job they did in the German, uh, in the German dub. Wow, the, always the praising the Germans. The yeah, because the, the jokes are pretty much the same. I was like, damn, they did a really good job. Well, I'm glad. Yeah, me too. Um, Is that is, is there anything else you guys thought about with the, the consequence stuff, or is that really mm -hmm. on point? Um, Civil War. Let me That's see. That's really cool consequences. Um, I think what it's... The, People talk about best consequences. It's the ones that don't surprise you, where you're like, oh yeah, I guess that would, yeah, that would be what would happen. Yeah. Not one of those weird 
sort of, you couldn't have possibly seen the consequences of this. Uh, I, I would have. Like, those can be okay, depending on the payoff or depending on how they're set up and, you know, stuff like that. But, I mean, we talk about consequences, the Sokovia Accords, you know, all that yeah. stuff. Like, that's a, that's a really good set of consequences. Yeah, you can, like, yeah, that would totally make sense. You can that's argue it's... the world would actually operate. Yeah, you know? something you see coming. But the, the, the experience for me was just like, finally. Like we... We're accounting for all this. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, do do. What about secret group of ninjas that control the world, and then vampires, aliens, Illuminati, demon groups that do the same thing? I'm not sure what this is in regards to. Yeah, I'm <laughs> saying like an alien group is sort of they take the place of the um, Illuminati thing where they control the world, but it's actually aliens controlling the world. I mean, I don't know. It's I don't care for it myself, but... Yeah. I'm not entirely sure what the question means, honestly. Yeah. Um, Confusing. More like answering questions like Biden by not answering. I only missed the one. Just one. Got him now. It's all good. Um, Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 1 plus premium passes are $5 each right now on Origin. Everyone should grab them. They're fun. Wait, what, 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 yeah, sorry. Battlefield 4 and 1. I'm literally oh. playing Battlefield 1 right now. Yeah. yeah. We're doing this, um, but yeah, 4 and 1 are pretty great. Uh, the premium passes come with all the maps and all the stuff. And a lot of the DLC maps are really excellent. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff to unlock. And some of the unlocks are annoying as fuck. But that's all right. There's a lot of good stuff in there, especially for five bucks. That is a... Um, that's quite excellent. For five. Look, Mom, I'm doing easy. mass production. Stop it. Evil corporation. Kill him. Yay. I've got all oh, of the things. Put things down. And my power output is like only a fifth of total. It's going great. <laughs> Though, I think a lot of my machines aren't even active, so... Or I make some more of these things. So didn't I just pick up a whole bunch of... Oh, okay. Um, rags. Bullets are just weird small knives. <laughs> I agree. They're weird. They're definitely weird. Guess we'll put you here. Beautiful. I will buy all of you ice cream and solve world hunger if you guys are able to get on Chris O'Neill to cover a Nostalgia Critic video. I know it's a pipe dream, but a massive can dream, Connie. Dude, that would be Who's Chris O'Neill? That'd be really cool. Yeah, that, Arnie and G. Yeah. Oh. That would be fucking wonderful. Be, I, yeah. I don't think <laughs> it's gonna happen. Like yeah. PC, of course. Why, why, why the fuck would I play a Battlefield game on a console? Because you want to handicap miserable. yourself because you're so good at it? Uh, no, it's easier <laughs> to play on... People on console are shit. <laughs> oh my god. I remember there was a, there was a period of time when I was still new to PC and I would go back and play Battlefield 3 on the Xbox after starting to really play it on PC. And when I went back to the Xbox and played it, I was like, man, everyone's trash on the console version. I was dominating. Everyone was just I was like, how come everyone's so bad at shooting and how come everyone's reaction times are so much slower? How come everyone's just terrible? Did you ever get your answer? Yeah, it's probably the fact it was 30 FPS and you're playing on a controller. That could be it. I will agree. Auto aim makes men weak. I'm sorry, I, I should... It's aim assist. <laughs> um, I lost friends trying to argue with them in the same style you do on EFAP. Some people just don't value super consistency in text roleplay. I mean, I... I... Text roleplay? Um, hmm. Like when I your OCs say, are fucking? Well, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure what that is, but I, w I would say, like, most people don't want to talk about movies this way. Um, yeah, that's, that's, you gotta, you gotta do some room funny. reading. Yeah, like, because, yeah, some people are just like, yeah, I want to go watch the fun movies and see the fights. Now, that's totally cool. Um, and I guess the difference is that a lot when we're responding to videos, there's people who like actually profess to be big fans of movies and talk about movies and do it for a living. Well, yeah, a great example like, is well, Twin Perfect 
said in his video, he is here to correct the record. Enough of this misinformation about Snyder movies. And we're sitting here like, woohoo, we love this. Yeah. We're just like you. And then in the conversation, he was like, no, actually. <laughs> oh. I was just, that uh, was yeah, pretty bad. His video was very bad, and he was very bad himself. And what you'll find is that most people do not, yeah, like the screen just said, they don't want to talk about the movies the way that we do it. Uh, they want to say, didn't you like that? Like, I like that. And then they want the other person to say, yes, I also like that. <laughs> when they go, no, I did not like that, they're like, oh. Oh, I don't want to play with you anymore. I don't want to play with you. <laughs> You're ruining it. Um, so yeah, you know, but at the same time, you know, that maybe maybe they weren't really a good friend if they're going to ditch you over the fact that you want to talk about stuff making sense. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't want to rule that out, but at the same time, yeah, you know, some some people just really don't want to talk about movies that way, and that's fine. That is fine. I mostly don't bother with my friends. I'm just like, yeah, I'm just gonna let them do their thing. Wow. I just didn't talk on our Discord server about movies, and I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna mute that channel. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just gonna not look into it. Bro, the new Spider-Man looks so good. I'm like, mm -hmm. Metal tears up, as usual. <laughs> Um, Warframe is getting crossplay slash save soon. Thoughts? Crossplay slash save? You can't. What do you mean cross save? Oh, like cross save? I like, guess yeah. Like you okay. could. I mean that's good. Find whatever yeah. platform I mean, that you sounds want. Good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Good for them. Um, I only played Warframe briefly, and I thought it was fine. I just didn't get into it. I think I played it. Yeah, I played it about seventy hours in total over a period right. of time, and I uh, feel like I just. I feel like I just did it all, like I was done. Like it just got to be really boring and repetitive and the unlock system for getting new things just frustrated me. And it was just, I just was like, yeah, this has run its course. I'm done with this now. Warframe is one of those games for me that I installed twice, played, I think the tutorial level and a couple of missions and then stopped for no reason. And never and went that's back. all I ever did. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. It happens. Um, hey, Chad. To, like, Army of Dead be on EFAP? Never. Huh? What? What about Army of Dead? Uh, someone someone asked me, uh, when will your friend to like Army of the Dead be on EFAP? Oh. I'm not going to check them to this. <laughs> Don't want him to cry. That, that poor guy. Really? He li never did, did you ever find out why that someone would like a film like that? <laughs> I wanted to ask him, but then he, he, we had to move the weekend, and on the next one I just forgot about it. So, I, because I was really interested in it, but I completely forgot. Because you, you can't help but feel bad for someone who likes a film like that. You know, you're like, oh, yeah, I'm so sorry. Like, what happened? What's wrong with you? That was a shockingly bad film. That was really. It bad. was. It really was actually shockingly bad. I don't think I've ever hated a movie more. It's definitely up there. I don't know. It's just was not a pleasant experience. Yeah, it's like it's no. really not the point of why we make films. <laughs> like this you 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 <laughs> fucking up the whole fucking thing. To beg for clarity. Not like in terms of plot or story or characters, but like clarity clarity. Visually. As in the definition of the objects it? on the screen, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why is it so blurry? <laughs> it is obnoxious. It Yeah. It is. It hurts to watch. You have every once in a while. I would look away from the screen to the real world just to be like, ah, yes, this things are awesome. defined. <laughs> Objects exist in real space, and I can touch them, and I know where one object begins and one ends. And it's. Ugh. I also miss the world of clarity when you watch a movie like that. But also, his writing is really bad too. Just making sure we, you know, mention yeah. that. <laughs> Oh yeah, the characters are shit, the writing is shit, the world building is shit. It's all terrible. There's nothing good about it. EFAM Movies, like Army of the Dead, coming to you live one day. Hopefully soon, because yeah, we did do an EFAM Movies on that. I don't know about soon. Um, Probably not soon, yeah. but eventually. <laughs> um, a, oh, oh, right. The other half of that was always, uh, hey, Chad, thanks for your work. Have you guys seen Shin Godzilla? What do you guys think? No. I have not um, seen it. I think I saw no. it really long time ago and I've forgotten. I think I said something about it on EFAP when I saw it, but I have now memory hold it. It's gone. Out. So Thank if you. you can find that somewhere, that's what I thought about it. 
Um, boop, boop, boop. Yeah, it'd be cool Man, to have Chris O'Neill on. I'm, there's a trailer, another trailer for Metro Dread. It looks kind of really awesome. <laughs> Quite looking forward to it. Well, then why yeah. don't you go buy it, Fringy? Hmm? Yeah. It's not out yet. Wow. Still got a couple months. Any excuse. It it's looking neat. There's like a story and there's cutscenes and like intrigue and and new power ups. Wow. It looks looks really cool. Looks looks like a big old new classic Samus Aaron adventure. The Moss, I think you'll find the name is. No, I think you'll find the name is Metroid Samus. God. Well, well how come it's Tapas, but it's uh, Samus? Tap tap Samus Samus? Tapas? Is it Tapas or Tapas? To pause. Well, I mean, her, her name is Samus. That is, that is the name. Samus. Samus. No, it's Samus. Shlormus. Have you asked her, Ringy? How do you know? Yeah. Well, have you said, I mean, have I, you... I can't ask fictional characters. Oh, no, okay. That, yeah. Not with that yeah. attitude. Yeah. Why don't yeah, you? Well. Why don't, oh, you could do one of those role plays that that one chat was talking about. Yeah. I'll role play as uh, Samus. Ah, uh, yes. My name is Samus. So way, I have to shoot aliens. Pew pew. That was easy. Wrap that pew, up pew. in a neat little bow. Yeah. Good job. Um, Branagh's Cinderella is definitely the best Disney live action. Not perfect, but so much better than the rest. Would love to see an EFAP movies on it. Uh, I, I don't want to watch it. I don't really want to watch it, but I am sure uh, I wouldn't be surprised. It's the best one. It's, that's. The... Seems like it's the most conventional. There's less to get wrong. <laughs> like it's just. Cinderella, it's to... really pretty straightforward. Yeah. I'm sure and also, it's Cinderella is just not one that, like, I feel like that's just an. Cinderella is not one of the ones that people just look back on super fondly, you know? Like, it's Cinderella, but it's not like Beauty and the Beast or, like, Snow White. It's important just because it's so significant. Kind of like Snow yeah. White. It's It seems like it's one of the older ones no. before you got that sort of new age and thing. And Sleeping Beauty was kind of in that camp as well. Um, like, it's not. Yeah. I mean, they're good movies, though. Like, they're really great animation. I feel like if we rewatched them, there'd be a certain charm to them that, like, the same way that 101 Dalmatians, it's just like, ah, it's nice. Yeah. You gotta love them. That was fun. It's rewatching that movie. Like, Do you know, that movie is charming. This, uh, the Dalmatians, you thought movies that got age restricted. Really? Why? I don't know. Well, <laughs> yeah. that's because that's how evil, that's how fucking evil Cruella is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What other explanation is there? Yeah, kids can't see this. Um, do any of you guys know why the scenes of Anakin killing the young ones was cut? From what I've heard, they were executed very well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nice one. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Hello to you all, and a belated congratulations on 150. Mola. I'm curious about your opinion on Mike Flanagan's horror films. Personally, I think Hush is the strongest. I of the ones I've seen, I don't think they're as strong as the Haunting films. Um, Shows. To yeah, to to be fair, because uh, I watched Hush with you, right, Mel, when you came over. Uh, yes. Um, Let me check which one that is again. <laughs> I, was a, I was a little bit disappointed with that one. I don't think he did that well with the premise. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We watched that one. We watched that one. Like. Is you you know, all it's scary and stuff. I just uh, I don't know. Like I think this, we, the bad I think guy gives said. a lot of gaps to the the victim yes. in order to keep that story going. Um, and I just I don't know. It didn't come across as too great to me. Maybe on a rewatch I would like it more, but I just um, I just think it's you know um, another example. Gerald's game. Um, I do like it, but like probably. One of the grossest scenes I've ever seen in a movie. Yeah, uh. Uh, it's up there. That one is fucking <laughs> cringe-inducing. Yeah, it's like, oh. It. Not for the squeamish. No. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I, I, uh, I'm looking forward to Midnight Mass, though. Hoping that's going to be good. Oh, yeah, that's coming out. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Remind me, was it a movie or a show again? A I think show. it's a show, isn't it? Yeah, it's a show. Yeah. And it's not going to be too long before it's out. I think it's doing the October release. Of course. Spooky season. Spooky season. Uh, oh, that 
mean to say I'm I, I'm gonna be playing uh, uh thingy soon. Uh, that Doc Doc Descent. Oh my god! I'll wait for you to solve the goo problem. Maybe I'll get stuck and get lost in a wine cellar again. I think I promised the super chat that I'd play <laughs> Machine for Pigs this year, so I guess oh. I'll be doing that. It probably won't be miserable. No, I, I, I think I'll have fun. I'll just be pointing out like how I just don't think it's as, it's as good. Uh, meanwhile, it'll be fucking leagues ahead of Rebirth, so you know it's got that going for it. You can tell who people who watch my stream. Uh, mainly, someone wrote Amnesia Rebirth, Dark Souls Two. <laughs> it's like no. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, thank you. Uh, what inspired the design of your avatars? Um, I really um, like Plague Doctors. Alright. Mine was a friend came up with some ideas, and I liked the look of the gas mask skull thing combo. I thought it was cool, and then fan art has turned into this, and I, I think it's neat. I really don't have much more of a meaningful, in-depth sort of approach than that. Well, mine is based on a crying Pepe, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll start with the, with the whole leave me be thing. Yeah, and then... some old lore for the Metal channel. Yeah, and then I made, 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 made like, got like a crying Pepe, drew over it with a beard and stuff. Uh, and yeah, then fan art and stuff happened, and that was this one. Which is cool. Duh. For me, I, I really uh, I really like dogs. I think Shibis are really meany and cute and approachable, and they're very likable. Uh, I just really enjoyed. Uh, I just in enjoyed their uh, quality in that regard, and that was that. I didn't put really that much thought into it. I've always liked anthropomorphic animals as characters and stuff. I thought it'd be kind of fun. There you go. I'm not sure why green. I think the only reason it was green was because, like, when I first started the channel, I just had fringy and green text. So I just stuck with it. <laughs> That's the only reason. There's no purposeful meaning behind it at all. It's entirely arbitrary. Could have been blue, could have been red. But it wasn't. And then no, Marvel's What If Fringy was blue. I don't know. What, do you think things would just be worse if he was blue? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Damn. It feels weird to me. Blue. Blue from Tio was blue at one point, and now he's gone. Okay, it's bad. Blue just feels weird. <laughs> In this guy, even though blue is probably actually like my preferred color. Um, freeform text-based RP is pretty fun, but you need to find some cool people to do it with. Have you ever done that or role-played as characters from a canon property? Mm, no, I've not done no. one. With... Yeah, I've, I've played a couple games of what I thought was D and D. I'm not sure if it was, but. Never role played as like an existing character or whatever. Of you, Rags? I ro I role play as my OC and I smash butt with my massive cock. Okay. No, I don't though. It's okay. I'll if probably you be do. good at it. Like I like I've done D and D and Pathfinder, and I think I'm pretty good at it. Um, and I enjoy it, and I and I do like to do that. So. Yeah, in that sense, I have indeed. I, I really have enjoyed that. Mm. I like it, and EFAP, I think, helps. For that sort of thing. Is that right? Beautiful. Um, hmm. boop, boop, boop. Any advice for writing fan fiction? I always feel like I'm screwing up the source characters. I would say don't and just write your own original stories. That tends to be what I would suggest. This is the interesting thing, right? Like, they get inspired and they want to do it because they enjoy the property, but then at that point you're just like, now that you've gotten the inspiration, just make your own thing, go. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I feel like... I don't... I guess it's kind of interesting because it's like, well, fan art, it's like, yeah, I would encourage people to do that. I think you can, like, I think you can get a lot out of that. You can learn how to emulate styles and things like that. Um, I guess as well there's the element of, like, fan art just tends to get around more than original stuff. So I guess if there's an idea of recognition, recognition, but fan art doesn't tend to get, I don't think it has the same negative connotations as fan fiction. Um, no, it doesn't. I, I, it definitely doesn't. Fan art's really cool, but like fan fiction is just, I would just say, if you're going to be spending 
so much time writing fan fiction that like you're doing drafts and revisions and plot outlines probably be better served like just creating your own thing i'm <laughs> wondering if you wanted to get good at writing right in terms of how do i describe scenes how do i learn the format how do i structure dialogue stuff like that would would it be good to do a fan fiction where you don't have to worry about the world building stuff where you can just sort of um, focus on more writing related things i guess there's the element of you don't have to you don't have to do a lot of the the original work of creating these things you are continuing these things you've got a template to work from but is that going to help you get good at the fundamental craft of like writing when it comes to eventually when you want to do your own original thing i guess would be i don't think you could I, step I, up to that eventually. i guess you could but like i always feel like in this instance i just say you probably be better off just like creating your own thing um eventually sure but it, i i think I, I would say starting I, to, maybe it is starting just to get in elements of fan art fan yeah it definitely the cringe element sure but if you really are if, if you don't know how to write if you haven't read a lot yourself and you don't know how to just do basic descriptions of environments what do i what do i write what do i leave to the imagination how much detail do i put in my description of the surroundings what do i focus on in that sense it might be well i'm gonna write this scene from a film but i'm just gonna do it differently with right. the characters and the setting so how would i describe it is like how would i describe this scene in book form to somebody what is the best way to use text to get that information across? And I don't have to worry about establishing a, a world building or anything like that and thinking in my head about what a scene needs to be or the world I'm trying to create. I'm trying to get an idea across, which is probably the fundamental, I suppose, of storytelling. But I guess it is the fundamental. It's a question of will you benefit more from doing that rather than actually having to deal with all of those things? I mean, Because again, you can always just... Like, could you not achieve the same thing, I guess, by just um, starting writing a story that is set in a regular world where you don't have to deal with world building? It's two people in a room talking to each other. And yeah, you go but if it's there, three people in a room setting, talking to each then, other. But that's yeah, what I'm that saying. If you want to focus too. on character, you can be like two people in a room talking to each other. It feels like we're putting a lot ex more elements in by saying, well, it's in Harry Potter, but it's two pe So all the world building's done. So you just got to focus on characters. It's like focus on characters by having two people in a room talking to each other. Or just the easy thing of, like, get a group of characters, put them in a situation, any situation, don't think about world building and just think about how would these characters interact with each other. Like, I, I guess I, I would say that the ultimate thing is, like, I wouldn't... I would discourage doing fan fiction in favor of writing your own stuff, but um, it, it doesn't hurt, I, I guess, as well. And also, to address the point, this is not the adaptation thing. You can do this. I guess I would just say it probably I feel like there are many reasons why you would benefit from doing it as an original thing that you've done yourself. You can definitely do it. Fan fiction. And I think the so. most important thing is if that's what it takes to get your butt in the seat and actually writing, then that's better than not ever doing it. If, if yeah, that's just how you want to start. And yeah. If, if that if this what gets you if this is what gets you in the door to so to speak, and then you do a couple of these and you're like but I would change this and I'd change this and I'd change this. And then it starts to become its own thing entirely. And that gets you to do that. Then I think it's a pretty good place to start. I suppose because a lot the, of people write like crap because they just I don't know how to write. That would be the preface. Then fan fiction needs to become fiction at some point. Oh yeah, Your definitely. Fiction. Absolutely. Yeah. You but I think it's a good place forever. to get people to start. I think a better place to start is original. I will say, I, I think that I, I think that, um, I think that you will, Get benefit a lot more from learning the process of starting from scratch um maybe it is just me thinking about the cringe elements of like fan fiction uh, but that might just be an element of yeah when a lot of people start they're not very good at it like it's just the natural process of getting good at any creative enterprise you start off and you suck and you just keep practicing practice you get better um obviously uh, something glib suggests, which is possible, you could complete your fan fiction, and then just switch around all the names and maybe oh, like Fifty Shades of Grey, right? That was that was Twilight fan. She just changed the names. Imagine making Twilight fan fiction. Yeah, but I mean, it's like one of the most successful books of all time somehow. So <laughs> guess it worked out in her case. And um, I will judge it whether or not it was successful. 
And of course, the element of fan fiction as well that gets you is fan fiction is legally complicated. Um, you would, you would, it, it would be monetizing that would, yeah, that's that's when you start to key area there. Um, Feels like role playing games are probably a good way to learn how to. I, I, I would say, I, yeah. I don't, I don't know enough about like real life role playing. This game. is my character. Short idea of a backstory. How does my character respond to the events that happen around him? How does he get along with other people? Um, I think that would be a really good place to start, actually. And especially uh, if you move into DMing and you kind of are more responsible for the world building and the factions and characters that. You know your your players might start to interact with and meet and crafting stories and kind of thinking on the fly about well if my characters do this then how does my world respond to that what what are the consequences of you know if my characters decide to side with this person or side with this person yeah, yeah. that sounds like it would be a helpful way to go short stories as well good way to and I guess just read more. That'll help. Yes, read more. And one of the best ways to learn how to write is to, to read. read. You soak it up. I think Stephen King said something along the lines of, if you're not writing and reading for four to six hours a day, you're never going to see Well, what has he it? ever done? Other than write, like, 50 books. Yeah, other than that. <laughs> Chuck Tingle's yeah. written 50 books. Yeah. But then again, he's also a master class, so... Mm-hmm. That's true. Wouldn't accept anything otherwise. Uh, I think it's hard for prequel fans to separate the post-content media from the actual films, that and the glorious memes. That doesn't mean they can't say the films are shit. You can do it. I believe in them. Um... But the prequel era media, yeah, we had lots of great stuff. And it was uh, it was an era that was a lot more fun than the sequel era, I think, already. It's just um, yeah, remembered there was fondly. This... Yeah, we weren't doing these ridiculous thematic deconstructions of Star Wars and Luke Skywalker was actually fucking shit. None of that nonsense. Do any of you guys know why the scenes... Oh, wait. Um... I think I read them back to front. So, remember when someone asked Mola to read the lyrics to Face Fisted? And then Rags did because he's a Chad? Can we do that with Birthday Death Day, please? Birthday Death Day? I have no or idea you what have it is. To re I guess you have to... First off, you have to refuse to read it, and then I have to say, alright, I guess I'll do it. Alright, I refuse to read whatever that is. Alright, I will do that in a little bit. I will do that in just a moment. Once this, Once this game's over, yeah, I will... I will look up the birthday death day thing. Birthday death day. Hi Rags. Hi Longman. Hi Fringle. Hi Mootle. Hello. Oh, hi there. Uh, I just wanted to thank each of you masses for giving me inspiration to write the light novel I've been uploading to Wattpad and Web Novel for the past couple of months. It's already gotten a few uh, six point k six point six k reads. Nice. Oh, that's nice. great. That's really good. Cool. I have no idea how any of that works, but yeah, sounds cool. I think that's a bunch. That sounds like a lot to how me. Does it, how does it tell when someone's read it versus someone going on the page, you know? I just clicked on, on it I and guess, loaded the yeah. page. Hmm. Alright. Nevertheless. Mm-hmm. Uh, missed the second half of my first super chat about Madvocate. I shall go back. My bad. I will read another one out while I search for that one. Um, sees Mola has iron on both sides of the belt instead of iron on one and coal on the other, so he has to fuel the furnace by hand. Re, I'll I'll figure it out. Don't worry, I'm very inefficient right now, and that's all it's about. It's getting more efficient. Uh, thoughts on belated media's what if prequel vids? Um, I don't know if you guys have seen those ones, have you? I don't think I have. Mm -hmm. No. I think he rewrites uh. them. Um. I, uh, I'm not sure. If I've seen them, I haven't seen them in bloody ages. Um, oh yeah, so the second half of the... It was the Aquaman question, I missed it. Um, 
Uh, also, Madvocate's new parody video is fun. Have you seen it yet? Best wishes. I think Madvocate made a video where he praises The Room as a video essayist. Talks about his themes. Ah, I haven't seen that one yet. Video I can you can send to video essays to be like yeah it's easy what you do you could do it with everything. Um, I also watched his video responding to someone who responded to his video on the Flash. Madvocate is very dry. It's very fun. Didn't see those on my timeline thing. Kind of weird. Not a true fan. It's a YouTube thing that just happens sometimes I guess. Oh sure, blame it on YouTube. I mean. I'm watching you, Mel. I'm watching you. Are you? Wait, where are you? You want a beer or something? I'm right here. Yes. He's staring at you. <laughs> Bump -a -boom. Um, I forgot to ask this as well. Did you see the bird person episode of Rick and Morty? This season has been rough, but it felt like that episode was good. Um, I haven't watched any episodes since like the the Go Go Power Rangers weasel thing. Yeah, I think so, so. That's when I watched too. What happens is Jay says. Guys, when are we gonna watch the rest? And then we go, yeah, at some point. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's very pressing. Yeah, this is, it's more. It's become a meta thing now. Of just you realize what we're saying and how it turns. Out. It's like, man, they killed it. Damn. But we'll probably see them at some point. Yeah. Um, watch Arnie's Japanese commercials. They're not copyrighted. Also, which content creator do you guys watch or listen to on your free time? I've seen some of the Arnie Red Japanese Letter Media is probably my number one. Yeah, I've watched uh, the, the bunch too. YMS I watch a bunch of. Um, I mean, I watch a lot of wrestling content. So, uh, that's that's that. Uh, Forgotten Weapons and In Range TV. Ahoy. Um, I watch Matt Dale yeah. Honey sometimes. Fire uh, Department Destiny. Chronicles. McToon. Um. Oh, sorry, MC Toon. Gamers Nexus. I like, like Armchair Historian or Armchair History. That's a little Regular series. Regular Cars is one. Oh. Friendly Geordies. Um, Dankulo. Carl Jobst. 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 Hmm. That's one. Try to keep up with what's going on. Man, this is amusing, right? Because I was just doing that thing of like, you shouldn't do fan fiction. A Fox in Space, a St Star Fox fan fiction animated series. Try to keep up with that. It's really, really great. I mean, but that thing is so good, it didn't have to be Star Fox. Like, it, no, it, it could have been. Well, it could have been its own. It's yeah. it's incredibly impressive for a one man production. Um, I'm pretty sure after he's done with it, he's going to make an original thing. Incredibly excited to see what that will be. Um, immensely talented. That he is. Have you heard of Local 58? It had a very refreshing and unusual style of horror storytelling. I think you'd like it, Mola. I have not heard of it, no. At least I don't I think I have. I haven't heard of it either. Can't say I know what that is. Um... Get me some of these. Uh, playing the loss is so frustrating, dude. Don't do flash it, Mel. Just don't well. do it. Like, flash get. Yeah. Oi Morley, oi Morley. Is that even your real name? If Buffy's so good, why don't you marry it? It's because you're gay. Got him. Love Whoa. you and Buffy. Oh. Yeah, they don't let you marry TV shows. Yet. We'll get there. Oh, uh, let me see. Yeah. Birthday, death day lyrics. Oh. All right. All right, here we go. Oh, this is the death clock song. Okay. Ah. Here are the here are the lyrics for birthday, death day. D E T H D A Y, right? Uh-huh. Many years ago today, something grew inside of your mother. That thing was you. You, 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 you. Did she scream? Did she cry? Only those that are born are the ones that get to die. One more year closer to dying. Rotting organs, ripping, grinding. Biological discordance. Birthday equals self-abhorrence. Years keep passing, aging always. Mutate into vapid slugs. Doctor gives a new prescription. Bullet in a fucking gun. One more year closer to dying. 
Plastic surgeons fuel the lying. You forget why you came in here. Your mind rots with every new year. RSVP, please, for the death of thee. You have little time, and you're running out of life. Happy birthday. You're gonna die. Right. Now you're old and full of hatred. Take a pill to masturbated. Children point to you and scream because they will become that thing. One more year of further suffering. There's no point of fucking bluffing. Open up your death day present. It's a box of fucking nothing. RSVP, please, for the death of thee. You have little time and you're running out of life. Happy birthday. You're gonna die. Die, die, death day. Birthday, death day, die, die. Death day, birthday, death day. RSVP, please, for the death of thee. You'll have little time, and you're running out of life. Happy birthday. You're gonna die. You're running out of life. That's, uh... This that's the Death Clock Lips. song, all right. Yeah, yeah that's, uh, that's them. I even remember that the beginning bit you did, where it's just Nathan Explosion, just, it's like a pause, and he goes, And that person's you! Or something like that. <laughs> Metal Lock Lips was good fun, I recommend. I enjoy watching the clips on YouTube sometime, yeah. One of the best recurring jokes was uh, they have a specialist to explain something to, like, the generals in the episode, and Mark Hamill voiced the guy who was introducing them. And from what I was told from a friend, don't know if this is true, the writers kept trying to write names for the scientists that Mark Hamill would struggle to say and just to, like, make <laughs> him laugh and stuff. And I used to know a lot of the names, but they would just be... Fucking absurd name. I wonder if I can get them. Gotta be help online. <laughs> it's a really weird show. Um, it is a very strange show. But believe it or not, not nearly one of the strangest shows that have been on uh, Adult Swim. But it's an <clears> odd one. <laughs> so, yeah, there's a list here. There's normal ones like Dr. Gibbets. And then you got... Eamon Skargarak Frederick Chauvin, <laughs> Donald Gorthian, Am Amomolith Chesterfield, Ronald von Momnolberg, <laughs> so stupid, <laughs> Dr. Natasha Nesianskidovich, Vincenzo Di Alamimala Corningston III. <laughs> Just stupid fucking names. <laughs> Horace. Marmling Blatt Wimpelstein Jr. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think as it went on, they just kept making them stupider and stupider. Commander Vernum Chuntspington. Chuntspington. <laughs> Chuntspington. <laughs> Richard Reinhold Renwala Wobbage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so Mark Howell just had to pronounce these fucking names, and it was always hilarious. Um, you'd think time traveling to stop Mysterio from revealing Peter's identity is a better move than memory spell, but MCU Don't, sucks uh, at time traveling. Well, no, that yeah. wouldn't do it. Changing the, remember, changing the past doesn't change the future, according to fucking Smart Hulk, which is hilarious that that's what he's called. <laughs> Professor Hulk. Have respect, please. Wow, technically he's called Smart Hulk. That's what he's credited as. Again, hilarious. Wow. Seems like you just smart don't old. agree that he's very smart, that's all. I, You're just jealous no. of his smarts, and you want them all for yourself. Mm -hmm. He's got a big brain, but I don't know, something's not working. Like Jimmy Neutron? Yeah. I feel like Smart Hulk's brain is probably bigger than Jimmy Neutron. I don't know, Jimmy Neutron's got a pretty big brain. He has, I'm he sure. has, his brain is so big that at the end of every episode, he has a brain blast. Yeah. So, kind of got owned there, huh? Silence. N now I'm just thinking, like, Jimmy Neutron, that is, like, old. What we're talking about. <laughs> Media properties. Tis like, indeed. Relative to... Why? Well, I, I think it's one of those things where it's like, oh yeah, that was, like, 3D animated in the, like, late 90s, early 2000s on television. The early 3D animation, where you look back and you're like, ooh. Oh god, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully the um the novelty was enough to carry you forward, I guess. 
<laughs> no. Wait, what is that? Have a look, see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so embarrassed we have a long layover, so I roasted a chicken for the airport. Okay. At security, they took my bag. The dude says, my man, what do you got in here? And he pulls my shit out and yells, a whole chicken? And everyone in the line started laughing at me, especially the bad ones. <laughs> oh. You should know you can't put a chicken in your bag. You, you should you should know. Come on. That's why I paused with that. I was like, it's hilarious, you, though. You need a chicken, okay. A whole chicken. A whole chicken? <laughs> Imagine being that security guy. He's like, okay. A whole yeah, ass chicken. That's a story he's going to tell for a while. Oh, yes. I would tell everyone. This guy's got a fucking chicken. How embarrassing. Uh, I was using Google Chrome on my phone the other day, and against the white background, I noticed I have an EFAP logo burned into the bottom right corner of the screen. I watch you guys too much. Oh. Hi, Rags. Wow. Hi. <laughs> and don't worry, those will go, those will go away. So just uh, don't don't panic, but those do go away. And it means you're watching us the right amount, I'd say. Correct. Mm -hmm. You should just get a dedicated EFAP mod. Well, it sounds like you have a dedicated <laughs> EFAP monitor. <or> <laughs> uh, hey, Muller and Co. Currently enjoying an Uber modded Left 4 Dead 2. Was wondering if y'all thought prequels could be good if done a la Game of Thrones. Also, high rags. Um, Hi there. So you must not be referring to the latest Game of Thrones content to arrive at our doors. Um, maybe, are they talking about like, maybe the prequels would be good if they were done in a TV show format? Is that where they're going with that? No. Maybe. I mean, if you wanted to combine the events of the prequels with the Clone Wars, potentially, then that would have been something and then you could have done. Straighten it all out, correct it all up a bit, because we hear from Theo that the Clone Wars has some uber cringe in there too. Yeah, I'm at the event more than the show. Yes, can't wait for Machine for Pig stream. It's a pretty decent game. Really enjoyed it. Not as much as The Dark Descent, obviously, but still pretty damn good. I, I don't know about that. I don't know if I want to go that far, but... Pretty damn I good. I never finished a Machine for Pigs. I just was... I just... I don't know. I guess I just got... I don't know. The uh, there's a speech at the else? end that was pretty good. Say that. Yeah, that's what I hear. <laughs> but um, fan fiction tends to get a lot of comment and feedback very quickly, through which can help an aspiring writer figure out what they are or aren't doing. Mm -hmm. I suppose that's a benefit. You'll have people who might be more interested in checking your stuff out because they'll be more willing to engage with it based on a popular IP rather than your original thing. Yeah. Is that what I get? Right. Um, hello. Saw some behind the scenes clips from Iron Man 1. Crazy how much effort went into making the real suits. Remember when the MCU movies were good? So, those th sorts of things on their own shouldn't be signifiers of whether or not something will be good, but it's certainly a signifier that they've got some passion in there. Yeah. Neat. And, um, yeah, the real suit stuff, like when they lost the real suits, you, you feel like you've lost something. Something's gone. And, uh, you know, it's it's not like CGI suits can't work, it's just, I don't know, uh, something, something, the clunk isn't as there anymore, in a good way. Um, oh god, they're absolutely rebooting Saints Row and they made the gangsters look like hipsters. I've heard about this, uh, yeah. I'm... Yeah. They're gonna make it less edgy, it's like, huh? Yeah, what? Saints Row was always edgy GTA, but now we're, I guess not. Wow, well, I think we, I think GTA was kinda edgy, night. but yeah. Edgy, yeah, we, I think we did talk about it. They said, like, no, we're committing. It's like, well, yeah, I mean, I imagine you can't change that much six months away from the game coming out. <laughs> yeah. But, like, why would you do this? Seems like nobody's happy. Um, it looks, it seems like everybody wanted it to be more like Saints Row 2 seems to be the one that everybody liked. Yeah, yeah Saints Row 2 is a favorite. Happened. It does look like really like hipster kind of thing. Yeah. It is such a shame. Or is it? Maybe it'll be really good and everyone's just being really mean. Imagine if it is, yeah, really good. 
Wait, that'd be replying to people on Twitter? Oh boy, let me see if I can find some of those. That, might be that doesn't bode well. <laughs> no, it, it's, it doesn't, it seems to never like yield good results. Hmm. After a machine for pigs, would you stream Bioshock Infinite, Mahler? Well, we're not masochists. <laughs> <are> um, <laughs> if I do Bioshock 2, which I might eventually do, I know people are going to want me to do Infinite, and it's like, oh. The only thing about doing that that I'd find tempting is I can just play it and criticize it. <laughs> Be like, look how bad this is. Boom. I could practically solve world hunger at that point. I'll be so powerful. Don't make me play it again. I would never do that. Liar. Ever, ever, ever. I'll make you play DS2 Bye. again, though. That'll be funny. <laughs> um, the Gupster. Just saw that from an article by Inside the Magic that Disney is reportedly cancelling The Mandalorian after Season 3. Thoughts? Also high metal. I don't... I doubt that, but... I mean, um, if they're going to split off all of their fucking cameos into their own shows, I guess they've realized that The Mandalorian doesn't have anything in it. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> it's just like, maybe we should just <laughs> ditch this one. I'm amused by the idea, but I wouldn't expect them to ditch Mandalorian. It's very popular. Badly. Hmm. <clears throat> I'm trying to find cringe tweets, but... It's a whole bunch of these, like, it's it's kind of like corporate cringe, you know, like, responding to things like, oh, yeah, it's going to be real cool, this game that we're making, it's going to be super cool. Um. Well, I'm sure it is. Is there any reason to think otherwise? I don't, I don't know. Oh, uh, well, so, so, like, <laughs> somebody was just saying, like, oh, it's not, like, purple, the logo's not purple, because, like, that's the color of the series. And then mm. they said, well, you don't start out as Sage, you gotta build to that. It's like, what, I don't, why would you even respond to that? Like, what, I don't even, feels yeah. like you're not really achieving anything here at all. It seems a little unnecessary. Oh, oh boy. Um, so somebody said, like, um, I do like the old characters, will they be in there? And then, um, and then somebody said... And then they responded, oh, like, it's a brand new story in a brand new world, so it's like a total reboot, not in the same universe. Mm. And then they said, somebody said, you could sum that up with one word, no. And they said, it seemed rude. It's like, oh, man, I'm like, <laughs> kind of cringing here. Like, Seems so really... unnecessary to respond to a lot of these things. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, somebody said, delete it and restart. And then they responded with a meme that is Simon Cow shaking his head saying, it's a no for me. Oh. Um... Yeah. Stop fellow kids saying. Like, <laughs> or at least it yeah, feels like pretty it. much. It's kind of funny, right? Because, like, yeah, this Saints Row started as, like, this edgy thing, and now it's, like, yeah. this sort of almost corporate thing. This is what happens if you tell, like, Monk to be edgy. This is what you get. Some people don't so, even know what you're referencing, yeah, so, Ranks. Okay, so... Oh, oh, the show? Yeah, I know. Because I'm cultured, but some people wouldn't. Yeah, man, it's a jungle out there. Mm-hmm. So here's, here's an interesting one. Somebody said, normally reboot shares something with the original games. Why make it a reboot when it's nothing like Saints Row? It makes no sense. Just call it something else. They did it just to hype up clingy fans and make more money. They're fooling people into thinking it's Saints Row. Poopy face emoji and bin. <laughs> and then they responded, doing a reboot like no one has ever done a reboot before. Pretty Saints Row if you ask us with a thinking face with the emoji, the hand uh... on the chin looking up. It hurts like my God. <laughs> um, I, I like how all of the questions are like, is this related to the original games I like? And it's like, no, <laughs> it's not. What, it's no, yeah, like, what like, we're going to do is we're going to deconstruct the old games you like, and we're going to take a shit on all the things that you liked. It is one of those moments of like, so oh. what were you expecting? Who were you appealing? When you say Saints Row, everyone, it's like, were you surprised when Saints Row fans turned up? <laughs> I guess yeah. so. Here's an interesting one. So they had to tweet out, yeah, you create your character. And then somebody said, why wasn't that in like the trailer? And they said, it's a cinematic CGI trailer. We have never previously needed to showcase customization in our announcement trailers. It's like, well, if this many people are saying, wait, can I still custom... 
I mean, here's something worth thinking about. You've said that this game is very different to the original. Is it not unreasonable for people to not know whether they can customize their character anymore? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you get a brand new character, character, brand new world, brand new mechanics, or seemingly like trying to make it really different. Is it not reasonable that people might be like, wait, can I still customize my dude? <clears throat> Oh man, this. Uh, why are they just spawning so many people? <laughs> Definitely AIDS. Maybe they just paid someone to do it. Maybe in current year, they just pay someone. Oh to no. Tweets. Oh, do you well, know what somebody... memes are? Yes, okay, answer these people. <laughs> so, apparently, there was a deleted. This tweet is from an account that no longer exists, and the response oh. was, You played it then, upside down, smiley face. It's like, ah, so somebody was saying that they didn't like what it looked like. It's the old meme. Have you played it? Oh, man, this is like... I don't know, this feels like a really bad marketing strategy, I will say. Just oh, responding to what people. do you know, Fring? Have you ever marketed a strategy before? <laughs> Have you ever made a Saints Row game in 2021? I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. Wumbo. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, 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 no. So that's all good news then. Fantabulous. People are excited for Saints Row's coming back with a vengeance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would prefer a good Star Wars fan fiction oh, than a me a modern Lucasfilm Star Wars story at this point. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, yeah I, I think that's all great. I was talking about was what I thought you might benefit from from writing standpoint. I guess that was all. There are four tennis balls on the cliff. If you shove them all up your ass, the sequel trilogy will be great. Will you do it? No. Tennis balls? Four of them? Nah. Oh. No, yeah, no, no, Disney thanks. made their bed. Fucking lie in it. I don't want to go... I don't want to undo all that stuff. I think there's a lot of value we can get from making fun of it. Plus, we would not have met. Yeah, maybe it's not. It's very likely that we would not have met if The, the Last Jedi never happened. Because imagine, it's like, I wouldn't have met you because of Game of Thrones. You'd be like, what the fuck is that nerd shit? No. And then, <laughs> Marvel, rags, you know, you just, you just you weren't that into Marvel at all, were you? So. I wasn't really, no. There you go. Never would have met. In fact, maybe we'd even have been arch nemesises because rags ended up loving the new Game of Thrones. You just Yeah, maybe I love the themes. Yeah. Rags, don't you do that for fun? No. Not four tennis balls. They're like all gritty on the outside. Yeah, I don't. Th I don't think that's going to be pleasant. Yeah, there's just... probably someone out there who's like, "No, that's just my thing," and you're like, "Okay, well." Okay, weirdo. Yeah. Why don't you go have your fun? Ain't nobody stopping you. Um. Do 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 do. -do. Carl Jobst new video had a raid sponsorship, but he prefaced by saying, "Just like Billy Mitchell is amazing, so is Raid." Obviously, being sarcastic. Oh yeah. I mean, they'll do anything they can, I guess, to try and signal to the audience that please don't actually buy this bullshit. <laughs> like that would be a bad move. I just, I just want to take their money. Well, you got to put food on the table, I'd say. Yeah, it's either this or I die. Guess I'll die. What do you want to do? Die? <laughs> the hero, Hassan. <laughs> what a response. Yes. Yeah, what do I to do? Die? It's like, okay, calm down. Hassan, <laughs> you're saying weird things again. <sighs> um. So what are you Dumbo's opinions on people doing sarcastic sponsorships like Carl and Inter Historian? Also, play DDLC, you'll like it. Hashtag ad. Um, I don't know why they would get, uh, off the hook, where other people don't. Yeah. Seems kind of weird as a system. It's like, don't worry, I was joking. It's like, oh, <laughs> okay. But you still got paid, though. <laughs> yeah, you did. Um. And the ad is probably still going to be effective on some level. Totally. Uh. Like, otherwise they wouldn't. Yeah, they wouldn't bother the if it wasn't working, yeah. Yeah. Rags, Bible fact of the day. Also, hi, and then emojis that I think are all of us. Hello. 
Bible Hello. fact of the day or Bible verse. I assume they mean Bi Bible verse of the day. What's a fact about the Bible for the day? <laughs> Uh, let me see. Bible verse. That I'm going to go to where I always go, which is verse of the day dot freaking com. Uh, it is Romans chapter eight, verse 28. Mm. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who oh. have been called according to his purpose. Well, there you go. They have a thoughts on today's verse and a little prayer there. And today's verse illustrated. No, it's just a meme. <laughs> It's like, see, right here, here's what it says. Here's what it says, okay? And this is what the, uh, this is, what about fucking boomers is what, the, today's verse illustrate. He's like, no, that's just, that's not, no. How is that illustrated? You just, uh, first thing, <laughs> that, it's not illustrated. Secondly, this has nothing to really do with, you could put that on any verse. <laughs> <laughs> This is two people holding hands. Yeah. Uh, oh, Mary uh, how, uh, Hoos Nelson said, This was one of my favorite verses in all of scripture, and I quote it to myself often. Aww. Especially with all that's going on in our world right now. There is so much fear among us. She said among us. Among us. <laughs> among us. Fear, <laughs> among of us. Pandemic, fear of terrorism, fear of jobs, etc. As God's children, we need to keep verses like this close to our hearts and repeat them to ourselves frequently. I don't know the how these things will work out, but I trust that they will, for God's word says so. <clears throat> oh my God, it keeps going. I, oh my God. <laughs> One, two, three. There's three more fucking paragraphs of this bitch talking. She's got opinions. <laughs> she has got opinions. <sighs> wow. I think it's cute that she's got opinions. About Mary, jeez. God damn it, Mary. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> uh, Calm the fuck down, Mary. Bringy. Someone said read oh. Ezekiel 23, 20, King James Version. Well, I guess since we're here, let me... <laughs> well, we're here now. Oh, I know this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know about this one's yet. Yeah. There she lusted after her lovers, mm. whose genitals were like those of donkeys, uh -oh. and, whose emission, <laughs> and whose emission was like that of horses. Oh, my God. I, that's what a uh, good one. I do remember that one. That is a good one. What a whore. I don't think that never was a one that we had to read in church. Uh, what? Yeah, weird. Never one of the, that was never on the... No, I never won that yet. It's so educational. Can we can we read the verse with the, the penis in it? Oh, uh, listen, I don't know. No. If, don't tell me their mission was like that of horses. I'll be the judge of that. Let's see it. Come on. Let's go. It seems like an exaggeration, you know? We don't like them in this house. Um, Fringy, you do realize that most writing of shows is essentially fan fiction? There may be one writer who creates it. But any assistant writers for that episode are writing fan fiction. Well, I. What what point do you think that you're making? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> Dude, sure about that, that. That honestly feels like downright uncharitable. Yeah, like it's almost like they're like, trying is that to say some that kind of gotcha? there's no real draw difference between the average person writing in their house about a property they like versus someone working on an IP as a result of contracts and. Just the obligations to create a TV show. It's like they're doing fan fictions. What's the difference? Like, what's the difference? <laughs> There's gonna be a lot of difference. What even makes it like, fan fiction at this point? It's like it's gonna be IPs and rights. Yes. It, it absolutely has to be. Like the company decides what's canonical. Mm. Like as much as we don't like it, the sequel trilogy is canon. True. Like it's not fan fiction. Fa like fan fiction as whether or not it's good or bad is a totally different conversation. <clears throat> ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Like if you want to write fan fiction, that's that's totally fine. All I was saying was that I personally feel like there are a lot of benefits that come from working <clears throat> on an original project. The and that obviously long term, like. Even if you are writing fan fiction, if you want to do it professionally, like at some point you transition into creating your own stuff. Uh, Mueller and friends, thoughts on what if series? It's terrible. Yeah, I don't it's like really it. Really bad, yeah. Really painful. 
Um, sad that really that's where bad. we're at, I guess. The uh, first and second one were awful. They're the ones. Even more multiverse. What ifs of these characters? We've seen. I think all of us have seen the first two. I don't know if any of us have seen the third one now. Uh, I've only seen the first one, one actually. Yeah. 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 I've even started the second one up. I might watch three and four together if I have any fucking reason to. <laughs> I don't know that I will. <laughs> uh, we shall see. Death Clock is such a great fucking rat. Um, yeah, that's the band in Metalocalypse, and they're a real band in IRL, right? Death Clock. Where's my splare? There she is. And then I need the one that goes underneath. Oh, I'm just such a good factory person. No. What? No. It the why why must you be so mean? Because it's bad. Wow. It's stanky. It is big stank. Stanky bad. Big stank. Big stank. Ow yeah. Who'd win in a fight? Splash. Stank is up there for my least favorite words. What is? What? Stank. Oh. What about Tony Stank? Unpleasant. Tony Tony stank, stank, I don't like it. Oh. At least there's a Tony at the front to soften the blow, but... Mm, oh, no, it's stank. Really don't like Stank. Um, well, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay, no. <laughs> Didn't mean to upset my sorry. Stank. Didn't mean to do it. Uh... Who would in a fight, Splat or Sharting Onion? Hmm. Splat <laughs> has many forms. Yeah, it that's does. what I was thinking as well. There's like Soldier Splat and Muscle Splats and Splat Splats. Oh, that's a thing. The, there's a little mini game that got made about Sharting Onion. We'll have to show that on uh, EFAP Meme. <laughs> really? Yeah. There is. It's very funny. I saw I saw that one fan art someone made of the Sharting Onion. That was really nice. You might say it's gorgeous. 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 All right. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't. I, I wouldn't want to call who's going to win out of them. But it does seem that Spot is much more of a mythical being, capable of like godlike properties. While the Shotting Onion, yeah. he shots. Um, I, I personally he shots really spot. well, though. It does, but doesn't it kill him canonically? Um, goes into space. Hmm. He explodes in the original animation. Oh no. Well, he hits right. the barrier of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> so he's strong, but he can't outmatch the barrier of the universe. And, you know, what does that mean? What does that say about him? I don't know. Um, everything from Ruckus is absolute gold. I remember what is Ruckus? The... Is that Rucka Rucka Ali or something? Is Ruckus from Metalocalypse? I don't know. Uncle Ruck? Is it Uncle Ruckus? Maybe. Maybe. Um, watch Uncle Ruckus's origin. It's only like a minute, and it's fucking hilarious. I'm I'm like lost on this. What's Uncle Ruckus again? I I don't what, know. From Boondocks. Oh yeah, I haven't seen Boondocks. I watched a little bit of Boondocks. But... Why didn't you watch a little bit more, Mel? Hmm? Sorry, I wasn't. Me, me, me. Hey. Sorry, me, me, me. Hey. Too late, I already said yes. it. Shut up, Dingus. What is to be said cannot be unsaid. Mm hmm. Should probably make what more of it? these things. Man, I have a lot of coal. Uh, I feel like a miner. Do you want to shovel it in your coal hole? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. no. I'll do it. Thank you, Rags. Metalocalypse was one of the greatest shows ever. Binge the first two seasons and in, in the last two nights. Everyone watch it. I mean, yeah, oh, it was wow. Pretty awesome. There's a lot of clips on YouTube. The quality's crap, but yeah. They um I think they tried to get like a like a one more season or one more movie to sort of close it out, but Adult Swim was like, nah. Not happening. Yeah. That must suck. Now, I might be making this up, but from what I remember, the fans were very passionately trying to get it back online, and Adult Swim did a thing where they streamed emails to them requesting that it come back, 
being printed out and then fed into a shredder. Wow, <laughs> that's fucked right. up. I can't remember, like, someone in chat, I didn't make that all of that up. I know that comes from somewhere, so if you can help me out. But, like, as as pissing off fans go, <laughs> that's probably that's gonna be up there. Up in there. Top tier, yeah. You're correct, lol. Oh. Happening now, actually? Um, but yeah, I, th I guess that did happen, yeah. Venture Brothers is amazing and well worth a watch. Fair enough, I haven't heard good things. Oh, you. Um, yeah, Venture Bros is good stuff. One of my favorite specialist names was Dr. Tormenbind Mick Middenden. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, Dr. Roxo, the rock and roll clown. He does cocaine. Oh, yes. Um, according to Endgame's own time travel rules, bringing the stones back shouldn't erase the alternate branches created. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's it's a disaster. Don't worry, Don't worry about <laughs> Don't it. It's worry a disaster. About it. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, now I want one of you to sing the Jimmy Neutron theme song. I don't remember it. I don't remember. Um, yeah. Let's see. Was it? It was Take to the Stars by Candy Bars. Uh, he's a kid with a knack for adventure, a super powered mind, a mechanical canine. Bark, bark. Rescues the day from sheer destruction. Uh, this is the theme song of Jimmy Neutron. I think that's how it goes. I, it's mm. been many, it's been years. And then he says, Got a blast. And then the episode begins. But I haven't seen that in years, so I think that's it. Intriguing. Um, Bollocks. Everything from Ruckus is absolute gold. There you go, that's, that makes more sense now. This, this can't be. It says I'm 102% African with a 2% margin of error. Why? Why, white <laughs> Jesus, why? What is this? 102% African? <laughs> uh, for Mayor, uh, for... Uh, Sideshow Bob, 100%, and for Mara Quimby, 1%. I do remind you, there is a 1% margin of error. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, and then the, the ad. They even, you know, Mara Quimby even let out a man, Sideshow Bob, like, twice convicted of attempted murder. <laughs> Can you trust a man like Joe Quimby? But Sideshow Bob for Mara. <laughs> Oh, yeah, like this, uh, that's just like a great comedy. <laughs> he let out Side Your Bob, vote things, for Side Your Bob. When I was a kid, I didn't quite get it, but when he was in court, he just put down all of his documents for how he how he committed election fraud. Like, each one, a work of Machiavellian art, and it's got like his name <laughs> printed on the front. <laughs> I deride your truth handling abilities. Handling abilities. And I remember this was another joke I didn't get it as well, but just like the Republican headquarters just being a fucking Transylvanian castle. <laughs> <laughs> with, the, with lightning in the background. Yeah, they had that, then, that well, joke in, uh, in the Elephant episode where they go through both the Democratic and Republican parties. I think the Democratic one is we don't know how to solve anything, and the Republican one is just well, we're evil. Remember that joke with Sideshow Bob where it was like, um... You can't keep the Democrats out of the White House forever. And when they get in, I'm back on the streets with all my criminal buddies. This is the thing: the Simpsons really well. had plenty of fucking political commentary. Oh, it really had tons of on. political commentary. Yeah, tons of political commentary. I think it was just that you'd be young enough that you wouldn't necessarily understand it. You sort of laugh with it. Welcome to Fox News, your source for evil. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> a nice episode, and it's like, uh, for the Republicans, like Sideshow Bob, and it had like the American flag waving in the background, and for the Democrats, this guy. I have a name. Yes, I'm sure you do, comrade. <laughs> <laughs> he had little devil horns drawn on him as well. <laughs> I'm sure you do, comrade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I really need to rewatch old Simpsons. Yeah. I know I watched a lot of it as a kid, but I don't remember fuck all about it. I wonder if J. Michael Straczynski might be getting Doctor Who. That would be something I'd watch. Um, 
Yeah, because uh, he's the guy who made JMS, he's the one behind Babylon 5, um, and he has a lot of respect from a lot of people. Though, he's also the guy that apparently, because I didn't even really know this, he's the one who wrote, like, the infamously worst Spider-Man story. Um, uh, the one where it's Doctor Strange One takes, more day? Like, yeah, I think it's, it, there's two, right? One more day is one of them. There's another one? Uh, oh. There's another one that's really bad. I can't remember which one he wrote, but he apparently he wrote one of them. Um, or both. I can, what do I know? Uh, so people, like, remind each other of that before being like, yeah, let's get it, because it's just like, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 guys, stop, stop. Um, but I mean, yeah, some of it, one more day. Clone Saga? Oh, Superior Spider-Man? Which is the one where, like, basically Doc Ock gets put in Spider-Man's body and then he becomes Spider-Man and Spider real Spider-Man dies, so it's like a Doc Ock Spider-Man. Man. Is that Superior Spider-Man, I think? Sounds like a really weird storyline, but alright. It does sound like a very strange storyline, yeah. Um... Yeah, there's Superior Spider-Man, alright. But yeah, it is, um... People just remind me of that, but like, I'm sure he's gonna be way better than Chris Chibnall, like... If you were to be put in there, but I think the only thing people are going off is the fact that he tweeted himself at BBC, like, Hey, I'll take over Doctor Who if you want, and I don't think that's gonna be enough to... ...do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, that isn't how they... Well... Is that not how it works? I can't just... I mean, for all we know, you know, for all we know, someone said, some part of BBC, like, hey, he... This guy said this, and they'd be like, oh, who is this guy? Oh, well, I mean, okay, maybe. I don't know. For all we know, that's how flimsy it is right now. Um... So, I've just seen a tweet. It is James Corden, Camilla Cabello, Billy Porter, and Edina Menzel stop traffic in LA for a flash mob with a cover of Jennifer Lopez's Let's Get Loud to promote the Cinderella movie. What? I think I saw that on my Twitter and as well. It oh, has... you get the fuck out of the road, you piece of shit. So, yeah, yeah the tweet has 1,300 retweets, 14,000 likes, 23,000 quotes. <laughs> I like how quote <laughs> tweets are now your indication of like yeah. ratio at this point. There's never the tweet and is yeah. never well loved if it's well quote tweeted. No, that doesn't seem to happen. Um man, that's like goddamn, just getting in the middle of the road to promote a movie. Yeah, like, I thought you were gonna say it's some kind of weird thing about I don't know, like protests or something. I was just gonna be like, oh okay, but a no, movie? They're, they're just yeah, I'm Dude, like, no, like, I gotta go to work. To work for a living? <laughs> yeah, Disney. Some of us have to work for a living. Oh, no, no, no. This is, uh, this is Amazon. This is, like, another Cinderella film. Oh, my God. Oh, do they do... Yeah. Oh, I guess Cinderella's probably public domain. Yes. It's... Wow, well, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you never know Disney's bullshit. Does, does that mean Spider-Man will be entering... Captain America would be entering public domain in, like, not that, like... 20, 20 years, right? It's Superman as well? Well, because Superman was created in the 1930s. Hmm. Right, now That'd anybody be... can ruin him. Yay. <laughs> Man, imagine you're driving to work and you see, because in the video, it's James Corden is wearing like a mouse suit. It's like, uh. dude, this is not what I was expecting my day to turn into. Imagine how awkward that happens. would be if you don't care about this film, which is most people. Most people. <laughs> just like, you just be, what? A, what? It's weird tactic to like promote a movie. Jeez. I'm sure everyone's really happy. It's like one of those scenarios where, where there's like one guy that's like one bad day away to get it <laughs> falling down, spree, and then get like blocked on your way to work. So okay, that's it. That's the day. I'm gonna kill them all. It's <laughs> 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 like over it stuff only goes into public domain if no company maintains use of it i don't think that's how that works that's not how it works because mickey mouse is going into public domain in like three years it, it it's it seems like it's a little bit more complicated when it's like something that is owned by a business like mascots and stuff like that but eventually it goes into public domain yeah uh... How many uh, have any of you seen the Boondocks? I haven't, but I think I've seen a little bit. The I've seen episodes of the Boondocks. 
I don't even know if I've seen episodes in chronological order. I think I just found some on YouTube and randomly watched them. Well, there you go. Hello, Ragu, the great Fagu. Oh, hello. Sorry. Give us a random hot take of the day that we haven't heard already. Oh, a new one? Go for it. Uh, ra new random hot take. Um... Oh, wow. I'm not sure. What's topical? What's what's new? <laughs> What can we hate today? Um, <laughs> I feel. Oh, here. I guess here's me. I guess it's sort of a hot take. I feel bad for all the people who might have lost their livelihoods with the OnlyFans sexual content ban. I actually kind of feel bad for them. I, I yeah. heard they backpedaled on that. Uh, well, they've suspended it, from what I understand, which means ah, they okay, haven't okay. stopped permanently from yeah, yeah, committing to that decision. Oh, okay, okay. But I, I know you're not. And I, I know they're they're all a bunch of uh, you know worthless hoes. Like I get, it, I totally understand. But <laughs> I do I do feel bad that if that's been your livelihood and you're doing that, and then all of a sudden you get an email that says, "Lol, you can't do this anymore." Like I I legitimately feel bad for that happening. I guess I I'm, not, happen. I'm not against well, guess... sexual marketplace doing this thing at all. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. What was that. the reason why they wanted to stop? I heard it was something to do with payment processes weren't happy with. That's it. what I've heard. I don't know how much that is true but that's I what wonder. i heard yeah get a real well, job you think i mean about the if tumblr it's, thing. I, I look tumblr it's free got... market all right i don't just get a real job like uh funnily enough they do more work than fucking hassan does <laughs> oh shit <laughs> yeah true. like i don't i definitely don't want to promote the idea that you just get an email one day from something.com and your, your livelihood's gone yeah mm. like especially me being me and us doing what we do i really <clears> don't like that idea? Well, yeah, I mean, of course, I wouldn't want to wake up one day, YouTube, hey, you go gone, see ya. Like, that's not... That's not preferable. Not yeah, sounds, uh, sounds really bad. And hey, man, I mean, smoke them if you got them. If you're, if you've got a really great looking body and people want to pay to see your tits, I mean... Yeah, like, ugh. I don't... Yeah, like, the... I, I was gonna say I don't get it, but I do... The best like, version of all of it, I'm more than happy for it to continue as it is. And I wouldn't even go as far as saying get a real job. It's like, I mean, if you take good care of your body, and then you, you do all... <laughs> I don't know how it so works exactly. They can send a request uh, and stuff, the, I imagine. So apparently the concern that banks and payment processors had was to do with illegal content on the platform. Oh, well, of um, course. It, yeah, like you have to do you can that, get rid of that. Which I guess, that's a matter of only fans needs to, like do a better job of policing their platform in that case. They're not careers? So, it, would would a porn star be considered a career? I'd imagine so. Yeah, it is a career. Absolutely. Yeah, it is. And well, so, it's a job that you do for money. And so, OnlyFans is like, not the same as a porn star, but I mean, it's we're getting close. At this point, you're going to have to be well, like, the, the boxes like we're ticking are going to be a little bit arbitrary, I'd imagine. I'm against Kuma culture. I mean, I, I want it to be specifically for consenting adults. That's what they want. It's like, go for it. Yeah. Um, I mean, if regardless of how tasteful I find it or how valuable I find it, I mean, it's, it is what it is. I mean... Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't see it as being, like, a valuable thing at all. Um, but that's not for me to decide, I guess. Is there not value in people being free to be able to do that with each other? Well, no, that's I what mean, I'm saying, is like, I don't, I'm saying that I don't care about that type yeah, this of this is the stuff, natural result like, of a free wanted... society. You're just gonna have to deal with it. Yeah, that's, I agree with that's that. That's what you get. That's what you get. Put up with it, get it. I mean, you just have to, you're gonna have to deal with it. I'm, I, I'm, yeah, I, I agree. I'm, I'm anti the whole simp culture too. But if we're yeah, gunning, if we're gunning for the... The stuff where it's literally just like a guy or girl is just like, you know what, I want to see that person naked. I'll pay, I get it, and then I'm happy, and that's it. You know, that, that that's fine with me. You do you. <laughs> that meme. It's <laughs> <laughs> a show it on stream. <laughs> <laughs> I probably can't play that because copyright. Yeah, probably oh, that's good though, yeah. Uh, if you're not showing it, the meme is in The Simpsons when Homer was chasing after Ned and his family to play golf, but James Corden is superimposed him, <laughs> him wearing a mouse costume dancing on the road. <laughs> <laughs> the background. 
What a, has he ever been in anything good? <laughs> I don't think so. I think that's the the thing because he's in Peter Rabbit. Those those ones, right? The the new Peter Rabbit movies. Are they, are they good? I hear that they're not. Oh. So, well, I don't even know what the Peter Rabbit stuff is. I have. Oh, uh, just like live action CGI hybrid Peter Rabbit stuff. All right. Thinking Peter Cottontail, hopping down the bunny trail. Hippity. Nanny, so. you up for t what did he say? Like two, because he's wanted to play golf. That's all I remember, specifically. Nanny, 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 <laughs> and the the blank eyes, like the two one thousand. Also, what is everyone's favorite writing tool? Pen. Um, word processor? What do you mean? I like writing my tool? keyboard. Or, or do you mean? Yeah. I'm not sure. Do you I mean, mean like, like a specific? You're thing talking about all the apps and stuff. Or, or maybe... I use WPS Office. Oh, I use Microsoft Office. I'm uh, it's Microsoft Word is what I use. Yeah. A big fan of Microsoft Office Word. Love, love it. Um, I, use I guess it's Office. like. What's that? Sorry. I use LibreOffice. Right. <laughs> Loser. Fuck. If the if the question is like a writing like <clears throat> a specific tool that isn't like a physical tool or a piece of software, but some sort of template or anything like that i do like just the good old-fashioned you just make a table break up each section for each character and then just write down name traits like beliefs what what do they do for work nice way to have them all lined up and to keep track of people saying word is trash i'm used to word ingrained in me i know how to use Mahler's it. his notepad that's what he uses for goodell that's his favorite <laughs> I've, not even I've Notepad. Seldom use Notepad. Not even Notepad plus plus, just no. <laughs> just oh, yeah, base right. Notepad. Notepad is a good guy. Wouldn't knock him. He does his job. Super easy. To... Yeah, it's just handy to have Notepad around. Um, uh, hi Rags, hi Shlombos. Y'all should give Alien Fire Team Elite a try. It's not Colonial Marines, I promise. It's like a six to seven out of ten game IMO. I've heard it's not. Oh, yeah. I've heard out. it's yeah. not terrible. I've heard it's it's pretty decently reviewed. I mean, I'd be down for giving it a try. Yeah. I kind of forgot about it now that I just remember it because it was mentioned. Is that on Xbox Game Pass by any chance? Yo, hmm. Let me let me have a look. A Psychonauts yeah. Two is out on. That's on. And all the Quake games are on Game Pass too. Recently added. Hmm. Oh. Um, and. What? Oh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of things. Solitaire, Microsoft Solitaire Collection. Oh, Excellent. Yeah. Now we're talking. Oh, yeah, we, Age of Empires 4 has a release Lord. date. Age Sorry? of Empires is coming out in October. Yeah, but still looks like shit, so... Does it? I think it looks okay. It looks like a fucking mobile game, really? I think it looks fucking awful. What, you mean like the way that it looks in terms of the art style or the actual game itself? Because I haven't seen as much for like what it looks like in play. I mean, like, I've seen like the gameplay stuff. Like the animations looked super weird. The graphics I, were kind of fucked. I like it. I actually really? like the way that the game I'm looks. I'm shocked, actually. <laughs> All right. Well, I I think um I think I'm just when I'm thinking in my head, it's like I guess what which maybe I need to remind myself because Age of Empires two was the one that I was more familiar with. Um. I can't remember what that game quite looks like. I have a certain thing in my head, but that's not a game that I have touched in a very long, very, very long time. Hmm. I'm gonna look at the gameplay again. I, I, I like was, the way that it looks. I uh, I think I was, that I, the yeah. assumption that was uni universally said that it looks pretty fucking bad. <laughs> so that's why I'm. I guess I'm, the problem is I'm sitting here thinking it's like. There is a matter of readability will be an important thing, I imagine, just for from a gameplay standpoint. So making sure that everything looks very distinct in terms of who's who and what what uh what units you have just feels like that's just an important part of making sure that you don't get too confused. Let's look at the game official gameplay trailer. This looks like ass. <laughs> yeah, no, I I. I... I uh, I guess I disagree. I think I I'm looking at that one. I, I think it looks all right. Really? Okay. Weird. Well, I I guess what what would you what do you think are the changes that you would want to uh 
make to make it uh, look better? Is it more like a more raw, realistic look, you reckon? I think the textures just look really outdated. Like, if I, for example, look at this oh, gold yeah, vein. That, I it's guess like, that's... Jesus. The fucking trees and everything. <laughs> the animations look kind of super, <laughs> super duper basic. Oh. Like, Let I'm super off Let me Age of Empires 2. I need, to, it. I need to remind myself of what that game Well, Age of Empires 2 is not even really 3D, is it? Like more no, like... it wasn't, but but uh, I guess it's like if we're tr if they were trying to emulate, I get hmm. Actually, you know what? You're starting to convince me now that I think about it. Like um, <laughs> in, terms of, in terms of what they probably should have tried to go for, because I remember I remember being really impressed by Edge of Empires as a kid in terms of like the way that it looks. Yeah, I think it, Edge of um, Empires too, I think still holds up. I think. Well, like, it's, it's just a, it's got a very super... raw, detailed, yeah, mm. sort of um. I guess that's the benefit that that game had because a lot of it is um, pre, you know, like those pre-rendered assets. I think. Mm. Um, let me see. Yeah, it looks real. Actually, yeah, you know what? Or yeah, you make, you make, <laughs> give me that. Give me that big thing. I think that's the thing now. I'm reminded of as well is that it was much more zoomed out in Age of Empires too. Hmm, that could be. Um, and so this one seems like really zoomed in. Everything's bigger. Hmm. Yeah, P people think hmm. they just pushed it out super quickly because it's. I think it's uh, Game Pass exclusive. If I'm not. I thought it got announced years ago, though. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure Age of Empires Four got I, announced like three or four years was, ago. That's a completely out of my dread. That's just what I heard and read. Let me I see. Think they just pushed it out because they have just make the game well, and get the money anyways because it's on the Game they, Pass. They have very few games like for Xbox and stuff at the moment. It's um. Huh, let's see. So it was in 2017 they announced it, and now it's 2021. So it's been four years mm. since it was announced. Anyway, it's being developed by Relic Entertainment, who made like Company of Heroes and stuff like that. Man, I feel bad about Ensemble because how they uh they knew that they were getting shut down before Halo Wars got released. So mm. it's like, hey, finish this game and then you're fired. <laughs> that's not a that's not a fun <laughs> oh, way man. to work on a project. Um, and apparently they had a lot of resistance from Bungie throughout the entire process. Like Bungie were very unreceptive to uh to the exist. They didn't like the existence of the game. Um, I think even the frame rate on this video is like super low. Hmm. I, I know Shouldn't that's be just low. It's one of my like least favorite things about you. You mentioned it earlier. It's one of my least favorite things about StarCraft is how zoomed in it is. I fucking hate that I can't zoom out further in StarCraft. I had, it bugs had, me. The, had the same issue when I played it. I felt like all the time I was like, oh, I'm pretty zoomed in. Let me zoom out. It's like, oh, that's that's it. Like, no, this is all you get to see of the game. And I'm like, fuck off. This is so <laughs> fucking annoying. It makes me upset. Please, please I like StarCraft as a game, but fuck me. I just feel like I'm tunnel visioned. Mm. Why haven't they made StarCraft 3? What's what's the deal? Blizzard's why, why is... retarded. Why did Blizzard wait so long <laughs> to make sequels to their games? Well, it was like, weird. Except for I Overwatch they, 2, it... where it's the same as the first one, for the most part. It looks that way, anyway. Well, I think it's like the whole game-as-a-service thingy they do yeah. now. Where they just yeah. put out con tons of content uh, for it. And Seems just... that way. Um... I guess they've got bigger problems to deal with at the moment, though, than like, uh, yeah, sequels. still a little bit. <laughs> Maybe. Um. Metal, when was the last time you checked the game out? DST has so much added. If you liked it before, you'll love the 64-bit state it's in now. Uh, which, which game are we talking about? DST? DST. Dark Souls the... <laughs> Dark Souls the um, I'm what game did I talk about earlier? This one's from today, right? It's not from uh, maybe someone in What's chat it? knows. What's DST stand for? Devil's D sign. Space. Don't stuff together. Oh, oh, don't stuff together. Ah. Dark Souls two. <laughs> ah, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, don't stuff together. No, I haven't checked it out since. But just the gameplay itself wasn't really super appealing to me, so I don't think it's going to change a, much, a lot for me. I mean, did if, you play if, Supreme Commander? I did a long, long time ago. That's a fun game. 
that's a game I've kind of been lightly getting back into casually. It's uh, Supreme yeah. Commander Forged Alliance. I, and I remember that. That is a game where you can absolutely zoom all the way the fuck out and all the way the fuck in. You can, and you put, can see things. It's great. You can put your uh, your map on on a, on a separate monitor as well, which I always Whoa. found a really cool feature. You can, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't think it's gonna ch I wanna change uh, my mind on uh, don't stuff together. I mean, if someone wants to in here wants to play it at some point, I'm happy to join in. But on my own, I probably would be going to it. Like I said, I played it a little bit once, and yeah, I didn't get super into it. It's interesting how games like Subcom, they get just, they're, they're beloved and really highly rated. They make a shitty sequel, and then it just dies. Mm. And you're like, why don't yeah, you just pick like, the first one again? Why don't you just do like a game that's sort of like the first one that people love? Why don't you do that again? And no. Just, I don't know. I'm not a businessman. I I'm I don't I'm not a game dev or publisher, but sometimes I wonder. Yeah. Like, it's like happens? sometimes the solution is so easy and they just don't do it. Man, I don't know why I just got onto this thought. Maybe it's because of Age of Empires. You remember when there was meant to be like a command and conquer game that EA was making and then it got cancelled and then they made that mobile game? What was yeah. that called? Command and Conquer it, Total the Biscuit talked about it. What was it uh, called? Shit. I know what I'll, I'll look I, it up. Yeah, look it up because I Generals kind of, gen, Wait, I think no. Was, no, was Generals came out. No. Generals is like an old one. Yeah, no, it's um something else. Was it Chromatic Was it like a like Heroes or success, something? Was it like a successor to Renegade, like the FPS one? It was a mobile game. Uh, that was Where is it? Uh, Rivals? Cancel. Was it called Rivals? So, Rivals is such like a lame yeah. subtitle. It is. Like, yeah, that's like that is a mobile game name. Sonic Rivals. Rivals. Yeah, it is. Command and Conquer Rivals. <laughs> that's the one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, God, well, I remember was, that. Well, it's like the a shitty. It's like the kid gloves version of Nemesis. Well, yeah. there was Sonic Rivals, Need for Speed Rivals. That, that was another thing Total Biscuit talked about. Rivals on um, it was locked at 30 FPS on PC. Yay. And if you Ugh. unlock the frame rate to 60 FPS, the game was twice the speed. <laughs> like, so it broke. And it didn't work. DS2 had that. Because... If you unlocked yeah. it, it would uh, degrade yeah. your weapons twice yeah. as fast as well. Uh, <laughs> the game, there was a, there was a is... ported shooter on Steam as well, where it took double damage all the time because of the high frame rate. Uh, Which one was it? I think it was a PlayStation 3 title. Title. I was a little title. Little German there. I like, no, you. it's Tito. I like Tito. Uh, shit. What's that? I can't remember the name. I mean, the, I think that one of the cancel games was Renegade 2, which I'm I'm guessing would be another first person shooter one. Yeah. I think that's the last one that was canceled, as far as I know. This might that might have hmm. been the one. That uh, just is uh, another example of like EA gets the franchise and then like makes some shitty games and then just goes away yeah. forever. Or like they don't even make bad games, but they just it doesn't do as well as they need it to, so then it goes away. Yeah, it does fine. And you can't just make fine games. You have to make games that are insane blockbuster successes so that we can wow. make two more of them and then the next one we make will be shit and then the series is dead forever and then we That was the uh thing. Square Enix had the same issue with their Western IPs, like Hitman Absolution, which um, is definitely more linear than the, like Blood Money. Um, it came out, it sold like 3 million copies, that wasn't enough. And then Hitman was going to die, but then um, IO got to go independent, and then they started making it, and it was profitable again, very quickly. I remember Tomb Raider, that was the notable one, it sold something like 6 million copies, and that wasn't good enough. Because it costs it costs so much money to make. Um, Sleeping Dogs, I remember that game. That was really cool, and that sold like two and a half million copies. A brand new IP, and that wasn't good enough for them. Deus Ex wasn't good enough for them. But meanwhile, they can spend ten years making Final Fantasy fifteen, and like seven or eight years on Kingdom Hearts. It's not fair. Do you guys remember that <clears throat> that game by any chance? Like a third person, it's, it's a third person, fast paced shooter where you like dash around. You have like a uh, like a robot suit uh, on. Uh, a what? Sorry, suit. Talking about Warframe. Anthem. 
No, not Warframe. It's a, it's a single player game. No, not Anthem. Oh, it was a PlayStation uh, Three game. Vanquish. Like Syndicate. Vanquish. That's the one. Vanquish. Oh, right, that was uh, that was uh, Platinum. Yeah, that that had the problem with the FPS. What I was talking about. You you got like double damage, and it gets much harder <laughs> to play. Just... <laughs> well, that's one of the issues with the Dead Space One on PC. If you go, uh, if you the the higher the frame rate gets, the wonkier the game gets. Well, yeah. it's super interesting fun game, because... by the way. Uh, Vanquish. I've heard a lot of good things yeah. about Vanquish. Yeah. Um, I think the thing with the frame rate is it's just something to do with like, it's just a code thing where depending on how you've constructed the game, it, you can just have that issue where um, yeah. the, the frame rate is, is tethered to core gameplay uh, elements. I find it always kind of embarrassing when the devs go out. Devs are publishers are like, no, that's like in the code. You can't change it. Then some randy and then it's like, I fixed it. Well, you want to know how? It's like no. <laughs> there seems to Fuck you, Randy. Be some sort of fix. It's it's. I guess it's a problem of if you were making the game and you didn't know you were going to put it on PC and you were just going for thirty FPS anyway. I guess maybe it's easier to That's do it like thing. that. Yeah. Like I get it, but like nah, there's just no excuse outside of that narrow reason excuse. But even then, That's if it. you put it on PC, it should. I like. I'm sorry. I expect to be able to play it at high frame rates. Um, if you port it over to PC, like, you gotta, you gotta fix that problem. Don't just lock it to 30. I remember when Mortal Kombat 11 came out, like, there were, there were elements of the game that were locked to 30 FPS. You'd play it, and it's like, oh, 60 FPS, like a fighting game? Yeah, cool. And then when you do your crazy, like, X-ray moves, it just goes to 30. It's like, this is so jarring and crap. Why would you do this? And then there was, like, a mod that came out a week later that fixed it, and the whole game runs properly. Yeah. Yeah. The, the freaking menus were 30 FPS. Like, when they what? worked. Oh, well, that was Mortal Kombat X you're talking about there. Yeah. <laughs> Fun times. Jeez. Like, uh, man, Nether NetherRealm's PC ports, and then Injustice didn't even have one. Injustice 2, rather. It's just not on PC at all. Um... Oh, frog Australian person. Favorite and least favorite characters in Red Dead Redemption 2? Um. Huh. Hmm. That's a bit tough. Um. It feels unfair to say that Arthur is my favorite because he's the main character, so he got the most development and was the most. Com I feel like if you ha if excluding Arthur, because he probably would be at the top. Um, man. Ah. Oh. Uh, I feel like Dutch is fighting for that place. I really like Charles. Um, he was he was he was a, he was a good one. Um. Damn, I'm not sure. Uh, I feel like it'd probably be Dutch. Yeah. Um, Dutch being, like, interesting, because, of course, like, I have a lot of, like, Dutch is, uh, he's, uh, he's got a lot of them problems, but he's a super interesting character. Um, I like John more in Red Dead Redemption 1 than I do in 2. Um, probably just because, again, main focus. Cynical observations about the world reminds me a lot of like typical, you know, Rockstar Games protagonist. Least favorite. Was so I see someone shouting Lenny. I do like Lenny, but we don't get a lot of time with Lenny. Um, as for least favorite, Micah feels like the obvious choice, but I like him as an antagonist, so it doesn't feel like a. It doesn't feel like that makes sense. Um, hmm. I'm not sure. I like a lot of those characters. I'm not sure that there are many that I really dislike at all. Like Sadie a lot. I'd, I'd it'd be cool if she was like protagonist in a later game. It, it, like if they're gonna make another one, I, I'd I'd be cool with seeing Sadie's adventures up in Canada. Oh, Hosea was awesome. Yeah, Hosea I really liked as well. Hmm. Yeah, there there's there's some of your answers. A whole yeah. bunch of characters. <laughs> Also, does that place you live in exist yet? Love you, your frog stallion, you. Australia, thank you. Australia does exist. Stop <laughs> gaslighting me.
Mm. <laughs> Gaslighting Australia. I'm walking around and just like, where am I? What is this? What's what is this on? void? It's also scary. What just a load bring, of poor shit. Just bring it on his PC. This is all there is here. <laughs> in a, in a, it's all yeah, a simulation. White void. <laughs> Uh, why were you late, Mauler? James Corden in Edina Menzel and Billy Porter were dancing on the Metro. Well, you could have called in advance, <laughs> Mauler. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Could you imagine saying, why were you late for work? I don't know, fucking James Corden was in a mouse costume <laughs> on the road. <laughs> Listen, okay, I know you won't believe me, but I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> um, love your work, guys. You've helped. Show them the memes. Oh, the just you would have pulled the out your phone, I imagine. To prove it, to prove it, your boss is just like memes to prove. I'm it. sorry, I ever doubted you. <laughs> my mistake. Uh, love your work, guys. You've helped inspire me to make my own YouTube video with more to come. Patty the platypus, if chat is interested. There you go. Glad that we sounds could. Sounds a lot like Perry inspire. the platypus from uh, Phineas and Ferb. Ah. That's a good show. I liked Phineas and Ferb, but it was just fun. Hey, we're on summer vacation. What's our next adventure today? What are we doing? Yeah, there was a lot of there was clever stuff in there. There's a lot to There's like. There's 104 days of summer vacation. And school comes along just to end it. And then I forget what it goes after that. This sounds a lot like Lincoln Park for some No, not Lincoln what? Park. What was the Fallout Boy? What was what which hmm? I don't know. I like, they got a little Park. meta with some of that thing. Like wow, yeah. like summer. I feel like summer's been. I feel like summer has been like three years now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Little things like that. There was there was some good stuff in there. There was a lot of good stuff in. It's like for... the most matter that got in uh, Simpsons of the Family Guy crossover. How long has Nelson been beating you up? And he's like twenty five years. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but they also had the meta joke where Homer, when he was fighting Peter, and he got all of his Emmys out of this drawer and just starts throwing them at Peter. It's like that's not fair. I ain't got none of those. <laughs> Good stuff, yeah. You know, Family yeah, Guy yeah, got nominated. Know. Do you know Family Guy? Well, this might depress you, Rags. Uh, when Family Guy came back in like season four, it was the first animated show since the Flintstones to be nominated for just outstanding comedy, like just in that category, not the animated one. Simpsons was never nominated for that. Damn. South Park was never nominated for that. Uh, really? I don't get it? I don't understand. Was, so, South, Simpsons South Park and stuff, like, Family Guy has never won an Emmy, but Simpsons South Park, Bob's Burgers, Futurama, they've all won Emmys because, like, for the outstanding animated program, but it's not as common that the animated show gets nominated for the outstanding. It's the same with the, the Oscars. Beauty and the Beast was the first animated film to be nominated for Best Picture. Um, and then Up and Toy Story 3 got nominated, and it's like, man... Fucking lame that like Wally -E and Monsters yeah. Inc. and Finding Nemo and The Incredibles never got that nomination, but Up and Toy Story three got it. Yeah, they miss out because they're just born the wrong time in a way. Yeah, born at the wrong time when yeah they weren't allowed to win those awards. Basically, yeah. I mean, Best Animated Feature didn't even exist until like two thousand and one, but when Shrek got it. At least there's some justice in the world that it got it. Mm -hmm. Well, mo yeah, but Monsters Inc. didn't get it because that was a good year for like those films, and yeah, and I mean, I guess it's it's one of the things that you you see when you look through the list. It's like Disney and specifically Pixar just dominates that category to an extent that I would say is unwarranted. Um, I'm pretty sure that Spider Man Into the Spider Verse was like the first non Disney film to win since like Rango. Or, or in That's fact, it might have been. It might have even been before that. I think it was. Um, I remember that the one that I read was that it was the first film to win where Pixar wasn't also in contention since two thousand and six. Like, well, how about that? Because that was Cars. Two, that was when Cars came out, and that was like the one time that something else won. I think Happy Feet got it. Rango was good. Yeah, I like Rango. Um, can we watch some Boondocks clips, Hassan style, please? Oh, I, I think that's Hassan an illegal. Style. Uh, copyright on individual works expires if it's not extended again. Trademarks for Mickey keeps being valid as long as they use Mickey on products. 
Oh, oh trade marks is a different thing. Yeah, trade marks you can you can still keep doing, but like just the overall is this product available in public domain? That's uh just independent of any other fact. Seems tends to be the case. Yeah, but um, Mickey's running out, and they're all. They're yeah, good. it's uh, like I said, three years. Um, unless Disney gets it extended again. Yeah, which they're probably working to try and do as best as possible. I would imagine. I mean, the legislation that came out in the nineties is colloquially referred to as the Mickey Mouse Act, <laughs> because like Disney was instrumental in helping uh extend the the whole thing. Then again, I'm not super familiar with that whole, you know, escapade. Um, I think there's literally an OnlyFans out there where a woman gets paid for making gummy bears out of her own urine and shipping them to people. <laughs> the beauty of hey, capitalism. It's <laughs> fine demand, man. That's probably... People want that, and that's, that's a mm. stanky process, I imagine. Oh no, Jeez. Michael hate it. Yeah. The, the, uh, yeah, cause I don't like the word stank, that's right. Mm -hmm. I don't, yeah, it's just, ugh. It's, it's just, just ugh. Ugh. Like, my nose rankles at the sound of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, would you consider Chernobyl, Chernobyl, uh, a near 10 out of 10? The only flaw I can recall is the Yulana Komuk getting into the Moscow hospital off-screen. I don't um, think I've thought uh, about it. I'd have I, to yeah, think about it. it. I really like Chernobyl, but I will say, you got to be careful about saying things are like 10 out of 10. Yeah, that's the um, thing. I think it's really or good. Or even 9 out of 10. Or even yeah, 9 I haven't been 10, super yeah. critical of it. Um, there's a like lot it. of value there, though. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I'd have to look at it critically to make sure. But you d yeah, you don't want to get in a situation where you're saying like a show is like a consistently like a nine or a ten because it's like man that is a yeah tough like oh hit, but... oh yeah like every episode's a nine or every episode's a ten that's like ooh man that's a really a high really bar. high bar you gotta you gotta reserve those numbers for um and it's funny right because you're trying to apply it to like ones and twos as well as well unfortunately the last year has just not been good in that regard <laughs> for twos out of ten made a lot of those in terms of mainstream stuff Yes, yeah. sir. Um, she's been arrested, so I doubt she could just walk in. If she'd snuck in, I'd argue that should have been a scene. Oh, that's related again to Chernobyl. Um, so I said you can't really review a whole TV show. Yeah, my yeah, you can. can. We've done it many times, actually. <laughs> yeah. Of course, you can review a whole TV show. Why not? It's a long movie. Why? Why could you not? I don't know why. Why would you say that? <laughs> Why are you doing that? Don't say that. Very bizarre. Um, glad this EFAP 150 catch up is going well. Peepo hee hee. Oh, you're amused by it. That's that's great. Yeah, it's going well. Sorry, I meant for stories. What writing tool work is your favorite when done well, like revenge plots or something? Okay, or... Thank you for examples, that helps immensely. Um, um uh, anything that's done well. That's that's. I don't know. I'm not. Hmm. I do like a good revenge plot. I do like a good, you know, Edmund Dantes bride kind of story. Um, Be right back. Uh huh. Um, because it, it gives you, especially if you establish early on why you really want to root for this character, that can help a lot. Um, and seeing how far they'll go and if they have limits, that sort of thing. Build. Uh, hmm. I don't know that I have a preference. I count just like anything when it's done well. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do like revenge plots. I like, um, I like a good detective-y story where they're trying to piece together all the, the evidence. Like Knives Out? I like a good disaster film too, like underwater, where something happens and the people have to make use of what they can to get out of a dangerous situation. Black Widow? Uh, disaster movie? <laughs> yeah, kind of. Stop before I scream. 
I can't believe I, I went I went a whole like day without thinking about Black Widow potentially. <laughs> <laughs> and you took it away from me. You killed that from me. <laughs> References. Aren't they fun? Yeah. Oh no. Uh, someone asked, why, does, why doesn't Tony know about his parents' death before Zemo shows him the footage? All the hydrophiles were leaked. Oh, oh, that's a good question. And I bet there's an answer for that. Maybe they'll get it one day. I don't know. Mm, yeah. That's a good... You know what? That is a totally fair question Let's figure to that ask. one out for yourself, actually. Yeah. That, that is legit a fair question to ask, but there just might be a reason for that. Yeah. Bam, 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 bam. Hello. Wait, did Mel come back? Ew. Sorry. <laughs> the faint sword. I didn't mean to. Yeah, well, above my microphone. Microphone this. <laughs> Do you think Grace Randolph gave her boyfriend a tomato? Yeah, maybe. Rotten one. She made him <laughs> rotten. That's not, like, that's not slang for like herpes, is it? Or a no, hemorrhoid? a tomato, because she gives out tomatoes, remember? I know. And yeah, that's the intention of the. I'm yeah. sorry, but I. No, I that's fine. That's fair enough. I think direction. that's a good. It's good to be reminded. Yeah. It is. Um, do, is she the? Is she in a stable relationship? If so, I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't <laughs> I'm telling you, man. It must be. Just her shrill voice. Every time that bitch opens her mouth, you just want to go shut up. You're, wow. you're, the, the noise you are making is horrific. Just because you disagree with her noise. opinions. No, it just makes her terrible opinions worse to hear. Mm. It's like the blurriness in Army of the Dead. Um... Look, Rags is right. Though I'm very socially conservative, let's say, even I've considered becoming a gigolo. I mean, do you know how much money you can make? People should do what they want. A, a jerkolo? Gigolo. Oh, those were the insane clown posse role players, right? Yeah. I think they're just, they're just, they're just they're, they're, all I know is Deuce Bigolo, European gigolo. That's what I know. Pretty sure it's just prostitute person, man, I guess. I've never oh, looked at the no definition of gigolo. Or maybe that's a juggalo is what I'm confusing it with. You mean it's juggalo, yeah. Ju okay. Yeah, I didn't know that gigolo was a, a term for a male prostitute person. Uh, which is hypocritical of Bungie? The original Halo framework was that of an RTS game. Uh, then they considered 3D person. Third person, sorry. Um, then settled with what we see today. Tusk, tusk. I guess I'm not sure oh. why they didn't like Halo Wars. I didn't know. Maybe it was just the aspect oh, of they wanted to have total oh. control over everything yes. Halo related. So, so that as the story goes, they were unhappy with what they considered to basically be their baby being handed off to somebody else to work on. Um, that's understandable. Mm -hmm. It's understandable, but at the same time, like, it seemed like they were kind of cold to the to the development team, and it's like, it's not their choice like they have to do this they're owned by microsoft um it was like a project that was given to them but yeah i i can understand not being happy with like oh there's like these other people who are going to be making a halo story when like we make halo that's like our thing however based on every interview and all of the the things behind the scenes it sounds like ensemble were very much dedicated to being authentic and accurate to this universe I hear generally um, good things about Halo Wars 1 and 2. I like Halo Wars. It's, uh, I haven't played much of Halo Wars or Halo Wars 2, but I, I like them. They're, I enjoyed it a bunch. For an RTS game, yeah, for an RTS game for console, like, pretty good, um, by that standard. You can still have PTSD from Captain Cutter using his, um, like a thingy strike and then launching 108 ODSTs onto your base. God. Pain. <laughs> and that's not including the army he has. Fucking Captain Cutter. Yeah. Uh, we're <laughs> talking about our roleplay making sense, not movies. Like, introducing new characters that... That that entirely recontextualized... What the fuck is this? Are you right back? 
like introducing new characters that that entirely retcon textualized a CGI starter since the owner didn't want them to be evil anymore. I don't really understand the words you're saying. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna well, try I understand and, the words, I I'm don't gonna, quite get the sentence. I'm gonna uh, try and read it again because I'm very confused. We're talking about our roleplay making sense, not movies. Like introducing new characters that that entirely recontextualized a CGI starter since the owner didn't want them to be evil anymore. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm lost. Still, I'm still to do with that. Um, they follow up with, Most of my text-based roleplay have been combat, CRP, or just wholesome relationships, or hanging out, or saving the world. ERPs are pretty self-contained and rarely cross over with my mainline RPs. It's an ERP. And a, C a CRP is a combat role play? Yeah. So like playing like combat in Pathfinder and Dungeons and Dragons? I'm honestly, I'm just, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do with this. Uh, I'm a little bit lost. I don't know if it's contradicting anything we've said or if it's just telling us about something they do. Uh, I guess thumbs up. I, I, I'm afraid I just, I don't know what else to say. I'm sorry. Um, I'm a big fan of your content, Muller. It's addicting to hear you pointing out all the bad writing in the MCU shows. You going to work with more editors to make more videos? Also, thoughts on Loki? Well, I'm gonna have to assume you didn't know. But we've got a whole stream on Loki. We went through the whole thing, pretty much. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we make fun of it regularly. Yes, a disaster. Yeah. Uh, if you've come here from having seen the Black Widow video, uh, we've actually, on this little show we got here, we've done a breakdown of WandaVision, Falcon the Winter Soldier, and Loki. If you search for any of them plus EFAP, you'll find a whole video waiting for you. We were not fans of either of the three shows, or all of the three. Um, all three of them, yeah. Not fan. Oh, for you, that, that, that'll, that'll be fun for you. Uh, it's okay, Fringy. Wyoming also doesn't exist, yet I live there. Ah. Wyoming, oh. uh, if I went to America, I'd like to visit Wyoming. Feels like a lot of natural scenery there that would be cool to look at. I've been to South Dakota, and it was gorgeous, so... South Where, Dakota. Yeah. Help me out here. Is Yellowstone is in, South, in, in Wyoming, right? I think so. Something like that. I've... Yeah, I think so. Uh, I like to go to Yellowstone, as as you do. Yeah, yeah. Seems, seems mm -hmm, pretty typical. Mm -hmm. I've done that a few times. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It is in Wyoming, of course. What happens if I do this? Oh, that's not oh, what no. I want. I don't know. Hmm. I need filter grabbers if I want to do that. All right, fine. I will do it this way instead. Genius. I am so clever. Um. It's a, a, a porn is bad because you'd expect her to do cartwheels like you saw there, and then you end up disappointed and break up. Also, Penguin play GTA SA. San Andreas, I guess. San Andreas. That would. I heard that there's there's a. There's a rumor that they're going to be remastering three Vice City and San Andreas. My God! And yeah, yeah, I will, I will buy those in a heartbeat if, uh, if they, if wow, they do. Consumer. I, would, I would, yeah, no, I'll, 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 I'll <laughs> yeah. happily consume Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, um, especially those ones. Like, th there is kind of a man. I do wonder how how many changes I would want them to make, though. I, I think, um, I think I'd want them to keep everything the same, just update the graphics have it be a, a game that is easier for me to you know like engage with uh um oh. wait does does rockstar make grand theft auto games anymore well i mean grand theft it's funny right grand theft auto 5 is eight next month eight years old that's how long ago it came out um, I'm pretty sure it is all but certain that they are making Grand Theft Auto 6 and it's going to be set in Vice City, but it's not coming out for years. Um, unfortunately, the online stuff just makes a lot of money, and so there's a big incentive to keep investing in that rather than make a new game. Um... 
But yeah, as for porn is bad because you'll expect them to do things and stuff. Don't you worry. That's you. That's <laughs> not the porn's fault. That's your fault. Yeah, you you just have to learn about what's happening there and what isn't happening in other things. And and just, just have to make that separation. You'll be fine. Wait, this isn't automatic. I just have to have robots to do it. That's kind of annoying. Unless I'm screwing this up. Also, get out of my thing. Eh. There we go. Um, I guess I'll just, I, I could have sworn there's a way to like copy and paste better than this. Um, where do y'all get the film footage for your vids? Uh, Generally, YouTube or other places. There are. If we need to. Always recommend that you can pretty much find anything you're looking for on good old YouTube clips. Um. There are, there are many, many ways in which to acquire clips. You gotta be uh, careful about how you do it, though. You don't want to be want to be stealing stuff. Yeah, that would be bad. YouTube, would, but but Mahler is pretty much right. If you if you need a scene from something, generally YouTube will have it. Hello. Hello. Mm -hmm. Machines making machines. Currently on a minus 25 win streak, thanks to the lost. Well, if you don't tell anybody, then who's gonna know? They can see it when I stream. Them. What? What? Yeah, it's fucked up. I was gonna say. That's, that's abusing your freedoms, eh, Mel? Boop, boop. Um, I am a cleaner of theaters and saw the start and end to the new Candyman. You wouldn't believe how anti white it is. Oh, that's a shame. I don't know, maybe I would believe you, I've unfortunately. Seen, I saw Jay Longbone's coverage of the trailer, and um, I've got a vague understanding of Candyman. And like, it's a really, it's a cool IP, and it's gonna get ruined. It gives oh, just, no. uh, everything else gets ruined. So shocked. Mel, why are you shocked? It happens to loads of stuff. Oh. That's because I'm retarded. Idiot. <laughs> yeah. Boop, boop. Boop, 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 boop. Where are we? I've concluded that Guardians 1 and 2 are better than Civil War, and possibly the best in the MCU. The only thing off is Drax in 2. Thoughts? Um, I put Civil War above them, but uh, that's because this is, this is it would be, take a while to explain why. Um, but Guardians 1 and 2 are pretty good. They are pretty good, yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely two of the ones I like a lot. Have you read those opinion blurbs from the Academy people who vote on what animated movie gets an award? They're so dismissive and outright cruel. I can believe dismissive it. Dismissive and cruel. Um, the problem, that's the problem with blurbs a lot of the time. If you summed up what I said about Black Widow in a blurb, I would sound pretty fucking harsh and unsubstantiated. <laughs> Before the video came out, I had so many people telling me, like, come on, Mauler, like, it's not that bad, it's just a m sort of middling w movie. And so if I'd come out being like, it is the worst one, it's terrible, it does everything wrong, they'd be like, yeah, okay. But then if you hear me say it after four hours of my points, you might you might be like, oh, you know what, I can kind of see it, I can kind of see it. And what matters more than that? Also, there we go. In fact, you think it's middling is why I need to make this video. Yeah. <laughs> Been trying to fix this stupid stuttering issue I've had in Oblivion for the past four years. Can't seem to get rid of it no matter what, but let's re-release Skyrim again, I guess. Curse you, Todd. It just works. Do they never re-release Oblivion? Don't know that no. I know of. Damn. I don't think so, that's just the original version. That's mean. You think they'd be all over that with how popular Skyrim was. They'd be like, yeah, this is the game that came before Skyrim. It's kind of like it, but better so you can go ahead and you could download it Ooh, and it's going to get remastered with all the mm. dlcs included Ooh, boy oh very sexy very sexy indeed um i asked fan fictions i have ideas for some stories with canon stories and i'm afraid if i make my original setting it'll just be a cheap copy um, then be creative. Start with something, tweak it, change it, modify it. Broaden the amount of things you pull inspiration from. Yeah, I was gonna say, don't give up. Just because you're like, you know what, if I change some names here, it's just too obviously a Star Wars ripoff. It's like, keep going. 
And then you're like, oh, you know what? What if I involve something from Indiana Jones? What if I involve something from Jurassic Park? Here, let's throw a dinosaur here. Dinosaur planet. Now it's not Star Wars at all. Um, hi, Rags and others. Hello. Hello. Hi there. What's your favorite revenge movie slash story? Personally, mine is The Count of Monte Cristo, from the books to the movies and even the anime. I I like that one a lot. I argue, Probably my favorite book. Uh, it's been ages since I've read it, and it's a fucking chonker, so I do need to check it out again or get an abridged version or check out some movies of it, maybe. Mm. There's been plenty of movies done of it. Maybe some of them are good. That could be its own arc, the, the Count of Monte Cristo ad adaptations, but um, Kill Bill is really great. I like oh, Kill yeah. Bill a bunch. Yeah. Have you guys seen Death Sentence? No. The, I think so, no. The, the movie's like uh, essentially about a guy whose son gets killed in like a gang thing and he basically goes and gets revenge on the entire gang. Uh, the reason I like it is I'm not, I'm not sure how good I'd say it is, but I really liked it because he's really bad at it throughout most of the movie. And he's really struggling to get like shit done and things get really bad as a result of him having decided to do it. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing that again sometime. It's a very quintessential revenge movie. Hmm. I don't know if Taken counts. E yeah, I'd count it. Why not? A lot of fun. Django. Yeah, that's pretty fucking great. Oh, oh yeah, Django. I always really forget good. that's a revenge movie for some reason. Yeah, that is good. Hmm. Um. Do do. The biggest problem I have in stories is I want to set it up and have it react, but I don't know how to keep events happening. Hmm. Was um. Say that one more time. Uh, the biggest problem I have in stories is I want to set it up and have it react, but I don't know how to keep events happening. So the interesting thing is like, uh. Part of the big inspiration for Game of Thrones was just what happens next in Lord of the Rings. Was Aragorn a good king? What kind of problems did he face? That sort of stuff. Oh, right. The new, yeah, he's, he's a shit king. Fuck Aragorn. He's an actual asshole. Um, and he was a loser at everything. Okay, and everyone actually hated him. And then he ran away. Um, and he abandoned his family and Gondor. And he said that actually uh, Sauron was pretty cool. He was just misunderstood. And uh, we made a new character, and she's just the best, and she's great, and she's going to take over Gondor, and she's going to be the new queen of Gondor, and she's going to rule way better, and everyone loves her, and she's just the best sword fighter that ever fought with swords. So hopefully we wouldn't do that. But, um, you know, like the idea of uh, Robert Baratheon could very well have come from Aragorn, but changing qualities, being like... What if he was more invested in the fight rather than the the win or, or and like what does a great soldier end up doing when he's a leader and what happens at the worst possible times of those could he be manipulated and then stuff like that so i guess what i'm getting at here is just like if you've not got willed events to start dragging people into other circumstances you just try and look at the consequences of uh almost resolutions because then you know something that we brought up before that's kind of interesting but didn't get to happen was had Vader survived in Return of the Jedi and he comes back with Luke to Endor, like, how's that gonna go? Like, oh, hey. It's like, I helped actually destroy everything, so we cool? It's like, we ain't cool. We are fucking far <laughs> from cool. <laughs> uh, long. So, yeah, like, uh, I guess you just have to take into consideration what everybody's invested in doing and, and see what you can do with that. Um, or you can keep throwing on... Oh, more world events. I mean, that's pretty much what the MCU is doing right now. It's like, you done with Thanos? All right, we're going to bring you something else. Uh, Kang now. Do that. And then Galactus. Doom. Befesto. Um. Okay, I know we probably shouldn't do this too much, otherwise we'll get flooded with suggestions, but you know what would be really funny? If Rag sang the lyrics to Hitler Rap by Whitest Kids You Know. Everyone watch... WK UK, the hilarious Rip Trevor Moore gone too soon. I've seen some of their skits. They're pretty good. I don't know that rap though. Yeah, and, and we're probably not gonna 
I'm not gonna read no. out rap lyrics. It's gonna be a, gonna end up. We'll be here forever. Not that we're already here forever. <laughs> Spider-Man Homecoming, Far From Home, No Way Home, Home Wrecker, Home Invader, Homicide, Homeless, Homo, Lymphoma. Guys, I need sleep. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> Sounds like it. Uh, you guys should God do a... Fucking damn it. Sorry. <laughs> You'll survive, it's okay. You guys should do a Haunting of Hill House style video on Chernobyl one day. It's only five hours. Uh, the only thing about that that I would just... I would, I would feel a little bit inadequate because I just don't know enough about what actually happened to be able to talk about that as well as just how good I think the show is done. Feels... Well, that would be an adaptation thing, right? Well, what else would it be? Yeah. Would we have... Well, we don't normally read the comic books when we... Oh, yeah, but Chernobyl's, guess... like... That's a huge event that right. I really Chernobyl's would want to know. Unreal. Yeah, like... Uh, yeah, Hill, no, Hill House no. is fiction. So... I, from what I under, Chernobyl is complicated because um, there were a lot of things about it where they were tr they were trying really hard to be authentic, and then there are other aspects of it that are just. From I think the most contentious thing is the whole if we don't fix this, everybody in Europe will die. Like I'm pretty sure that is an exaggeration. It was really bad, but that was never likely. Um, the, 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 the worst would be just, like, long-term adverse health effects on a lot of people in, uh, in, like, Eastern Europe. Yeah, um, there's a lot of stuff I don't know about radiation that's gonna be I, useful. Yeah, of course. Naturally. It's, it's not, it's not, a an area of... And, and it, I guess it's a matter of what was the objectives with Chernobyl as a show, and I think it was more the... The process, like, how could this mistake happen and how would um how how would they you know how did they responding to it all right and one of the things that's been already mentioned in chat diatlov wasn't a cartoon villain it's like yeah that though i i remember there was a uh i think it was called zero hour it was like a documentary sort of dramatization series from the 2000s where i think he was portrayed as kind of like comically incompetent there as well um the real life situation seems to be a lot more complicated than that Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I guess it's a question of how much time do you have as well. Five episodes, not not a lot of time. Well, there's the thing, we haven't even done one for Bly yet, so... And we obviously want yeah. to... Um... I, I think uh, Chernobyl was really effective as a, as a series, though. Like, rega oh, yeah. regardless of the Absolutely. authenticity of it, there's a lot of, of stuff about it that's great from a construction standpoint. Like of stories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <clears throat> Mola, since you like symphonic metal, do you listen to a band Epica? E P I C A? If not, then I highly recommend them. They're a fantastic band. Uh, I've not heard of them, and perhaps I shall in the future. From having checking them out. If you're ever gonna cover two thousand five King Kong, you should also cover the nineteen thirty three version alongside it for EFAP movies episode. Perhaps we shall? Maybe. Maybe. Uh, I hear rumors that the GTA f remasters are also going to be more PC. Careful what you wish for. Um, I don't know why I would have a lot less reason to imagine that there will be toning down of the content, considering that, like, Grand Theft Auto has always been satire. I, when, when I say remasters, from what I understand, it would just be, like, the game, but with updated graphics. Um, no changes to the cutscenes or anything like that. I would be less on board with the remaster if it meant, like, re-recording dialogue and changing the dialogue and things like that. Yeah, um... That's just gonna get them even more trouble if they end up, like, remaking games like GTA oh, and then cleansing them all. Absolutely. Be like, ugh. Absolutely. Well, I, Grand Theft Auto is like the South Park of video games. They make fun of everything and everybody and do it in a very irreverent way. It's, um... It's already been confirmed about the censoring. How could it be confirmed when the games themselves haven't been confirmed to exist? I mean, I guess they could confirm their intentions if they were to do it, I guess. I don't know. Uh, yeah, but I mean, like I said, from what I understand, it's just a rumor. Like, there is no official confirmation of anything yet. I guess it depends on whether it's in-house as well. Uh, if it's Rockstar making it or if it's going to get be, be done by somebody else. Yeah. Uh, man, those games like time capsules for those 
you know, the early 2000s. That's, mm -hmm. uh, or I would be very unhappy if they started changing things. Yeah, I think a shit ton of people would, they'd have to really think about doing that. Yeah. Um, it has been mentioned, though, as well, that, um, uh, man, I can't believe I'm spacing on his name. Uh, Dan Hauser, who wrote basically every Rockstar game since, I think, even 3, he, he's not with the company anymore. So I am very interested to see what the next game looks like in terms of its writing when it's, it's we don't have the same people anymore. Yep. Trepidation everywhere for everything. Yeah. A wonderful era. Of... Uh, a clarification, the Academy blurbs are dismissive and cruel to animation as a whole. Many don't even bother to watch the nominees or their kid picks. Uh, yeah, oh, if, right. if you were trying to say like they're really cruel to animation, it's just like, yeah, a yeah, lot of eras I mean, of idiocy, unfortunately. Animation comedy even in general hot fuzz but science fiction absolutely yeah like or, or just even fantasy you kind of get a little bit tougher as well like lord of the rings really broke through in that regard um but contemporary dramas about horse shit yeah it's it's yeah it's fucking odd that's what we talk about oscar bait you just know that this movie is like oh yeah this is well it's yeah it's it's if it's a comedy if it's speculative fiction if it's animation you have significantly reduced your chances of being nominated for best picture um then again jojo rabbit got nominated and that's a comedy but i guess it's more like subject matter as well maybe because mm -hmm. if if there was justice in the world hot fuzz would have won the oscar for best picture it would have at least been nominated. It's a fucking good one. Yeah. It is a and very good one. Of course, like, the fact that Saving Private Ryan didn't win for Best Picture, like... Everyone oh, knows it was oh, stolen! Oh, and of course, LA Confidential got nominated for Best Picture, but it lost to Titanic, because Titanic won everything. It's like, man, <laughs> I think LA Confidential is better than Titanic. <laughs> I gotta say. That's the thing, Titanic's cultural impact probably got it the win. It probably did, yeah. When um, everyone has seen LA Confidential, is like, that's a fucking good movie, though. Yeah. How many did Avatar win? Did Avatar get showered in? No. Stuff? Nah. I think, I think it got nominated for Best Picture, though, which, again, is bullshit. Shouldn't have been nominated. Um, but it, it got a lot of awards for, like, the editing and visual effects and sound design and stuff like that. Um, it's just... <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 lame that so many sort of films and, and things are more or less just by default exempt. Um, I mean, because, yeah, you even think about, like, Lion... You know, it was mentioned Beauty and the Beast got nominated. Lion King never got nominated for Best Picture. Jeez. Um, yeah, well, I, yeah, it's just animated, animated films so seldom get nominated in that category. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, like, it took a while before I... Because... Uh, Logan was the first one where it was a, a comic book film for a screenplay. Black Panther was the first time that it was a comic book film, like, nominated for the best picture. Uh, and Joker, as well, was, like, setting some records as well. Mm hmm When chat mentioned Crash. I haven't seen Crash, but from what I understand, that is, like, one of the most contentious ones in terms of why yeah. did this film win? Have you seen Crash? I have seen Crash. Um, I don't know, man. Like, I think it's it's hard to talk about that one because it's really going to depend where you are politically. Um, okay. It you could argue it tries to have multiple perspectives on racism, um, but some people would say that it's it's not making the message clear enough. Uh, okay. And so there's uh, like the I think. Oh man, this so this, this so there's like events in it that are really there's like a one of the things that happens is like a white cop um abuses the fuck out of a like a black woman at one point. I think it's near the beginning. Mm -hmm. Then like later on she's in a car crash and he's the only one that can save her. And so he's trying to and I she's think. like terrified of him the whole time. So there's like scenarios they come up with. There's like uh Mine. racism that's based on um, like nothing, like prejudice is really hardcore, but then it, you know, some of it ends up being, uh, well, Brendan Fraser's in that movie, by the way. There were a lot of people in that, that was like a big ensemble cast, right? 
She ain't black. I can't fucking- I don't remember who's who in that I saw it ages ago. <laughs> I guess the point is that they come up with a lot of scenarios that are really fucking awkward to watch uh, that relate to racism and prejudice about, uh, right. you know, skin color and where people are from and stuff. Um, but, okay. Did they do much with it, though? As like I have to rewatch like, it. I just- when I was right. watching it, I was like, oh, it's so fucking obvious why so many people, like, have so much to say about this movie. Right. I see. I feel like, um, it's interesting that there's a similar thing that's happened with, like, video games as well. It's, um, like, you look at the Game Awards, it's not surprising that, like, it shouldn't have surprised anybody that The Last of Us 2 won, like, that award, uh, for, for the, like, the Game of the Year. That doesn't surprise me at all. Oh yeah, it we all knew like, it was gonna win. It was gonna win all the awards, and it was, yeah, and then well, people hated it, it, but it was gonna win it all is, the It is the problem of, like, the games that Sony makes are the types of games that get nominated at that kind of awards thing. Cinematic, third-person action, adventure game. Like, the games that are trying to be a lot more like movies. And there'll usually be one indie game that gets thrown in, so there'll be, like, a Hades or a Celeste. But that one usually never stands a chance of winning. Because I'll get the award for, like, the indie one. And it's like, ah, see, they got the indie ones. So they're not going to get, like, the, the proper one. Well, I'll say the proper one. It means a lot more to me, that one, like, specifically. And, yeah, it just, it's, yeah, it seems like uh, that's kind of the, the issue that gets run into, like, um, I'm just looking through the list of, like, best picture wins as you go through them. Like, um, Dunkirk got nominated for Best Picture. It's a <laughs> interesting choice. Wow, you didn't like Dunkirk? What the fuck? I like Dunkirk, but like Best Picture? <laughs> I don't know about that one. It's Nolan. Um, yeah, it is Nolan. So, you know, there you go. Did, did Interstellar get nominated for Best Picture? I. No, fortunately. Wow, fortunately, um, what the fuck, Frank? Uh, oh, what was I? I was thinking, oh yeah, that's right, because Shawshank is another film that I love that didn't win. It, Forrest Gump got it. It's like, dude, I like Forrest Gump, but man, <laughs> Shawshank Redemption. Pulp Fiction. Oh. Like, Titanic beat Goodwill, because Goodwill Hunting came out that year as well. It's like, are you, oh, man. Oh. Think of the culture, Frank. Oh. Think of the culture. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. And it, and then you look at this. A Beautiful Mind uh, beat out Fellowship. Um, Chicago beat out Two Towers. And then finally Return of the King got one. Hmm. I do need to see No Country for Old Men. It's, uh, very, very good. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Yeah. I'm upset that I haven't watched it yet. Uh, the Hurt Locker, I remember, that was a contentious one. And I I see why, because it's the same year as in Inglorious Bastards. What do we think of Hurt Locker? I feel like that movie is, um, I like it, I think it's good, I liked it too. Um, I I've only seen it like, the once, but... I know, guess that's my thing ago. is, I don't know, well, I, I certainly know that I think Inglorious Bastards is better than The Hurt Locker. I think District Nine's better than Hurt Locker too. I haven't really seen it like since it came out, so... Right, so it might be one of those ones where it's like, hmm, let's... Critical reappraisal, let's see. Um... Perhaps. And then, yeah, the, the year after that was... It was the same year that Social Net... Was, uh, yeah. I, I've got to stop looking at this. It's just kind of frustrating. <laughs> how often, how often my favorite one doesn't get nominated. Doesn't get the win. Oh, the icons are frozen. Damn, there you go. Oh, apparently, like, seems like a lot of people in chat don't like Hurt Locker. I, like I said, I, I really, I just know that Jeremy Ren is in it, right? Uh, yes, he, the, the gist of it is that he is a bomb defusal guy who, like, he, he likes the action. He likes being there. Likes the risk. And it's so much so that he's completely unable to sink back into a normal life. Um, mm -hmm. I remember that there was a part where, um, in the movie where, because it, it was like along the lines of he was looking for trouble basically, and then that got one of his, uh, fellow squad mates got shot in the leg, totally like shattered his, one of his, uh, what, can't remember, bone, but yeah. Hmm. Um, 
Oh yeah, and, and Anthony Mackie was in it too. That's right. Hmm. Before he became Captain Falcon. Black Falcon. That was remember that that was totally what he was called, not just Falcon. Black Falcon. <laughs> uh, any of you played Bully? What did you think? I played a little bit of Bully back in the day. Um, I never had it. Played it through friends. I remember finding that game kind of interesting and cool as a premise, but um, I haven't played enough of it to say much about it. But I know that a lot of people really like Bully. Yeah. That game, really I solid. Played it. I played it. And on it's stream. one of those ones. It's I one of those ones it. where it's like they should have. They probably should have like done more for that. You know, there should have been another one. <laughs> But Wasn't there a did. chance of there being another one that it didn't happen or something? I think there was a chance, because it's been rumoured for like years and years and years, but I mean, at this point, I'd say that's it's not going to happen. It is now all about Grand Theft Auto and Red Dead Redemption. No more Max Payne, no more Midnight Club, LA Noir, people, it's probably not going to happen. What if I really want it, though? Yeah, maybe. I really want it, but more people want, like, just more Grand Theft Auto and Red Dead Redemption. Um. But yeah, uh, I thought Bully was pretty good. Uh, I, from what I remember, it would be cool to get an updated, like, version of it. I don't know if it would be fucked yeah. by... Like, it was a little it was a little edgy, in terms of you were it a school edgy. kid, being yeah. able to do all kinds of rambunctious things. Well, I think it nearly got banned. Uh, that was that was part of the discourse at the time. Like the the parents were saying that it would encourage people to bully other kids. Yeah. Even though it's a game that's not for kids, it's a, it's like it's not a kids game. Um, no Hitler rap. Oh man. I mean, if we start <laughs> reading out raps, we'll never stop. It was the concern you put in your own chat. Uh, problems I have with writing are stringing scenes together, fractured ideas, and thinking too far into the story and feeling as if I'm backtracking, which leads to huge amounts of writer's block. I'm gonna be honest with you, that sounds like you're just describing the process of writing. That's, that's yeah, it comes yeah. with all those problems, it's tough. It ain't fun. Sometimes it's not fun. Um, oh, this was retracted, I don't know what it said. Oh, last super had a typo. Found a Candyman review by a channel called Movie Slob. I need this to be a subject of an EFAP. Well, I mean, I'd have to see Candyman, and I, and then I'd want to see the original first, and then I'd want to, I'd have to drag all these guys through it, and uh, it's, that's a whole thing. Like they're okay with being dragged through something like Black Widow because it's, it's very good content, but no, you're dragging them through Candyman is like, oh, that's a bit mean. Help us! He won't let us out Free of the cellars. Us. <laughs> Hello there, everyone. I was curious, what are your favorite actors slash actresses, living or past? Mine is the late legend that is Christopher Lee. He's so, definitely uh, up there, yeah. Anthony have a, Hopkins. There's a fuck, fuck ton yeah, of answers for this one. Um, Jack Nicholson. Um, it's one of them questions where I'm it blanks. Yeah, it's bl many, there's literally yeah. a thousand like, answers and they're blanking. It's like... <laughs> Uh, what's happening to me? Robert Downey maybe, Jr., of just, course. Just Robert Downey Jr. Maybe, would maybe be some one. that are less, like, popular picks. Hmm. Well, yeah, because I think people would know the obvious ones, like, in terms of just, yeah, obviously these, well, these actors. James Monsters, David um, Boreanaz, Alexis Denisov. Yeah. Fucking phenomenal um, actors. Uh, Anthony Hopkins has passed. No, they said past, um, living or past. Like, you could choose either. Charlie Cox. Ben Kingsley. Um, yeah, Bill Nye. I like Leonardo DiCaprio. I think he. I think he's a good actor. I don't think it's just the, the yelling. I think that he is a good actor. I, f I. I. It's just selective with me. Sometimes I'm like, man, he's doing great, and then sometimes I'm like, oh, that was awkward. Oh, Christoph, Christoph Waltz. Oh, he's, I, yeah, he's, I was about to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's bloody top tier. Uh, Michael Fassbender is great too. Um, yeah. And James McAvoy, because now I'm obviously thinking about him too, because <laughs> X-Men. Those two are great. Willem Dafoe. Yep. He was, uh, I really liked him in, when he, in that Vincent Van Gogh uh, film. Uh, 
I like Tom Cruise a lot as a as an actor as a performer. Yeah. Or, yeah. Um, Brian Cranston. We've been doing a lot of actors. We should probably put some actresses in there as well. We were talking about um, this the other day. We had some that pointed out to us. And we're like, oh, well, I mean, Scarlett Johansson. She's fucking great. Uh, yeah. Sarah Michelle Gellar. Great and Buffy. Yeah, all of these will be under their best stuff, preferably. Um, dude. I know there's, um, there's plenty. Olivia Coleman is excellent. Kate Blanchett. Yeah. Um, Emma Thompson. Yeah. Lawrence Pugh. Um, I mean, she's probably fine. I just need to see her stuff. Well, I, we better. need. I need to see more. I've yeah. only seen her in one movie, and I don't like that movie. Tilda Swinton. I think she's pretty great. Yeah. Sigourney Weaver. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Uh, Elizabeth Olsen is a great actress. Yeah. There's a lot of answers for these. It's just hard to get access to them. Lena Headey, yeah. Amelia Clark, if people use it properly. <laughs> <The> hiring <laughs> yeah. her is the block of wood that's angry. Margot Robbie, yeah, she's another person. Super versatile actress. God damn. Use her properly. Mm. Oh yeah, Charles Dance is top tier right now, if we're talking back to actors as well. Mm. Lots of answers. There's a, there's a lot of... It, yeah, there, I mean, there are a lot of great actors and actresses. Um. It feels like it's a lot... It, it, I, I, I don't know if it's more just being in, in tune with, like, I guess, the difference between good and bad actors, but it feels like it is less common now to just encounter really bad actors who are really successful. That just seems less common now than yeah. it was maybe, like, in the 20, in the, in the noughties. Zoe Saldana's good as well, yeah. She is pretty great. Oh, yeah, D Daniela Melchior, Melchior, yeah. Melchior. I, I've always messed up, the, yeah. Um, Jake Gyllenhaal's great. Yep. He was he was so good in Night in Nightcrawler. I, 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 that was a great movie. Daniel Day-Lewis. Um, yeah, that's, that's probably... I think Tom Holland's pretty good. I I think the problem is that he well, it seems like right now a lot of what he's doing is just the big action movie. So it'd be interesting to see him in a different role. Um, of course, Al Pacino. Yeah, that's <laughs> like you don't even naturally. Since the attack on Rags meme, I'm really interested in what you would say about the show. Many people praise the writing and its consistency. Hi, Rag. The what? Hello. I'm assuming they're referring to Attack on Titan then. Attack on Titan. Right. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I I couldn't get past a couple for these first couple episodes. Um, I just don't. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, Mel's the closest we've got to someone who's watched a lot of that. I think, right? Sorry, I I just completely phased out in my game. <clears throat> uh, Attack on Titan. Titan. Uh. uh yeah. Wow. That's <laughs> well. Uh, I still haven't finished what is out there from the anime. I heard a lot of Tizby stuff that happens in the in the manga uh, at the end, mm -hmm. like really bad character assassination stuff. Mm. Uh, it's fun, but I pretty much hated all of most of the characters, <laughs> especially the main character. Kind of annoying. I don't know if it gets better, but yeah. That's like the short version. It's been a while since I've watched it. It's not fresh on my mind anymore. Clearly. <laughs> but yeah, no. maybe I'll check it out at some point. I don't know. Don't. You you hate it. No, I'll hate it. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Uh, I, I, I was like, you, you guys probably hate it. Um, I'll definitely check your refaps on Loki. Will you work again with more editors to cover even more media now that you'd like to dissect your own series? Uh, that's only going to be in specific circumstances. I still want my projects to be essentially all my work. Um, but if for any reason I'm 
in need of something happening a little bit faster, and I can get someone who's uh, uh, very familiar with the work, so that, for example, Fringy with Black Widow and the MCU, so when I reference something like ah, Winter Soldier in Civil War and blah 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 blah, he can be like, mm -hmm, I know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, maybe in future, but still prefer to make it all myself. Um, hello from Ketchikan, Alaska. Uh, what's y'all opinion on the wow. game XCOM? Um, I... I don't think I ever played it. I think I have the controversial opinion of I never played the original ones, but I really like the new ones. I really like XCOM 2. I can outdo you for controversial. I don't like <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> oh, oh boy. On Dude. this particular topic? Yeah, oh, just, yeah. yeah, easy. I don't like them. <laughs> I don't, no, like I, remember you... I don't know that that's controversial, actually, to be honest. I think it's more controversial to say you specifically like the new XCOMs rather than none of them. What, did, really? what don't you like about them? Uh, I gave them quite a few hours, from what I remember on yeah. Twitch. Um, you streamed it, didn't you? Yeah, it was... The fun part for me was trying to um, best approach levels, but then kept getting surprise attacked, and then I was told, yeah, you're supposed to now just oh, go back and re-prepare. you XCOM 2? I don't know which one I was playing at the time. Do you remember? I think no? you were playing. I think you, Thank you so were playing I know the first one at that time. You played Enemy Unknown because that is a big problem with that game, where like you stumble across enemies and then you lose your opportunity to to fight them. So the system that they put in the second game is that generally in most missions you land in an area and you are considered concealed, which means that you're unknown, and that gives you an opportunity to find enemies, set up a positions. Uh, for all of your characters to set up ambushes. Um, after that point, it becomes like the other game, though, where you just need to be careful uh, how far ahead you're going. Why does Fringy think that's controversial? I've talked to people who really, who are big fans of the original games, who really don't like the new ones. I know Top Hat hates the new XCOM games. Um, I, yeah. I, I, I need to be in a certain mood to play XCOM games because they can be very, very frustrating. <laughs> Indeed. Oh, yeah. Um, I guess it's the whole element of, like, I had 95%. It's like, that means you have a 5% chance of missing. <laughs> like, it's not, yeah. you know, like I think it's the whole thing of 90% is 100% in your head. Um, well, I mean, I, when well, you miss it, it, five it, it, times in a row on 95%, it does get a fucking ridiculous. Yeah, that's yeah but that's say, just so. bad luck. <laughs> oh, that's fun. <laughs> like, what, <laughs> what am I supposed to... See, well, that's what I mean. It doesn't reward you for best utilizing your situation if you're like, okay, so I've got 95% yeah, chance. Does. No, it doesn't. So if I've got 95% yeah. chance and I'm like, I'm going to fire three shots and I only need to hit one, I'm good. And you miss all three. You're like, right. Yeah, that is... It. So the reason why I think that the system works is because you know the things that you can do that drastically increase your chances. Now, in a specific instance like that where you just got really, really, really unlucky... It's like, that is the nature of the game. That's the agreement that you know is part of this process. That you are trying to increase your odds, and sometimes that doesn't work out. What is this but argument? Like, yeah, loads of games suck, I agree. Why do you think that sucks as a mechanic? So when I'm right next to somebody with a shotgun, and I have 95% chance of hitting and it misses, that's frustrating. Yeah, that's possible, though, of a 95% chance, and you know that. Well, I don't understand your argument. you like, so... The that, so I, I know it can be... you should hit. Yeah, it shouldn't be 95% is my point. That's bullshit. Yeah. But there are, there are different reasons why it will decrease the chances. It depends on what weapons you're using. It depends on what the terrain is. It depends on what the enemy type is. These are all factors that you're aware of in the game. That are just, like, relevant. Yeah, you, you, you can, as the rotate. developer, you can make whatever situation you want. I agree. No, but what I'm saying know, is, like... like it's, it. Yeah, I fucking hate it. I really kind of like. Oh, I, I know that. Why? Why is it? I could use this argument for Pokemon. I'd be like, you got to grind. That's just how it works. You agreed. It's like, yeah, I can still criticize no. it. Well, I guess I'm asking, like, would you prefer that there is no system at all for percentages? Because sometimes you're not going to have. Why would you assume that's what I want? If if you know that there is a percentage system, and in this instance your percentage isn't 100, percent I don't. What what. What what are they supposed to do? Like Make it one hundred percent when you've got the requirements in place. Like you are a yeah. soldier with and massive experience, the... and you have a shotgun, and you're an inch away from somebody. Yeah, but but when you do have the, you can get one hundred percent odds in XCOM. Like you can, you absolutely can get one hundred. percent This changes odds. nothing about what I've said. Why are you not addressing what I'm talking about? 
You're talking about like a 95 percent. I said so. I give you a I scenario mean, have... and I tell you why it's shit. You tell me that's possible. It's like thank you. And then you tell me it's possible to have 100 so, so the is, the that doesn't is matter. This, this is literally what pissed no, me off in the on. game so the much that I stopped playing it. The problem is that I'm thinking about because you said I'm next to somebody with a shotgun that's got 95 percent chance. Yeah, I don't remember that happening in that game. That happens so oh, much no, to I, me with many that weapons that I stopped playing the game. This is not something you're gonna be able to like erase my memory of. That happened to me too multiple times. I guess times. I'm thinking about XCOM 2 maybe because maybe that was more. I, it's been a lot longer since I played the first one. I just remember that there were plenty of instances where, like, I'm right next to somebody who's like, yeah, it is 100% odds now with a shotgun. Yeah, I, I had both happen. And I, all, that, odds. I also happened in the same scenario, so it's for some reason 95%. That's like, a why? you problem, Bola. Yeah, that's a me problem with my character well, no, can't aim well, straight. I guess, so the, I, I guess the problem is that I'm thinking, like, so, do we never want instances where there'll be like ninety-five percent odds ever? Or, or what's how what's about we do it when like? it's suitable? What well, what would be suitable for like not when you're point odds? blank against somebody with a shotgun as a start? Except the, all of the times I remember playing those games, if I'm next to someone with a shotgun, there's like a hundred percent odds. So you want me to prove to you that it's possible because you don't believe me? It probably is possible. I guess my question is, how often did this happen? Often enough that I stopped playing the game. <laughs> I was like, this is too bullshit, okay. I can't take this anymore. That, combined with the random events where your entire team gets fucked over because enemies spawn right next to them, behind them. I'm trying to think, it was like, probably XCOM 1 in this case. Yeah, that was the one that you played. Um... You should give XCOM yeah, 2 Yeah, someone said the percentages are misleading. Yeah, and, and like, it, it just punishes you for doing the most likely and obvious things. And like, yeah, I ha I've had a bad experience with XCOM, but I gave it more than a fucking chance. And I remember oh, even remember people in my chat were turning on the game. They were like, yeah, this doesn't seem fun at all. And I was like, it's not fucking fun. That's one of the changes that I liked more uh, from Final Fantasy Tactics Advance to Grimoire of the Rift is that they would change, you'd get a bonus for attacking people behind them. And in uh, Tactics Advance, it was hit percentage, and then they changed it to like the amount of damage that you do. So it was still always advantageous to hit from the back. But mm -hmm. it wasn't just like, uh, oh, yeah, you, you just you just might flat out miss totally, and it's a percentage chance. And someone's mentioning Darkest well, Dungeon, that, it's like, that. that could have that problem too, but it was, I enjoyed Darkest yeah. Dungeon way more than XCOM. Didn't, wasn't, didn't, I've been a while since I played Darkest Dungeon. There were times in that game where, like, things could just go incredibly badly for you as well, right? Oh yeah. There are issues with XCOM, but Moore's argument yeah. that percentage means the player cannot optimize is wrong. Anyone remember me saying this? No, that's not what, that's I not what he said. Uh, that? the, the problem is that I'm just like, I'm trying to... I don't like to be at the mercy of a percentage that... chance in games, and some games well, obviously are worse culprits is, than others. But you are um... somewhat at the mercy of the percentage chance, but it is a game where there are clear methods of increasing the likelihood, and of course, factoring in okay, this is unlikely. Do I want to put my character in this situation? I guess it would be a situation I'm thinking of where you've moved your character there, and then you click the thing. It's like ninety-five percent chance. It's like oh shit, like I'm committed to this position now. Um. I guess I'm, I'm just wondering what would be, like, the best way to address that if there was some way of communicating to the player more clearly that if you put your character in this position, this, these are your odds. But I guess the issue becomes that there's environmental destruction and things like that. Some enemies move mid-turn, and it's, like, it becomes difficult to factor that in. Um, I will say, Molly, you might enjoy Rayman raving... Uh, not Rayman, Rayman. Mario <laughs> Rabbids... <laughs> Uh, no, King yeah, he's right. Because that one has zero fifty oh, okay. and one hundred percent chance uh, of, of uh, yeah. Hits. Some people have recommended it, yeah, oh. and it's like it, it, I guarantee so you, you I'll enjoy, enjoy Mario that, and though. Raving Rabbits more so for its execution of that genre than XCOM, even though XCOM's like known for being the top dog in that genre. I guess the reason, well, XCOM has more than just the squad stuff, though. There's also like the 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 broad strategy well so if, if that's it depends on what, what oh yeah i, I guess i'm specifically talking about that because of course like i, I doubt marion raven rabbits has the whole like team building and research and um i don't know maybe it no does. it doesn't have like it doesn't have base it doesn't have those elements but you do have more playable characters than you will ever have in a squad at a time and there is definitely trying to have synergy on the squad it's just more that the system is zero percent 
um if they're in like high cover and you can't see them 50 percent if they're in low cover and 100 percent if they are like not in cover because you've ambushed yeah, them so stuff like that i find exactly. engaging like if i have a rifle and they're okay, behind cover right. and i start spamming shooting it's like you've got a 40 percent chance of tagging them i'm just like yeah that's totally fair but when I've got, like, um, any gun, and I'm an inch away from them, and it's like, you might miss, and then I miss every shot, it, it's fucking, like, why am I even playing? Especially um, if this I enemy is on, like, one HP, and killing not killing them means you'd lose a guy because of that, because the game is just like, I nah. The, I guess, um, the thing is, is that I think about those situations, it's like, I also need to remember the situations where the game favors me significantly, and, like, how rewarding it can be when it all just lines up incredibly well, and it's like, that's lucky... But then it's like, yeah, it's the trade-off. Sometimes I will get unlucky. like Because ultimately, if it's all percentages, it will balance out eventually. It I guess it just means that we're, we've got a game where you have some incredible highs when things pan out well for you, and then some real It's lows. a little bit lopsided, like it, though, because when are you ever going to be like, it's got a 10% chance of hitting? It's like, I guess I'll engage that, and you win. It's like, nobody's going to well, be choosing that regularly, because that's just a really bad well, decision to make. They're not going to be choosing that regularly, but I mean, goddamn! Like, if you're in, if you're backed into the corner and then you just land a ten percent shot and win, it's like, oh god, that is like, that's that's really thrilling. When uh, I don't know. the odds are against you, and you still to me, I would just well, be like, I, well, I, I got I really would, fucking lucky there. Lucky. Yeah, well, I guess I all feel. I would say is that there have been mo well, I mean, if we're talking about the experience of playing it, there have been instances where that happens. It's like, goddamn, that's 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 like, oh, like a sigh of relief. Maybe um, I can help by comparing guess... it to Hearthstone, right? Hearthstone is like a card game, so just a lot of luck is involved. If I have a 50% chance of something working and I play it, I feel like that was more me. If I'm about to, like, lose catastrophically and I pull the perfect card and win in, like, a 1 in 100 move, I don't really feel like I won. I'm just like, that was just fucking absurd luck. I guess, well, here's the things to think about, though, as well, in terms of, like, the percentage chance when you're really close. Is it not an element of the broader strategy to take into account that sometimes the strategy that you thought was incre very likely to work out didn't? And so, like, you always need to be taking account of that. You need to be what are you, what double checking are you... and triple checking. So if you have, well, like, so I mean is, ten options, an and the most likely option is the one you have to consider might just completely fail, it's like, so what are we doing? Well, no, what I mean is, like, if you have if you have a situation where, like, let's say you've got your squad and there's an enemy there and you've got the guy with the shotgun, the ranger, you get him up close and it's like, so this is this is almost certainly going to work, but, like, in the event that it doesn't, is it is it not, is there not an element there of, like, well, hey, at least I've got my sniper set up in these positions so that that's, that's like, a, a barrier, a, like, an element to take care of in case things go wrong. I never is got that, that from XCOM. Of... A lot of the time it would be, like... I moved everyone into position because I knew ahead of time that some guy's going to spawn where he does. He spawns. I send my sniper to kill him. He misses a 95% chance. And my shotgun guy is right next to him, so he's the backup. He shoots and misses, and then he dies. And I'm just like, fucking love this game. <laughs> That's... This is just really, really unlucky in those instances, yeah. Um... Yeah, I, 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 uh, I can, I can totally... I guess to be clear, I can absolutely see why someone wouldn't enjoy playing a game like XCOM. I guess the problem is that I'm not sure that I'm ready to commit to the position that it's like there is something seriously wrong with this with this uh, design choice. I felt like it was just less um, to do with me, more so to do with if I luck out or if I'm I get really bad well, luck. I I guess it's like once you've once you've committed to taking the shot, yeah. But everything, all of the decisions that you make leading up to those moments are things that where it's like high ground. What is their visibility? Have you taken out their cover with grenades and things like that? There are like a, a lot of elements that are working all at once. And what if I maximized all of them and I still get that result? Well, if you maximized all of them, you've got like either the best percentage that you possibly could have had or 100%. Yeah, and it still fails. Well, if it's 100%, it doesn't fail, but it just doesn't. But if it's less than that, it's like, and if it still fails, I guess it's just, yeah, that's that sucks. That's... That, I, it's just a, that's like a that's just a part of the game in terms of like leading into all of the other elements though. I, I'm not sure that I guess the problem is I don't see what XCOM looks like if there aren't ninety or eighty-five percent or eighty percent percentage chances with different weapons and different positions and certain enemy types. Yeah, like I, point, I think uh, it's lopsided in terms of where they've put them and how they put them. Okay, yeah. Um yeah, fair enough. And like I said, I know that I'm not alone because like it's it's a popular meme I, for the I game. Know. Yeah, I know. It's like oh, I'm right next um, to him and it misses. Okay. Yeah.
I missed it a 100% chance to hit an enemy unknown. I feel like that's got to be a glitch more so than like a baked in mechanic. I'm just trying to think of instances where that has happened because I can't, I can't think of them in the time that I've played it. I definitely couldn't think of 95% chances that missed. Yeah, I remember those. You're assuming you did everything you could. It's funny because I had someone who was a big fan of XCOM in the chat. Um, when we did, I did this, I still kind of remember the level layout. We did it like a hundred times over, specifically with saves coming, because I wanted to see if it's possible to do this without it constantly failing. And like, no matter what strategy, where we put snipers and shotgunners and whatever, like, support units in whatever places, it's just like the game was like, no, you lose. And it's like, okay. Oh, I'm not saying that if it's a glitch, it's not a problem. I'm saying it's not a baked-in aspect of the design. Um, if it's a glitch, it's still a problem. Like, you shouldn't be missing 100% shots, as far as I'm concerned. And if you did, it's like, yeah, that's a, that's a that's actually a significant issue that would need to be fixed. Um, yeah, no, I you I think you would have more fun with Ray, uh, with the Rabbit's Kingdom battle. I say that with a smile on my face, but like, you actually would. I think <laughs> it's it's a that good game. I, mean... I like it. I'm going to enjoy it more than XCOM, more than likely, yeah. Yeah. Uh, did any of you play Mercenaries oh. Playground of Destruction? I i don't know what that is. I don't even no. know that, no. No. What do you guys think about Hitchcock's movies? I was introduced to Rear Window five years ago and loved it. Not the best, but certainly my favorite. Uh, what's your favorite Hitchcock movie? Also High Rags. Hi, I think the only one I've actually seen is The Birds. Mine's going to be Psycho. Hmm. I feel like I need to watch more Hitchcock films. <laughs> I'm, uh, I, I feel like I have an embarrassingly low number of Hitchcock films I've seen. Um, I, it's all going to be lower than... I've actually be than mine. seen the movie Hitchcock, <laughs> where Anthony Hopkins plays Hitchcock. Oh, boy. I can't remember how good it was, but I remember enjoying it. <laughs> so there's that. So, uh, some people are saying in chat that that an issue with the XCOM was that sometimes it would round up to 100 when it was actually 99. Like, ah. Yeah, don't... Yeah, should, 99 in XCOM is down. practically a miss, so you need to go be careful. <laughs> well, practically... Hey, come on. It's... It, no. It's, it's almost certainly going to hit, like, almost all of the time. It was never all of the time. Like, it, it, this is okay, the, that was the problem yeah. with the 95 plus percentages. The fact that I see 95% and I worry, like, mm, I don't know. What the well, hell? I, I know that it's a meme, though, is like, 90% is basically 100. It's like, it's kind of just amusing, because that's how our brains work as, like, humans. It's like, yeah, 90%, that's, like, a sure thing. I mean, it's, it's, it's basically you would a sure it's, thing. It's more likely to hit than miss. That's, like, obviously the, the obvious yeah, results. Yeah, no, I, I, I know what the psychology. I just find it amusing, because it is not, like, a guaranteed hit um, at all. No, yeah, neither is 99.9, .9, but I mean, we're getting to absurdities at that point, right? It's just like, wait, that missed? Okay, wow. I guess it's, um... Um... I'm, and then of course, and this system those... runs in tandem to the actual animations and, and stuff on screen, but it just never really connects. You're like, a sniper uh, with a yes, wide view and I... an easy shot, and it's like, ah, uh, 40%. You're like, how is that 40%? Well, I mean... I know that XCOM 2 was a lot more helpful and that there was... I can't remember if the first game had it, but in second, there was just a tab that gives you specific in detailed information on why your percentage is what it is. So it'll be like negative 20% high cover, like negative 20% suppressed plus 20%, like ideal condition, stuff like that, that would um, make it more um, evident uh, what is wrong. And, and then that helps give you an idea of like what you can do to improve your odds. I guess it's just for me, I remember having a really, I remember being incredibly tense while playing XCOM. Like, it, it gave me a feeling that, um, that I really enjoyed of like, oh, all right, I'm going to commit to this decision. And then like su the suspense of waiting to see what happens after you've done all of, uh, all of your, uh, stuff. Yeah, I felt mostly cheated. Yeah. I gave up. <laughs> yeah, um. fair enough. But I, I put a lot of hours into it because I, I heard nothing but praise from many people that I know and trust. And like I said, the the atmosphere on the stream, it just kept going down because I was just like, oh, mm. I did that and now this happens, right? Okay. And just like, I'm pretty sure there was like clips said, made of just like, you know, the amount of times someone runs up to an alien with a shotgun to their neck and it's like, miss. Um... 
Don't lie to me, Molly. You just don't want to do it because it's about Hitler. What's your problem with Hitler, huh? <laughs> um, yeah. Wasn't a fan of his artwork. I just thought it was shit. Ooh, he wouldn't like that. If <laughs> Hitler wouldn't like it him. if he said that to him. <laughs> he gets very angry when you criticize his art. Yeah, I've heard. He does all kinds of things. I know that one of the elements, I'm still thinking about XCOM, one of the things that is a really fun aspect of it that I liked is just the idea of cultivating this squad of these characters that are highly customizable, especially in two, like super customizable. That's pretty much what sold me on it. You can write your own little biographies for them, you can change everything about them, give them nationalities, histories, backgrounds, and you just start getting really attached to them. And of course, if they die, it's like, oh, that hurts. Like, that really hurts. That's a lot of investment gone. Um, then again, save scum, <laughs> save, like, there are a lot of, uh, quick saving in that game, I will say. A lot of quick saving. Yeah, and that was probably what made it worse for me, was, like, I would be like, I'm, I'm, I'm on board with this, I will play your game, I will make my characters and get invested in them, and then they will get wiped out, and I'm like, no, nah, I didn't think that was, that wasn't really fair, I don't feel the, it would just be like watching right. fucking, you know, Infinity War, Thanos arrives, and then they all just fall over and die from heart attacks. It's like, well, it's not impossible they could all have heart attacks. I'm like, I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm interested in everyone's opinions on Charlie Kaufman movies. I'm afraid I don't know uh, many offhand. Mm. I don't remember. But I'm not sure. By the way, it looks like your con your take was not that controversial at all. It seems like a lot of people have similar sentiments towards the new XCOM games. Well, if if mine's been sequestered to one XCOM game, because that's the one I played, and that's one that's known for having this, then yeah, it wouldn't be that hard. Enemy Unknown has... I, I Yeah, I would say that... That two made some meaningful steps to try and address those. The main one being, you go forward, oh, you've triggered the enemies, and now they're ready to screw with you. Like, just getting rid of that and actually letting you set up ambushes yeah, I started, is a really... I started change. wanting to be like, I'd want to trigger the whole map so I can see where, what I'm going to be dealing with and then reset right. an approach. Instead of being like, la ha ha ha, now you have to deal with this, and then it kills someone in their first turn, you're like, ugh. I guess, um... How do you feel about that being... Because it is a system that continues after you... Like, if you play an XCOM 2, you have that opportunity at the beginning of most missions. Sometimes you, you don't have that option. Um, but once you've ex once you've revealed yourself, that's it. Now it's back to the normal thing of be careful, like, how far ahead you go. I'd have to play it, I guess, because um, I think Enemy Unknown is the only one I have played. I, I'm not even sure anymore. Yeah. It, it was. You played Enemy Unknown. That's There are only two of them, of the new ones. You know, that's why um, I stopped playing Magic the Gathering, is because I was just sick of losing games because I didn't draw the right amount of mana. Yep. And that is so goddamn frustrating. When you, you go out, you drive your physical, you drive your ass to a place, you sit there, you pay the thing to get in, you open your cards, you put them all together, you sit down and play with someone, and you just get fucking just, just screwed over because you didn't draw lands. And you're just sitting there every turn, just I guess I can't do anything. So, I that's why that that is the reason I stopped playing. And I never regret it. Oh. People were saying in chat Kaufman was I'm thinking of ending things. So, yeah, not a great first impression. <laughs> <laughs> um I was about to say I'm pretty sure why I best loves Kaufman. I couldn't remember which his movies were, so um yeah, we were not impressed with them thinking of ending things. Um No. I'd have to it look at the rest scary. of the library. It was miserable. It was miserable. Not a fun time. What a one of the worst fucking experiences I've ever had with the film. I think the problem for us was honestly part of it was just the fact that we we got it so quick that we were just bored. Yeah, it was just such pretentious art shit, and it's like, no, we get it. What the fuck? Uh, you're wasting my time. Why is this taking so long? Did you just want to jerk off onto a screen? <laughs> Ugh. I hated it. <laughs> I love how much this would be torture for YMS to hear. <laughs> like, no, we got it. That's the thing. <laughs> we get it. It was really clear. We get it. No, it did not escape us. What mm -hmm. a bunch of miserable moments that was in a massive string. This I rarely roll this out, but what I will say is it wasn't for me. It was it was not for me. It reminded no. me of how much I love coherent plots i like i like good story structure coherent plots 
And when we start to get into these weird, is it real, is it not real stuff, you're starting to lose me. It can be done fine, of course, but generally, if I have to choose between the two, I'm fucking going with a clear, coherent, real plot anytime. Um, bad act, bad act is less common now. Fring L nor. Well, in like big productions, it does. Like I, I agree with him. I, I feel like we're uh, we're getting better in that way. There's like an upward trend. Like the skill floor has been. Thinking. And to be honest with you, using her as an example, it's like we all know why she's there. Like it's not hard to figure out. And how many actors can you say that about? They're like, oh, they're acting so bad. Because oftentimes these days, they're both attractive and good at their job. Yeah. She, um, you know. You know. You know. You know. Alien is a 10 out of 10. The only issue I can find with it is Ripley taking the cat box with her when she's rushing to try and save Parker and Lambert. So it's not 10 out of 10, then. I was gonna I say, like... One... A... Go ahead, go ahead. Just that it, it would be weird to say that you think you found an issue, but it's also a 10 out of 10. It's like, I, doesn't that yeah. mean... I assume that's how you'd go for it. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Rags? Ragu. Yeah. Say, I was thinking about, I'm thinking of ending things. Remember when we watched it and there was that... <laughs> remember when there was a spooky basement door? And we were yeah. so excited. We were so excited. Like, oh, that door, that door is going to come up again. And it looks scary because it was all scratched and shit. And we're like, oh, man, that's that's a spooky door. I am so excited to see what they do with that door. And it was just like, oh. Well, for me, it was like, oh, oh it's it's not a, it's not actually. Th it's a, It represents something, probably a, a memory, a yeah, part of I his brain or his history. And it's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was so ready to see like a really cool bit of imagery or something really interesting or something just in interesting. Yeah, that would have been great, but fuck, I didn't do anything with that. I was so. Uh... See, that's our problem, though. Pain. We can't deal with a story that isn't about anything. Like, <laughs> we need something to happen. Well, I, we've tried to make it clear before. It, to me, it's explicitly subtext, and I don't find that impressive. I get bored. Yeah, if anything can be figurative for fucking anything, and nothing has to make sense because it means something in this weird metaphysical sort of way, I can do that. Anyone could do that. I'm not impressed by it. I don't think it's impressive. I don't think it's matter. interesting, really. There's very little for me to latch onto because I live in a world of text and subtext. <laughs> um, this world of subtext, I don't understand it. It doesn't even feel like a dream. It's just like this weird place. Yeah, not what I'm into. Certainly not what I'm into. Um, for reference, of course, because I think I think it would just be too easy to compare. It's like The Father. It's like yeah, a film that actually runs entirely on its on like um, a surface level. Like it, it, it all makes sense on the surface if you take it as a uh, he's in his house and he just fails to remember exactly what it looks like or whatever, but. A lot yeah. of the, um, like, certain doors leading to certain places, or what people say, and what people do, depending on how they look. I don't know. Felt like it was much more coherent, or at least has a, um, a surface level that can then be moved past, uh, while... Like, isn't it... Like, I'm thinking of ending things. There's, like, he walks into the barn, and there's, like, a dead animal immediately, and he's, like, staring at it. And I think, like, when we were watching it, I was like, that's gonna, like, represent him, or something. <laughs> 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 It's what the, this represents somebody somewhere in some way yeah that's and i don't that's know like these it's films do right it all represents something doesn't make yeah. for um just doesn't and engage me when very it, like well. turns into a cartoon and starts talking and i'm like what the fuck is going <laughs> on what 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 alice in wonderland horseshit have we stumbled into and there was that dance in the gym I don't remember. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, fuck, yeah, I remember. Yeah. It's supposed to be like a, a retelling of the the history, but through that, yeah, and it's just... It's it's weird. What's going on? That's all oh that's my weird. God, I did it. That movie yes. was so slow in terms of, like, it felt like 10 hours, but it was only two. I remember when, 
we realized that the the car scene had only taken up like 15 minutes <laughs> oh my god oh that opening car scene i think we were like surely i think i was saying like surely they have to be going somewhere or they have to arrive at a destination eventually like they they are traversing space they they eventually will be someplace and they will get out of the car they will one day exit this car surely and things will occur and then they did, and it felt like that was the first act break, but we were only like 15, 20 minutes in, and there was still an hour and a 40 minutes left. Someone said, but there's still that value was, in approaching was... a story that way, where you're shown the subtext and meant to interpret what the text is. So from what I remember, oh. the text in that film is he's a janitor and he's thinking about his life. He's um, thinking of ending That, that would be the text. Oh my god, that's like the, yeah, like, that's that's it. Um, I mean, there's value to it if it has value to you, sure. It's just yeah. not what I want to watch. <laughs> Definitely not what I want to watch. Chad congratulating me. I still have like to do like 17,000 more of the Lost Runs, It's that, but I finished one. That's an accomplishment in itself. 17,000? Oh boy, that's a <laughs> lot more to do. Five notes on there now? Eh. Yeah, I'm I'm watching uh, some footage of Forza Horizon 5 right now, and um, I remember when like I was really impressed by Gran Turismo 4's graphics. I thought they were like incredible. It's like man, <laughs> racing games like nowadays, jeez. Yeah, Damn. it's like basically it's, it's these cars are approaching photorealistic very quickly. He's cool. Yeah, that, no, those those Forza Horizon games. I remember. I remember playing two. I thought that game was a lot of fun. I was gonna play three because it was set in Australia, but I never got around to it. And then, yeah, I will. I think I will play. Fun. Um, Phoenix Point fixes the percentage chance to hit the XCOM to hit, chance to hit that XCOM had. But it's still a little rough, and I would give it some time before you tried it. Yeah, Phoenix Point, that was the, the one that was crowdfunded, I believe. And I remember that, because it got crowdfunded, and then it went Epic Games Store exclusive for a year, and people were like, hey, I wanted, I was going to play it on Steam, I backed it. It's like, yeah, sorry, I just uh, have to wait a year. It's like, man, that's, uh, oh, maybe something changed between now and then, but, um, yeah. Uh, there are 100% ways to deal damage in, like nades in XCOM. I mean, sometimes your weapons will, will be 100%. It'll depend, but uh, certain, certain the circumstances didn't things. seem fair to me. Like, putting right. myself in positions where I was just like, why isn't this working? Are we talking just vanilla XCOM? Because forget all about the argument over the RNG. Vanilla just doesn't have enough content. You need at least the Long War mod. Um, Long War is yeah, even I, harder, though. <laughs> Long the, War is harder, yes. I tried it once and I was like, uh, I'm, I'm, mm -mm. <laughs> this is too much for me. I mean, I will say, like, base XCOM is like 20 to 30 hours to play through. I think that's a good chunk of time to spend on, like, one campaign. Well, when, when you get through a whole campaign without dying. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh... Because <laughs> I never pulled it off. I died in the last mission and almost I had no soldiers left. GG there. Because I didn't save scum, which I regretted then, there. <laughs> wow, get better noob. Played... What do they call this? Just hardcore uh, permadeath? Um, well, it, it all has permadeath, the whole the whole game. Um, yeah, but this is the one where it saves after every turn, and you can't Oh, yeah, yeah, it locks you in, um, yeah. so that you don't do what I often do, which is Iron like, Man. no, yeah. I, I, I don't accept this death, I'm gonna go back and try again. <laughs> I do wonder though when it, when you think about like the legitimacy of that because I think about a lot of stealth games and quick saving is just that is just a fundamental part of a lot of stealth games is I am here now I'm not doing all of that again and if I yeah, get detected I'm I wouldn't finish there are just flat out games I would not finish like Dishonored if you were not allowed to or, or I don't know it's a, just a game uh, Iron Man anything from day six to one anything one. Yeah. where I'm just like man if if I if this doesn't go right for whatever reason. And I don't even know if it's my fault or not, or if the game does something wonky, or if I just couldn't have possibly have known something, and something bad happens, and I just have to do all of that shit again. Yeah. Then I just 
Fuck this. I have, well, I have better things to do with my life. I think that there is a... It, it's cool to have that as a mode, but what I would say is that I don't think that there is anything wrong with... And I, I say this because it's kind of how I play stealth games of like, of oh, I've been detected. Nope, I'm doing it stealth. I this yeah. is mm -hmm. these are the parameters I've set. If I have been detected, I have this is my fail state. I'm starting. Yes, over. yeah. I did um, like oh well, I accidentally killed someone in Deus Ex. No, we're yep. reloading. We're nope, trying it again. I'm not gonna exactly not gonna start the whole goddamn game over again. I'm just gonna mm -hmm. redo this one bit and get it right. Yeah, I think that's uh totally fair. I I do wonder about uh that new. Death loop, where that's a game where if you die, it it resets the whole day. Like that, that is the game, um, and you have to try and uh, take out all light like, targets in one playthrough without dying. Um, that'll be interesting to see. Like if there is any save ways to sort of save scum around <laughs> those challenges, mm -hmm. or if that's not in the spirit of that game because death as a mechanic resetting the day is baked into it. Um, XCOM has saved scum system rolls are set for turn. You will always have the same result after reload. Well, only... Only if you do the same actions, uh, right? Yeah, do the same action, action yeah. I think, yeah. Um, well, you're telling me that God came down and stopped these motherfucking bullets? Fringy, that's exactly what I'm saying. Oh, references. <laughs> <laughs> No, StarCraft 3, since the story is pretty wrapped up, they'd need a brand new storyline. Oh, oh no, then have to do that job. Fuck. I was gonna say, <laughs> well, that should be fine, right? They can handle that, you know, I'm sure. I just, yeah, I don't, and plus, I'm just gonna be honest, I don't know how much I really care about the story. I, I don't mind a campaign, but you don't have to give me some crazy story, just... Give me a bullshit excuse why three factions are fighting in space, and we're well, good. Well, it's kind of the Battlefield 2042 thing, right? We don't care about the context. Like, there is context, but you don't really care about that. Like, it's a multiplayer game. Um, I mean, I'm all for them, was... you know, giving good reason, but... <laughs> like if, yeah, if yeah. That, yeah, exactly. I guess it's interesting to think about how it's changed, because when Titanfall came out, like, pe that, was a big, that was a big point of criticism, is there is no campaign, there is no single-player mode... Um, and then Titanfall 2 had a great one, but if it didn't, I don't know that that's a point of criticism, ne like, necessarily that a game doesn't have a campaign mode. Um, I mean, Call of Duty at this point, uh, you gotta wonder, like, what, what exactly are you getting out of these campaigns anymore? Mm hmm Um, hmm, maybe. That new Call of Duty, by the way, I don't know, doesn't look that impressive to me. I haven't even looked into it. It looks like shit. It oh, looks man. like what I don't I've... like that they do with the World War II games now, where it's it seems really sanitized and safe in a way that World at War wasn't. I yeah, it's like that. wacky, zany weirdness. I'm like, Ugh. Well, so from what I understand, Call of Duty Vanguard is World War II, but it's meant to be about the rise of special forces as, as just a thing that existed in militaries. And I guess that's my problem is... That's what Call of Duty has been for the last decade. Special Forces, you are like the most impressive, coolest soldier there is. You can never just be a normal guy in this situation. Um, and it's funny because Call of Duty World War Two is like, no, you're just you're just like a private in the in the in the in the first. It's like, oh yeah, the private who derail who fucking gets a whole goddamn train off of its rails and crashes <laughs> into everything. The soldier who was instrumental in helping with the with the the liberation of Paris, the soldier who was influential in finding intel that gets America across the Rhine, like oh yeah, you're just a normal soldier, huh? And it's interesting to think about because it's like, well, in in Call of Duty World at War, you play as the Russian soldier who puts the the flag uh, on on the Reichstag. Yeah, at the end. Yeah. The, at the very end. <laughs> also, that's end. something that any Russian soldier could have done. It's just any, yeah. what's the story of that one Russian soldier who was who happened to be the one to do that? Well, you know, I, I mean, you know? the through line of World at War is you are like a great soldier of this country, and as long as you're alive, the spirit of Russia can't be broken. But but you are not that significant, really, in this world. <laughs> you are just another soldier amongst many. Um. Yeah, I, I I don't know this new one. I guess I am happy that uh that they are trying to do more than just the the Western front. Like the 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 shtick here is that every front is uh, a part of it, and 
I'm pretty sure that Australians are featured in uh in in the wow. North African campaign, and it's like, oh man, that's uh, there's, when there's it, Australians when I, in Battlefield One. There's a uh, weather. Yeah. Terrifying. Oh. Oh, in the DLC, yeah, because I remember they were in the campaign, and I was really upset that they weren't in multiplayer. Because World War One, that was a that was an important one for us. Um, it's it's pretty much was the forging of the national identity. But yeah, I, I uh, having Australians in in North Africa, it's like, oh boy, Tobruk, are we doing Tobruk? That that could be cool. But then again, it's like, oh, special forces. It's like, all right, like. I'm not opposed to this, but you just keep doing it, like, because, you know. Yeah. They they finally took people's advice, though. Russian women sniper. It's like, yeah, that was the way to do it. <laughs> like, finally. I, I think it was some gameplay someone had posted of Vanguard, and it just looked... It, it looks looked generic. Horrific. Oh, oh, bad. Oh, boy. <laughs> this yeah, must be it does. That it just looks terrible. Like this ultra fast time to kill. Your oh, screen goes right? dark yeah. when you get shot. The gun bounces around weird. People die in a fucking millisecond and then a bunch of shit Let falls out of their body. And I was like, this looks oh. horrific. Why would anyone play this garbage? Well, this looks like a mobile game. I have heard many bad things about Vanguard before it was announced. The As the story goes, disaster behind the scenes in terms of development like re not ready to go is 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 the uh seems to be the consensus let me see i want to see this oh uh, yeah it just looks like it, it huh. oh man it looks like they've just wholesale damn time to kill is like nothing it's a mill it's like a fucking millisecond look at man. these scopes why is there a red dot site it's world war ii it's custom World War II. Now, oh. What are these weapons? Ah. Oh. Look, tiny maps. Like, the time to kill is insanely low. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's Call of Duty, you know? It's, uh... Um. What, what more can... Yeah, Battlefield 2042. Looks like that's where it's at. A couple of hours behind in the stream right now. Just wanted to add that the bit about GMing, that I'm in the process of running a Pathfinder game in which I made the entire world from scratch. Um, Ooh. They've got a second one. Just want to say that I'd never had the confidence to make one of this scale without the influence from this podcast. Love all you guys except Chase. Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm really glad you were able to do that. I hope it all goes well. Yeah, I hope it goes well. It sounds like a lot of fun. I, I hope it works out. <laughs> I know my plan is to start small. So. Darth Maul? My Darth plan is Maul. to start, is to Darth Maul. That mm -hmm. is my plan. My first Pathfinder game will be a Darth Maul origin story. Yeah, there's been bits and bobs of pushback about the whole fan fictional or, or whatever, even to the point of DMs. just like, yeah, make your own thing. Seriously. Like, <laughs> Do it. Oh yeah, you can like, do it. That's that's totally I believe cool. in you. Yeah, it's gonna be great. You'll call it Star Fights, and Star it'll be Wars. it'll be in the future, but maybe in the past. Who knows? Wars Wars. Uh, what showed theme right, despite it being bad elsewhere? Ooh. Despite mm. it being bad elsewhere? Like, they're on point with theme, but they're not with mostly everything else. Um, honestly, I don't think about theme that much, but I bet a lot of stuff does that. Where it's like, oh, but the theme's good. Yeah, but it's... Think of all the super, super basic, um themes that there are like don't lie be good you know stuff like that well you know like war bad like, family's important or something yeah yeah that war kind bad, of yeah it's just like you could probably have a film or a story that's like look at the horrors of war but then also have like kind of shitty characters or bad characterization and bad plot lines the theme is intact in terms of like you know war is hell and you're like yes it is yeah war sure is shit um can i play the game now or we'll watch the movie yeah i just want to And I'm gonna need lots of stone. Mm -hmm. Not TLJ. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, 
uh, oh yeah, so if Doctor Strange and Peter start the multiverse, then what was the point of Sylvie killing Kang and thus the entire show? I don't think they start the multiverse, it seems to be that they're tangling it all up. That, that's probably what mm -hmm. we're supposed to think. Uh, Fringe, how do you like the Australia's authoritarian lockdowns? I, mean, I, I don't want to, like, talk about <laughs> that kind of stuff. Very well. By not enough content, I was talking about campaign length, but rather... S I was talking about campaign length, but rather stuff to do and mechanics and items to use in those 30 hours. Vanilla was incredibly streamlined in that regard. Um, I think that's fair. Um, there were... Because XCOM 2, the main change was that instead of being able to pick a base in a certain, um, in a certain region, you have a ship that can just fly around all over the place. And it's like, yeah, that, that does kind of remove certain choice um yeah I, I i guess uh i i mean i don't i don't stand to to look man that's not coming out right you don't really <laughs> lose anything from having more options to work with in this instance i think giving them different weapons to use and different uh different things that you can build up in your base stuff like that probably a lot of mods though as you mentioned that can uh, help improve that mm. i guess i'm interested to think because um this is this is this feels topical because Firaxis are making Midnight Suns, which I'm guessing is going to be an XCOM-like game with Marvel characters. Now that sounds really cool, and I really want to see what that game looks like. Um, I feel like that could be really fun. XCOM, but like with Wolverine and Ghost Rider and, and Blade and stuff. That sounds awesome. Midnight Suns. So they come out when it's all dark and spooky, huh? Yes, that's right. They they uh the spooky they're like the the Avengers but for edgy like like <laughs> metal metal Avengers kind of. Um oh, Mel, something so uh, edgy. And, and no. I guess that means that the deal maybe the de is is the deal like with Square Enix is that starting to fall through now cuz Firaxis and that's like 2K they're publishing it hmm. not Square yeah. Enix. And imagine if it turns out to be like far and away the best one that's come out in a while. Like, man, what do we uh what are we doing What's over there? Uh, well, because Avengers did not make its money back. And I will say, considering that in order to get Avengers, we lost Deus Ex, like, I kind of... I'm not upset about that. Um, You're not upset about that? We, I'm not upset that it, did, that it didn't do well. Oh, um, right. Sorry. Because yeah, it's, okay. like, it's like, man, hopefully that means... Um, that means that we can get Deus Ex back. We can finish off Adam Jensen's little yarn. Yeah. Um. Fringy, ba Fringy didn't ask for this. No. No, I didn't ask for this. That was uh, that was that was the meme. I'm pretty sure I tweeted something like that when I found out it was getting put on hold. Like, yeah, didn't ask for this. Um, um, and I know that I know that the voice actor for Adam Jensen is like super on board to come back. So it's like, yeah, you you can do this. You can absolutely do this. And like, frankly, Deus Ex has been like one of the one of the better, more reliable games, especially. It, well, not especially, but like considering for for what was kind of a reboot, it's been super reliable in terms of quality. Yeah. Oh, they do that automatically. Nice. Cool. Cool. I actually cool. like the trailer, but I'm cautiously optimistic about the film itself. Let's hope it's good. Fingers crossed, Buddha fans. Yeah, um, yeah, I have all the the, the, uh, the hope definitely I, if if I could make a film good Like it would be nice if this one was good I feel like it might give us a bit of a breath of like oh my god the MCU isn't dead maybe yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Long war greatly expanded thing Particularly in grand strategy aspects, you had to plan your long-term strategy around things like enemies having echo rounds. You know what? Now that because I'm, I think I'm not sure if I tried it, and maybe that is something that I need to try before I can keep talking about it. But uh, I, that I might, I might install that mod. Try Long War for XCOM Two. Uh, Oh, and somebody said it, has, it wasn't that long since Deus Ex came out. Deus Ex Mankind Divided came out five years ago. So that is as long a, a gap there was between that and Human Revolution. It has been a while. It's Sledgehammer Games as well as a COD game. What else can you expect? Yep. 
Lol, and they're yeah. being assisted in development with Vanguard 2, laugh my ass off. Yeah, so Vanguard is, as the story goes, um, there's been issues at Sledgehammer. Mm -hmm. They lost, like, the studio heads, and th this was meant to be the 2020 COD, but obviously that didn't pan out, and then Treyarch had to do Black Ops Cold War, and it seems to kind of show, um, from what I've heard. So, yeah, not a, not a great era for COD. Damn. Oh, is it not a great era for COD? I, I, well, I mean, I say a great era, it's like, it hasn't been for a long time at this stage. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know when the last, like, real good one was. I like Modern Warfare, but I remember Modern Warfare having, like, serious issues when it yeah. came out. The maps, the maps, Piccadilly, the worst oh, map in was Call of Duty history. <laughs> Miserable. The, the absolute <laughs> worst map. You yeah. know you're in trouble when, like, everyone's leaving the game when it starts up? It's like, oh. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> You might just get it out of the rotation, delete it, get rid of it. It would have been funny as an experiment, like they have, them. you know, regular mode and then regular mode Pick negative Piccadilly. Pick it's just like, that's the only map that's not in it. <laughs> They're just testing popularity. You wonder what happened in testing, like when something that bad is made and it just like makes it into the game. It's like, well, we have to have X number of maps. Well, I mean, yeah. I think it's... I remember in Modern Warfare 3, there was a map called Downfall, which was, like, awful. And it it so rarely came up in the playlist. Like, nobody liked it. It was, it was really crappy. But then, you yeah, you ask, how did it get in the game? Did yeah, nobody when you notice? This out when you were testing it before you'd put textures and everything, and you, and you were just running around mm -hmm. a weird gray blob of a map playing mm -hmm. it. And like, you have to wonder, like... So, sometimes it feels like you'd have to have, to make a really bad map, like a foul map, you had to, you kind of had to do that on purpose a little bit. Like, like, how do you accidentally make it so fucking bad when like, base understanding of maps is just like, and then playing them, you're just like, how did you do this? Maybe yeah, somebody did it maliciously. you guys having fun, <laughs> you feel bad to tell that guy, like it was his first map and he, he really screwed it up and <laughs> you just didn't want to hurt his feelings. It is interesting to think about with COD as well when there are less variables for them to deal with. Call of Duty has less Shit. variables than, say, Battlefield. And Battlefield doesn't... Like, I can't think of maps in Battlefield, the more recent ones anyway, where it's like, dude, this sucks, I never want to play it. Ever. Downturn, mm -hmm. that map in Modern Warfare 3, yeah. I think I said Downfall. Um, a Nuke Town is another one that kind of just got used so much that I'm sick of it. Yeah, I really liked it in the beginning, but now it's like, oh, you know, we have Nuketown Halloween. It's like, yeah, fuck off. Yeah. Town it's the same map, but fucking pumpkins. <laughs> pumpkins. <laughs> like, pumpkins a different map. Yeah. People just want to play in these, people just, people just want to play in a tiny room where they could spawn in and in two seconds see an enemy and maybe this game they'll get a quintuple kill for their whatever montage well i mean remember it was so bad even in the first black ops that they disabled your ability to throw grenades for like the first five seconds because it was really easy to cock a grenade throw it and kill like three people because they're only i mean that's that's like the quintessential three lanes but in an incredibly tight space um and i remember this, rust kind of has the same issues too shipment is just chaos but, like, at least there's no pretense with shipment. This is just chaos. It's nonsense. Nuketown is almost like trying to be kind of a real map. <laughs> but trying. it's not. World at War equals goat. Their land, their blood. Oorah. That's fair. Yeah, well, I, I love World at War. It does seem to be pretty popular in retrospect. Like, a lot of people are like, yeah, yeah. World at War was a good boy. Yeah issues multiplayer wise but generally i i liked it One i like better campaigns i liked i just i liked it in general which for a cod game is saying a lot we uh the voice actors he had Kiefer sutherland was um was the american he uh roebuck he yeah, yeah he played roebuck and uh reznov obviously gary oldman beautiful Mwah. yeah very very good yeah, I, I think that was uh that was that was it feels like one of the the uh, the more prominent introductions probably for a lot of people to like the Pacific Theater and I guess the nature of it. Um, it was definitely more unconventional sort of choices in terms of like fronts and battles to pick, like Celo Heights. How many people were familiar with that battle? Celo um, Green. Never heard of that one. <laughs>
People in chat will have heard of that one. Uh, but yeah, uh, I always liked World of War and Black Ops. You got Sam Worthington's in that. Yeah, I like Black Ops. Yes, he was in that one. And uh, Ed. Ed uh, Harris yep. was um was uh the he was Michael Keaton played uh played um why am I blanking? Can't believe it. I know his name. Michael Hudson. Keaton. Hudson. No, Hudson, the character, Hudson. That's right. Uh that's I'm trying to think of. And um Ice T played uh wait, no, it was Ice Cube played Bowman. <laughs> Which um, of the ice people was it? Yeah. <laughs> ice men played him, yeah. <clears throat> Not IT, ice the ice yeah. men cometh. Uh, that, was, that, was a, that was a cool one as well, in just terms of... It was trying to be more of an action movie, but it was still unconventional. I mean, I guess, like, if you're familiar with Vietnam, Hoi City and stuff like that is is known in the Tet Offensive. But, um, like, Vokuda, um, and, and Bay of Pigs and stuff like that. Yeah, it was neat. Pay of Bigs. Col Coloon City was that was an amazing set piece. Um God, that was a great mission. Like once you get out on the rooftops and the plane is flying overhead, it's like, oh man, Call of Duty back in the day. Like, that's the thing, it still had that stigma, but even then, they just you could just feel like y'all are actually kind of trying. trying. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that was an impression like black ops feels like a cool neat idea for for a campaign it's like man let's let's use like the paranoia and the and the espionage elements of of the cold war tell this big story about you know chemical weapons and secret missions and stuff like that and and the historical figures like the pentagon meeting jfk and then the zombies yeah, dude, that oh, opening zombies, zombies cutscene. One of the best cutscenes in video game history, possibly. Someone's breaking in. It's just a storm, dick. Settle down. <laughs> the zombies <laughs> break in. And just nonchalantly, Kennedy's like, zombies, gentlemen. Zombies. Times like this. <laughs> Calls for a stalwart, like a uh, retaliation. Gentlemen, lock and load. <laughs> Fidel Castro, McNamara there with their guns. <laughs> Anything to say to rouse your humble troops. Do not pray for easy lives, my friends. Pray to be stronger men. <laughs> oh, God, and their shotguns. Like I Nixon does this not funny not little funny. pose. <laughs> Favorite break? I never you can do that now. Zombies, What's that, sorry? You know, I'm not a huge fan of zombies in general as a thing. I prefer campaign multiplayer. Yeah, I, I never Nazi zombies was never the, the zombie modes. I, I never liked. I liked it up until like, I understood oh, everything crazy. that they. Well, just just up until you've played it enough that you understand it all, and then you're like, "Well, I'm done," because right. it just goes on forever, sort of things. It's just like, eh. yeah. Well, I know like the how, new one. Crazy. They got how your starter weapons would just become anemic and worthless. I just, I hate that in games. Everything became anemic and worthless if you went on long enough. Like even the p most yeah. powerful weapons would be shit. That's the way they did it. It wasn't particularly uh, mind-blowing in terms of what other Horde games have achieved. They didn't really do a lot. It was... I honestly think it was more the novelty at first, and then they just kind of really never evolved past the novelty that much. If you remember, there was that well, weird... Um, was it Black Ops 2 where they had, like, the train that you get on and it moves to different parts of a map uh, and stuff? The, the bus, yeah. The bus, yeah. I think, uh, bus, yeah. I think what you just said may be contentious, because I know that Black Ops zombies, like, changed substantially as it kept going on. Of um, course, the core elements were the same, but, like, once They're welcome to fight me on it. I, w I'm, I was obsessed with World of War Black Ops Zombies. I knew it better than yeah, but what about, most people might. What about, like, 2 and 3 is what I'm saying in terms of the... Oh, well, so I was referencing it. 2 just then with the, the bus. Right, They okay, did try right. to change it up because Black Ops... Like, because it was Shinonuma and Duris or Durais that were, like, the more popular zombie maps for World of War. Mm -hmm. And they added the Pack-a-Punch and stuff. And the maps were just bigger, and they had interactions and stuff, and it was like, yeah, this is pretty cool. And um, I remember the moon one was cool. The appeal essentially just what? became, can you beat your prior record? That's about it. Yeah. As soon as you're really good at it. Shinonuma um, was my favorite because there was a glitch on it on 360. I think they wiped out on PC where you could get infinite weaponry. And what, what that means more so is you still have to buy them and you know earn them. 
but you wouldn't only hold two weapons, you'd hold more, which honestly, like, should have just been a feature in the game. <laughs> because, like, it's... Yeah. Eventually your weapons become so shit that having the entire weapon set from the whole game is kind of, like, awesome. Because you're just cycling through them all and just using them, because you don't reload them all until the, the round uh, mid part. It feels more arcadey to do that, for sure. Yeah. In a, in a good way. And then, of course, uh, Dear Rise had the pack up. That was what they, they introduced pack a punch in, which is just, it's the weapon, but upgraded. And even the initial pistol, I think, if you upgraded that, it becomes a grenade launcher that was particularly powerful. So it's like, you know, they seem to be an attempt to try and extend it all, but they still have the same problem of it only ever got to the point where your weapons were worthless. And I don't know if that would have been solved if they had had a boss at round 100 or whatever. But maybe they should have experimented with that um, in the earlier ones just to see how people liked it. Yeah, if it's like it's the worst. It's one of the worst things in games, really, when it comes to difficulty increases. It was like we're just gonna change the number on the enemy health. So, yeah. Instead of making them smarter, I guess with yeah, zombies, that's yeah. Tough, they but... don't have new moves. They don't have new abilities. There's not different kinds or types or anything like that. It's just yeah. You just have to shoot them a lot more now, and that's yeah. Shit. yeah. It's well, I mean, it was the issue I had with Destiny. God, I that game haunts my nightmares sometimes when I think about like one of those strikes where you had to fight the big fat guy on I think it was on Mars or something, and like you, you just unload rounds into him for 30 minutes, and all I'm doing is running around and jumping around. There's nothing difficult about this, it's just yeah. it's just I need to hold the trigger for long enough and make sure I get enough ammo to hold the trigger for long enough to kill it. It's just not, this is yeah. not gameplay. I was thinking, sweet. the most exciting parts of zombie gameplay, when I was really, really good at it, was not actually the parts where you've all got your ammo and you hunker down and you would defend. It's when someone runs out of ammo and they need to go get more. That's when it gets right. it gets interesting. Cause it's like you've got to actually dodge the zombies. You got to kite them properly. You got to do this, that, this, that, all to get back to sitting in the corner and, sh and shooting. And it's just like, eh. <laughs> like, yeah, I guess. So. Yeah, just not fun. It definitely makes some of the um, maps. As I really do like Killing Floor Two a lot. It does a lot of great stuff. Though there are some maps where there's like the clear correct places to be, but yeah. even then. It's good enough to where you can get disrupted and you have to start, you might end up splitting off and running around the place and yeah. yeah. It's, it's why stuff like Vermintide and Left 4 Dead have a good formula because you'll be move, you'll have to move around and then you'll have the moments where you have to defend places and it's just where are we right now to defend against this horde that's coming in? This is probably the best place, you know, let's do it. Yeah. Um, and I, those games can get a little too luck-based sometimes, but overall quite good. Uh, favorite Breaking Bad episode? Aussie Man just feels like the obvious choice, but that's for a reason. Yeah, it's a, it's a huge payoff, that episode. Uh, it would be the one I would pick, I, and, and I, I do feel bad. I'm just like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry it's not a more interesting pick. I'm sorry. <laughs> Nothing I could do. Uh, Activision said they would never do any RTS in the future since its market is too niche, thus not good for shareholders. Main reason why many OG members of Blizzard left as well, why Warcraft 3 Reforged was a horrible flop, etc. Right, and they're probably not hmm. even wrong about that in terms of just pure cold... Ca well, well, no, because what about, like, Civilization? That game sells, like, millions of copies every time it You'd comes out. You'd think it's a matter of, popular. like, surely it's just a matter of trying to get it... Like, how do you get it to the mainstream? What have you got to do? Because... I don't know. It felt like at one point RTSs were super popular. Or at least with and maybe it, vehicles I, I was familiar with. I think it's a matter of markets, maybe. Because, like, there are certain markets where these games are more popular. Like, I imagine, I think in Europe, probably, mm -hmm. RTS is more popular. Hmm. I don't know. And I guess it's a matter of how well can we monetize an RTS versus a, uh, a shooter. It's yeah. You might have to make yeah, meaningful DLC. What? You can't just read. Wow. That sounds yeah, absurd. You think they could reskin factions? Just reskin different things? That's, or re that's probably a lot more work than just a skin for a gun, I would imagine. Well, maybe. Um, you can charge more for it, maybe, as a result. And yeah, the individual like fidelity of each skin doesn't maybe, have to yeah. be nearly as much. Like, have you all played Paladins? No. Or as no, I like no. to call it, Better Overwatch? Oh. Um, oh, wait, I'm getting a phone call. Give me a second. 
<laughs> I've heard of Paladins, though. Uh, yeah, I remember that. Wasn't it the one that the one. It got BTFO'd by the other games in its genre, or is it still going? It was the one that Donkey... It was like the first video I saw from Donkey where he was comparing Paladins to Overwatch because they're very similar in terms of the... Well, similar in, in ways that seem clear initially. Maybe not so in terms of... Uh, oh boy. <laughs> I don't know, you'd think you'd want to mute if you're on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Paladins is still on Steam, so it's still going. Good for it. Yeah, I don't mean uh, to say Paladins free, free is play. similar to Overwatch. I've, I've never played it, so I don't know. If it's... I think I played when it was on beta, maybe? I remember playing it at some wow, point. Wow, what a beta. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <clears throat> well, fair enough. Um, Rags will come back eventually and talk about Paladins, but I guess we'll, for now we'll move mm. on a little bit. Maybe the MCU isn't dead. One good film does not make a healthy MCU. Well, but that doesn't mean it's dead, right? If, it, if no, it's it means dead... It's, it's still clinging to life. Yeah, like, all I'm saying is that means that there's still a potential for good content. Which is genuinely a concern right now, which sucks. Hmm. Um, so, you know, hope. Morning Metal, inciting incident of the prestige. <laughs> um, Hello. EFAB Gaming Deep Rock Galactic When? Some fun four player bug shooting pickaxe swinging co op. I'm not familiar, is it? Fun. Is it, is it? All right. I did a bunch with friendos. It's, uh... Well, you don't have to lie. Kind of. Which part? The game or the friends? The friends part. Like, yeah, game was okay. I played it alone a bit. <laughs> um, wait, they tangled it up? What does that mean? So is everyone just contributing to this giant mess? So this is going on when Spider-Man starts? Fuck. Um, by tangled, I just mean they're pulling things, like, combining universes and pulling things into each other. That's what I'm assuming is happening. Whereas yeah. in Loki, it seemed that there was this, like, there's still, you can travel between them, or that there's a difference between them, that there were walls between them, let's say, I don't know. But we know frighteningly little. Yep. Um, Bringy, what do you think about a World War II game set in Australian Theater of the Pacific? What kind of game do you think it would be? Also, high ranks. Um, so I, I, when you say Australian part of the Pacific Theater, I'm guessing you're talking about mainly the the stuff that we were more engaged in. So it'd be stuff in like Solomon Islands, Kokoda. I guess, I guess I could imagine that being almost like a kind of kind of very. I guess when you think about if you were doing it now, probably be similar to the to the Pacific part of of uh, World at War. I think I think I like the idea of basically leading into like yeah, dense jungle terrain, maybe stealth elements as well, or um, you know, like it, it's like a long campaign set over the course of only like one or two battles, and so you just have multiple elements of having to deal with. I guess it depends on what type of game. If it was a shooter, that would be what it was, but you could do like a strategy game where you have to take a lot more consideration for resources in this specific instance, the morale of the troops. Um, Australia is in the Pacific. Well, I mean, in the same way that North America is in the Atlantic in the Pacific, sure. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I'd, I'd be more interested in seeing more World War II stuff that, uh, that shows the Australian perspective. Uh, talking about RPs, not movies, my friend introduced a new character out of nowhere who effectively retconned slash recontextualized the main villain, and the villain was a character that had been well established for six IRL years with no hint of this new guy, all because the RP didn't want them to be a villain anymore. I pointed this out, saying it was a good chance for an actual character arc instead of a retcon, but he blew me off. Um, that sucks. Hmm. Feels like there's something yeah. that can you not control that though? Like you can just be like no, or is it a matter of like you don't want to say that to somebody because they've worked hard to bring their character into your story? I, I don't know. Maybe. Um. Yeah, that sounds a little bit lame. It's like, hey, your lad doesn't fit in here, and then they're like, yeah, well, he's coming in. Have some fun. I'm not allowed. And on the button. No, no buns. 
By the way, Rags, ERP is erotic roleplay. Oh, I think it someone actually said that. Happened. Well, I think he heard it earlier anyway. Ah. Molly, you deserve some coins for the Black Widow video. Extremely well done, sir. That's uh, Meme and Fringy okay. too. It did well on that one. Thanks. Uh, Rags loved you taking apart that extra credit stupidity. Hell yeah. And you know what? If you want to hear people taking it apart again, we actually covered it on EFAB. Probably like a year ago. Yeah. I don't actually remember anymore. It was, a, it was a while ago. It was bad. Very bad. Boo. Uh, is a solution to powerful characters just to make everyone else powerful? I have an issue where I like ridiculous galaxy obliterating scales of power. That feels like just the, the thing One Punch Man made fun of. Almost that issue of making everybody so powerful that the stakes just kind of get difficult to even keep track of because of how ridiculous it is. Yeah. I think it's easier to power down than it is to power up. And I will say, the more you power, yeah. Like you're, think about what it is that you're finding shocking. Because the thing is, when you have like you know, everything is very normal and simple, and then one guy is a bodybuilder. It's like oh fuck, and there's a fight. It's like he's gonna wreck shit. It's like. Yeah. Is it really just the fact that you want to see galaxies being torn to shreds by some powerful dude? I guess the problem is for me, that is too big for me to fully comprehend in a way that full. Because yeah, it gets to the point, I guess we... Yeah. I mean, it's possible, it's just going to be really hard to... Yes. ...maintain. Because, um, you know, the MCU's having this problem right now. They're like, yeah, everybody can do all the things. Also care yeah. about this guy on the street who's trying to stop this mugger. You're like... <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, no, it, it's tough to balance that. Apparently it was EFAP 133. was not a year ago. Close to half a year ago-ish. <laughs> That's kind almost of. a year, so... That's like right. a year, yeah. A weird year. Um, hello, you lovelies. Are there any movies with Timura Morrison you recommend other than Star Wars? The man has a great acting chops. Also high ranks. He's an Aquaman. I <laughs> but I wouldn't recommend it, though. Um. Yeah, uh, he's in Vertical Limit. I don't know if that's good, though. Uh, is I like him. I think he's got a little. He's got a charming voice, and I hope he's in good stuff. I just I don't know if I've seen him in good stuff. Maybe Boba Fett will be good. Yeah. Maybe. Probably not, but it's been handled by the guy who made Episode Six. That'll be great. <laughs> And someone might be like, well, that's a mean way to refer to Robert Rodriguez. And I'd be like, I mean, it's true. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Do you remember, like, the production of Episode 6 was something like, he was given the script and it was, like, seven pages long, the rest was they fight. Yeah. And it's just, man, it shows. Yeah. People loved it, though. I don't know if they still love it, yeah. though. But they did. They certainly did. Remember, um, we posted, I posted little clips of the EFAP <laughs> minis, like, on the day we watched it, before they were edited, and people were like, you guys hate everything. I, well, <laughs> I remember the, there were a lot of things in that show that were really funny, like those speeders going <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and what they do that is they're like, so a stormtrooper can't ever make a mistake. And it's like, <laughs> how about they, they stop making mistakes for once, that would be crazy. I'm sorry, it's... it's it's just really funny that they're so incompetent that they crashed into each other and burst into <laughs> <laughs> It still makes me laugh. It's one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. It was pretty fucking funny. <laughs> and I do hope we get more of that if it's going to be bad. Like, please be funny bad. Yeah, funny bad. Yeah. Funny bad is... is uh... <laughs> Any thoughts on the Total War series? Hi, Rex. I really um, like those games. I don't know much about them. The next one that's coming out with Warhammer. Sounds Warhammer like Moodle Total is War. the best source on this one. I, I streamed it a, a little bit, even. Uh, <laughs> my CPU didn't like that during streaming, but I still did it. <laughs> what's the uh, What's the new one that's coming out? You said. Uh, it's the, the, the Total War one. Uh, ah, Warhammer. Two, you said? two or three? Yeah, Warhammer Total War. Oh boy. My I only knowledge of it is Angry Joe's review of Total War Rome 2 and how it didn't work. <laughs> okay. That's what I remember. It just was completely broken. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Really, really like those games. Uh, I never played them vanilla though, because the vanilla one feels always kind of arcadey to me. 
There's a, right. a lot of really good mods out there where the, 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 the tanky units feel tanky. So you can do like a real big shield wall and they actually hold people off. I see, it's Total War Warhammer 3 already. Hmm. Yeah, re I really enjoy these games, but uh, not vanilla. So I'm probably gonna get that one when the the mods are there for it. Um. Hi, Longman, Fringy, Metal, and Rags. Hello. Hello. Yo. Have any of you played Destiny or Destiny 2? If so, what do you think of it? I personally play it for the story and gunplay. It's hard to play it when the season pass and expansions are so far apart. I guess we already jumped the gun when I was saying how much I hated <laughs> the bosses in Destiny. Yeah, no, I, I made a I made a whole video on Destiny 2 and how much I didn't like that game. Um, that was a few years ago. Yeah, I I, I I got really hyped for Destiny. That that was for me, that was the big like don't 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 get hyped. Don't get so overhyped for a game. I was so mm -hmm. excited. And it took me a while to realize that I wasn't having that much fun. Um, um, yeah, I, 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 I heard that Destiny one. Destiny One was way better than the second one. I only played so, the second one, so it was pretty nice for me. I played it a whole bunch, but when I got to the end game content, it got like super tedious. Do I get lost on that? Because when it came out, everybody was disappointed. Like Destiny, when it came out, <laughs> I was just like, "Dude, what is this? Like, this is not what we thought we were getting." And okay. then I'm pretty sure like Taken King and stuff came out, and people really liked that. And then when 2 came out, it was like a step back from those improvements. But now 2, people say that's in a place where it's really good. And I just, mm -hmm. I don't know. I think I just fundamentally do not like what Destiny is. I yeah. thought I was getting into a game where it's like, we're going to have an amazing epic story in this brand new world. And, um, and go to all these crazy interesting locations and learn about the history of this world. Um, and that it wouldn't just be like, you know, grindy and having to fight bullet sponge enemies. I should also add, I never played it really that much on my own. I mostly played right. with like a monk, so it's just like I hanging out and own. shooting <laughs> peeps. Because I, I do, I, I did like the uh, the gunplay in it. Gunplay is that. excellent in terms of just the fundamental mechanics. I just don't yes. like the uh, like the the enemies that I'm having to fight and and all all of those things. It's just when you, when you yeah, get to the not... end game, you have like those dailies and weeklies. It's like Guess I lock in once a week and get those, and hopefully get a weapon I want. Yay! Mm. Yay! <laughs> I never played <laughs> Destiny. I am I'm out of the loop on that one. Wow, not a true Destiny. I mean, yeah, it's just like people have a lot of issues with this streamer. I guess I, I don't know what he did, but man, mutually X. Mutually X. Post. Oh. Hey Moops, just binged all Bioshocks and really loved the first one, but Infinite completely deflated me. Do you plan on tearing that game a new one? I did at one point. I uh, was going to make a video on it, um, but I got off-put by how good uh, Matthew Matosis' video was. It is excellent, yeah. So maybe one day, but I mean, at least I might stream it and still complain excessively. Um, do do. Holy super mushrooms! EFAP and the super chats are actually more or less synced. When does that ever happen? I know it's terrifying. Well, I mean, have we caught up with any of the like the ones that we're trying to catch up with, or has it all just been these streams <laughs> ones? I think it's worth not talking about how much we've caught up with. That's probably the better thing to do right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a habit. I have a great deal of difficulty breaking, and most of the weaker characters have reality rewriting if pretty well defined hacks abilities. This is the thing. I wouldn't want to restrict anybody in terms of doing their, you no. know, they battle universes and all that, but at the same time, it's just, yeah, it's tough to bring the stakes back down when you want to, and it's also tough to keep advancing them. It's like, man, you've gotten pretty high up already, and it's like, well, yeah, what if I introduce someone who controls everything? But then someone controls that guy. And so on and so on. And you're just like, yeah, that's great. Ooh. Definitely isn't cringe. I like it. I just saw it. Expect You to Die 2 is out. Whoa. It's a pretty nifty VR game uh, where you, you, I guess you're kind of a of an agent, like a secret agent, and you get put in like a scenario, and you have to get out there without dying. And it's like, like a game rule, 
escape rule. Escape rule. Yeah, I don't even know what the fuck my brain was doing there. Escape room. You got it. Uh, kind of deal. Uh, I have like to find different switches and stuff. It's pretty nifty. I'm. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's, uh, I hope it's, uh, I hope it's as fun as the first one because it's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. Um. Finally watched Angel season four. Just no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. Um. Fuck Mary, kill Lord and Clem and Doyle. Um. What? <laughs> I would marry Lorne. Yeah. Um. Fuck Doyle, kill Clem. <laughs> I, would, I think that's yeah. I think that's my thinking as well. Fuck Mary, kill Cordy, Fred, and Faith. Oh no. Um. So marry Fred. Uh, fuck Cordy, um, and then kill Faith. I might reverse the last um, two. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit, I'm a bit torn on the. It, it is just a matter of I'm not marrying Faith. That's not happening. No, um, I agree. So it's kind of like a toss up between the last two, but definitely marry Fred. Nice, stable, friendly, kind. Super, super. It's kind of an obvious one, I think. Yeah. Um, hi Mola, hi Fringy, hi Metal, and drumroll please, insert actual drumroll here. I, I, I don't have one. Uh, hi Rags. He's currently muted, he's he's in an intense uh, phone call right now. Intense <laughs> call, yes. My universe power level entities wouldn't have increasing stakes by increasing power levels, but rather more dangerously politically and personally wise. Yeah, you could still do that. Like, something that's moving galaxies, not like you can only have stakes now if you have someone who's above that, you can go back to whatever. It's just... Definitely. Just hard to keep it all in line, I guess. Because um, a good example is the power level we've got now for the Avengers is they can manipulate time at will, and they're going to have to forget that, because that ain't going to yes. work with the future troubles. <laughs> Um, I love the story of Horizon Zero Dawn. Aloy is pretty much what Ray should have been. The Aloy. story, Aloy, yeah. Uh, yeah. The story continues in February. Cautious to pre-order. High ranks. Yeah, I hear good things about this story and Horizon. I never finished it. Um, yeah, and the new one's coming out in February. Yeah. Well, I hope it's good. Well Oh boy, does that mean we can start? <laughs> <laughs> Aren't new languages what happens when you're being so lazy and mispronouncing things so much it just reaches the point it becomes an entirely new language? We're all just lazy Sumerian speakers. <laughs> kind of. I mean, I, yeah, like, yeah. I'm not going to know exactly how new languages spring out of current languages that are accepted. You need to speak to a linguist. Yeah. Figure that one out. They'll know the answers. Sure. Um, they will. Hassan's train of thought is like an unfortunate autosave right before your character dies. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh no. <laughs> That's a really good one. Yeah. Oh my um, god, I just found a game on Steam that has a demo. <gasps> whoa. God. Um, hope you Fortunately, enjoyed yes. slash enjoy the commit die squad by Games Jun. I found it myself. I found myself thinking back to a few things not making sense, but I had a lot of fun with it and left the cinema with a smile, so I liked it. Yeah, I liked it too. All right. I'm hey, Rags. Hello. Hello. Um, sup, Mola? Heard of the Cinders mod for DS3? I decided to try it after hearing so much praise, and it turns out it invokes a lot of DS2. If you don't know what I mean, Dragon Slayer Armor Boss has been model swapped and placed in four different areas. Um, yeah, one of the things DS2 did was, like, just spam a lot of the enemies it already had. Um, but I mean, Metal loves Cinder's mod. Don't oh, yeah, you, Cinder's Metal? Mod, right. yeah. yeah, it's got shit. So I imagine you so, wouldn't say it's similar to DS2. Cinder's mod? No. <laughs> mm. You know, it isn't like, that's, um, are you seeing me talking about Dark Souls? Yumbo. Yes. One game that isn't like Dark Souls 2 is Paladins. Or as I call it, better Overwatch. Oh, and one of the no, monetizations no. that they use for that is they're able to put out a lot of skins and stuff for different characters, for which there are many, many characters. And they're clearly not, like, really great skins in terms of their poly count and their texture detail. It's not, like, Overwatch level. But they can really put out, I guess, more of them 
and different weapons and skins and you know all kinds of little different things. It doesn't have Overwatch budget, but they're able to put that stuff out and some of it looks pretty neat and <sighs> and so they could, you know, that's how they that's how they do it. It's like how you reskin an RTS potentially where yeah, it would take a lot more individual models to make up the units, but maybe they wouldn't have to be as well detailed and not as much individual attention has to be spent on each, you know, one. Um, so that's uh, one way of doing it. Uh huh. Uh. <laughs> oh no. What did you guys think of Terriers? Also high metal. Oh hello. I haven't watched it. We're Fringy. Fringy's muted. What? Oh no. Is I said. I suppose we'll have to wait until he's back before that question is answered fully. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't want to answer that question without him. I feel like it's something we shared, and you know, it's so... Hopefully, if you guys can just remember that one for me in case I forget it, we'll jump right into it the second he returns. It'll be great. <laughs> what the fuck, I, I actually hadn't looked at our group for a while, what is that? image of my, Matthew McConaughey, not Matthew McConaughey, fucking, why am I forget his name? <coughs> he looks so foompy. <laughs> he looks really like he plasticky. Look really. Or he rubbery. Look, he looks like, yeah, like he was sculpted by someone and not finished. Mm -hmm. He looks like, he's got like Squidward vibes in a <laughs> weird way. Uh, planet busting and above levels of power is like time travel and multiverse stories to me. Types of stories I really love that are nonetheless filled with so many pitfalls for writers it's smart to just avoid writing them. Yeah, um, I wouldn't want to put people off ever trying. It's just, it's really hard. And as soon as you, you let the cat out of the bag of time travel, that cat is gonna, gonna struggle to get back in there, you know? Um, I recommend reading World War by Harry Turtledove. It's about an alien invasion during World War II. The aliens get addicted to cinnamon and turns into a black market for tech and weapons. Interesting. That's interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Um, what's, your, um, what's your opinion on cinnamon? I, I've, I, I think cinnamon's neat. I don't have anything against it. Yeah, I like cinnamon. I think it's pretty good. Put cinnamon. it on some toast Fantastic. here and there and... Yeah. Cinnamon rolls are like some of my favorite snacks ever. Yeah, let's do some rails here and there. Mm. I have now watched Toy Story 4 and I'm now angry. Or I finally watched it and I'm now angry. <laughs> yeah, check yeah. out our EFAP movies on it. We were fucking shocked. We were yeah. horrified. We hated that movie. That was a nightmare. That was Man. really a nightmare. Oh no, Fringy's back. That means I have to ask the question now. No, what? Someone's super chat. They want to know your opinion. Well, our opinion on Terriers. Oh, um, we are up to episode five. Um, <coughs> bad, 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 <laughs> bad, really bad. Getting the newspaper um, out it, for that one. The 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 too long didn't read on why it's bad. Is it is a procedural show, a legal like a police procedural show that it shows complete disregard for the law. And, like, the world just does not react to the actions of these characters. These two characters who are pretty morally reprehensible. They seem, horrific. um, they seem horrifically bad. They do a lot of bad things. So, like, in the first episode alone, they commit, like, six or seven serious crimes. Um, uh, ending The ending being that they frame a man who they're pretty sure killed someone, but they don't actually know. Um... That that was really bad, um, they, and then <laughs> they fuck with a crime scene because they have an interest in no, the crime scene themselves. When it's like, yes. yo, the police need to investigate too, but I don't even know that they understand that's what's happening when they do that. Yeah, even though um, one of them is an ex detective. Yeah, it's <laughs> like... baffling. Um, and then and then like so so you know by by the end of episode five, basically the gist is oh there's like um there's this site. That, uh, for a construction project. Ooh, but, like, it's contaminated. And so they figure this out because they run it past the main character's, like, girlfriend, uh, ex-wife's soon-to-be husband who's, like, an engineer, an architect. He's familiar with these things. And he he's like, oh, yeah, no, this is toxic. Like, they can't build this here. They've done the report on this and, and they can't do it. That gets put through and they decide, yeah, we're not building this, we're not doing this project here. And 
uh, our main character's sister is like, oh no, that's that wouldn't make it radioactive. Those those elements don't work that way, based on public information. Now, your immediate questions are: nobody else ran another report. This got through the person whose job is to understand these things, and also all of this is publicly available, and you just know that this is not how it would work. So why? in the world would nobody else have figured this out it's honestly baffling so um, yeah it's uh yeah it's not a good show it's like one of the first things that happens in one of the cases is um they need they they need a phone number to be able to track the person they're after they get mm -hmm. the phone number because they go to the, her employer or at least who happens to be their employ her employer and he's like here's the phone number and so then they call the police department under a, a detective's ID that has been stolen and use it to track a phone signal. A phone signal that leads to, leads to a crime scene. That's where they're directed to. And so mm -hmm. now, if the police have just two brain cells to rub together, they will know a detective recently asked them for a tracking on a, a mobile phone that led them to the current crime scene that would have been discovered soon after they were there. And it's like, wow, mm -hmm. Detective Johnson or whatever, what's this about? Like, what did you find there? And he's going to be like, I didn't find shit. What are you talking about? I wasn't there. And then they'll be like, huh, like, that's weird. What huh. phone was used when they called in? And then they can track what that phone, sound like? which will be his phone. <laughs> and then they oh, know that- Oh, you have the ID and in they your know... car that we found parked right next to the crime scene. Yep, Man, that too. And they that's know- That's really weird. They, their probable cause for going into Ted's house was that he was sold the mobile. <laughs> It's like, wow, yeah. who sold him the mobile? Oh, and then you, they are doomed. Unlicensed private investigators. They are fucking doomed. <laughs> Illegally operating private investigators. Yeah, so it's over. Like, it's not just that they've committed these crimes, but also that there is a very clear trail of evidence connecting them to yeah. this crime. And just the, the morally abhorrent things continue. So, like, in episode three, he needs to get a loan for a house that he, there's no way that he could possibly pay it off. And, um, well, wait. The, the way that it's. I don't know. Oh. I don't know. I just, this is the first thing that happens that I found hilarious. So, he needs a loan, <laughs> and he's gone. I think he's the third bank he's at, and it's like, nah, because yeah. your credit shit, and, you know, you can't be trusted, you don't have a job, you, blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, okay. Lucky for him, the CEO of the bank happens to overhear this conversation. He's like, oh, <laughs> I need yeah. a PI to do a particular job. And the first thing is like, so get a real PI. Don't get some Randy who's not licensed. What are you doing? <laughs> get a... Why would you do this? And it's like, wow, you overheard him. And he's like, yeah, if you do this job for me, I'll give you your loan. It's like, wow, that's wow. fucking perfect. But it gets worse. Go ahead, Freddy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, at the end of the episode, um, it, it all goes wrong. And the dude's basically like, man, fuck you. Um, and then our main character leaves. The dude jumps... <laughs> He kills himself. He jumps out of the window and kills himself. But the paperwork is right there. The paperwork for his mortgage. So what he does is he forges this now dead man's signature on the documents to get the loan for his house. What a great guy, man. What a good guy you are. Yeah, there's, that's not just illegal. It's really unethical. <laughs> it's not just illegal. It's wrong. Oh, and, and, and also just the fact that our other main character happens to be... <laughs> uh... No, we. Oh, uh, yeah. So you know what? Well, we we intend to finish the show. We'll update you, Efap, on on stuff to do with it later. I guess, but we're not. But I. We don't think it's yeah. very good. I would go as far as saying it's downright oh. shit at this point. I think it's terrible. Yeah, it's it's terrible. But yeah. Uh, yeah. The, I know the, the parts. I the parts you've shown me, <laughs> told me about. Well, really in fairness, really like. Bad. I don't often, like, I watch a lot of stuff, I don't often show Rags all of it, but, like, I couldn't resist with some of this. <laughs> like, look at this event, it's insane. Mm -hmm. But going back to the person who mentioned Toy Story 4 and how they were angry after I haven't watched it, there is a EFAP movie's Toy Story 4, you might enjoy it, maybe you'll find it cathartic if you don't know it exists already. Yep. We thought it was shit too. Uh... Sharing our sadness. What would you do with the MCU post-Infinity War? Would lowering stakes be better? Like having an Earth-bound big bad for a villain? Is it even possible? Um, there's, there's a lot I of decisions to make. I might big bad for a while. Because, yeah, because uh, like, I, I don't think it was the right thing to bring in Shang-Chi and the Eternals 
right now. This, this mm -hmm. is, I think now is the time to, like, man, they're so grand. You know, the Eternal is so cosmically grand. Yeah. Like, whoa. When it's like, man, it could really go for a homecoming type of story, just with a new hero, maybe. It or... feels a bit like a feature creep, the film version. Yeah. Yeah, um, I would probably want to try and... Like, Far From Home, I think, was fine. Um, as a choice to do after yeah. all of it. I, I think you might want to just do the kind of movie that we can introduce some new heroes through some someone else and then give them their own movie. That sort of, they, they kind of did this in Phase 3, right? After Ultron. Mm -hmm. Just like, let's chill back down a little bit. Um, um, I just a relevant question. How does a writer ensure that their show treats immoral acts appropriately rather than glorifying them? So it's kind of that interesting conversation, right? Because Breaking Bad, Walter White is the bad guy. He is the villain. I mean, Death Note's another example. Light is the villain. He is like a super villain. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with um, what what like what is the story trying to tell you about these people? Like, what is the tone of the show in terms of representing these people? I think is an int is a really important part. So in Breaking Bad. As things get worse and worse, you'll start. You, you're. I think you're supposed to start being like, man, Walt is like doing some really yeah, bad things. But never. The, you'll you'll kind yeah, of be on ahead. his side for like. Sometimes you'll be like, no, they just don't understand the context. But then sometimes you'll be like, hmm, uh, hmm, yeah. But nevertheless, you're still like really engaged and interested in seeing what happens, and that's just great character work. And you can do that with people who are bad, obviously. Um, the problem with Terry is thus far as. It is very much the, their methods may be crude, but they're good people, but they're not. They're not even questionable people. They're just <laughs> no. doing really bad things. They sound, they sound definitely evil. They, um, they just so... deserve to be locked away forever because of how they damage other people in society. So selfishly driven. It's really annoying. Yeah, they just want to do things for money. It's always about getting money. Um, and I think that's the thing is usually... If you think about this in relation to GTA protagonists, usually they have some aspect of them that's really valuable, despite being really bad people. So, like, CJ loves his family and wants to do what's best for his family, wants to take care of his family. It's the same thing with, like, Nico, is that he loves Roman, he wants to take care of Roman, uh, even though they butt heads. Um, th there are these elements, and of course, putting them up against really bad people as well. Um... But yeah, in, in this show, it's like, like, the the villain thus far has kind of been Ted, and yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it's yeah, it's not good. Um, ooh, ooh, ooh. I remember loving Toy Story Four when I first saw it in theaters, and started to absolutely hate it upon further thought after I left the theater. I'm sorry, like he said, real whiplash that experience. As soon as they made Buzz a moron, and they made Woody mm. abandon all of his friends without- some of them without a word, I was like, nah. Nah. I'm fucking out. Yep. You, you, you're done that fucked up. Pain. Yeah, it was really painful. That was pain. The ending. I was like, I think we're all screaming at the top of our <laughs> lungs while it's playing happy music. Yeah, it was supposed to be really heartfelt, like, it's, it's just frustrated <laughs> as hell. Um... Oh, hey, now that I remember to ask, one of my friends is one of those, your own personal opinion is your truth, I need Randy nutsos. Uh, I'm not objecting this or big on the whole, there is only one truth, but I guess maybe I was wrong. Um, and pisses me off sometimes on why he dislikes and hates certain things that I like. He sent me a link at one point to Reddit saying the reason behind internet historian not appearing on EFAP since 99 is that Muller was talking about politics. I just... We've been over this. First of all, like, I, I fucking rarely talk about politics. Like, this is, just doesn't come up that much. And secondly, um, he was gonna come on from a Gothic phone, but then, uh, there was a conflict of schedules, and then, um, the latest I've heard is that he's, um, he's dialing back, like, online appearances, but once he's dialing them back up, he's, uh, he's actually, he's, he said he was interested in Gothic phone, so I was like, yeah. Yeah, he's a neat guy to hang out with. Welcome back anytime, of course. I reckon he'd like yeah. Gothic phone a whole lunch. Um, I, oh, I think, think he'd be will, hilarious absolutely. with Gothic Phone. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, this was mentioned in the um the stupid Rags red thread that we went over in a mini, if you remember. They were like, oh, yeah, in that yeah, one, yeah. they said it was Rags talking about politics that scared him off. So, I guess they'll figure out a Which, narrative at some even point. Even then, 
none of us, even me, we don't really talk about it much. And I mean, no. I don't know. It's, there is a degree of like, you'll be okay. There is no <laughs> one person you agree with politically entirely. I, I'm sure of it. Um, I grew up on RTSs. Kane's. I knew you said Kanye's wrath. Kane's wrath. <laughs> <laughs> Zero Hour was my lifeblood. I remember as, uh, a mod for Red Alert 3 that made five new major factions, expanded the lore a great deal. It had this nihilistic robot superintelligence that was super interested in art and was sad that the universe would end. Oh. Hmm. Apparently there's going to be more to that. I'll read it when it comes, I guess. Um... So this is in relation to the Cinder's mod being compared to DS2, but wait, there's more. Life gems are back. There are 20 billion Siegbrow you can acquire. FP regens passively, allowing infinite spell cast. Divine blessings are farmable from Silver Knights, and there's more infinitely respawning mini-bosses. Dark spells are sold by Kala, have been converted into hexes, requiring their own new ring for a damage buff, no longer benefiting from Dragon Crest ring. There are 128 rings up from 71, but no increase in ring slots to account for the change. The mod absolutely breaks the human NPC AI. I've literally watched them stand in one place and repeatedly attempt to parry the AI 80 to 20 meters away while I aggro them. It's it's just like DS2, but it's a mod. You can't criticize it, I mean. Metal, what do you have to say? What? <laughs> so about Cinder's mod, I have not played it, so I can't say. I mean... Uh, I don't, I don't I don't know. I don't I haven't played it that deeply. I played like two times and then I mean I like I they, they include the thing is the Sinners mode constantly changes, so I don't even know if it's in the same state as I played it before. I do I did see that there's a lot of uh a lot of new healing items, but I just I I didn't choose them. Like I, I didn't The healing I, life chose choose. you. Mm -hmm. didn't, I just didn't use them. I didn't buy any of them. If you have to buy them, I guess. I just played like the normal Dark Souls. And the thing is, even if, if I mean, those items might be in there, but still, the mechanics are still Dark Souls 3 Gee. mechanics. Like, the yeah. game still works much, much better. So I still don't think it's a fair comparison well, yeah, I mean, to Dark Souls 2. Functioning hitboxes goes a long way. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I mean,. Yeah, I, I just I don't I don't have any context for it, so it might be true. I don't know, but uh, yeah. Um, so about the 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 super invested in art alien robot super intelligence rather. Uh, so they uh, they went into hibernation until a human tricked them into thinking they could take over the world and beat entropy by making a pact with a. Oh, and it's carrying on. I I should probably wait until it stops saying continue yeah. dot dot dot. Okay. <laughs> um. Oh, this is the end of the other one. This is about the Reddit thread one. So it doesn't like to talk about his politics, apparently. Fuck my life. He also doesn't like Game of Thrones because there's politics in it. And the character names aren't unique, but loves Dune. And the main character's name is Paul. <laughs> I don't know what to make of that. That's, uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Yeah. Uh, packed with an Elder God thingy made of psionic energy. For no, that one's got to continue to the end as well. I'm just going to wait. It'll be fine. Terrier's discussion reminded me of the movie Hell or High Water with Chris Pine. Been meaning to give it a rewatch. Have you guys seen it? I have not. I have not. No. no. Metal people are complaining you're playing Vanquish off stream. I'll take it over it. It's fine. Damn. I also streamed it before on stream, so get fucked. I like to think the explosion was just Sharting Onion breaking the universe barrier to go to Gothic Phoneverse to the well drawn fan art universe. Oh. Hey, crossover. Medium barriers, nice. Uh, Fringy, there's a Fringoid skull on display in a restaurant in North Adelaide. Are you going to go on a revenge rampage? Also, get outside uh, it's what Sunday. Is, what, is, what is a Fringoid? Like, what's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like you could tell us. Like, what is it? I, I can't. I don't know what it is. Like, oh, of course I've heard of him. He's me. Oh, I'm not a Fringoid. Yeah, you're oh. Who else could it be? Yeah. How could my skull be on display? That's part of the. That's one of the reasons they sent the super chat. That's amazing. <laughs> you should be vengeful about that. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna go. Go get it back. It's yours. We support all of your retributive endeavors. 
Sometimes I think about how I actually got to this channel. I mean, at first I watched Game Grumps, then got to know Super Best Friends Play, then I see them creating their own channels after they disbanded, and especially podcasts. And in one episode, uh, Wooly just says, well, it, it, it's ended. Where's the rest? Dang, it's a, we've got a, it's a pandemic of unfinished Super Chats. Oh, man. <laughs> well, we've... Oh, nice. Kind of true, actually. But I this one, I don't think there's any hope of me finishing. I don't know where the ending went for that one. I'm so sorry, but I'm assuming it ends with you saying you found this stream. So, woohoo. <laughs> I don't know. I'm glad you're here. Yes. All right, the cosmic one has ended. Elder God thingy made of psionic energy from the realm... From the realm one of Wait, the is commandos. Is this the first one or a continuation? Because I'm going to be honest, I do not remember the first ones. I'll do my best to try and give you the context you require to answer it, if, right. if required. Um, if possible. From the realm of one of the commandos gets their powers from, but even though they have the tech to instantly win, but their artistic vision of a robot army prevents this, they are artists before warriors, as that is what they love above all. So, the impression I get is that the hyper-intelligent robots that they created actually had a love of art, is what they were saying, and, and that they were they were artists before warriors or something. I mean, this, it sounds like something interesting sure. there. Yeah, I like it. I can, yeah, I can, I can believe it. That yeah. sounds like an interesting idea. Um, Fringoid Skull, where are we? Do you, do you, one thing I find kind of neat is when cosmic-level superheroes have to deal with more earthly matters and street-level ones have to deal with cosmic threats, Spider-Man often does the latter. I mean, uh, it can be, like, if you have a hyper-powerful entity and they're having to deal with, like, I don't know, there's Doctor corruption. Doctor Strange on jury duty or something? Yeah, or there's, <laughs> there's corruption in the mayoral election. It's like, I could oh. simply cast a truth hex and he will, no, no, you can't no, do No, you can't that. do that, Doctor. You stop that. Um, Why do you stand in the way of justice? Other good examples would be Batman's personal history with Darkseid during the Grant Morrison run of Batman. Uh, Sure. And how Lex becoming president forced Supes to deal with earthly politics. Yeah. All potentially fascinating stories. Um, where are we? Instantly win. My friend is a high-functioning autist, to be fair, but I don't like to mark that against anyone as someone who, uh, of the smartest people are autistic. Yeah, you wouldn't need to... Don't worry about blaming autism if someone's being a dick. <laughs> Just say they're a dick. Yeah, that's true. Also, they that is true. They are some of the most uh, intelligent people on the planet. Um, however, they are often also some of the worst dancers. Yeah. So. Trade off. I am not a fringoid. Fringoid 2021. <laughs> <laughs> um, embrace who you are. Embrace the fringoid. The main rule of roleplay is that you can't control stuff other people do. It's purely collaborative when everyone's own law is equal in authority and authenticity. This allows everyone to create what they desire. And most conflicts are resolved as no one particular law as no one particular law holding absolute authority is the peace that they all meet in neutral ground. I think this was in response to the idea of like when someone comes into your roleplay with their own character and it fucks with your history, like what do you do? Um the key to that is to maybe avoid making characters that are too, in like particularly tied to this uh, to to the a specific place. Now, I know I could take some of my characters because I, I save all my character sheets and stuff. I could I could take Rogo Raggins, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I could take him, <laughs> and I could plop him into a different setting, and his goals and motivations and what he is trying to do is still going to be a pretty valid thing and there's nothing that's going to be like it, it would still totally make sense and he would still function well in that world if he was just transported into a new one yeah i suppose as well you if there's an accidental conflict like someone's i don't know does a thing that someone else had already done in your story then you i guess you just try and morph it in and be like no no it still totally makes sense because there's this other thing you guys don't know about something like that i don't know uh, may as well toss an extra five. Love the extra credits video, Rags. Been oh. watching since 2016 and was very pleased to see you upload. Wow. Keep it up. Thank you very much. I'm glad you liked it. More is on the way. I, I, um, if there wasn't an EFAP today that we're doing right now, I would probably have been recording, like, 
honestly, like four dog bites videos. There was like there I've got these projects and they're all named and it's gotta do that. But Rags here we confirms are. EFAP has away. destroyed his work ethic. Yeah, this <laughs> is destroying my career. These people are a bad influence. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I'm also German. Yeah. Also German. German. No, 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 no. Um, in all seriousness, what does everyone think of corn inside poop? Serious answers, please. Poop corn? I haven't given it that much thought. Um, <laughs> honestly, it doesn't really affect me in any way. Um, it's not like... It's not like... Um, it's not like razor blades and poop or something like that. Mm. You know, that would be really bad. Yeah. Corn is a very inoffensive and not particularly durable nor hardy substance really it's it doesn't have any sharp edges it's not really that rigid so you just don't really pause and give it much thought i i've just it's it's kind of funny and that's about it i like it when they create corn, poop monsters in games or movies and they just have corn in them because it's just like yeah of course you would right and it's like i guess everyone just eats corn regularly so if they were a poop monster constructed of your average poop there's gotta be some corn in there or rather, the, How? the the parts of corn that remain. Yeah, I'm wondering what is it that's unique and in, that's different about these pieces of corn that allow them to survive intact <laughs> for that kind of a journey. But the other ones, like, what, it makes you wonder what happened to the others. How yeah, come didn't make it? How come they didn't make this far? Or were they not as strong of will? They're the were background they not as... characters in an action. In the movie, corn verse. You know? In the in like the day after tomorrow, but the day after poop. And the, the, the corn, the you know, like they're the corn that don't make it into the library. They're the corn that gets swept up in the tidal wave. Nice to see SFO on EFAP. I remember Rags coming onto his Canadian election stream. Man, that was a crazy stream. I think I remember that. Well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, um, I was playing um, Risk of Rain 2 at the time. Yeah, sometimes that's how I remember. It was fun having short fat otaku on EFAP. He'll probably return yeah. at some point to he discuss more nice, things. Uh, he was a nice, nice, nice guest. He'll definitely have him back on whenever he'd like. Uh, okay, Super Chat's done. Now please end the stream so I may watch what I missed. I'm afraid not. We're yeah. seven hours in, so as, um, you know, unless someone else calls it because they're very, very tired, we shall be continuing. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Onwards we go. Uh, nice to Oh, wait, yeah. Release Woga, release Wodawick, release Bwyan, release Wags. Well. That's, uh... I, I, I'm, I'm pretty releasable, yeah. I think. I think as far as candidates for release go, I'm, I'm pretty top tier, not gonna lie. Uh, Metal, what do you think of the German question? How does it make you oh. feel? I, I don't speak German. Oh. No, it's all right. Yeah. <laughs> don't blame you. <gasps> Wait, I don't speak German either. What is the question? Oh, Bringy, I'm looking at your career with great interest. Oh. Oh. <laughs> don't know, okay. if, don't nice. know if sexual, but, you know, it could be, could not be. <laughs> Good hope. Uh, hmm. If you guys were to remake KOTOR 1 and 2 on the level Final Fantasy 7 got, how would you guys change such modernize the combat system? Hmm. I don't remember enough <laughs> about the combat I'm not system. The yeah, yeah, and I feel like that wouldn't be the thing that you change. You might would you might tweak it, but I feel like the people who would really like those games, the combat is a pretty key part of why they enjoy it. I would not want to draw their ire. No. No. And I've not played it, so can't help you there. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Is there a playlist of Rag's RPG videos? I've heard him refer to them on previous streams along with Aiden Paladin, but I can't seem to find them. Ah, uh, there's a Swamp Playing Games, I believe is the channel, where we did one. Um, Gould Cross has some on his channel as well. I think Arch has the Nazi Vampire one. Uh oh. Um, oh, no. Uh, <laughs> But I'll have to look more specifically to find some of the others if I can't quite remember where they are. But that should get you started, at least. That's three of them. Yeah. 
with all the mess in Australia, I'd like to inform Fringy that we would happily welcome him if he wishes to move. We have Tex-Mex, cows, and freedom. You too, Metal. Oh, Tex-Mex, cows, and freedom. Uh, nice. I mean, if, if you wanted me to move there, you would need to make the immigration policy in the United States <laughs> a little bit more flexible, because, like, there are certain things that you just can't get... I'm pretty sure that America doesn't have, like, a self-employed visa. Um, no, that's like, one of the things Top Hats has lamented about. Yeah, I, I don't get it. Like, that feels it weird to me. It is weird. Because um, you can get self-employed visas in, like, Canada and stuff, but not in America. So that just makes it harder. Yeah, you should just yeah. sneak across the border and come in here illegally. That seems to be the way to go. Jeez, they'll give you... You can go to the right state, the, uh... and they'll give you driver's licenses and all kinds of shit. There's the O-1 visa, which I think is the one for exceptional skill, so I'm not going to be able to get in on that one. What? Uh, I, I okay. would. Have they seen your 12 Angry Men video? Yeah, I go to the immigration <laughs> department. Hey, look, I made a really... Well, I think it's neat anyway, on this movie. That's how you, uh, you, you put the video down, you're like, well, I, mean, well, I think it's neat. They're like, what is it? <laughs> I think it's I think it's worthy of a visa. All right, come on. The celebration of American culture. I love America. I say yeah. twelve angry is men is good. Is that, is that what you have to do to get in? Cool people who love the freedom and the democracy. Freedom, 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 oi. Um, freedom. That's a thing. That's that's something. Freedom. I do love the freedom. Please let me in. I give freedom free. ten out of ten. The free is is very neat. I would suck every dick on this beach for freedom. <laughs> Liberty. <laughs> Liberty I mean, as I mean, well. There's a there's a lot to like about Australia though. There's a there's a lot of places to see and things to do. Is there now? I, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I was just clarifying. It, 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 it ain't it there isn't as diverse a biomes as in the United States for sure, but um there's a lot. You got tropics. You got deserts. You got little dinky mountains, but they they still got mountains with snow on them. Um, and of course, you can. Uh, your Castleberry. mountain is like little dinky, but our mountain is like big pee pee. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's really the 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 Himal. You know, if if we're talking about the big pee pees in terms of like mountains, I'm pretty sure America's in fourth place. Is Kilimanjaro taller than uh than Mount McKinley? John C. McKinley? No, not that one. Wait, hold on. I need to know. Or is it called Denali now, right? Yeah, there it is. Denali is 6,155 meters. How? Mount, oh, no, Mount Kilimanjaro is shorter. Sure. Wait, no, no. I might be wrong. Uh. What? what oh, no. No, it's not. All right, so it is fourth. Okay. Yep. Damn. What Wait, it no, it's ranked fourth in prominence. Help me out. What's that, sir? What was the mountain that began with E, was it, or something? E. E, uh, I don't oh, know. That, I no, those are, the, those are the funny mountains. Oh. Yeah. They, yeah, it's Mount He. <laughs> That'd be a fun mountain to climb when you get to no, the top. No, it would be horrific. Just... It's oh. all rocky and no one gets it. It's all shaped like a he he he, and so it's really difficult to traverse. And when you die, it laughs at you. Oh. That's no it's fun. It's interesting to think about, like, topographically prominent. So, oh, no, wait, no. It's it's still in order of, like, the tallest to the. Okay. I, I thought that that would yield interesting results, but. It does Tallest to the tallest. <laughs> but you were wrong. Basically. What's the... It's the, uh... The, the, the one that is the tallest from, like, base to peak in terms of the mountain itself from base to peak is, uh, the one in South America, right? The... Aku... Aconcagua. Man. Butchered that one. That sounds racist or something. <laughs> That's, uh... It's, uh... I'm just looking at it, and it's, it's like... When you look at it from zoomed out, I feel like it almost doesn't do justice to how difficult it would be to climb this thing. <laughs> like, like, it's zoomed out, it's like, oh, that looks like a pretty nice, smooth little incline. It's lying to you. But in reality, it's not, yeah. Uh, with lizard eyes, Fringy, lizard eyes. I, uh, I'm not sure what that's... I'm sorry for, oh, I guess they watch, they're keeping an eye on you with great interest with lizard eyes. Oh, boy. oh, I thought that was a Game of Thrones reference where you will close 
green eyes and brown eyes and lizard wow eyes. you remember that fucking hell that's a specific <laughs> quote from season three <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry just... i'm sorry that i remember that quote <laughs> <laughs> i'm just like a i'm like a happy fun mystery box you never know what crazy thing i'll say or remember next yeah we love our mystery boxes crazy. over here big fan Oh, yeah. Hi, rags. Hello. Bringy, quit lying. How can you enjoy living somewhere that doesn't exist? That'd be like saying purgatory is a riveting place. Lizard eyes, Fringy. Lizard eyes. Lizard purgatory eyes. may well be a riveting place. Who's to say that it's not? I don't know. From the things we've had describing it. Does it sound riveting? I don't know. Well, yeah. Purgatory. I mean, again, I like South Pork's just South Pork's Pork. <laughs> description of it being uh, don't Grace Randolph infecting me. Um, like... <laughs> It feels like, uh, you you're know, trying it to is immigrate a here. That's why you're adopting our. <laughs> I'm, I'm adopting that, that yank lingo, all right? I'm adopting that gringo lingo. Oh my um, god, you can't say that anymore. Uh, no, gringo is totally fine. You can say gringo. That's oh. one. What, what was it? What, what was the, the one that Hassan defended? Gusano? He's the one he defended. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's that one. He really yeah. shouldn't have defended. Well, I mean, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's racial, isn't it? Like it, it, it is specifically. If, if you, you remember, to race. the person who adamantly used it against Destiny, he he based it on his eye color. D I mean, is this not like the peak of racism? <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, no, I'm okay. allowed to. I'm allowed to use this slur because of attributes of you that you can't change that say nothing about who you are as a person. Yeah, man, it's fucked. That's that's precisely what we want to avoid. But okay, I thought, yeah. I don't know, it's just yeah, it's not nice. But an interesting verb. What was what was I saying? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, that, mm -hmm. that I like South Park's description of it as purgatory. It's a plane. It is a plane that is always about to take off, but you're not allowed to get up to go to the bathroom. You're not allowed to. <laughs> you, you, you can't put your, your your seat back or anything like that. You just got to sit there, and um, <laughs> just wait for the plane to take off. Purgatorio. <laughs> Like, hey, really no, Purgatory's an island. Remember? Is it? I don't remember. Wait. Oh, yeah, oh. in Crisis on Infinite Earth, it's an island. Oh, I thought oh, you were referencing Lost. <laughs> <laughs> Purgatory is an island. No, they got Lost. Got it from Crisis on Infinite Earth. Oh, on. they ripped it off. What the fuck? Can't be having that. It's such an awesome fucking show. That Crisis on Infinite Earths. <laughs> it's so sad that The Flash and Supergirl will likely come to an end. Those shows just look so incredible from all the little videos I see online. Yeah. Well, hasn't The Flash already been renewed for another season? Like next Why, year? though? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Who's I think watching it? It's, it's, it's like, it's like well, a soap opera at this see. point. It's like, stop. I mean, just let it die. Way. And just, I guess, I just wonder, it's like, is it not embarrassing <laughs> to be on these shows? Yes. Man, well, I remember when yeah. season one came out, and I still remember friends of mine at the time being like, yeah. the Flash show's super cool, but, like, right now it's so embarrassing. Like, yeah, and it must suck for the main actor to be aware of that, like, to be Which like, he has to be. I'm on the shitty, stupid show. It's like, hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, like if we're talking about the, the superhero content, you've got, like, the MCU in terms of just broad recognition, and then you've got, like, the DCEU, and then you yeah. got your show, like yeah, and yours, yeah, you're the you're the Netflix series. adaptation in the meme. That it's they not. Yeah. The, it's even worse than the Netflix adaptation. Like I was saying, this like, is the Chinese knockoff of the Netflix adaptation. It's, dude, it's worse than the ABC Marvel stuff in terms of like you know the appreciation or just recognition of what it is. It's below that. It's the CW. It's like a joke network. <laughs> so I I just looked it up. So um, could be on BET. It, it, the the oh I've I've barely even recognized that channel name, but I'm sure I've heard of it. Look look at these ratings. So the highest rating for this season was a million viewers, and that was the pilot, not the pilot, the, the premiere. Um and thus far it has sunk to seven hundred thousand people watching it live. Seven hundred thousand people. Seven hundred thousand. Hmm. That's um for America? Like for a country of three hundred and thirty million? Yeah, well, I mean, that's pretty bad, yeah. That means if you got 330 people in a room, 
less than one of them would have watched the flash like, well, it take it takes less than one brain to enjoy the flash so that makes sense i guess mm. that's it works i guess i just i don't see why anybody would want to watch this show like look at the production values look at the like writing it's so cringe Cringe is correct. Cringe is the correct terminology to use yeah. to describe the CW. It is cringe like, incarnate. Crisis on Infinite Earths. That was like, what in the? <laughs> <laughs> I I just. Hmm. It's so funny for us to just barge in on it and be like, we'll watch you, and they're like, no, 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 what? No, we weren't ready for that. We were just we're fucking around. Stop it. Yeah, this is what I mean. Crisis on Infinite Earths was five episodes, wasn't it? It was. Yeah, it was five episodes. That's like, that's that's a that's a good like four, three and a half, four hours of content. And they started filming it on the twenty fourth of September, and then they finished on the eighth of November. It's like, dude, what in the world? How is that enough time to make that much content? Don't think of it is as it... well. Here's the thing: don't think of it as making content. Ah, uh, that was yeah, your first true. mistake. Yeah, think of it as, um... Hmm. Um... Think of it as just, um... Something. Yeah. It's definitely something. They're, they're doing They're doing their best, I think. I don't know if it's more insulting to not give them the benefit of the doubt that they're trying their hardest, or to say, no, this is the best that they can do, and this is how it turned out. Hard I'm not sure know. what I would say about it in terms of like effort and, and things and how hard it was worked on. I guess I just uh, the 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 next crossover is called Armageddon. Whoa, oh boy, isn't that exciting? I was like, Coming I did out. Yeah, that's wow. We Armageddon, go from I mean... November. the infinite universe is being destroyed to Armageddon. Be like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> to be just... fair. It was the infinite universes, mm -hmm. but they almost destroyed the last universe, but it stopped just in time. Right before it got to Earth, the red tism stopped and the Earth was saved because they, the Flash ran on the treadmill and then he ran himself to and death. And then he, he saved everybody. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. He yeah. ran on the treadmill and then he vaporized. I remember that. It was very yeah. sad. I'm pretty sure he's already back in the Flash show as well, that character. I've heard, yeah. <laughs> so, clearly they're, they're, like, what? I just, I don't, I don't get why there would be anybody who wants to watch it. Why would anybody want to watch that? Maybe they're <laughs> contractually obligated to watch it. <laughs> Many bets were lost. Watch it. Many bets were lost, yes. Many lives were ruined. Many it's arts like were slain. Strapped, strapped to a chair with the little things to keep the eyes open. Yeah, the Ludovico <laughs> technique, but with the CW. Yeah. You kind you know and, what... and they're just sitting there begging, <clears throat> like, "Please stop it! I promised I've changed. I'll do better <laughs> next time." And it's just they just don't care. <laughs> you think they care if you've changed? It's too late. We will decide if you have changed. Um. Hey all, and Rags. Hello. Hello. Uh, we've been talking superhero things for a while now, and I really want to recommend the web serial Worm, if you get the chance. It's amazingly written, and has really made me rethink how I look at storytelling and the like in general. I've not heard of it. The web serial. No, I haven't heard of that either, no. Makes you rethink web... how you look at storytelling. That sounds uh, neat. That sounds interesting. Um, but I mean, that seems to be what we're in need of right now. Um, not just better writing, but also like, guys, you're gonna have to shape it, uh, change it up now. People are gonna get bored. Mm -hmm. I do wonder sometimes, you know, like, if someone said, you know, you can't release another Iron Man now, because it's like, done. I'd just be like, I wonder if that's true. I wonder if you had a really solid, just, you know, like a solid Daredevil movie where he's just becomes the hero. Just be like, yeah, that would probably be fine, right? Like, I don't, I don't think. I don't see why it wouldn't be. I like to believe the fatigue is more so tied to them being shit, but that's probably too hopeful. Um, I hoped before, and now I'm just... <laughs> now now look where we gone. are. I'm just empty. Hope is a fleeting dream. Hope's like the sun, Rags. Uh, I hate that quote. Holdo sucks. Holdo does suck. 
fuck hole, though. A fun writing challenge. Make a character who has a better chance beating someone like Azeroth or Cthulhu than a Swordmaster or Mugger with a gun. Maybe Is that someone again? uses... A fun writing challenge. Make a character... I think I might need punctuation in this to know exactly what they're telling me because there isn't any. Make a character who has a better chance beating someone like Azeroth or Cthulhu than a sword, Swordmaster or a Mugger with a gun. Oh, so maybe somebody who has, like, a, a mental power, or they have to be, um, I don't know, that they have to put themselves in a kind of situation where their powers can activate, maybe, um, or, I don't know, I'd have to think about oh, it. Oh, sorry, so I get it. So they're saying, like, against a Swordmaster or a guy with a gun, they might lose, but against something like Cthulhu or Azeroth, they have a chance, like, that's their sort of... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Hmm. Um, funnily enough, there was a character in, uh, Heroes whose ability was basically he nukes himself. Like, he can survive it, I think, but he just, he detonates. And so, in a way, you'd be like, he'd be really great against certain things in certain contexts, but for the most part, that's just not gonna work. <laughs> like, against your average buggers, like, it's probably not worth it. Um... Uh, the climax of season one, by the way, is our main character who absorbs powers, like duplicates them and use them himself, comes across that guy, and then he can't control the new power he's gained, like the nuke thing. And that's mm. like the big drama of what's going to happen when he can't control it. Wow. Um, what do you guys think of the upcoming Netflix adaptation of Neil Gaiman's Sandman? I'm terrified as it seems that it won't be a strict adaptation. Not too I familiar with Sandman myself. Yeah, you well, gotta just hope for the best, I suppose. Hope it works out. I don't know, yeah. I don't know much about it. Hello there, Massives. I want to pay you for your entertainment. Here, have some money that wasn't spent on crappy media. Don bless. Oh. Oh, thank you very much. So nice. Thanks. That's like a double wind. Yeah. Invest. Win. Um, the more you try to defend yourself, the more you dig your grave, fring go go goidius lizard friend, lizard eyes, my friend, whispers, lizard eyes, love you, Frogo. I guess they wanted me to whisper that to you, but I don't want to scare you. Alright. <laughs> the solution is simple. Rags adopts Fringy. Worked for Angelina and Brad and Woody Allen. What is, um, is there, can you adopt someone if they're not a citizen? Um, and then that could make is them a citizen. The standard meme, Maybe. Is it the standard think... meme that you marry somebody and then they... they well, yeah, but I'm... Where you are. Now I'm curious, what if Rags adopted you? What what would... Can he and How what would he happen? How can you adopt me if I'm, like, an adult human? I think hey. you can adopt adults, hey. can't you? If they're mentally, like... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's not gonna work, Alright. <laughs> that ain't gonna work. It oh. might. You never know. It might. <laughs> Are you good at acting? Can you act, can you act retarded? Again, now I'm just immediately going to the South Park thing where Carmen pretended to be like mentally handicapped so that he could be in the Special Olympics and win a thousand bucks. I just, I just and like the idea lost. that you know that they're like free. What's two plus two? Do you go five? Yeah, five. <laughs> <laughs> just lie. <laughs> just blatantly lie. Uh, Sixty-seven. And then you, they're like, are you pretending to be retarded? You go, no. And they're like, oh my god, that's what a retard would say. He must be. <laughs> <laughs> no. You just, you do the worst job at it possible and see how far you can go. You know, even like, you're not invested in it at all, but you, like, it just turns out it's like, it's working. You're like, uh, uh, fine, I guess. I get citizenship for free. I don't know if that, that's how it works, but. Retarded, I guess. Um, by the way, Lucifer, in the show Lucifer, is not a liar. They subvert the normal depiction of him there, uh, and then in brackets, because Rags wondered in the Tism Crisis episode. Well, in the Genesis story, he is the only one of the two who told the truth, so... Neato. Right. <laughs> Fringy, I'll marry you for a fake green card. Aw. Oh, nice. Here you go, Fringy, plenty of options. Ado adoption or Ah, right, yeah, so many options, yeah. Uh, that, that's always a fun question to ask a religious person. It's like, how have you determined that God is the good one and Satan is the evil one? <laughs> it can be tough sometimes. You just have to get a moral barometer. It's a little device you can buy. 
it how deep you are in morals. Really good or bad. <laughs> it beeps real fast when it you just did. tells you. Yeah, <laughs> you pointed at someone who's evil and it's like. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> oh no! Does it say power level like eighty-five or ninety? What is it? What was it from uh, Black Widow? Oh, eighty-eight percent likely of threat. Threat level eighty-eight oh, percent. Yeah. Looks like they're bad. Bad level. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> uh, why do you have a GameCube logo for a PC game? Where does my money even go? Um, so I'll be honest with you, I just I use this because it matches. To be fair, this game can go into widescreen, so I don't even know why I did this, but it it is that way now. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is your opinion of the Crisis on Infinite Earth comics? I quite enjoyed them, even if they clearly did not accomplish what they set out to accomplish. That is, streamlining the DC continuity. They did that to streamline it? Oh my god. Well, I mean, Crisis <laughs> on Infinite Earths, the TV show, is definitely not the same as the comic, but I haven't read the comic, so I couldn't tell you. I know that that was like, it had actual consequences because characters who got killed off in that were gone for a long time. Like, the main is one, the one... The Barry Allen yeah. died, and he didn't come back for like 25 years. Which you could tell... Died and she didn't come back for a while. They were aware of that in their version, because... Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah they, he almost dies, but then the other one does it. That was... <laughs> like, she was slowly flying towards it, and it's so cringy. Like, just, it looks so crap. Do you remember people were like... I think it was Brown Table and a few others were like, Oh, Arrow's death was so fucking good. Little did they know, <laughs> that's the only... The sky. And that's only his first death. Oh, sorry, yeah, you're talking about yeah. the second death. God damn! Yeah, that was right. that was baffling for fans. Imagine how baffling it was for us. <laughs> like, we are Shooting here. Shooting a laser out of his face while they're fighting these ghosts. Does he? When he around. when he dies, he comes back and he says like, "I am Spectre now" or something like that. Yeah. It's just like, oh okay. <laughs> oh okay. All right. I'm Spectre. All right. Let me update the Wikipedia page. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> None of the right is no. Is that T R E or T E R? Just so <laughs> I want to get this right, okay? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I have not read the comics. We had been role playing together for four years at that point, so there weren't many options other than to sigh and just move on knowing <laughs> he made a bad call. That sucks. Surely you'd want to be like, oh man, the thing you've just established kind of fucks with everything over here. Is there any way you can move it around? I don't know, I've just never been in that scenario, so I just don't know what the uh, the thing to do is, you know? Continuity. The tough one. Uh, would you ever stream on YouTube for me? It'd be easier for me to fund your expedition to discover your non-existent country. I'm thinking $500 is a good start. Oh, shit. Oh. Um, the reason why I do it on Twitch is because it makes sense to me to have stuff on multiple platforms, just in case anything would ever... In case there were ever any issues on one or the other. That's what if you went back and forth? Um, I mean, I guess that's always an option, but I, I like, I'm, I'm totally fine with, with doing it. It's, uh, it's fine with me. You got the videos all on here, though. Don't worry. Yes. The videos. The precious videos. Uh, at Mola, some people adopt their partners if they live in places where gay marriage is illegal. As it's the only legal way they can live together. Oh, that sucks. That's fucking mm. crap. That's yeah. lame. But I mean, at least there's a. Thank fuck, there's a way well, to mean, do it. You know. Would would well, I guess wouldn't wouldn't there, wouldn't the way be that you just like live together, but you I guess you wouldn't have legal, any legal status to to enshrine that. I suppose. Mm. Basically, just be roommates. Isn't it civil partnership? Is what people call it. Domestic partnership or civil union. Civil like union, that. that could be it, yeah. I don't know. They followed up with saying, I'm actually serious, Fringy Lol. I mean, I'm not going to change, like, the what I'm doing and just to get paid. <laughs> <laughs> Fringy is a principled frogo. <laughs> Listen, that, I don't know, that sounds like a pretty great way to change. Pretty great reason. It's like, well, if I do change, I do get paid, so. Mm, that. Uh, yeah. Wim is good up to the halfway point. Afterwards, it gets so con convoluted and devoted to being the grim, dark, dip superhero setting. Oh no! Well, uh, uh, like I said, I'm unfamiliar with it. I, I hope it's um, engaging and fun, though. Um, and they said about the money, lol. You deserve it with a heart. Oh boy. Yeah. Um. 
Maybe just one I'm stream on YouTube for you at the end of the year to celebrate the year. To get the, the dosh and spend it sure. on. I guess alternatively, it's just, you know, Patreon, like buck a month. That's that's, <laughs> that's cool with me. Like, or I, uh, yeah. Um, at Muller, it's more so they can have a say in their partner's medical situations. It gives them legal standing ah. in that fashion. Ah, I see. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, enjoy your day and a half, or else. Oh, um, kind of scary. Um, um. Hey, EFAP crew, thanks for the countless hours of insight and entertainment. Long man good, long friends good as well. Aw. Yeah, they're all right. This is very true, yes. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, where are we? Love you guys. Ragu, you're my favorite, the Fagu, since Milo resigned. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that that yeah, he's an odd boy, that's for sure. He resigned from the Fagu role. <laughs> like, like, all right, technically. Wait, yes. what is that? Oh, was that? Oh, yeah. He's since understood <laughs> he required mental readjustment. Oh, man. Yeah. It's like. Yeah. <laughs> that dude, so. S yeah. Fun times. Um, do, 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 uh, ordered the plushie, but won't tell you which one. Also, um, you guys think that Buffy's pretty good, The Simpsons, etc., but we all know the best show ever is Married with Children. Hmm. I, I haven't seen it. Well. You haven't? Uh, it's, no. it's, it's funny. It's alright. I like yeah. it. Yeah, I like it. I think it's pretty funny. Is it about being it's married with children? Edgy. It was kind of edgy. Mm. For the 90s, yeah. Yeah, it was a pretty, yeah. Uh... Oh man, I'm learning about advanced electronics in my video game. What are you guys doing with your lives? Open. Thing here. Just chilling. <laughs> um... The show. He fought to his last breath, EFAP. No, oh, he's still alive. <laughs> yeah, that was... He fought to his last breath. Like he... He's just in the background going... <laughs> He's getting better. Oh, such a great show. Rewatching a crisis series again after this lol. Also, hi, Rags. Hi there. <laughs> Are you still going to make a God of War review? Um, I would like to make a lot of stuff. No promises. But that would be in my like to make it section, yes. Um, especially if they do something horrible with Ragnarok. Mm. Hey, but Mola. I expect that. Sorry I couldn't make those celebration caught up finishing my comic, but I hope we all had fun one day closer to Halloween. The literature devil, and yeah, no problem, man. Um, there will be plenty more anniversaries to come, and we were pretty stacked throughout. Uh, but thank you, and yeah, we yes, were. indeed. Halloween is indeed on the way. <laughs> Coming. Money for the fringy. Buy goo or a green card. I would shelter you from the great emu war. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dear. Huddled in the corner, tucked in someone's arms, shielded from the emus. Yeah, the emus will come to different countries specifically for Australians. That's all they're after. <laughs> they hunt down Australians <laughs> in other countries. We they're like blade runners. Blade runners, but emu runners. Terrifying. Uh, just want to say thank you for keeping me entertained on my long Saturday walks this summer. I've never walked for as long as your streams go, but maybe someday. Not today, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of funny, like... Eh. <laughs> you make it a challenge, like, can I walk longer than they stream? Like, that's gonna be real tough. <laughs> One that day. legitimately will be very tough, yeah. It's a really hard challenge, yeah. You can take breaks for water, it'll still count. Um, hey Molo, I liked your orc vid. Hi Rags, I hated the Black Widow vid, critiques are poor, etc. <laughs> well, yeah. I'll try to do better next time. I should have uh, taken that into account when I made fun of a woman. Yes, that idiot. Uh... Happy anniversary to both of you. May your faps be long and full of milk. Oh. Mm. oh you know, some, some people might find that disturbing out of context, but I think it's beautiful, really. Yeah, I love me a milky fap. Yes. Ooh, wilts. Happy 150 to you, the EFAP massives, chat, and unlisted gang. I've inquire, acquired the floofy plushies, and they shall join me on my long road trip across the country this winter. We'll critique Ooh. America's plot holes, pot holes, and glory holes together. Oh no. Oh my oh, no. god, so many <laughs> holes. That's a lot of holes. I say, they're more than Don't capable of doing such things, yes. Good company for such things. 
Uh, hey, Mola, Rags, Fringy, and Endless Panel. Just wanted to say thanks Hello. for three years of putting my discontent with modern cinema into words. I got my plushies on order as well as both my donation and survey submitted. I just have one question. How do you argue for and against the quality of film, writing, for example, I like it, with someone who loves the product just as much as you do, namely Star Wars, Marvel, and DC, but maybe more educated on the extended lore, i.e. comics? I mean, you I tell them it needs to be uh, present in the actual material. You've seen it here. We've done it a lot with a lot of people who are just... <laughs> I don't think we, we haven't come across that in a while where they say something's good because I've actually I had an influx of comments on my Black Panther video. I guess it got back into rotation a little bit. A um, lot of people saying like the whole video is pointless because all of the questions are answered in the comics. And I was just like, oh, my God, I forgot you people no. exist. <laughs> Like, they're, they're satisfied with that. You just what, go read the comics if you want any more answers about how anything fucking makes sense in that film. It's like, cool. Oh. And I'm gonna go ahead and assume that's not actually true. That when you read the comics, it doesn't actually make it all make sense. Yeah, I consider myself skeptical on that. Skorptacoral. Um. But yeah, if they're like an expert in terms of they know all the comics and so they find they'd like to dismiss criticisms of the films in that regard. It's just like, yeah, I mean, you can easily call the card of uh, that's third party, I don't count it. But believe me, they don't when the preference will come. So the examples we like to use are uh, Shining, Hill House, uh, Shawshank Redemption even. That's a super interesting one with Red having been converted. Hmm, to yeah. And to Brown? Oh, you know what we should have brought up was fucking Nick Fury uh, with Blame, because Nick Fury, there is a version where he is black, apparently, but the original is white, so should we should we not say that they've gone too far with Sam Jackson's Nick Fury and we need to ignore the first phase, or, well, anything he's in, I guess? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know how far it would go. These rules, they get rather confusing. Hmm. Beam rules. My money will help you, green man. Five dollars? Pa! I give you five hundred. Why must you deny me? Do you know how much I sacrificed? Lol. <laughs> Bringy, pick oh, up cheers. your mother's trident. <laughs> <laughs> Such a funny line. Yeah. I don't even know why. It's just pick amusing. Up your mother's trident. It's what it was, was that we didn't really react to it when we first saw it. It was only after... No, we it, didn't. It, it became really funny in, in post sort of thing. Yeah. It's kind of like the, uh, what'd you bring me? Yeah, a little bit. We did laugh at it when it happened, but it, it just evolved over time. Bring um, me... Starfight? That's my thing, Mola. By the way, check out Starfight on Amazon and Invincible is less than a 5 out of 10. Oh, oh boy. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Look, we got nothing to say on Invincible, okay? You guys you guys yeah. in chat, you had to fight over that one. We didn't even have a hot take on it. It was all you. Yeah. It was beloved, and then we've had a lot of things saying it's average, so I have no idea what to say about it anymore. It's a thing. I think Shad really likes it, so there you go. Okay. Yeah, go, go ask Shad about it. Um... Tearing down legit bad movies is fun, but can we get more efaps on movies you legit like? I call them happy faps. Oh, oh that's cute. We don't like things. <laughs> um, yeah. Tell James Gunn to make more movies, I guess. Absolutely. We'd say yes to that. He actually did make something that we liked, and a superhero well, thing, no, no doubt. So this is the thing. No Way Home could be that we like that a lot. Could be. Uh, could Love be. and Thunder could be we like that a lot. Really could be. Don't know. Don't know yet. And then Guardians 3 could be we like that. So, you know, you got some chances left in the MCU. And then films in general, something like Underwater. Like I told you, I only saw that because I was doing YouTube. I was watching, I think, like, ah, oh, the history of this particular monster from this movie. And some of them were interesting to the point where I was like, I guess I'll start looking at ones I've not even, I don't even know about. Then it was like Underwater with Kristen Stewart, sci-fi thing relating to Lovecraft. And I was like, whoa, high budget Lovecraft movie. Since when did they do that? I was like, let's let's check that out. I want to check that out. And we're glad we did. Yeah, it wasn't mm -hmm. what That's I expected, neat. but I liked it. I liked it too. I thought, I thought it was pretty good. 
Honestly, Mola, Nothing just never really watch it or watch it to shit on it. I just want this band-aid ripped off already. I... There is no... Uh, in relation to Invincible, it's like, what do you mean? <laughs> you guys have fun. I... Like, we, we, it doesn't matter if we think it's good or bad, right? Yeah. What else matters if we don't like it, though? You'll be fine. Uh, do you guys think the MCU died when Thanos snapped his fingers in Infinity War? Because besides some of Endgame and Far From Home, it's been almost nothing but crap. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, to be honest with you, I would be willing to put Far From Home on the altar to kill every other one of the things in Phase 4. Your uh, sacrifice won't be in vain. <laughs> well, it's technically Phase 3, so... That's what I'm saying. It, what, you put... Oh, like, you'd happily put... Oh, right, I see. Um, oh, though, I suppose... Let me see No Way, no way Home first, <laughs> and then I will confirm. Because, you know, if no, let's pretend for a second No Way Home is phenomenal. We're like, oh, we all agree, like, oh, fucking 9 out of 10, easy. You should be like, whoa, does that redeem Phase 4? It's like, probably not. Nope! <laughs> no. <laughs> Even still, probably not. That's a big no burrito. Hey, Molly, happy third anniversary. Also, you're gay. Rags 2, probably. Also, hi, Rags. Hi. Hello, hello. Well, thank you, and hello. A uh, huge Aussie fan here. You guys occupy this dark but badass corner of the YouTube that never disappoints. Do you rate the Hannibal show with Mads Mikkelsen? Um, never so, seen it. Thank you, and yeah, I watched the first two seasons and I thought they were pretty damn good, but I haven't seen them in a while now, so I can't say for sure. All I know is I'm supposed to avoid season three. Oh boy. Apparently it's that bad. But Shad thinks poverty is intrinsic to Spider-Man. A lot of people do. Uh, they think you cannot have a Spider-Man story while he isn't desperate for a cash, um, which I think would limit the scope, uh, especially if you've told that story again and again. Because what you'll find is a lot of people will still say they're so fucking tired of seeing Bruce and Martha Wayne get shot. Wayne, sorry. Um, and it's like, yeah, but you can't have Batman without Bruce and Martha Wayne getting shot, right? Uh, same for Uncle Ben and stuff. I, I, and, you know, I'm pretty sure that was the logic with Homecoming. They were like, man, we just did Uncle Ben's death again, not a few years ago. Should we maybe not do it this time? Everybody knows what happened, you know? Yeah, let's tell a different story. And I say different, it's mainly, it's mostly the same. It's just, like, they're changing things about it. And, like, man, yeah. apparently they went too far because it upset so many people. <laughs> um, can't believe it's been three years. Thank you for all the good times. Here's to another great year. Why, thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Why is yeah. everyone overlooking the fact that one of the daily goals was send racy pictures to your personal goal specialist? The people who are basically just the better help volunteers. Horrifying implications. I did spot that. <laughs> That's the, the, what is it called? Bo zoom, boom, noom, noom. Um, noom. Yeah, there was a thing that was, it's supposed to be a joke, I think. There's like six options, and it says the correct one is the one at the bottom, but one of them was send racy pictures to your personal goal specialist. Ah. Uh, yeah. Noom bad. Yeah. Noom very bad. Wow. Shalom, and merry 150th, Mola, Rags, Fringy, guests, and chat. Shalom. Merry Shalom. everyone. One of my favorite community jokes, marry everyone. <laughs> the least offensive thing you could say at Christmas. Is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood bad just because it didn't adopt a Charles Manson law correctly? Also, please answer yes or no questions. Hi, Rags. Bless the long. Mm, no. Um, so, yeah, uh, only enough. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is a lot like Inglorious Bastards and several other films that get really confusing for people who think you have to do history the way it yeah. happened. Yep. Because it's like, people really enjoyed the ending, both of those films, but then it's like, yeah, but that's not what happened, though. It's like, well... Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's there's just the, the conversation of, like, how much responsibility does a film have to tell you the truth, quote-unquote, about reality, I guess? I don't know. Um, we've, we've been over it before. Like we said, Patriot is not historically accurate, but I don't know that that's significant enough to put me off... Um, uh, well, I mean, Assassin's Creed is, like, fundamentally saying that history is happening a exactly little bit differently how happened, from how you remember it. That's exactly yeah. how it happened. How I remember it? Whoa. How old do you think Whoa. we are? <laughs> 
Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. I'm not yeah. that old. Just because I'm just because I'm quoting Game of Thrones doesn't mean I'm that <laughs> old. Oh, I oh, this one's this one. I gotta read it. Your take on historical accuracy confuses Ooh. me. If you have a grounded movie in the fourth century, then suddenly they pull out World War II era guns. Is that just fine because it's all fiction? Feel like it you... would be well building related. Well, wait. Yeah. If, to me, they well, haven't. That's not never been our actual. Um, no. So, so when we say like you can have, so just Hitler doesn't shoot himself. He doesn't commit suicide. Like, is do you understand really the difference happened. between that and then having? Um, they pull out World War Two era guns in the fourth century. You understand the difference? Like, so what we will usually say say is a medieval film, and then they've got um, swords and mail and stuff. That's like, oh, that wasn't invented until several centuries later, so they shouldn't have them yet. Um, yeah, that that that's the kind of st we we would definitely point that out. It's like that's incongruent with what they're presenting. That's not an appeal to. Um, like how things went in terms of like choices people made and stuff. That's more so like they didn't have the capability to have this yet. Or, or for whatever reason they do, or this is an alternate timeline. I, well, I was going to say, have an explanation. but you do allow for stuff like Wolfenstein where you have, and, and Captain America to a degree, you know, we could talk about how it's like, is it possible to have, let's say crazy sci-fi inventions all the way back in World Please. War II? And you're like, yes. You're like what? You're like yeah. So if your fiction accounts for this, you're literally saying we're going back to World War Two, but there's a variable. A crazy scientist has come up with all this technology, and you're like, okay. You're like yeah, but that's not what happened. And you're like, no, it's not what. Oh, happened. right, <laughs> it's, not it's not what happened. happened. Yeah, it isn't. But this is what's happening in the movies. So and like, strap in. Yeah, I was gonna say you've got these are very different topics all at once. Um. I don't know about you guys, but if someone made a political thriller where Hitler was captured and they show what happens as a result, would that not be fucking fascinating if it was well done? Yeah, I'd be interested in that. It's like, yeah, but that's not what Thank happened. You. Yeah, he gets like, like yeah, a... fiction <laughs> is not real. You're right. <laughs> After they tally everything up, he only gets like 76 hours of community <laughs> service or something like He's that. in his orange jumpsuit picking up litter from the streets. <laughs> like, it's just God it's, damn it. it's shocking. People Everyone's just shocked. shit at him while they're driving past. <laughs> they assume Fuck he'll just get killed or be life, you know, in prison for life. But turns out, no, no, 76. Yeah, he's out in a couple weeks <laughs> because of some legal loopholes. And they, oh. when they drive past, I disagree with you politically. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, it's, uh, time's the <laughs> charms, they say. Um, the historical accuracy switch. one reminds me of the comic book accuracy one, where we're just, we're just sitting here like, you can point and laugh all you want, but believe me, your systems are more incongruent when they enter yep. their issues. Yep. Like, you all sound good on paper, but that paper ain't gonna last, trust me. <laughs> um, I'm... Yep, out now, I'm getting pretty tired. You've only been here for eight hours, what the fuck? <laughs> oh. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay, you sleep well, Mr. Mortal. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still kinda... kinda exhausted from all the drank mm -hmm. last night. <laughs> well... Uh, yeah, you, 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 you all have fun. I'll, I'll, I'll see you around. Okay, bye. Yeah, see you later. Gotcha. Guten Nacht, Heimer, Beimer. Guten Schweden. Fliegen, Glappen. A fliegen, Flugen. A cold quapper. Oh. Um, I'm getting uh, pretty tired myself, so... I'm well, you, you know what I can say is we've completely caught up with all the stream labs. Wait, have we? Yes. I feel like there's certain ones that we haven't... Oh, stream labs. Okay, right. Yes. Um, What do you think? Uh, oh, well, and yeah, just let me know. Uh, we are at eight hours. I can keep going, but I think at this point... Any of the three of us wishes to, to, to end. I think that's more than reasonable. Um, what do you think of Southport and SK's take on Civil War's plot being broken? They're, I wrong. they're wrong. Yeah. Yeah, I think they're wrong. Um, I personally still would have preferred a little bit more about Uncle Ben beyond Easter eggs like his suitcase and such. They seem too scared of doing the DC Crime Alley scene thing. I only want what I need. I didn't need him. Um, and like you gotta wonder what are you appealing to is it because you want him you to like be there just, you want to see Uncle Ben I think that's that's the only appeal could be if 
you end up with the same story in terms of theme and and, and content. Yeah, it's, and and this is the thing. I'm not saying it's impossible to make an appeal that's more substantial than I want him to be there, but like. I suppose the way you have to do it is, can you construct this argument in a vacuum? Can someone, can you make the argument that someone would have made um, had they not seen any of the comics and knew nothing about Uncle Ben? Do you think you, that person would have said it? Like, who's the father figure? Who was Aunt May with? And what did he mean to Peter? Like, I, I think that's fair. I just don't know that you need it. For I don't the story. think you necessarily need it, given what we've seen with Homecoming and Civil War. Yeah. Uh, please watch your favorite movies that you know aren't good, just so you can take it apart analytically. End the whole, just say you don't like it argument. Uh, show the world <laughs> they aren't safe from bad. <coughs> I feel, oh, sorry. I feel like you don't even need to do that, it's just... Didn't we do yeah, that with... There are things Suicide Squad was technically an example, right? We were all very positive about it, but we... Like, we, we shredded it for all of its stupids. Yeah, well, yeah Prequels is a good example problems. as well. Prequels, yeah. Prequels. Like them, but they're not good, and I'm pretty sure we've talked about the issues with them. We've done... Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones. We haven't done Revenge of the Sith. That will have its time. That'll be an interesting one. Yeah. That's going to be a controversial people, one. Yeah. People are not ready for Revenge it's of the Sith. Not good. I do like Revenge of the Sith, but yeah. Yep. But it ain't good, boys. You guys should read slash watch slash experience Homestuck. Homestuck. Um, that's a game, right? No wait, they just said read, uh... so I guess it isn't. Our games have reading in them. I mean, if you were to, not, you wouldn't describe. <laughs> I don't think you'd describe a game as a whole as a reading experience, right? Or, I guess. Hey, look, or point right, and maybe, click, maybe. Maybe you could. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Maybe it's more than one yeah, so. medium. No, don't do that. But no, do it. Homestuck is a web comic thing. Oh, yes. Okay. All right. What if on Black Widow the Taskmaster took off his helmet and revealed Greg Davies? That'd be hilarious. Revealed what? It, it, it'll be a super chat. We'll get around to it. Oh. Right? Oh, it's the next one. You're right, yeah. <laughs> it's just, oh my god. And it's from Gaia Ray, the one that did the, the openings for um, 100 and 150, the, the, the ones with... Um, like it's like why well, I'm struggling for words. Like uh, it's got a tune to it, and it and it's really awesomely animated, and had all the little characters, everyone's drawn up. I do know which one you're talking about. Yeah. Um. So yeah, if you're here right now, thank you so much for those. They were wonderful. Ah, wonderful. Oh, Chad. And they said, "What if in Black Widow, the Taskmaster took off his helmet and revealed Greg Davis or Davies? Wait, is that who I think it is? Yeah." He's the Taskmaster. I know him. He's in um, in between us. I think he's very funny. I've I've watched um I've watched some Taskmaster clips here and there, and uh, <laughs> some of them are really good. Some of them I really like. You almost want to try it out with a whole bunch of things, like you take the mask off and it's yeah. just Arnold Schwarzenegger, and you're like, whoa, <laughs> what does this mean for the greater storyline? What does this mean for the greater storyline? That's why I specified a oh. little bit more. I don't want to repeat of Ben's death, but they seem scared to even mention him. Um. Also, again, I. The pro so, like, when he when when Peter says, um, "I don't want to tell Aunt May. I can't do that to her right now. Not after everything that's happened." I immediately was like, "Oh, because Ben's died recently." Like that was enough. I, d I didn't need any more. I didn't need him to say, "I can't do this because Uncle Ben died recently." You know. I actually appreciated that it was subtle, but um, I don't know. I I would just need an example of where you think it's necessary. I suppose. Because you, I think the argument could be made. I just I don't know it. Um, Homestuck is saturated in time ta travel and cringe. I. Oh. Oh. Well, that's all right. We've seen the MCU, so we're used to that. <laughs> and the DCU. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh, which is cringier? Uh, do you mean into like MCU or DCEU? I think the DCEU is cringier. Think so? Well, complicated part. Uh, I guess the, density the... of cringe. You know. Density yeah, like, of cringe. If, if, DOC. Yeah. If one was to say that the Suicide Squad is the first of an, an, the next phase or whatever of DC, it's like, well, that's way better than fucking Phase 4. But yeah. if we take them both as holes... Look, 
but look at what's coming up. You see Black Adam, Flash, Aquaman yeah. 2. He literally says Ben's name. I don't think he's ever said Ben's name in the MCU. I was going to say, that's news to me. I don't remember him ever saying Ben's name. Unless his name is like The, or Anne, or Accept. But what if Ben's name is Aunt May? <laughs> Maybe. That would be weird. I'm sorry, I've been drinking. <laughs> Mutant <laughs> Year Zero has an interesting TRPG take. Negative modifiers can get your hit chance sub 100%, but you can beat the game only taking 100% shots. Very well. Um, cover the Flash slash Supergirl musical crossover. Jeez. Musical crossover? Aww. Oh my god, speaking of cringe. Yeah, I'd ah. rather. God. Stop it. I think he mentions Uncle Ben once in the MCU in Homecoming. I only remember him mentioning no. him not by name. And you're supposed to imply that that's what it is. Or you're supposed to infer, rather. Um... Gay. Rags, do you have any commentary? Um, well, I since I do speak for the gays, um, hmm, uh, no, no, I've given it no? some thought. All right, I, yeah, yeah, I think that's fair. I don't, I don't, I don't expect that you'd always have something to say on everything, you know. I just. Just want yeah, to make sure you had your opportunity. I, I need more context. Mm -hmm. Um. Sure, start making fun of Hitler and the German leaves. Yeah, I mean, a little bit too close for a coincidence, wouldn't you say? Um. Three years in a row, I was now the first Super Chat in all the anniversaries. Don't know if I'll do it next year. Thank you for all the good times, Rhino Milk. Oh, interesting. That person also sent the gay one. So, I think they've they've oh, been... which gay one? The gay one. It just said gay. And and, and, and they, they've oh. done that on the opening of each of the three streams. I don't know how they did it. That is... How do they know? Impressive. Do they have a macro or something? Maybe, maybe. That would be... Wild. Um, Homestuck got incredibly cringed by the last third, but the one thing they did very well was very consistent and strict rules for time travel. Fair enough. I, I don't know what they, they, they are. Hope they good. Bringy, I know you love Pixar movies, but was wondering on your thoughts on the DreamWorks films like Shrek, Kung Fu Panda, How to Train Your Dragon, and Madagascar, also high rags. Hello there. Hi. Uh, so what I will say is, I think that the DreamWorks movies, a good chunk of them from that period of time were, like, great. I think Shrek is pretty excellent, actually. I know it's turned into a meme, but Shrek is a really cleverly written film. Yeah, Shrek's um, great. We will yeah, have a Shrek arc. Shrek was really great, too. A I know there were a lot of, sure. there were a lot of funny jokes. Like, in Shrek True, that, uh, that joke with um, Knights, where it was like a parody of Cops, like, yeah. they jam-packed so many clever jokes into just, like, one minute. <laughs> like, um, the pepper spray, but it's a pepper shaker. Beams, <laughs> like, put on Shrek's face. And they're like, the catnip on it, Puss in Boots, is like, that's not mine. <laughs> yeah. Just, there's a lot of good jokes. And yeah, I uh, I really like Kung Fu Panda. I, I think Kung Fu Fan... Kung Fu... <laughs> Kung Fu Panda. Like, Kung Fu Panda. Um, I think Kung Fu Panda is great. Um, I remember liking two. I don't remember that one as well. And uh, Over the Hedge, that's a funny movie. I liked um, Over the Hedge. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Verminator. He was he was pretty hilarious. Um, I, and and I mean, it's been mentioned on stream, but like Road to El Dorado. That's a that's a oh good film. yeah, really fun movie. Um, Prince of Egypt is is great. That's a really great film. Um, I guess the problem is it's like Pixar. At the time, Pixar was basically just nothing but home runs, whereas, like, DreamWorks was a little bit more scattershot. You had, like, Shark Tale and, and Sinbad and, and, um, and Madagascar is fun, but, like, Madagascar's, like, not, like, that special. Yeah. Um, I was always, like, I wasn't sure how that one got a franchise, but it was just, like, I guess it came out at the right time. 
Uh, I think it did. It was um, I I do like it. I I like Madagascar. I like uh, Prince Ju uh, King Julian. His funny voice. <laughs> so Sasha Baron Cohen, right? And, uh, yes, that's right. Um, and and yeah, there were good jokes in that too. But I remember it's just Madagascar Two was kind of like, yeah, this is you know something. Like it's it's all right. It's it's okay. And I guess that's the thing is you compare it to Incredibles, Finding Nemo, Wally, -E, yeah, Ratatouille. Yeah. It's it's kind of hard to stack up against. Like those those films are in a league of their own almost when it, when we're talking about that's a movie. Yes, probably is. Yeah, I I don't know what one that is. It's famous. Um, so. Yeah. So uh, what? So that was the question. Like, what are the thoughts on the? Double check. Yeah, yeah. Um. Yes, yeah, so that's. But I haven't seen How to Train Your Dragon, but I always hear that that's a really great one. I've seen the first one and I thought it was good. So I. From what I hear, is it two I... is good and three is bad? I can't remember. I can't. I can hardly remember anything about him. They train dragons in it, or at least we learn about how to do it. Yeah. Um. Do 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 do. Hi, rags. Do you prefer pistols, rifles, or shotguns? And what are your favorites for each? Uh, I prefer rifles, I suppose. They're generally more comfortable to shoot, and they have a coolness factor to them that I enjoy, and they're very satisfying to take out, and they're they're just easier to shoot as well. Um, favorite of each? I would say that I don't really have much in the way of uh, shotgun knowledge, personally. I'd say my favorite pistol is my uh, Glock 34. I think my favorite rifle is my AK-74. So... But I, li I like all different kinds, but I just, I like those. Do you have a favorite shotgun? No, not really. I don't have much in the way of shotgun knowledge. I don't have much experience with them at all. Mm hmm You missed my super chat. Is there a rag roll playing game playlist? No, we, we answered that one. Um, yeah, we let you know. Yeah, I, I, I did answer that, yeah. Oh, uh, you said... There's not a playlist, but I let you know the, the channels they were on. Yeah, all I remember is Arch has gone Nazi vampires, and that that's as far as my memory goes. Yeah, uh, Cooled Cross on YouTube. He's got one of the recent ones I was in a couple episodes for, um, and Swamp Playing Games. I was uh, I was on there for a couple ones as well, but those are channels on YouTube you could take a look at, and I should be on uh, the videos there. Uh, seriously, EFAP Mini for Musical Flash slash Supergirl? The, the, the answer is probably no. Uh, it's possible, but I'd say probably no. Man, I don't want to We got so much stuff to watch anyway. That one just seems yeah. like... Ugh. Which um, one? The Flash and Supergirl had a crossover that was a musical, apparently. No. <laughs> Man, everybody wants to do their musical episodes after a certain musical episode. Yeah. And some Not are successful, some to. are less so. For the sake of intellectual integrity, I will confess that the Homestuck Protag gains a power meant specifically to break said time travel rules. Oh. So, I feel like the more that people pitch this, the less interested I am in reading it. Sorry, I must have missed it when my internet went tism for a few minutes, thanks. Yeah, no problem. Um... Yeah, so big, big maybe on a lot of those. Uh, yeah, there's some people who are like, you're not efficiently doing mining and factory stuff. Don't worry, I won't ever. I'm very bad at this. I just kind of like the colors. And it's really good for a, a, a catch-up game, just saying. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've been playing this game for eight hours. <laughs> like it's, wow. Uh, Springy, which went better, Emu or Afghanistan War? <laughs> well, yeah, I got nothing for you there. No, well, yeah. He tried. Um, hello, massives. Happy 150. Rags. A small group of zombies is referred to as a Snyder fans. Oh, there I see. Go. Yeah, I can, I can believe that. Yeah, I can see that. There you go. Um, oh, I think this just says happy. Oh, that's nice. I'm glad you're happy. 
That's um, good to hear that you're happy. That is good. Oh, wait, so, so the next one says EFAB150. So happy EFAB150. Thank you. Oh. Beautiful. Uh, through 100 episodes, Jay saw Lord of the Rings movies zero times. Through 150, has he seen he's seen one? So in two years, he will have seen the trilogy. Yeah, yeah. And you can ask all about it. Well, well it's nearly there. Saw Fellowship, you know, Two Towers and Return of the King in years to come, I'm sure. Um, EFAP is full of good boys and girls, and you've brought us countless hours of entertainment thought-filled discussions, and most importantly, memes. Rags, your wit is enduring, and your puns bring much joy. Ringy, your Aww. Australian wisdom is much needed in these dark times. And long man, thank you. Much love. Aww. Oh, cheers. What a nice... We're probably going to get a lot of nice ones when I get more into the... As you can tell, I've now delved briefly into EFAB 150 yeah. Super Chats. <laughs> The random compliments here are just getting tossed. Yep. Um, it happened during that last third, I already said, was when Homestuck became trash. So I guess that's just further proof. Time travel even needs uh, consistent rules or shouldn't be included. Well, I mean, to a degree, you could say you shouldn't be including anything unless you're doing it consistently with, with the good old rules and stuff. It's good, good uh, discipline to have, but... Yeah, time travel, you really don't want to fuck that one up. Yeah. Um, new video was awesome. Thank you for three years of EFAP. Praise the dawn. Also, hi, Rags. Hello there. Hmm. CM Punk return confirmed. I oh, see so you can definitely see that this is out of date because I already know through As and Metal now booming over this thing that uh, the wrestling meme that is. I see. I know little of the ways of wrestling. As not do I. What? Yes. My fellow hate mongers, my day, the day has come. Happy EFAP 150. Why, well, thank you. And uh, happy EFAP 150 to all. Mm hmm. I hope everyone uh, had a good time with it. I did. I certainly I think did. it went well. One of the, the funniest Gothic phones and one of the worst, but yet perfectly sort of encapsulating EFAP videos we've covered with Grace's review. No. Um, and we finally got to fucking be done with the stupid, it's not cinema, okay? And that's not, I'm not trying to offend. You're just not cinema. Yeah. It's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, hi Rags and Mauler, thank you for all the entertainment. This super chat goes out to my husband who got me into watching EFAP. Happy birthday, you old fart. Now go get good and stop dying at maps. Oh, you mean dying in maps? But, yeah, thank you very much, and, uh. Feels weird, right? Like a husband getting a wife into EFAP. How does one pitch EFAP to someone, do you think? How does someone... How would you, how would one be pitching EFAP to friends? Like, this is a podcast where some guys talk about media for, like, 10 hours. It's a really good 10 hours. But yes. You spend, think of all the time you spend sleeping, and you don't have any fun at all. It's boring. <laughs> Nothing happens. EFAP's like the opposite of a good, restful night of sleep. Well, maybe don't. Don't say it like that. Mm -hmm. uh, There's plenty to like. Hello, gentlemen. Hi, Rags. Hello. Hi there. Played Dead Space 1 and 2 because of your recommendation. Loved them. Curious to hear if you guys have a preference. Um, Between 1 and 2, it's really tough to say. I like them both a lot. I think I prefer the first one. I need to play uh, them both again to be more specific. Tough. The way I've always remembered it is 2's like refined the mechanics, but... One, I've yes. always preferred the the atmosphere in one. Yeah, I think that's where I am too. To play the second one is better, I think. Um, Southpaw said that Civil War's plot is broken. What is even life anymore? Wah. Um, um Civil War's gonna be well, fine. I, I Don't worry about him. Disagree. Yeah. You can you can tussle Civil War's hair. He's doing fine. He's going to go run around in the park and have some fun. He's okay. Um, hello, Massives. Thank you for another year of fabulous entertainment. Also, kick chat. Oh, we're going to kick chat. Look at them. They're all hanging out. Fuck you. So mean. Leave chat alone. Man. Dude. So, did we talk about... I think we talked about this yesterday on my stream. Like, 
about how Fortnite is just an amalgamation of pop culture. They've added bad Mike Will Smith's bad boys character as a skin. <laughs> okay. In yeah. Fortnite. I love how specific Will Smith from Bad Boys 2. You remember? You remember? Oh, well, I guess it could be from the <laughs> franchise, but still. From the whole franchise, that's yeah. right. Man. Well, cultural garbage. Yeah, it's, cultural garbage. It's it is a bit of a like it's just a blender of stuff. Uh, this will be a great way to make the next four hours of driving less boring. Hey. Oh yeah, there you go. Something on the plus side. Um, the long man has blessed us. Four hour video and the hundred fiftieth eve happening. That one marvelous scene made me coom so hard I watched it twice. Oh. Oh wow. That's nice. That's pretty good. Hey, it was fun making it, and it's it, people are definitely like, "Are you gonna make more?" And it's like the thing is, it was a random part of a video itself. So maybe if I can find ways to make video essays inside video essays, then you can expect more. I don't know. They were, they were one of the top comments in the video is, "Will you two make one, like take a scene from the MCU and praise it?" Maybe. Will YouTube do it? Will you too? Us two. Oh, no. <laughs> well, there you go. Well, me, it's a maybe. Mm -hmm. Congratulations Apparently. on... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you... I'm assuming it's about the endgame stuff, right? Oh, uh, sorry, the Fortnite stuff. Fucking hell. No it's totally unrelated, so that's what I'm saying. Go ahead. Well, <laughs> I'm reading the next Super Chat, so it's also unrelated. Uh, <laughs> it's just, um, I just saw another thing. There are limited edition Halo Infinite Xbox Series X consoles that are now selling for a thousand bucks on eBay. Yay! It's not even out yet. <laughs> Galparinos. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's something that everybody's upset about, and it's just, what is to be done? It's like you can't stop it, apparently. So. Well, I mean, it's it's yeah, it's uh. That's just a full like, on people are like industry for some people. Like they live that I way. Think I think the PlayStation 5, like, it's just, it's just highlighted. Yeah. It, that's, that's just a thing now. Like, it, look at how much money some of these people made. Well, like, I'm trying to say, like, I, I imagine that there's people out there who've made, like, that is their life. That's their career. They may have they stumbled into it at one point, time, yeah. and now they just, they search for all the big, best information on which products are going to be the most scarce, and then trying to resell them. Fine, then. You know, chipping away, like if they're more available, try and sell them chipping away at the, the prices and stuff. You know like how there are people out there who make a career out of crypto, they just spend every day moving it back and forth yeah. and back. And it's, well, it's... I mean, I mean, there's definitely there are people like that, it's true, but then again, day trading, oof, only 1% yeah, of people make full-time money on that. Just... Maybe it's the same with scalpers, right? There's yeah, like maybe, there's probably a lot of people trying, but only a selection succeeding. A well, yeah, because you don't want to be that one f fucker who's like left with nine hundred PlayStation fours that you can't sell. Well, do you remember? Um, I think it was in America where, when the pandemic first hit, people bought up a shit ton of toilet paper. To oh point, yeah, yeah, the toilet they, paper hoarders. Yeah. Yeah, and they started trying to resell it, and then they got in trouble with like, like legally. I can't remember how it was done, but um, I remember one of the stories was like, no, we just intended to deliver it to the community. We hadn't done it yet. <laughs> like. <laughs> well, yeah, no, it happened over here where they would start instituting a limit on how much toilet paper you could buy, like, when you go to the shop, so it'd be like, you can only get two sets of, like, It was on a per-asshole basis. Uh, some, something like that, because I, I always wondered, it's like, why toilet paper? Why was that the thing that, like, that everybody bought? Toilet paper, specifically. Um, as opposed to, what would you expect it to be? Um, I assumed it would be, like, canned foods or something, like, people freaking out and grabbing, like, the things you would assume are the things you need if things go badly, like, oh no, what am I gonna eat? What I will like say about that eat. is that there are many, many forms of foods, I guess, and so, you true. know, even if Whereas everyone gets only... all the canned foods, you've still got loads of foods left. That's well... true. Whereas, there's just toilet and paper. I... But there's many types yeah, of toilet is... paper. No, you're right. Yeah. Um, typically, though, there'll be, like, an aisle, right? Versus the food yes. portion of a store will be enormous. Um, and it was, I, a, I, I, it was what we call a, a fake crisis in the sense that you would go to the store and all of the milk would be gone, but not all the skim milk. It was still there. It was fine. And the almond right, milk was yeah. all there and the coconut milk was still there. People just got more of what they like. It wasn't actually oh, yeah, a it's, crisis. It's a good old fashioned, like, there's loads of, like, industries this happens in where it's like an artificial 
sort of scarcity where if you would all just calm down, there wouldn't have been a scarcity at all. Like you just carried yeah, on like yeah. normal. It but probably happened because someone remember, the out. story got spread somehow and repeated that there was going to be a toilet paper shortage and you'd never be able to wipe your ass like a civilized human being again and everyone yeah. panicked and it was. I mean, that's like, a, uh, it is a fair concern because like fuck me, that's that is not a that's not comfortable. Like I got to imagine it's not comfortable to be walking around. Yeah. Without. Um, I imagine that they would start resorting to newspapers, though, right, and stuff like that. Plenty. Of I guess you have to find ass. some way to to, to get and it to work. If well, you've got I a bidet, it got maybe. So bad. It got so bad that they had to institute limits on tissue paper as well, like tissue yeah, boxes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, wet wipes. Yeah, you know, and... The mask. and yeah. Yeah. Do you guys remember there was a video that went viral where it was a guy in like a warehouse? And he was like, people are asking me about, you know, the scarcity of toilet paper and are we done? Are we, is, it, is it all coming down to zeros and just terrified? And he like p turns the camera around. It's like this enormous warehouse just stuffed with toilet paper. And he's like, literally, just give us a sec. It'll go out to all of you. Like, it's going to be fine. Yeah, exactly. Just calm down. There's plenty of it. Just a logistics thing. Yeah, we weren't prepared for all of you to buy a house worth of toilet paper. Like, you'll be fine. But now probably people, people have probably stocked up on toilet paper. You know, in, in prep. You can just wash yourself with a rag on a stick. <laughs> I like that reference. Smaller, I, I think um, I think chat brings up a good point. Um, a lot of people don't know what newspapers are. You might have to remind, you know, some of our younger yeah. audience might not oh, know. Oh, they're like they're information packets that are get dropped in stores. They involve news. They involve sometimes what's on the television, maybe local politics. There used to be a way of discovering what's happening in the world before the before internet. Twitter. Yeah, before Twitter, yeah. Before Twitter came along and screwed everything up. I remember the real sad thing with, like, the toilet paper stuff was that you'd have, like, elderly people who were going to the shops and there was no toilet paper left. It's like, man. Yeah. Oh, that's pain. That is I pain. I guess I'll like... have to wipe, uh, I, I wipe my ass with them. Uh, oh. <laughs> Am I gonna have to take a shower every time I wanna poop? Harold! We're gonna have to start taking showers again! Yeah, Hell is truly come to guy, us. The what? dude who's sitting on a pile of toilet paper like it's a throne. Yeah. Just being thrilled with yourself for getting it all. Maybe I can coat a spoon in rubber and just scoop it out. You gotta, you gotta, you know, you gotta be ingenious at that point. You gotta, you just gotta be creative. Uh, when I first heard Bucknit added MLK, I laugh cried. Yeah, I mean... Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's on my list of things to talk about for dog bites. Yeah, that's... Oh, God. That's a, that's a conversation to have. That's like... What were you thinking? <laughs> that sums it up, yeah. So embarrassing. Uh... Yeah. On Uncle Ben, why the obsession with seeing a character that never survives past the halfway mark of a film? I love Uncle Ben, but come on. So, if we're being completely good faith, they're not. It's not specifically Uncle Ben they're looking for. It's the event that ends with with great power comes great responsibility being made manifest in an event that he will never forget. They want that, so that Spider Man is is the guy they know and he's got all the history they know. Because when you see it in the form of Peter simply saying. When bad things happen and you have the power to stop them, then it's uh, your fault that the bad things happen. He says something like that to Tony. And the implication is he's he's already experienced something like what happened with Uncle Ben. And it's, it's you know, gone him to that point. And that's what's important to me. I need to know that that's a value he holds and it's representative in the actions he takes. I don't need a character called Uncle Ben to die and say those words to make sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. So... Yep. But I think a lot of people who do want that feel that that hasn't been done, and Spider-Man has to have that done for it to be valid. You don't do Spider-Man without Uncle Ben, but I think that Homecoming proves you can indeed do Spider-Man without Uncle Ben. Um, that line was so awkward and badly written, I disagree. I think it was great. Uh, it was a great little way to get him to give the same idea across without saying the same words. And it's a great way to convince Tony that he's worth bringing in. Because Tony yep. shares that same ideal, especially in Civil War. I just, I just don't understand why you have to see the same scene fucking again. Gotta see the old man fall over after he stops a mugging or whatever. Gotta see it. Um... 
Congratulations on the anniversary. Is my birthday, so we'll be back to watch later. Very oh. well. Uh, I live in a rather rural area and will not be able to watch this live for whatever reason. My internet decided that a live stream is unwatchable, but a regular video is not. Regardless, here's to 150. Oh, here's to 150, yeah? Yay. Let's do it. It's already all on uh, Moolah now. For your viewing preferences. Uh, well, you can only view it there. I do everyone who isn't Chase, and the rest of you, fuck you, you subhuman piece of trash, you hard waste of oxygen, you make me ashamed to be a member of the human race, go fuck a rusty spoon. Oh my god. Wow, now that's a, that's a subversion. You have anger in you. Anger leads to hate, or whatever Yoda says. Hate leads to cum. Well, we know that, yeah. Hi, long man, Rags and Co., here's to 150, may you reign long for another 150. Oh, I think, I think thank we, you. I think we can do it, another 150. I would say yes. I mm -hmm. would say yes to that. I'm thinking yes. I'm thinking yes. Uh, recommend a show called Turn Washington Spies about the Culpa spy ring during the American Rev Revolution. Uh, very nuanced, just not not just Britain bad, America good. I mean, I, you know. that's a show that I've mentioned uh, that I would like to. I, I started watching it. I liked what I saw, so I need to go back and. Maybe we'll go with uh, Mahler and Friggled and we'll... Oh, that's uh, that one, is it? it? Yeah, turn. Interesting. That's the one. Mahler committed to more decades, if ever, ever. I didn't mean 150 years, but I'll give it my best shot. Mm. Seems like I won't be able to make it that far, but, you know, science has done crazier things. Um... Both you and chat have helped me a lot during this pandemic, and even before it. Days really do go fast when I listen to you guys. May they continue to go fast in the future. Happy three years, my Ewoks. Aww. Ah. Thank you, thank you. I'm glad you're having fun with it. Cheers, indeed. Uh, do you remember the merge of Southport and Wolf? Um. No. Not really, no. No. Not sure what that's referring to. Yeah, that's, that's just on its own as well, so I don't know. I don't, I don't know what you're saying. You back to the the old lady who can't shit without toilet paper character. No, that's a different lady. <laughs> <laughs> Those two it's ladies are friends. That, yeah. We're not all the same. Uh, first ever really... donator, long man, long time oh, listener. Good. Oh wait, go ahead. What about what about the poop? I had to poop really mm -hmm. badly. Yes. Jokes aside, I seriously need to drop an otter. If you want to go do that right now, that's okay. Oh, I'm crowning. Oh no. Horrifying, really. I can't waddle any faster. <laughs> oh no. Uh, congrats on three years. May the dog bless you. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. Happy 150 Dumbos. Play Doki Doki Literature Club. Maybe. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe, yeah, maybe. Um, EFAP Mini's community, at least seasons one through three. I don't know if that would work, because we'd mainly just be laughing at it here and there. The curse of a show being good. Yeah, I mean, I would Does recommend it. Watch um, it and enjoy it. You, uh, y'all, you folks out there, if you haven't seen it, you'd probably like it, I reckon. Um, yeah, I may have wanted them to do a little bit more with Ben, uh, but I don't get... But I too don't get the people who must, yeah, who must have that scene in every iteration of Peter. Like, have we learned nothing from DC's obsession with Crime Alley? I mean, that's the thing. Um, I think it was it BVS. I think when I first saw that movie, when I saw the the fucking scene, I was like, oh my god, here we go. Where are the pills? Give me them pills. It's like gunfire, and then the pills are dropping down. You're like, oh no. Batman's parents, they got killed. This is part of what inspires him. And in some ways, it's like, what, so is it bad that they do it then? It's like, no, it's just that, can you think of any other way to tell a story? Or do you have to tell it that way? Because that is the way that you tell a Batman story. Um, referring to the PAFE Photoshop on their stream when they accuse Southpaw of trying to be Wolf 2.0, merging Southpaw PSPs and Wolf's old one together. Oh. 
I mean, I, I'm not 100% up to date on that whole thing that happened with the, uh, the PAVE people. Yeah, I don't know really anything about it, honestly. I just... I don't know why you wouldn't name yourselves after the... What we would... We, we theorized would be, like, the shitty vision of EFAP would be PAVE. <laughs> it's like, we are PAVE. You're like, why would you... Why? Um, with how DC comic fans have been complaining how inaccurate Starro is, you'd think they'd cast Patrick Star to play him. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't have been against it. I want to see what they do, you know? Give Patrick a chance. Oh, this is Starro! <laughs> Here's to three years, boys. They got the party emoji, beers emoji, rhino milk. You're all great. Plushies on order, massives to ruin, Marvel dead, nuggies being made, and of course, hello rags. Oh, hi there. Wonderful. Uh, nothing important to say except for happy three-year anniversary. I've been a fan since the beginning and can't get enough of the community's content. Oh, Thanks so much. And I hope you uh, have fun with what we've got coming. What do you say? The best is yet to come. That's what we should start saying, right? Mm -hmm. Hello, okay, chat, cool. rags, and all other N-words. Oh, that's very inclusive. Oh, I like that. Yeah, it's everybody. Morley, you're gay, but happy 150 regardless. Thank you very much. I, I haven't had any Morley a straight Super Giants in a while. I guess I'm just like hyper gay for now. Happy 150, y'all. Happy 150. My first Super Chat. Discovered all your channels while at work, and EFAP eventually became a blessing on making my day easier. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. It's got to be so interesting to have discovered like all the channels separately to a thing where they and then those channels start a podcast all together be like one of them that is like, kind of strange yeah. if you won the lottery <coughs> or something well yeah i mean if you want to hear more from those people definitely um i'll be honest i'm not as big a fan of efap as i used to be but i still love the show so much also i'm working on the first shot of knights of old efap oh um back in the knights of old <coughs> Good luck on whatever it is you you're doing. And thank you. Um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now this is podcasting. I'd say so. You know, this is the best rat. I'd assume that these might be in regards to the um the the <coughs> cuz I don't know if cuz a few of them came in on the um the premier sort of the chat, which these cover as well. Like, I don't even know if they've gone to the point where the intro videos are played yet. Hi, Rags. Possibly. I'm building my own Hello. PC. I'm planning to play mostly retro games from the 90s. Should I stick with the 60 hertz or should I go with 144 hertz? Um, a lot of the new, a lot of the old games, even though they themselves didn't go past those, the new versions will. So you will absolutely get a benefit from higher frame rates. Uh, when you're playing the old games on new hardware, especially because a lot of them will run quite well. Uh, and plus, if you want to play newer games, you want to go past 60 anyway. So I'd say go 144, because it won't just apply to retro games, but any game. Well, there you go. Because 60 is kind of low, not going to lie. 60 is low. It used to be what you kind of aim for, but man, the times they are changing, and it is uh, it's kind of low to be at 60. You can do 120, though. Uh, 120 is another step upwards. All the times there. Ching. Hey, Fab, thank you for all the good times over the years. A family member of mine is very sick and isn't going to make it. So thank you in advance for helping me through that. She is also high rags. Oh, uh, hello. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. Um. Hope you're doing all right. Obviously, this is from a couple days ago, so... Uh, don't know how they're doing, but yeah, it's just, we are we are very much here to hopefully inform, entertain, and to distract in many ways. Uh, I finished my meme that I was hoping I would during the Black Widow premiere. Excellent. I don't know if we ended up showing it or not, but uh, good stuff. Muller, I was just wondering if you've ever seen Dead Man's Shoes 2004. Very solid revenge movie with Patty Considine. Considine. No. Does that sound familiar to either of you? Dead Man Shoes? I've never heard of it. I don't think mm. I've heard of that one. Doesn't ring a bell. Unfamiliar to me. 
Um, uh, no. Hi, Rags. Thanks for the entertainment, guys, and you two chat. Thank you for being a friend. K Golden Girls theme. Oh, Q Golden Girls theme. Ah, oh, I see, I see. A man of culture slash immense taste. You, 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 I don't think I ever watched the Golden Girls, but you, you, you must have seen some episodes, right, Rags? Yeah, I have yeah. seen some. I, I like the Golden Girls. I think mm. it's funny. Yes. The hype is real. Good luck on the 24-hour lads. You can make it. We did. It was, yeah, uh, we did. Barely, but... Yeah, yeah. barely. <laughs> Um, 150. Yep, we made it to 150. It took it took three years. But we got there. Uh, Molly, you must be incredibly proud of this community and work you have created here on YouTube. Who would have thought? I mean, yes, it's, it's a little bit unreal. It's, um, I was trying to make a podcast work for a while. You know, I had three different ones, and they were all kind of different. But um, only the one prior to this one was the the idea of like responding to videos and stuff. Because that, funnily enough, that was something I was doing for ages before thinking it could be moved into a podcast. And I think I was concerned about, like, copyright. Um, right. I was like, oh, how would it work? Especially earlier on, yeah. And then it's not a lot to more daunting. Yeah, not to mention, it. there was a bit of a, a sense of, like, you can't do that. You can't watch someone's video essay and say it's shit on the internet. Because, by the way, I think that's why Just Right spoke to me in Wolf. He was so shocked it was happening. He's like, you guys are streaming my video and saying it's shit. Like, what the hell? But now, yeah, yeah. nowadays, that's so normal. Loads of people are doing, like, all kinds of things that... I mean, because they already did. It, it was more so that genre. Responding to, like, political videos was totally common and social issue stuff. But, um, video essays? Where the video is like, I like this movie and this is why. It's like, why would you respond to that? What the fuck? And we were like, because you're wrong. You said things that were incorrect. You must be stopped. Um, but yes, proud, proud indeed. Hey guys, happy 150. Have you considered doing an EFAP just talking about a few really good movies like Prestige and why they're so great? Hi, Ragaroo. Hello to you. Uh, definitely considered it. Like, the format would just be we give the EFAPers some homework, like go watch this movie, and then next week we're going to break it down. Like we've done with a couple, um, but uh, it's still in ideas phase, you know. Just not sure yet. Muller, I need an illusion, illustration. Sorry, from you on a comment you made in your Black Widow video. What exactly does a goblin mudslide look like? <laughs> oh, you don't. No, 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 no. You can't put that into an illustration. That would. That's against the law, probably. Whatever it evokes in your mind, that is precisely what it is. Uh, by the way, just want to let you know that I don't expect an exact date for God of War. Take your time, just wanted to see if there was the realm of possibility. Yeah, I, I still have an interest, but um, I have an interest in a lot of projects, and I don't know that I'll be able to do them all. Uh, I had three different ones, and they were all kinds different. They were all kind of different. Longman2021. I, I don't even remember what I was saying that about. Um, hey guys, happy 150. Have you considered doing an EFAP just... Oh wait, I read that one, sorry. I uh, love you guys. Also, the first Avengers is still the best Avengers movie. Yes. There's not yeah. really any competition. Um, it's not in doubt, no. I, yeah. You could argue that Infinity War is the only competition, but it's still, it's like... Hmm. I'd still say it's got enough problems that it's not yeah. really the right of take, you know, taking the crown on that one. You can watch Age of Ultron and Endgame fight each other, I guess. Even that, I think, isn't... Like, Ultron is better. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not like a... Controversial... I don't think it should be controversial. Age of Ultron's better than Endgame. Um, hello, everyone, and greetings from Serbia. Happy 150. And to hope for next 150. Pozdrav. Oh, boy. Well, I don't know well, what that translates I, uh, to. But... I, uh, hopefully, it's a friendly greeting. In which case, pause, drive back. Surely to you. it is. They are. They are a happy and yeah. fun people who are very jovial and whimsical. I'm going bye bye now. If I keep sending super chats, Fringy won't get his five hundred dollars. Suppose I could give it here at some point and tell you to give it to him, Molby. Bye. Gonna play some Hades. Well, have all fun. right. Have a fun time. Yeah, I hope um, you had fun. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, we are at 8 hours and 41 minutes, and I did just remember me and Rags have to do another stream tomorrow. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. right. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. So I don't. We'll probably <laughs> probably go for another 20 minutes, if that works for you guys. Yeah, yeah, that's fine with me. Um, do, do. That was four minutes ago, talking about starting three different podcasts, you donut. I don't remember saying it. I I have already said so many things in these nine hours. But, um, yes, they were different podcasts about different things. That that was helpful information to many people, I'm sure. Out of curiosity, which YouTube channels are your least favorite slash most hated? For me, it's the Cosmonaut Variety Hour, who I find very disingenuous. Mm, it's definitely there up there. Age. There are so, a lot of YouTube channels that I wouldn't like, so I don't I don't know what I'm If we're doing. gonna sort of remove the like absolutely morally reprehensible ones, especially ones like that break laws or TOS and you know, all that stuff, if we knock all that yeah. out. Um yeah, Cosmonaut's one of the worst in terms of he like represents just the of worst. This genre? Yeah. Yeah, like of, of YouTube film analysis. He just doesn't He's so lazy. He's never explored exactly what it is he uses as a metric. He just coasts on all of the topics. He's clearly not in this for, like, the passion of creation. He's more so in it to be like, oh, a new superhero movie's out. I can release a video and that will pay for my holiday. Like, that's lame. But there's, you know, there's there's a few others that are still, like, frustrating, I guess. I mean, Just Right was pretty annoying. Yeah. Hmm. De it's definitely on a on a list. Some are like round table for is, is like he's not he doesn't make me angry. No, he's harmless. He's just a, <laughs> he's, just a he's just a dumb idiot. You know, kind of like high top is just a dumb idiot. Um. Yeah. Grace made me upset. Yeah. Um. At, at, yeah. Of of like people who talk about films, man. That was really that disappointing was, uh... too, because it's like, good God, woman, like this is. This is how you do it, because that's the first video we've ever seen from it, really. And it's just production value sucks. The commentary is really vacuous. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure Quinton is just categorically actually better than most of the people we just mentioned. Which is interesting. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's like, because he makes like a huge, he's made like a documentary level thing for Garfield. I'm just like, he cares about Garfield. That's nice. <laughs> okay. It's an interesting thing to really care about Garfield. Yeah. Because um, when I think about comics to really care about, it's like Calvin and Hobbes is, uh, it's like, man, yeah. Calvin and Hobbes is excellent as far as, you know, uh, pay, like, you know, sync comics in uh, uh, newspapers. It's like Garfield is kind of like, um, Garfield kind of feels like Dilbert, you know, where it's like, yeah, it's, it's cool. I like it. Mm -hmm. It's, it's like, a, it's like a news, newspaper comic. Yeah. Like, yeah, like that's neat. Yeah. I, I, I guess I, I don't want to sound too negative. Like I like Garfield. Garfield's neat. I, well, I guess um, I don't want to sound too positive. Like, uh, Quinton is still like pretty bad at his job, but um, I just appreciate the fact that he's doing this because he cares about the stuff, I guess. Well, yeah, it sounds like he really does care about Garfield in particular, and he probably made a really great video on it. He covers uh, a lot of the history, yeah, yeah, so he probably did make a good video, yeah. Yeah. Is, is Garfield over, or is it still uh, running? Let's I see. think it's got to be running in some form of another, right, because Garfield's quite a property. Well... Yeah, but I mean, Peanuts is Peanuts ended. Yeah, Garfield launched in 1978, and it is still going. Whereas Peanuts ended, I believe, in 2000. I think I think it ended a, uh, a week before or after the creator passed away, and he actually intended to stop. So like, he intended to stop, and then that. Yeah, it. Like Garfield intended to stop. No, no, no. Uh, Peanuts, the creator of Peanuts. I was... Oh, Charles Schultz. Yeah, Charles he uh, Schultz. he chose to stop Peanuts, and then shortly before or after it ran to its end, he passed away. Um, that ran from 1950 to 2000. 50 years. Yeah. 50 years of sure working on that him. comic. Do you? Yeah. Oh, let me... Oh. Uh, Not the exact day. He's older than I am. But... No, you share... He died on your birthday. Oh, he, that's it. He died. His, his, oh. his birthday is in November. Him with, yeah. 
I, I confused him with, uh, for whatever reason, I confused him with Charles Darwin. No, <laughs> I'm not sure why. Uh, they're similar. Yeah, I, the interesting one is, um, are you from, Muller probably is more familiar with it, but, um, yeah. Life in Hell, uh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, it was Matt Groening's comic that he did before The Simpsons. That ran until 2012. Like, he, he just kept doing it. Yeah. Um, which is crazy to think about, considering you'd assume he'd be really busy making TV shows, but found enough time to continue doing that comic strip. Yeah. Um, I will say, though, yeah, Calvin and Hobbes, um, I remember as a kid, I liked Calvin and Hobbes. Like, there was something really neat about it, but I don't, as a kid, I don't think I could have told you what I thought was so great about it. Um, but as an adult, it's like, man, Calvin and Hobbes is, is sharp. Um, and it feels really authentic as well. Like Calvin feels like a, a kid to me. He feels like a like an adventurous, mischievous uh, kid going on adventures, hanging out with with uh, Hobbes and doing all that stuff and making these snappy observations about the world and stuff. And I think the thing that is really neat about Calvin and Hobbes is almost like what it what it makes you think about when it comes to meaningful relationships or like meaningful people or characters like Hobbes might as well be real it doesn't really matter whether or not he's a toy or not he's real to Calvin and he's kind of and he's real to us as well as people who read the comic um also it's just got a neat art style Calvin and Hobbes is a is a very nice looking comic so yeah that that's my recommendation Calvin and Hobbes really good and I respect Bill Watterson a lot, especially for his stance on trying hard not to super monetize the comic and, and lean super hardcore into merchandise. And also for his willingness to actually end it. Um, Takes balls. Like, he ended it when it was at its prime. Like it was it was still really successful. And he just decided, yeah, no, I've, I've, I've run my course. This is, uh, I think I've done what I've wanted to do with this. So yeah. Um, I, I would say that Calvin and Hobbes is like one of the best comics, like newspaper comics of all time. Before it got really shitty, uh, as many of them do, um, with the wizard of id, I one remember of my, that vaguely. one of my favorites, a lot of the newer stuff is really crap, but I remember when it, idea. uh, but when it started and for a long time, it was really good. I really like the wizard of id. I remember, the wizard of of books, I remember that home. was, uh. I remember um, distinctly Simpsons comics that were the comic strips in the newspaper. Because every Sunday, because um, I had the comics in the in the regular one, but there was like a section in a uh, in the in the newspaper that was like the kids one, where it had all the stuff that was oriented towards you. And and yeah, like the front page of that one just had all the comics. So there were Simpsons comics, Garfield, Calvin and Hobbes, um, Wizard of Id, I think was in that one too. Uh, it was. I, I, I always got really excited to to uh to read those comics. Man, big fan as a kid, but specifically more so towards like the cartoon ones rather than like superhero comics, you know, Simpsons comics, Futurama comic, um, Calvin and Hobbes. Um and yeah, someone just mentioned the uh <laughs> the Calvin and Hobbes artwork we got a fan art at one point. I still remember that one. That That's neat. true, yeah. Was super cute. There is um. Oh uh, oh, that's the wizard. Yeah yeah, that's the wizard of it. Yeah. I remember there was um. Oh damn, I can't remember what it was called, but there was. Um, and I'm not even sure if this was Australian or if it was like a, a international one. I think it was set in the desert. Like it was. It was specifically a place that was in the middle of nowhere. Um. I can't remember if it was a town or damn, I can barely remember anything about it. what was the one about that ginger kid that was like a it not Archie. Um there was there was a comic for that too. Um Oh, it might have been the far side. That might have been it. I might be talking about that, I'm not sure. Damn. It eludes me at the moment. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I will say I, I do like Dilbert, but I feel like uh, a lot of Dilbert... Like, Dilbert is something that you would get a lot more out of if you worked in, like, middle management in an office. Yeah. That's, well, that's, yeah. It's like a lot of comics where older Dilbert is just better than... It just it didn't get better over time. 
Well, I, I guess it's interesting because it's funny because I I, uh, I like comic strips a lot and I like making them, but I just don't know that I have the capacity to do that kind of output. Like, it kind of amazes me that creating a comic every single day, like a comic strip and having it be funny and interesting. Um, yeah, it's basically, how do I come up with a joke that I can put into cartoon format and just do it that many times? I don't. I guess it doesn't. It doesn't seem difficult to me. I think it is it very seemed... difficult as somebody who has tried to do it uh, many times. I think I'm I think it's more of a. It. Yeah, I, I think it's more of a um, like a consistency thing and the willingness I, to do it part. It's I the, think so. the the attrition of it, the dedication to it. I think what I I find to be the challenging part, but the thing that makes it a really interesting and worthwhile art form, that's you are trying to you are trying to achieve a lot in a very short amount of time um you because you usually only have four panels and you got to find a way to make a joke work in that in those four panels and it's like at that point you really need to be using every line and every part of the page very carefully um to get to get what you want out of uh out of the page I think that's the challenging part that you are working with very significant restrictions in terms of format. Um, but I mean, but at the same time, four panels, three panels really works well for the standard joke structure, which probably explains why it is that that's why the three or four panels. I know that again on Calvin and Hobbes, Bill Watterson fought really hard to get big, colorful splash pages for the uh, the Sunday comics. Like he fought very hard to get basically nine panels like half a comic page that was something yeah. that wasn't common for syndicated comics at the time and i mean that they were they were really amazing like those were the ones that sort of flex the uh the style of like or really demonstrated his talents really beautiful watercolors so i, I like calvin and Hobbes. what can i say i think i think it's a really good comic i think that's fair i'm gonna i'm gonna prove that i think it's okay that you think that yeah, all right. Doesn't sound like you approve. I, I wanted to make sure it was clear because it sounded like it might not have been. <laughs> I, I, that sounds upsetting, but yeah, um, a lot of a lot of good appreciation. I, I like that. It's good stuff. Yeah, I used to draw comics in high school and stuff, and I had my comics in a the school oh, newspaper. Oh man, uh, I... it was it was about Rome. It, it was it was a great inspiration, but it was about Rome, and uh, it, it took place in ancient Rome and. I would draw these Roman comics uh, on my Latin tests, and I'd get bonus points if the joke. Oh boy, good. that's neat. I I did a lot of comics at school as well. That was like a big uh, that when I was like ten. I remember that that t when I was between the ages of ten and twelve might well have been my most fruitful years in terms of productivity on creative projects. Um, my lack of self awareness really helped me just make stuff. Because I didn't know how shit it was. Like you just, you just make it and, and push through and do it. And um, I remember I got so ambitious that I even made a crossover comic with all of these characters that I, I'm pretty sure I've told the story. CeeLo and Lobsy, they were in that one. Um, uh, uh, I think the characters, it was like gangsters. It was Fred, Al. I think those were their names. Um, I remember there was a polar bear in there as well. Um, but I drew the lobster the most because it was just an oval with eyes and a mouth. <laughs> and it was even bound, like, pages stapled together like an actual comic. I did that, I yeah. don't know. Yeah, I don't know if it's anywhere here now. It might be lost forever, and perhaps that's a good thing. But, um, fuck, that was... I had a lot of fun doing that as a kid. That was really creatively fulfilling. I made a Spider-Man one. Oh. And his, he, he, had, he had a little, yeah. he had a little guy next to him called Sidekick. That was his name, and he was a little creature. <laughs> he was like a little creature that was shaped like an eight, and he had like legs all over him. And so all his thing was just kicking people <laughs> from the side. <laughs> it's like, that was a genius idea. <laughs> He's just an eight with legs that kicks everything. <laughs> Sad. Uh, you are wrong and you must be stopped, said Longman, before shooting the video essayist in the back of the head. Did he deed done? He looked at the sunset. What does he do next, Rags and Fringy? Oh my. The, is that the what beginning or the end of a comic there? 
so wait, so the ending was that you looked at the the sunset. Yes. Um, maybe you start walking into the ocean until you sink into it, and then you just never come back up. Aww. Well, I mean, is that maybe that's what you wanted? You know, I don't want to, that. To go to the bottom <laughs> oh, of the that's sea. sad. Well, that's that's well, sad in a well, different way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, maybe well, it's well, what I mean, you maybe, wanted. <laughs> maybe. Well, maybe it's what you wanted because you could breathe on the water. You just want to go see the fishies, like Bojack in episode uh, four of season three. Aww. The episode I thought would be good, and then it wasn't, and then everything started. To, <laughs> the walls started to fall down. <laughs> That was definitely one of those sort of like, what do you think? It was like, I have questions. There's a couple of questions. It's funny because you, when you, when I said, what did you think? In my head, I was like, he probably should have fallen. To, like, why is gravity only working occasionally in this episode? <laughs> and also, why didn't anybody tell Bojack that he needed to press the button to speak? Like, didn't we wouldn't tell have him? the episode the way it was otherwise. And how does a pen work underwater? Why would there even be pens underwater if it's just gonna wash off the paper? Yeah, that, those kinds of jokes don't work for me, because I'm just like, they wouldn't have, they wouldn't... Be. Remember he like opens his, his, his crisps or whatever in his room and they all just fly everywhere. And it's oh, like, yeah, so and what, what, did, yeah. like, what did you expect? It's like, how is that? I don't consider that funny. I'm just like, yeah, that's what would happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, by the way, to address in chat, it was Ginger Megs. That was the comic. Somebody mentioned it. That was the comic I was thinking of. Um, first super chat. If it weren't for Jeremy mentioning he was going to be on EFAP 27, I would never have found you guys. Been a wild ride. Cheers. Hey. Boy, you've been here for a while. Yeah. Yeah. That was the, um, the episode where I think the Toxic Brood was born, actually. 27. Oh, oh yeah, boy. that was... That's, that's taking it back. An everlasting meme, that one. Uh. Toxic Brood. Hey, Fringled, do you think Arthur Morgan's acts leading up to his death redeemed him? Second question, do you think no. Arthur is... Oh, there you go. Go ahead, though. And Second question, do you think Arthur is one of gaming's best protags? I think that he is probably one of gaming's best protagonists in terms of how well written he is, but I don't think that he redeemed himself. I think, I think that... I think that what we're meant to take away from Arthur is that in a different life, he could have been a really good person. Uh, what I I would assume that the high honor is like the canonical way to go. I don't I don't I don't know who low honor Arthur Morgan is. You know what I mean? But I uh, I think I think that's what you meant to take away from it. Is not that he is a good person, but that he could have been a good person if he hadn't been wrapped up into this life. I think the problem is it's like he does do a lot of things to try and be good, but it's worthwhile to remember the context of this. Like he is a criminal for many years. He's killed a lot of people, stolen a lot of money. And in order to like help John, I, I feel like at this point it's it's been out for three years. Um, in order to like, and, and if you play Red Dead One, you know this anyway. To get like John into the life that he wants, it it still means like killing Pinkertons and stuff like that. So I, I don't, I feel like it's it's all you all have to you have to remember in the context of like who this character is and what life he's lived. Um, and and I think it's more meaningful to think about the idea of what does it mean what what does it mean to like chase redemption as somebody like that it just means trying to do as much good as you can with the with the time that you have like he, he kind of you know arthur doesn't really have an opportunity to really make up for everything that he's done but like he can at least try to do um things to make stuff right i mean he says that a lot um and yeah one of the things that works in arthur's favor is loyalty that's like a big aspect of him and i think I think even when you have characters who do really bad things, like loyalty tends to just make them much more likable. I think some loyalty and trustworthiness just seem to be like really we just like that stuff in characters. Yeah. Like loyalty is really important. But yeah, I think he, I think he's he, I think he's quite well written. Author of Calvin and Hobbes retired at 37 because he didn't want his series to become like Garfield by going on too long and hurt the soul of the series. He also never made any toys or plushies. Chad. Yeah, and I guess I guess it's interesting because like, dude, I would have I would like a Hobbes plushie. I was about to say, like, I really like would. why not? Um, like that's that's just the cool well, merchandise so thing of like, you know. I think the problem was that from his perspective, it was just a matter of he felt like it was selling out. Like Bill Watterson was very much hardcore into like creative integrity and, and stuff like that like to to a degree that may well have even been excessive in that i would have liked a calvin and hobbs plushie 
but um <laughs> i do respect the hell out of him for like saying i'm done yeah i'm done and then and then stopping instead of just continuing especially it's like the height of his career still making money from it yeah um yeah i mean you know some of this stuff is just like yeah I, I just, he's like i don't want to sell out it's like but what if everyone wants one of those well <laughs> I guess I guess it's worthwhile to think about the context of the time where it's like doing it for one thing probably would have meant doing a whole bunch of merchandise. I mean, just look at Garfield. Look at how much merchandise there is for Garfield, and how much yeah. ability does he have to say, "Yeah, we'll do plushies, but that's it," or like, "We'll do, yeah, we'll do this, and that's it." And, and I mean, plus there's, there's books, so it's like you can still read the comic. So, yeah, make your own. I've plushies. got every. Uh, I've got every uh, Calvin and Hobbes ever made. I got this big ass book. I don't have every, it, but yeah, it's fucking. It's a big ass. It, it's well, it's, wow. it's a it's a compendium of three books, and they're just huge. I mean, ten um, years of content, like that's a lot. <laughs> that's a, a lot. lot of pages. Yeah, it is. It is heavy too. Well, yes, sir. I would like to grab some more of those because, yeah, I have one and unfortunately it got water damage when I took it on a trip with me, so. Where did you go? To the ocean? I, no. Were you I, the ocean it was master? Just, it, was, it was nothing to do with how wet the place was. I just accidentally put my backpack in a puddle. No. And I realized far too late. Oh. Um, it's okay. It's it's not it's not like destroyed or anything. I just, oh, you just want a new one. get a better one. Yeah. yeah. With more of the mm -hmm. comics. Has anyone got their plushies yet of Mauler and, and Rags? Like, nope, that they deliver yeah. early December. Well, yeah, we have them. <laughs> yeah, I have one, and boy, is it great. I love it. The goodly little muffin. But uh, you guys get them early December is when they will be delivered. Because they got to yeah. be made in they a giant plushy made, factory. Mmm. Yes. Bill Watterson, Calvin and Hobbes, and Gary Larson's The Far Side are easily my favorite newspaper comics. Aaron Magruder's Boondocks is also fascinating to me, especially given he's close to my polar opposite politically. I mean, yeah, I, you can enjoy a lot of stuff from people you disagree with on a lot of politicals, or even fundamentals. There's, there is a lot of stuff you can, uh, you know, a lot of things humans can relate on, even if you disagree on other things. Wonderful. When Calvin's mum yells Hobbs name when Calvin lost him in the woods, played as humor, but we all felt it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was 30 minutes behind. Sorry if this was mentioned already, but watch Internet Historian's video about the virus to learn about the toilet paper issue. Yeah, uh, that's probably where I got most of my information from. Um... Long man, I have a criticism for your Black Widow video. At the very end, you show a spoilery clip from the movie Extraction without a warning. I'm not too bothered about that. I, I even thought about it when I was making it. I was like, listen, that character gets introduced and becomes evil like straight away. It's, it's not too... I, I think what you're watching Extraction for, IMO, is much more for just can Chris Hemsworth get through this storyline by shooty banging. Turns out he can, for the most part. Um, and you know it happens pretty quick in that clip um, and I think that if you're not paying too much attention and you're just there for the skeletal meme you're probably going to be you know <laughs> it'll be fine um, I watched Rags until I recommended EFAP when I waiting for another video by him lols also I like the new videos of Rags and Mauler wow oh, I'm glad stuff, that yeah. you like them as am I uh, also, any of you fans of Shell Silverstein's comic strips? Um, what what were they? Let me look. What did he? I'm not familiar with them. Uh, neither am I. I will assume Rags is not either. No, no. What, what, what is it again? Shell Silverstein. Shell Silverstein. Apparently, it was the Giving Tree. Was one of the things. Where the sidewalk ends. Scary stories to tell in the dark. That can't be right. I feel like I've heard of that. Um. He. 
Just these falling up. Where the sidewalk ends. A draft and a half. Don't bump the glump, giving tree. So the question is, do I know of him? Yeah, um, like, are you familiar with his work? I read The Giving Tree when I was very, very young, but that's basically it. I never read the others. I never read Where the Sidewalk Ends or um, A Light in the Attic or any of that. He doesn't look like how I imagined he would. Let me, let me let me show you a picture. Oh. oh Not man. at all how I, I would expected. imagine yeah. him. Um but yeah, I was gonna say we were, we were gonna go until nine hours. We're seven minutes over, so well, uh, just, yeah, I'm, I'm just getting tired and we got that stream tomorrow. I guess we got those last two. Yes. The, um, I guess we could. Well, one of them is a bit... I don't know that I want to read it. Well, so uh, even even if it weren't spoilery for a, a certain dog out, we, uh, that would be a, a huge topic. <laughs> like, Yes, that would take us a while. Um, but uh, you, you, we'll, we'll probably revisit that at some stage. Yes, though. yes. Don't um, worry. You'll get answers to that at some point. Um, what's the most trouble you ever got into at school? Hmm. Huh. Hmm. I'm trying to think. I was fairly well behaved. I was. I wasn't. Getting away with it. I, I got in trouble a lot. Do you know? I, I got into a fight once. Where, um, uh, literally a bit of wood was thrown at my face, and it, it's scarred down my eyebrow. And I think I told you guys this before. It's like one of my favorite scars. It looks really good. But at the time, it um it cut open, and blood just splashed across my whole face, and people were like terrified that i would be dead <laughs> and i was like oh yeah. and to me i was just like i feel fine i mean yeah it's, i mean it, it's a lot of blood coming out blood spreads quick so it can make you look really like fucked up yeah, yeah it can it can i didn't get in trouble much at all i know that there were some teachers who didn't like me but there was never a, a justification for me to ever get in trouble so was that because you were australian mm. um it was usually because i i I've, I've gotten a lot better at regulating my volume. I know Mola can relate, because I'm pretty sure you've said this to me, but, like, when you have a deep voice, it just projects. The um, bass it can carries. Be difficult. It can be very difficult to manage volume control. Though, admittedly, a lot of that was also was due to a lack of self-awareness. But, yeah, that was that. But, again, it's just like, ah, uh, old Fringy there, being loud. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um... I didn't. I didn't really get in trouble. So I. But there, I guess the problem is I'm. I'm sure I have gotten in trouble for some, but I'm, I can't remember what it would have been. Yeah, I think I was. I was. I think I was pretty good at not getting caught. So nothing really comes to mind. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think. I have a lot of childhood trauma memories of like shit from school that I don't. Enjoy, <laughs> don't enjoy. Oh no. But, uh, oh no. It's 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 fine. I'm I'm mostly over it now. Um. But there, there are some of them, like, bad memories of, like, man, people can be fucking assholes. Yeah, it is like, interesting to think back memories. to different impactful parts of your life, and you're like, man, if I was me now then, I would fucking, they wouldn't have gone away with something like that. Yeah, kind of. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's, I'm pretty sure that there's, like, I'm not sure if I've told this story. I'm not even sure that I want to, because, like, I don't want to give, that, give away that particular nugget of information. Um... Yeah, there are just these instances I can remember where it was um just like shitty experiences interacting with other students. But then a lot of fun memories like playing Halo CE on the library computers, um, hiding in the corner so that the librarians can see us playing games. <laughs> good times. Some good times, yeah. Some good times. That's true, yeah. Uh but yet the most trouble I ever got into was probably that instance. So I was, I and the was person that involved. Fault, um, I can't remember how that fight started, but let's right. say both of us got uh, a decent <sighs> result, and so it was. I don't think it was seen as like whose fault. It was both of you fucked up. Right. I see. Um. 
give us your nuggets. No, they're my nuggets. Give us your nuggets. <laughs> give Silverstein a look. Great stuff. Also, stop responding and go to bed, Doggo, Froggo, and Longo. Very well. Oh, very, well. very soon. That's, yeah, I we guess got, that's about tomorrow. that. We gotta be ready. The stream is officially unlisted. No more can be sent oh, in. My goodness gracious. Which means now it's simply on us to end. Um, of course, it's worth mentioning one more because you're gonna it's just gonna run out of time eventually. But the plusies, that's the French way of saying plushies. If you guys didn't know, they are currently available. They are they are sitting there on the the digital shelf. And they must be touched in terms of their bootons in order to purchase them. If you wish to have them, the link will be in the description of this video because I haven't put it in the live version, which was just a bad move on my part. But Thunder's linking them in chat. Thank you very much. Um, they 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 be looking fine, and dandy, and you have nine days remaining. We'll let you know when you've got um. Well, I guess hours left or whatever. Well, it depends on what the next EFAP will be. Um, what we will try and do is a catch-up stream at some point in the near futures. Um, the nightmares become reality. We are we have got a lot to catch up on. What will likely happen is we'll make a few offline EFAPs with the copyright memes and uh, potentially other ones, and we'll just answer a whole bunch on them and release them as well. Because now we're in the new year, and if you guys remember, there are 52 weeks between the things, so that means we get two weeks off of EFAP. So, you know, those could be spent at any point, and what we'll probably do when spending them is do some uh, catch-ups or whatever. Makes the most sense to me. So, um, unless, is there anything else you guys wanted to talk about? Oh, no, I think I'd Not better, uh, really. think I'd better call it there. Get my butt out of here. Get so on I that dusty sleep, trail, as rest. they say, yes. The trail of dust. Um, thank you all so much for joining us for EFAP 151. I'm sure it won't be long before we hit 200. Give yeah. it to us. <laughs> um, It'll be gone before you know it. Next event, I suppose, is going to be EFAP Halloweeny, and then EFAP Christmasini, and then and then New Year, and then we're all the way back to heading toward Gadelp season, as if it wasn't only recently that I felt like I released one of those, you know? Time. It flows so quickly. And this is the thing, we've got a couple of weeks of like, it's kind of chill in terms of releases of new media, but uh, it won't be long before we get a tidal wave of new stuff again. Um, but in the meantime, the free comic. Yeah. <laughs> we got, we're up to page 14. There's escapades, there's drama, it's a fun time. Where can they and find it, Fringy? Oh, right. I, it's Twitter. It's me on Twitter. It's, it's there. Goes, goes, Twitter. Goes, you it. It's, it's Twitter. Fringy on Twitter. And do be a sanity on Twitter. Go check him out. You are. Alrighty, you everybody. Go. No excuses. <laughs> oh, also, no excuses on you. I got I got some my plushes. You've just reminded me to get them, so I got them. Oh my god. I got some together for 10% off. The this... Rags plusho and then the 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 Mubes mm. plusho. <laughs> It's, it's a nice little combo, right? <laughs> you can They're put them up on your combo. bookshelf. Go to sleep with them. Yeah, they belong together. They will look yep. after everyone and everyone. Um, alrighty. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you so much for the donations, for the interactions, and we will catch you at least, maybe not, you know, it'll probably be before that, but next week when we talk about whatever it is we may be talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. in the world we'll of media. You, um, we'll see you then. Wait, how did somebody just send in a super chat? It's unlisted. I thought that was the whole point, YouTube. Racism. I saw an article that said Loki set up Spider-Man No Way Home. Lol. Yeah, because multiverse bullshit. But you call that setting up? <laughs> we got to try and yeah. pretend as best as possible that it doesn't exist, all right? Don't worry about it. <laughs> Literally the have to. By, the more they're just going to ignore all the shit they said. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Good night, everybody. Lol. I saw that one, too. Good night. Bye, 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 bye. Goodbye, everybody. Do we still have the holy chat? Do we? Yeah. Okay. See, we read that one too. Bye, 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 bye. The holy chat. Do we? Oh, that was the toxic monger of the hateful brood.